Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 321 Inside the demon's den, Lu Heng followed Xiao Juechen's guidance and went straight inside. The scenery that met his eyes featured exquisite pavilions, towers, eaves, and arches. Even the small pavilions by the roadside were built with great delicacy. Although demons occasionally appeared, and because of their wicked habits most of them preferred to manifest in the form of beasts, they were all neatly dressed without any dirt or stains. In addition, the luxuriant trees covering the many pavilions, towers, rockeries, and flowing water. Embellished with various colorful flowers and vibrant foliage if it weren't for the large dome arching overhead and the occasional appearance of demon figures nearby, one would almost mistake it for a luxurious human mansion. This architectural style is not found in the Fire Pass country. Although the Fire Pass country also had high-ranking figures, all the holders of power from Emperor Yen and Lianshan Jing downwards were the Wuzhu of the Fire God Temple, who cultivated the incense-burning divine way and didn't indulge in luxury or extravagance. Therefore, even Lu Heng's accommodation at Emperor Yan's mansion in Fu Shan City was decorated and constructed with simplicity, no different from an ordinary household. Luxurious mansions like the one belonging to Xiao Juechen have a style that is completely foreign to this country. It is unknown whether Xiao Juechen, one of the four elders of the Green Hell Cave, is a native of the Fire Pass country. However, with such a luxurious and neat mansion, it seems that Xiao Juechen, the human demon, had an unquestionably high status before entering the demonic path, enabling him to have such grandeur in display. Soon, following Xiao Juechen's guidance, Lu Heng arrived at the depths of the cave and met the demon general known as General Tiger Dragon. In the Grand Hall, decorated like a palace, a dragon several meters long was feasting greedily. However, what it was devouring was neither a human nor a baby. Although there were blood stains all over the scene, which was quite shocking, the creature being greedily eaten was a demon wearing a maid's outfit. Although its head was already bitten off, the appearance of its body still roughly indicated that it was a rabbit demon. This rabbit demon has not yet opened the heaven door, but it was only inspired by the great demon and given some demon power, so it can transform into a half-human and half-demon form. It had human limbs and was dressed in a maid's dress, but its whole body was covered in fur, and had a rabbit head that was magnified several times. This kind of wild beast that has been inspired by the great demon is able to have human intelligence, but its foundations are destroyed by indulging too much too soon. Without special opportunities, it can hardly continue its cultivation and can only perform menial work in the demon cave. Any slightly strong mortal can easily kill it. But even so, it is still inspired with great demon's painstaking efforts. When Lu Heng and they walked into the hall and saw this scene, Lu Heng was fine, but Xiao Juechen beside him's face changed drastically. It never occurred to it that as soon as it left, General Tiger Dragon would devour its maidens. Now in the palace, all the other rabbit demon maidservants were expressing fearful expressions, hiding far away and not daring to approach. They trembled in fear at the sight of this bloody scene before their eyes. Xiao Juechen's face was even more gloomy, and he spoke directly. General Tiger Dragon, you eating people in my cave is excessively rude behavior. The blood is also spread all over the place what is the meaning behind this? Xiao Juechen stared at the dragon in front of him, as well as the bloody scene beside it, and didn't conceal his anger. Upon hearing Xiao Juechen's voice, the huge dragon turned its head and looked at Xiao Juechen, as well as Lu Heng behind him. The dragon licked the blood on its mouth and said, What's wrong with me eating your maidservant? I like to eat half monsters, and didn't you promise to give me two rabbit demon maidservants before? Why are you unwilling now? Xiao Juechen's expression was angry, I thought you wanted the rabbit demon maidservants to serve you. These rabbit demon maidservants were carefully trained by me. Their etiquette and posture are not inferior to court maids. I spent so much effort and energy educating these maidservants and you want to eat them? It's such a waste. And you even dirted my palace even if you really want to eat, can't you be more elegant? Do you have to splash blood everywhere? Xiao Juechen's angry questioning clearly showed that, compared to the death of his maidservant, he was more unable to bear the fact that the dragon had dirted his palace. 
Seeing the situation, the dragon snorted from its nostrils and said, Isn't it just a little blood splatter? I'll help you clean it up now. Is that okay? After speaking, the dragon blew a breath directly towards the palace in front of it. In an instant, a fierce wind blew inside the palace, gathering all the splattered blood on the walls, carpets, stone pillars, etc. With an invisible force. Finally, the blood flew out of the palace and turned into a dim blood cloud, hovering above the lotus pond outside the palace's gate, and falling as a light rain. Amidst the sound of dripping water, the giant dragon sat coiled in the clean and tidy hall and said. I personally helped you disturb the cleanliness, are you satisfied this time? Xiao Juechen gave it and the almost completely gnawed corpse of the rabbit demon servant behind it a cold stare and said, Our agreement about the servant girl is now null and void. In full view of the public, Xiao Juechen showed no respect for General Tiger Dragon. However, the huge dragon didn't care. It opened its mouth and swallowed the remaining body of the rabbit demon servant with clothes and bones, while looking at Lu Heng behind Xiao Juechen, chewing its food at the same time. He said, is this the heavenly demon lord? I heard that the evil lord is coming to the green hell cave to get a piece of the action I wonder what qualifications the evil lord has. Dare to come and get involved. Perhaps it is just a decorative pillow that looks good but is useless. The lazy appearance of the dragon clearly indicates that it is trying to pick a fight and probe. To this, Lu Heng smiled slightly, his smile was so gentle that it surprised the dragon's heart, damn. It's a smiling face demon. Before Tiger Dragon could even think about it, Lu Heng smiled and said, Does General Tiger Dragon want to have a battle with me? Lu Heng's words interrupted the dragon's thoughts. It didn't have time to ponder on the matter of the smiling face demon anyway, although the smiling face demon was disgusting, its cultivation level varies. As long as my cultivation level is higher than it, I am not afraid of it. The dragon, so confidently, burst into a loud laughter. Ha 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 that's right. I am looking forward to fighting. Stretching my muscles and bones would be nice. Inside the palace, the dragon's laughter echoed continuously, as if it were thunderous and ear-shattering. Those rabid demon maids were so scared that they screamed and ran away, they could not withstand such a strong evil energy. Lu Heng took the initiative but shook his head, this is Brother Zhao's mansion, not suitable for fighting. Besides, General, did you not notice anything unusual when you just swallowed the corpse of the rabbit demon maid? The words of Lu Heng caused a slight astonishment in General Tiger Dragon. Immediately after, there were strange sounds coming from within its belly. Creak, creak, creak. From the huge belly of the dragon, there came a strange sound of bones clinking. Then the dragon clearly felt that something seemed to be crawling inside its throat. Trying to crawl out. Chapter, 322 The countenance of General Tiger Dragon instantly became extremely unsightly. What the hell is this? Its face turned pale, it directly opened its mouth and vomited out the thing that was crawling out of its throat. Afterwards, what appeared in the sight of everyone was a set of completely bloodstained and scarred white bones, which was the rabbit demon servant that had been swallowed earlier by General Tiger Dragon. However, the bones that had already been chewed to pieces were now miraculously pieced together. Although they were covered in cracks, a thin level of bloody membrane attached to the surface of the bones was controlling this grim skeleton which was constantly running and rushing towards the giant dragon. It looked like a fierce ghost crawling out of a tomb to take lives. The eerie scene frightened General Tiger Dragon to his core. Even among the demons, who has ever witnessed such an eerie sight? A corpse that was chewed up, swallowed, and now crawled out of its belly, was still screaming and rushing towards it for its life. General Tiger Dragon opened his blood-filled mouth, full of sharp fangs, and spewed a blaze of fire directly onto the skeleton of the rabbit demon maid. However, a strange and eerie scene occurred. When the dragon's all-consuming true fire spewed onto the eerie white bones, it was unable to immediately melt them away. Despite being engulfed by the true fire and receiving a tremendous impact, the white bone struggled violently several times before being flung out by the immense force and crashing heavily outside the palace. However, after being thrown out, although the white bone still maintained their complete appearance, the level of blood on the surface was already filled with cracks. 
strands of sinister and evil energy emanated from the cracks of the bones. Feeling the strange and sinister evil death chi, both Xiao Juechen and General Tiger Dragon's faces changed. This evil chi is so pervasive. Even when they had reached the level of cultivation as high as theirs, feeling this sinister and evil energy, they couldn't help but feel a chill down their spines. In the palace, there was a sudden moment of silence. The imposing General Tiger Dragon's eyes were filled with suspicion and uncertainty, to the extent that he even prepared himself to flee. While Xiao Juechen anxiously looked at Lu Hang for a moment, he breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that the Heavenly Demon Lord had stopped and had no plan to continue his attack. Hastily, he said, the Evil Lord's techniques are so powerful, truly defying the laws of heaven and earth. It's an eye-opening experience for me impressive, truly impressive. Xiao Juechen's words of admiration come from the bottom of his heart. The Heavenly Demon Lord standing before him seemed to have done nothing, but in fact, he had already played around with General Tiger Dragon. And with ease, displayed such eerie and terrifying magic this low-key Heavenly Demon Lord has quite a reputation. After Xiao Juechen spoke, the atmosphere relaxed a bit, and the huge dragon looked at Lu Hang in confusion and said. What kind of dark magic is this? Why is it so bizarre? In the frightened gaze of the demonic beings, Lu Hang sighed inwardly but smiled slightly on his face, and said. This is an ancient dark magic, the soul-capturing and life-control technique. Dot. It uses the body of a freshly dead person as a vessel, extracting the resentment and spiritual energy from its soul, transforming it into a puppet that will obey commands and never die or rest. However, in order to completely carry out this ritual, the puppet needs to be trained for a full 44 days to become a true soul-capturing puppet. For now, it's just a small test of my swordsmanship. This skeleton is only able to move, nothing too complicated. Lu Hang's words were not boasting. The dark magic recorded in evil cultivations is both horrifying and eerie, possessing unfathomable power. If the soul capturing and life control technique is truly employed to create a perfect soul capturing puppet, then the puppet will relentlessly pursue its target day and night. The puppet is immune to the elements and impervious to both good and evil, not subject to the five elements, and surpasses the limits of the heavens and earth. It can even enter different dimensions and assassinate targets from within, making it almost impossible to defend against. Lu Hang, who didn't cultivate evil cultivation, could only manage to make this skeleton move by borrowing the power of the evil death chi through the netherworld imprint. If he were to go and refine a soul-capturing puppet, he wouldn't be able to do so without the assistance of evil cultivation techniques. However, even so, it still frightened General Tiger Dragon and Xiao Juechen. They don't know that Lu Hang doesn't cultivate evil skills. Hearing Lu Hang speak in such a manner, was interpreted as an act of condescension towards General Tiger Dragon, rather than an equal exchange of views. Realizing this, the giant dragon quickly transformed into human form and respectfully bowed in thanks. I, Tiger Dragon, express gratitude towards the evil lord's gracious gesture. The white bones casually summoned in such a way were so difficult to deal with that even their true fire could not extinguish them. If the heavenly demon lord were a little more suspicious and decided to create a killing puppet to pursue him, he would not have survived. At this moment, General Tiger Dragon confirmed one thing, anyone can be offended, but the smiling face demon in front of him must not be offended under any circumstances. With such great strength and being the smiling face demon, offending this terrifying being would surely lead to a spine-tingling outcome. And General Tiger Dragon respectfully bowed, while Xiao Juechen hesitated for a few moments before finally beginning to speak. Evil Lord, I'm as far as I know, the technique of capturing and extracting the soul had long since been lost and is an ancient demon art from ancient times that once flourished. It was said to have assassinated the ancient divine beast Lu Wu. Xiao Juechen cautiously looked at Lu Heng and said, Have you, evil lord, ever witnessed the earthly catastrophe that occurred during ancient times? Xiao Juechen's words clearly implied that Lu Heng was the ancient demon who used devilry to assassinate Lu Wu in ancient times. Or perhaps, the successor of that ancient demon. To this, Lu Heng smiled a little and said, Brother Xiao need not fear. I am not the demon who assassinated Lu Wu. The technique of capturing and extracting the soul is not my specialty. 
The devilry I hold in my hands is much stronger than that. Lu Heng casually uttered a frank remark, instantly causing General Tiger Dragon to break out in a cold sweat. This technique of capturing and extracting the soul is not even the strongest. This guy has even more terrifying devilry. Oh my goodness. Where did this demon pop out from? Xiao Juechen's face also changed slightly as he suddenly thought of something. When Evil Lord met me before, it mentioned that one of its disciples sacrificed himself to cover its escape and died under the hands of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. At the beginning, he didn't pay attention. But now as he thinks back, the amount of information conveyed in that sentence was quite significant. The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, who commands the power of heavenly thunder and has unparalleled swordsmanship, even someone like Xiao Juechen would not last long in front of him. However, the strange bird by Evil Lord's side was able to hold off the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain and cover Evil Lord's escape. Could it be that the young cultivators around Evil Lord, who are covered in evil death chi and are difficult to gauge, are actually top-level evil cultivators to be able to achieve this? Not inferior to him, Xiao Juechen. This thought made Xiao Juechen's heart skip a beat. Looking again at the disciple behind Lu Hang, who was covered in evil death chi and whose background could not be seen even with magic eyes, Xiao Juechen no longer dares to act superior. Although evil lord and it are peers when it comes to socializing, if one were to rank based on strength, the young disciples behind evil lord may be more powerful than Xiao Juechen. Chapter, 323 Inside the palace, the atmosphere is eerie. The once arrogant General Tiger Dragon now trembles in fear. After transforming into a human, he feels nothing but cold sweat running down his back. And Xiao Juechen felt scared in his heart, losing his courage to speak for a moment. Seeing that both demons were silent, Lu Hang smiled and took the initiative to break the eerie silence by speaking up. All right, now that the literary competition is over, we can consider ourselves acquainted. Lu Hang, who was obviously a guest, now seemed to take the lead like a host. He smiled and said, I heard that General Tiger Dragon came here to deliver a message to invite Brother Xiao back to the lair to prepare for the appearance of the exotic treasure with the secret of immortality may I come along. I am also quite interested in this secret of immortality. Lu Hang's words eased the atmosphere in the palace. General Tiger Dragon nodded hastily and said, Indeed, the cave lord commanded me to summon someone back as a precious treasure is about to emerge, and we must prepare well in advance. Xiao Juechen also spoke up, This is indeed an opportunity. The master of the cave has been fascinated by the name of the evil lord for a long time. If the evil lord comes, he wants to be introduced as soon as possible. Now that the evil lord happens to be traveling with both of us to the Green Hell Cave, we can work together. Lu Heng couldn't refuse the invitation of the two demons. Whether they can cooperate on the matter is not important, the main point is to find out the true location of the Green Hell Cave. Lu Heng smiled and said, Well then, I'll trouble both of you to lead the way. Xiao Juechen and the Dragon General simultaneously said, No, no, it's just our duty. Then, Lu Heng and the others didn't stop, while the Dragon General and Xiao Juechen led the way ahead, and everyone went directly towards the depths of the cave. According to Xiao Juechen, the Green Hell Cave is not in the mortal world, but stands outside the realm of heaven and earth, in an alien evil realm. However, it has three footholds in the mortal world. This floating jade mountain is one of the footholds in the mortal world where the Green Hell Cave is situated. From the depths of the demon cave in the floating jade mountain, there are two passages that lead directly to the Green Hell Cave anyone who goes to the Green Hell Cave must pass through the Tao Scripture passage. Passing through the pavilions and buildings hidden in the depths of the forest, Lu Hang and the others arrived at a huge altar deep in the cave. On the altar, dazzling starlight shone and corresponded to the number of days in a week. The swirling earth spirit energy turned into a bright yellow river that flowed on the ground. Between the stars and the earth, a huge gateway vaguely appeared, and it was unclear where it led to. Xiao Juechen said, Enter from here and you'll find a direct passage to the cave. However, as soon as Xiao Juechen spoke, the entire floating jade mountain shook violently. The ground trembled, causing the entire altar to shake. The bright yellow earth spirit energy was in chaos, and above the altar, the star's illusory figures flickered violently. 
The voice of a cold and clear woman echoed throughout the inside and outside of the floating jade mountain, and even the altar deep underground could hear it clearly. Where are the demons of the green hell cave? Come out for me. Hearing this voice, Lu Hun was slightly stunned, suddenly thinking of a possibility. It couldn't be that the ancient monster who took away Gu Yin's master's body has come knocking at the door is it just a coincidence? Lu Heng's expression was somewhat strange. But to Xiao Juechen and General Zhao Long, Lu Heng's strange expression seemed somewhat suspicious. After all, the Green Hell Cave is a well-known demonic force in the southeast. And with such a strong presence established in the land of absolute demons like Fire Pass Country, all the top monsters and demons of the Green Hell Cave are extremely proud. But now, they were being beaten right in front of the Heavenly Demon Lord's face. General Tiger Dragon suddenly turned around and said, I will go meet this woman and see what she's made of, daring to make a scene in the Green Hell Cave. After speaking, General Tiger Dragon let out a dragon roar and transformed into a giant dragon that was several tens of meters long. Then, he flew towards the stars in the sky above the altar and dove into the virtual image of the stars, disappearing from Lu Heng's sight. Xiao Juechen said, This place leads to the outside world the evil lord can go to the cave and wait. Someone will receive you there. After finishing his words in a hurry, Xiao Juechen also flew up and quickly followed. Also disappeared into the illusion of stars that filled the sky. Xiao Juechen is not as impulsive as General Tiger Dragon. The instant that woman spoke, he sensed that something was amiss. As one of the three main support points of the Green Hell Cave, the floating Jade Mountain has always been extremely hidden, and even the middle-level demons in the cave don't know much about it. Those who are aware of the fact that the floating Jade Mountain is a demon cave are very few, otherwise the Fire Pass Country's wizards would have exterminated this place long ago. Although the identity of the woman outside is unknown, she was able to reveal that this is the gathering place of demons for the Green Hell Cave this woman is definitely up to no good. Xiao Juechen hurriedly left, but Lu Heng didn't follow his advice to enter the Void Gateway and go to the Green Hell Cave instead, he took Xiao Ai and Shen Wuyo and flew up together, disappearing into the stars. As the starlight flooded around him, Lu Heng felt himself flying rapidly through the floating Jade Mountain, swiftly passing through level after level of formations, until he finally flew out of a valley behind the mountain. The cold moonlight is now falling on the mountains. The dark clouds that obscured everything when Lu Heng came have now dissipated. Under the moonlight, the warm jade light flows gently over the floating jade mountain, as if a gigantic beautiful jade is hanging high in the night sky. However, at this moment, this magnificent and mystical sight remains unappreciated by anyone. Because Lu Heng and others in the floating jade mountain were more concerned about the woman in the void outside the mountain. The scarlet wedding dress, made of phoenix feathers and blood, known as the blood dress of Nishang, is an evil tool used to refine the living corpse. However, it doesn't give off an evil aura on this woman despite being such a strange item. Completely suppressed by it, the corrupt aura has no longer been able to overflow. Under the moonlight, she coldly stares at the giant dragon in front of her and says, Are you the demon from the Green Hell Cave? Where is the lord of all demons? Bring him out to see me. A worm like you is not worthy of speaking to me. The cold and contemptuous language from the woman in red instantly enraged the enormous tiger dragon. Having arrived in the outside world and transformed back to its original form, the giant dragon, hundreds of feet long, resembled a deity from a legendary mural, with the aura of wind and thunder rippling constantly around its body. It roared angrily, this woman is looking for death. However, just as General Tiger Dragon was about to strike, he was swiftly intercepted by Xiao Juechen who had hurriedly arrived. General, calm down. General, calm down. Having finally restrained the raging dragon, Xiao Juechen then bowed to the woman in red in the distant void. The lord of the Green Hell Cave, Xiao Juechen, has met the goddess I wonder why the goddess has come to this secluded place to seek me, the lord of the demon cave is there something you want to discuss? This place is incredibly hidden, so for the goddess to come here, someone must have referred you here. I wonder which leader of my cave introduced the goddess to come. Xiao Juechen said, if there is a token, we will definitely introduce you, and we will not pass it off. Chapter, 324 Xiao Juechen smiled as he probed, 
intending to ease the atmosphere first. However, under the moonlight, the woman in the bright red wedding dress sneered disdainfully and said, Introduction. Do I need an introduction to find you bunch of demons? This three realms gathering array is so crude that I can just observe the direction of the earth's aura and see at a glance where the fulcrum is do I still need an introduction? She sneered at the two demons in front of her and said, Your words are so funny that you have successfully made me laugh. Since your joke is good enough, I will spare your offense and ask you to call the lord of all demons. I just want to see how much weight the so-called strongest demon in this place carries. Xiao Juechen's expression changed slightly upon hearing the arrogant words of the woman in the red dress. Can you believe that this woman said she can see at a glance where the fulcrum of the green hell cave is? The Three Realms Gathering Array is an ancient secret technique unintentionally discovered by the cave owner, and no one in the present can break it. Even the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, the wizards of Fire Pass Country, resent the Green Hell Cave, but they have failed to grasp its true location. All of this is due to the Three Realms Gathering Array set up by the cave owner. But not only did the woman in front of him call out the name of the formation, she even claimed she could see through it when the cave owner set up the formation. He said that it was a creation of heaven and earth, and even in ancient times, few could break it. This mysterious woman in the red dress. Xiao Juechen felt fear in his heart, and his face became even more respectful. He quickly said, May I ask how to address the goddess? I will report this matter to the cave owner. Under the moonlight, the woman in red looked coldly at it and said, My name is Lien Sanqing. You may inform the Lord of all demons and have it come out to see me. Lien Sanqing Xiao Juechen muttered the name to himself, but he couldn't remember when such a formidable person with that surname had appeared in this world. It seems that since Lu Heng emerged from Hanyu Mountain, more and more top cultivators have suddenly appeared in this world. What old monk Jiu Mie, the heavenly demon lord, and Lien Sanqing. All of them are obscure figures with unclear origins and even possibly top cultivators who existed in ancient times but had no widespread reputation. With this in mind, Xiao Juechen tentatively asked, I wonder if the goddess has ever heard of the name Lu Heng, known as the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Who is said to command heavenly thunder to destroy all evil and wield a half-ancient sword to rule the world? Xiao Juechen's inquiry caused the woman in red to furrow her brow slightly. What's this about the wolf god Lu Heng it sounds arrogant, but I've never heard of him. If you want to call out the lord of all demons, go ahead and do it. Why ask so many questions? The woman in red was extremely impatient. And Xiao Juechen's heart skipped a beat in today's world, who doesn't know of the illustrious reputation of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. If this woman doesn't know the name of the wolf god, there is only one possible explanation, she is also an old monster who has been hidden away for years, and was active in a different era than the wolf god in ancient times. She only recently came into the world again. As for whether she was active before or after the wolf god either possibility is equally dreadful. Xiao Juechen felt nervous in his heart, and his expression became increasingly deferential. He quickly spoke, saying. The goddess wants to find the strongest person in this land but he, the lord of all demons, is not the strongest in Fire Pass country. The current undefeated champion recognized by the world is none other than the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, Lu Heng. Not to mention the strongest in Fire Pass country, even if one were to claim to be the strongest in the world, no one could question the status of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Xiao Juechen spoke carefully, hoping to shift the blame to someone else. However, the woman in red, who called herself Lien Sanqing, suddenly became furious and said, I told you to summon the lord of all demons, not to drag your feet. Do you think I'm a football? Kicking me around? Even if the lord of all demons is not the strongest in fire pass country, I have come today and I must see what it is capable of. After speaking, the woman in red immediately slammed her palm forward, imprinting it on the air several miles away, towards Xiao Juechen in mid-air above the floating Jade Mountain. Hesitation and obstruction result in death. Under the moonlight, the raging Qi blast thundered. As the woman in red slammed her palm forward, even though she was several miles away, Xiao Juechen above the floating Jade Mountain felt his heart skip and instinctively dodged. But it was still too late. 
The tremendous palm strength, extremely ferocious, landed on his chest and directly shattered Xiao Juechen into scattered blood mist. On the side, General Tiger Dragon could only widen his eyes and witness Xiao Juechen turning into shattered flesh and blood flying, splattering him. The terrifying scenery startled General Tiger Dragon. What the hell is going on? The heart of General Tiger Dragon trembled, despite his cultivation and vision, he couldn't even see how the palm of the red-clothed woman killed Xiao Juechen from a distance. Lu Heng in the distance was also slightly surprised, having also failed to see the woman's move clearly. Several miles away, a seemingly effortless palm strike killed Xiao Juechen of the Four Elders. Directly from a distance Lu Heng put himself in Xiao Juechen's shoes and realized that he too would not have been able to react if he had been standing in his place. Will be killed directly by the strike. Lu Heng's eyes instantly became serious. After occupying the body and resurrecting, instead of adapting to the physical body and restoring the cultivation. This woman is spouting mad words about finding the strongest person in the world it turns out it's not empty talk, she really has incredible means that ordinary people can't match. In the void, the woman in red laughed disdainfully upon seeing Lu Heng and General Tiger Dragon both being subdued by her. She said, now you can call for the lord of all demons to come out him. As soon as she finished speaking, the woman's eyebrows furrowed and she suddenly looked towards a certain direction of the floating jade mountain. The look in the eyes turned cold. Come out. After the woman's voice fell silent, Lu Hang and General Tiger Dragon also followed her gaze and instantly locked onto the mountain forest. Under the gaze of several people, a half-decayed head rose up from the mountain forest. Xiao Juechen's physical body was continuously crawling out from inside the decayed head. However, because he had only crawled halfway out, he now appeared extremely disgusting with blood flowing all over. Seeing this scene, the woman in the red dress chuckled with a sudden realization. So it's a corpse demon, a devil that grows from the corpse of a strong person hot to be able to cultivate to this level, he is considered an outstanding figure among corpse demons. Considering that your cultivation is not easy, and you have already died once, I spare your life now. Go and call the lord of all demons and I will pardon your previous offense of evading and offending me. The woman in red spoke with contempt and arrogance. But now, no one dared to confront or mock her again. Even General Tiger Dragon, who was initially so bold as to declare his intention to come and meet her, has now closed his mouth and dares not speak recklessly. The woman in red in front of them had an unclear background, but her strength was clearly above that of Xiao Juechen. If that strike had landed on him, he would have died just like Xiao Juechen did, but he wouldn't have had the chance to come back to life like him. Although this woman is mad, she has the capital to be arrogant. General Tiger Dragon remained silent while the body of Xiao Juechen, who was constantly struggling to crawl out of the void, let out a bitter smile. Goddess, wait a moment. The junior will go to the cave to invite the demon lord out. In the face of Lien Sangqing, a woman in red with an unclear background and extremely vicious aura, Xiao Juechen had completely lost his temper. Even such a ruthless person has emerged the current situation of the Fire Pass country is becoming more and more chaotic. With such a chaotic situation, can the chief's plan still be successfully implemented? Xiao Juechen was worried in his heart. Chapter, 325 Xiao Juechen chose to compromise and agreed to go and invite the Lord of All Demons as per the demands of the woman in red. The massive dragon in the void was slightly surprised and looked towards the direction of Xiao Juechen. Despite not speaking and being far apart, the expression of astonishment in its eyes clearly implied, are you really going to invite the chief? Upon this, Xiao Juechen could only smile helplessly and shake his head. What else can we do? It struggled out with difficulty from the decayed human head, its appearance covered in blood and dirt, looking extremely wretched. And once Xiao Juechen crawled out of the decayed human head, the wicked aura that surrounded it instantly weakened by a large extent. Amidst a few indistinct curses, the decayed human head vanished into Xiao Juechen's shadow. It looks like he has a bad temper. Under the moonlight, Xiao Juechen, who had shed his blood-stained clothes and regained his slender and weak scholar image, respectfully bowed to the red-clothed woman above and said. Please wait a moment, goddess. I will immediately go and invite the demon lord, said the younger one. 
The red-clothed woman coldly snorted and said, You better hurry up. You have fifteen minutes. If the lord of all demons doesn't appear before me in fifteen minutes, I will pull out the fulcrum of your three realms formation and destroy all the demons in this mountain, she threatened. Lien Sanqing issued a chilling threat. Xiao Juechen forced a bitter smile and reluctantly bowed before turning around and heading towards the mountain. Please wait, goddess. After speaking, Xiao Juechen was about to disappear into the mountain. Lu Heng swiftly caught up and said, I will travel with you. Lu Heng dared not leave Xiao Juechen alone in this situation. The red-clothed woman before them was incredibly powerful, her pawn techniques were exquisite and difficult to match. If the lord of all demons were to falter in the face of such a strong opponent, would the demon monsters hiding in their caves rather die than come out? In that case, wouldn't Lu Heng be unable to see the lord of all demons or find the true location of the green hell cave? To be on the safe side, Lu Heng decided to leave with Xiao Juechen. However, as soon as Lu Heng opened his mouth, the woman in the distance with red clothes coldly snorted. You want to leave, then leave. You want to stay, then stay. You, who are of unknown origin and full of evil, stay here as hostages with that dragon. If the lord of all demons doesn't show up, I'll kill a few of you as sacrifices. The murderous intent in Lien Sanqing's eyes was evident as she demanded that Lu Hang stay behind, her aggressive tone without any ounce of mercy. Xiao Ai's expression turned slightly cold at such a disrespectful and vicious attitude. Lu Hang didn't get angry. Although the woman was vicious, Lu Hang had seen many such people. Moreover, the most important thing is that he is currently the heavenly demon lord, not the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, so the heavenly thunder sword cannot be unsheathed. Without the heavenly thunder sword, Lu Hang had to rely on sorcery to maintain the image of an evil cultivator. Unfortunately, he didn't cultivate demon cultivation. Although the Demon Sutra recorded many extremely profound evil techniques, Lu Hang could only master the superficial knowledge of it. Those evil techniques are suitable for pranks, but using them to confront enemies directly is difficult. Therefore, even though Lu Hang had a bad temper, at this time he could only greet with a smiling face, not to mention that he was not a person with a violent temper in the first place. Faced with Lien Sangqing's bad tone, Lu Hang still greeted her with a smiling face. Miss, there's something I need to tell you. I am not a disciple of the Green Hell Cave even if you keep me here, you cannot threaten the Lord of all demons. Lu Heng spoke and the woman in red clothes looked him up and down before saying. Not a monster from the Green Hell Cave? Hmm even I can't see the depth of your strength, but the evil death chi on your body is quite impressive. He's really not on the same level as those two useless ones, as an evil cultivator. Lien Sangqing's contemptuous tone clearly expressed her disdain towards Xiao Juechen and to General Tiger Dragon, one of the three demon generals. However, at this moment, Lien Sangqing's disdain is so strong that even the hot-tempered General Tiger Dragon dare not speak out of turn, for this woman truly has the capital to be arrogant. Xiao Juechen's heart was slightly moved upon hearing Lien Sangqing's words, completely confirming his previous conjecture. This heavenly demon lord is indeed an unparalleled and prominent figure in the demonic path. Even the powerful Lien Sangqing couldn't see through the evil lord's reality. Perhaps they were both innate masters of the same level. At the thought of this, Xiao Juechen quickly said to Lu Hang, I will trouble the evil lord to take care of things here for a moment. I will quickly invite the master of the cave to come out. Lu Hang, however, grabbed him again and said, No, no, we have to go together. Lu Heng said, I can't wait to meet the demon lord. As he spoke, Lu Heng's eyes conveyed a subtle signal. Although Lu Heng was hinting at something, he himself didn't know what it was. But he just wanted Xiao Juechen to know that he had a very important reason to leave together. As for what this reason was, Xiao Juechen would figure it out by himself. Sure enough, after a subtle hint from Lu Heng, Xiao Juechen was suddenly startled and seemed to understand something. It turned to the woman in the distance and said, Indeed, the evil lord is not a disciple of our sect, but rather a guest who happened to be here. The affairs of our sect should not affect him, and I should take the evil lord to rest in our sect. After saying that, Xiao Juechen intended to take Lu Heng to flee into the mountains together. 
However, at the moment when the two of them flew up, the woman in red in the night sky shook her head coldly. No. He can't leave. Watching Lu Hang's figure, Lian Sangqing said, I really like this person who is covered in evil death chi. He must stay and let me take a good look at him. You can go inside alone and call out the lord of all demons. While speaking, the woman in red kept her gaze fixed on Lu Hang. Even Lu Hang couldn't help feeling a bit of heat at the moment. His expression was a bit strange, why did this woman suddenly start paying attention to him? In the wind, Lu Hang smiled and said, Miss, I appreciate your kindness, but unfortunately, we are destined to be strangers, so there is no need to force it. Standing on the escape light, Lu Hang, Xiao Ai, Shen Wuyo, and Xiao Juechen ascended towards the middle sky. It was obvious that he intended to ignore the woman's opinion and leave directly. Seeing this scene, the woman in the red clothes sneered and said, Leaving? Did I agree? I said stay, so stay. After speaking, she directly formed a sword with one hand and struck heavily towards Lu Hang and the others in the distance. In the void, that escape light was instantly destroyed by a slash. Xiao Juechen's escape light disappeared into the mountain, but the figures of Lu Hang and the others fell out of it. Seeing this scene, the woman in red sneered and said, I said you cannot leave, just huh. As soon as the smug sneer came out, it stopped abruptly. The three figures that were slashed out of the void disappeared directly with a light sway under the moonlight. A little bit of evil demon overflowed and flowed in the night wind. The woman who smelled the evil demon had a sudden change in her face color. Evil spirit disperses soul technique. With a sudden swing of her arm, the woman in red summoned General Tiger Dragon from miles away, who was dragged by an immense force towards her before he could even react. The enormous dragon, hundreds of feet long, was now being held by the neck by a woman in red who was not even the size of its fingernail, and was angrily interrogating it. That scoundrel, is his name the Heavenly Demon Lord? Chapter, 326 The sudden outburst of the woman in red directly stunned General Tiger Dragon. Although it already knew that this woman in red was very strong and could determine its life or death with just a wave of her hand. But it never expected that, as a powerful cultivator of the evil path who had condensed the top three flowers and was about to step into the realm of innate, it would be as fragile as a baby chick in this woman's hands. With just one gesture from the other party, I couldn't even resist and was dragged right in front of them. The only fortunate thing now is that this embarrassing scene was not witnessed by anyone, otherwise it would have ruined his lifelong reputation. In the face of the ferocious and violent woman before him, General Tiger Dragon had absolutely no resistance to her. It quickly responded, that's right. That guy's name is the Heavenly Demon Lord. He's a mysterious cultivator of the evil path, and his name has never been heard before. It's like he suddenly appeared out of thin air, and he's likely a highly skilled individual from the ancient times. He was very interested in meeting our cave master and insisted on making his acquaintance, so Xiao Juechen brought him over to introduce him. It also knows the ancient demonic technique, soul-captivating art, and recently used it to toy with me. Its methods are extraordinary, and it is a true giant of the demonic path. As soon as he opened his mouth, General Tiger Dragon unleashed a torrent of information, spilling forth his words with the ease of pouring beans from a bamboo tube. After listening to the narration of General Tiger Dragon, the face of the lady in red turned even more gloomy. Soul captivating art scattered soul technique and that veil of disguised evil death chi intentionally concealing its true appearance, too scared to let me see its true form. As I suspected, no wonder this guy was increasingly disagreeable to Mike turns out he's just that scoundrel ha 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 ha. In the moonlight, the laughter of the woman became increasingly dreadful and chilling, causing General Tiger Dragon to tremble with fear. Oh my god this crazy woman is indeed an ancient monster, and she even knows the Heavenly Demon Lord. No wonder the Heavenly Demon Lord was running so fast, didn't even dare to stay a while, turns out he bumped into his old nemesis. General Tiger Dragon looked at his nose. He curled up in the void, extremely embarrassed, and dares not move a muscle, behaving obediently. There was absolutely no murderous aura from the three demon generals of the Green Hell Cave. After the red-clothed woman sneered for a while, she frowned at the coiled-up dragon and said. I've been laughing for so long, 
aren't you curious about my relationship with the heavenly demon lord? The woman took the initiative to speak, causing a sudden tremor in the heart of General Tiger Dragon. It cautiously lifted its head and looked at the woman's indifferent eyes, dryly chuckling, what the senior wants to say, surely will be told to the junior. If the senior doesn't want to say it, it wouldn't be good for the junior to actively ask and pry into the senior's privacy. The woman in red looked coldly at it and said, if you ask me now, I'll tell you. Um well General Tiger Dragon cautiously and tentatively asked, Senior, what kind of relationship do you have with the Heavenly Demon Lord? After the Dragon King finished speaking, the woman in red slapped it hard on the face, instantly knocking off half of its dragon head. Amidst the flying debris of blood, meat and shattered bones, Lien Sangqing spoke coldly. Mind your own business. In the air above the floating Jade Mountain, General Tiger Dragon was instantly stunned by this single slap. Fortunately, this palm only injured the physical body without harming the essence, and it could be reconstructed from flesh and blood. Meanwhile, Lu Hang and Xiao Juechen, who were still unaware of the events happening outside of the floating Jade Mountain, had already entered the portal on the altar and were heading to another space, the Green Hell Cave. After passing through the portal in the void, Lu Hang and his companions entered a strange space. Gravity completely disappeared here, and they seemed to float in the vastness of space with dimly surging earth spirit energy around them. The world was deep and vast, and they had no idea where the boundaries lay. And they drifted and traveled in such an endless world, heading towards a specific direction. The surging earth spirit energy level created a tunnel-like structure in this vast and chaotic world, guiding them to avoid getting lost. Here, there was no sound and no light. Even divine consciousness could only survey a few hundred feet around them, and they could not see any further beyond that range. Even the passing of time seemed to have lost its sense here. When Lu Hang once again set foot on the real world, he could not even determine how long he had been drifting in that chaotic and strange world. In front of him, Xiao Juechen's anxious face questioned, Does the evil lord know that woman outside? What is her background? If the cave master goes out to see her, it's more likely that he'll come to a bad end, given her terrifying abilities. Xiao Juechen's expression was anxious. Lu Heng smiled and said, Don't worry, let's inform the demon lord about this matter first, so that it will be aware of it and perhaps, the cave master has a plan in mind. Having finally arrived at the headquarters of the Green Hell Cave, Lu Heng was feeling very good. If it were not for the tens of thousands of humans being bred inside the Green Hell Cave, and Lu Hang's desire to lure the Lord of all demons out to test the truth of that woman, he would have summoned the cloud to attack directly. Regardless of whether the Lord of all demons and that woman fought each other to the death, it would be a good thing for Lu Hang, so he smiled very relaxedly. However, if Lu Hang had known that the nickname he came up with on a whim had caused a misunderstanding, he might not have been able to smile anymore. But at least for now, Lu Hang was still smiling quite happily. And Lu Heng's smile also infected Xiao Juechen, giving the evil creature a sense of security. Yes. What's it worried about? Now that there is a host sitting in the cave, and the heavenly demon lord who is strong and not inferior to that woman is also present. Even if the host is not a match for the woman in a real fight, there is still the assistance of the evil lord. At least, the green hell cave will definitely not suffer any losses. Thinking of this, Xiao Juechen breathed a sigh of relief and said hastily, All right. I'll go inform the host now, and the evil lord can come with me. After speaking, Xiao Juechen immediately gathered his escape light, carrying Lu Hang and the other three people as they flew up and headed towards the distance. Surging clouds and mist drifted in the sky. The clear and cool moonlight silently falls between the vast heavens and earth. This independent space outside of the world, the Green Hell Cave, looks no different from the ordinary world on the surface. However, there was an indelible thick evil demon in the air, and all that walked upon the earth were large and small evil demons. And as they flew deeper, the evil demon grew thicker. And in the deepest part of this demonic cave, a grand palace stretching from the foot of the mountain to its peak appeared in Lu Heng's sight. The palace was magnificent and majestic, situated on a grand and lofty mountain. The most intense and violent aura of evil within the entire space stemmed from the emanation of this palace. The density of the evil demon made even Lu Hang, who had perused the demon sutra, 
furrow his brows slightly. Lu Heng thought that even the lord of all demons might not be much more skilled than the four elders and the three demon generals in the green hell cave. But now it seems that the lord of all demons is unbelievably powerful. Chapter, 327 On the giant mountain peak several kilometers high, a continuous string of palaces can be seen, with buildings every five steps and pavilions every ten steps, making it an unparalleled spectacle in the mortal world. Xiao Juechen's cave mansion is already considered luxurious, but compared to the vast palace complex that covers the entire mountain range of the floating Jade Mountain, it pales in comparison. The former could only be considered as a grand and luxurious building, while the latter can already be called a spectacle. Lu Heng marveled at the world's productivity and followed behind Xiao Juechen, with Xiao Ai and Shen Wuyo, swiftly flying over the palaces. In the void, hundreds of different sized floating islets were suspended, many of which were guarded by demonic soldiers wearing battle armor, keeping watch in all directions. But wherever Xiao Juechen's escape light reached, it directly repelled all the obstructing guards. He led Lu Heng to drive straight ahead and quickly reached the highest point of the palace. The peak of the Thousand Zhang High Mountain. Compared with the magnificent palace complex below, which extends for hundreds of miles and covers the ground, there are no grand and magnificent buildings on this mountain top. After Lu Heng and his companions arrived, they saw a clear and calm lake. This lake seems to have appeared out of nowhere on the mountain top, with no visible source of water. There is a small island in the center of the lake, and on the island is a bamboo building surrounded by trees. It has a secluded and peaceful atmosphere, but ignore the extremely powerful evil energy on the island if you will. After approaching the small island, Xiao Juechen quickly stopped his lightness technique and didn't dare to proceed further. It landed Lu Hang and his two companions at the edge of the island, facing several demon soldiers that appeared before them. Is the cave master available? I have urgent business to discuss with him. It was obvious that those demon soldiers were familiar with Xiao Juechen, as they all greeted him respectfully and said, Master Juechen, please come in. The demon lord has been waiting for you in the bamboo pavilion for a long time, my lord. Lu Heng observed the demon soldiers guarding the small island and noticed that though they behaved humbly, they were all surprisingly strong. If placed outside, they would at least have the level of a Wuzhu ranked evil cultivator, and not much weaker than Xiao Juechen. But here, they were just the personal guards of the lord of all demons. After obtaining permission, Xiao Juechen went straight inside without needing anyone to guide him. Lu Heng led Xiao Ai and Wuyo closely behind him, and the surrounding evil soldiers didn't stop them, Lu Heng thought that those soldiers would try to stop Xiao Ai and Wuyo. Following behind Xiao Juechen, they quickly walked through a grove of bamboo and arrived at a small bamboo pavilion within the grove, where Lu Heng and the others followed. From afar, Lu Heng could see the figure inside the bamboo pavilion standing up with a smile and waving at him in greeting. I have long heard of the name of the evil lord, and upon seeing you today, it is indeed as remarkable as rumored. Lu Heng was slightly surprised. Because the person in front of him was somewhat different from what he had imagined the lord of all demons would be like. The person who stood up under the bamboo pavilion was a young gentleman with a full smile on his face, dressed in a long gown and holding a folding fan, showing an elegant demeanor. However, Lu Heng could clearly see that this person's cultivation was not high, but just an ordinary practitioner who had only recently opened the heaven's door. Moreover, if you looked carefully, you would even discover that his youthful appearance was also an illusion. The young gentleman with a slight frown at the corner of his eyes, was definitely not as young as he appeared to be, and it appeared that he must have preserved his looks using some kind of miraculous treasure or technique. Lu Heng looked at Xiao Juechen with a strange expression and saw that he was already anxiously walking towards the man, bowing and greeting him respectfully. Lord of Demons Something big happened. Xiao Juechen said hurriedly, a woman named Lian Sangqing has arrived outside, demanding to see you within the next quarter hour. She threatens to destroy all the children of Floating Jade Mountain otherwise, and even remove the fulcrum of the Three Talents formation. Xiao Juechen quickly recounted what happened at the Floating Jade Mountain, and even the Lord of All Demons, who had relatively low cultivation, couldn't help but frown after hearing it. Lu Heng's heart trembled slightly at the thought, is this fellow really the Lord of All Demons? 
but the strongest evil energy on this island is not emanating from this person, it is coming from a small bamboo house at the other end of the bamboo forest pathway. The man in front of them, indeed, had a relatively low cultivation. Looks like the lord of all demons of the Green Hell Cave has quite a peculiar story. Lu Han couldn't help but sigh inwardly. After a moment of contemplation, the youthful lord of all demons looked towards Lu Hang and asked, I wonder how the evil lord looks upon Lian Sangqing. Lu Hang looked at him and said with a smile, that woman is fierce and tyrannical. If she fails to achieve her goal, she could really resort to killing all the demons in the floating jade mountain. Lu Hang's words made the lord of all demons sigh and say, I see it seems that there is no way around it but to meet her in person. However, her palm technique of killing from a distance is too powerful. I wonder if the evil lord has a way to counter it. Lu Hang didn't hide anything and gave his suggestion with a smile, the best way would be to use a swifter and more lethal technique to kill her at the moment she unleashes her palm strike, so as to kill her before she kills you. This way, her strange and mysterious palm technique can be broken. Lu Hang's suggestion was the best method he came up with after careful consideration. If he were to face this woman, he would definitely not waste words or give her the time to unleash her palm strike. Instead, he would unsheath Heavenly Thunder Sword directly and take her out with a single strike. Under the full force of the god slaying Heavenly Thunder Sword technique, it is definitely faster than this woman's palm technique. However, Lu Heng's suggestion made the Lord of All Demons shake his head helplessly. As the evil lord has seen, my cultivation is not actually high. If I were to fight head-on against Lian Sangqing, I'm afraid I might be killed in the first strike Sai. With a helpless shake of his head, the Lord of All Demons stood up and shouted towards the direction of the bamboo hut at the other end of the bamboo forest. Wanner, go and meet the one outside. Be careful and don't lose your life. After the Lord of All Demons finished speaking, a cold answer sounded from deep inside the bamboo forest. Aha! Immediately afterwards, a fierce evil energy rose to the sky and disappeared from Lu Hang's sight in an instant. Lu Hang's expression was slightly astonished. Who is this? Lu Hang looked at the Lord of All Demons beside him, his face full of curiosity. The Lord of All Demons smiled and said, This is my wife. In the mortal world before she was corrupted, her name was Wan Rong. She is the true number one cultivator of the Green Hell Cave, while I am just an ordinary cultivator with low cultivation level. The words of the Lord of All Demons made Lu Hang even more curious. I noticed that you, Demon Lord, don't seem to cultivate demonic cultivation. Lu Hang didn't quite understand, why would you establish such a powerful demonic cave if you're not cultivating demonic techniques? Nothing in this demonic cave would be of any help to your cultivation, would it? Lu Hang didn't hide his curiosity, but directly asked, without caring if it was too presumptuous to ask such questions during their first meeting. After listening to Lu Hang's inquiry, the Lord of All Demons also laughed and said. Indeed, everything in the Green Hell Cave has no benefit for my cultivation, or for Wanner's cultivation. But the Green Hell Cave is the most important piece on my chessboard, and I have to play it. Looking at Lu Hang, the Lord of All Demons smiled and said, Therefore, even though it is difficult and thankless, and even though we are surrounded from all sides, we must proceed with the establishment of the Green Hell Cave. Chapter, 328 Facing Lu Hang, the Lord of All Demons had no intention of concealing anything. After all, the Heavenly Demon Lord is going to participate in the upcoming battle for the appearance of the spiritual treasure. He is an important combat force for the Green Hell Cave, and we must strive to make use of him. Therefore, when Lu Hang met him, he bluntly inquired about the details, which not only didn't lead to any grievances between them, but even indirectly showed how much Lu Hang cared about the matter. Facing the inquisitive Lu Hang, the Lord of All Demons spoke. Four hundred years ago, my wife Wan Rong was poisoned by the evil creatures that emerged from the Kangu Abyss, and her body and soul were damaged. She sometimes regained clarity, but sometimes felt confused and disoriented. While my cultivation remained stagnant, I could accumulate spiritual power continuously. However, my level of cultivation has been forever stuck at the threshold of the heaven door, preventing me even from harmonizing the five elements in my chest. Fortunately, 
Although my wife's lifespan was shortened after falling into the demonic path, her cultivation soared. The establishment of the Green Hell Cave also relied on the support of Wanner behind the scenes. Now that the demonic cave has been built and everything is ready, we are just waiting for the day when the exotic treasures appear. The evil soldiers and demons will then attack the capital of the Fire Pass country, creating an opportunity for us. Once we obtain that exotic treasure, we can extend our lifespan and enable my wife Wan Rong to live for another lifetime and advance her cultivation further. Then, I will take my wife to the depths of the Kangu Abyss to settle the score with that evil creature. Under the Bamboo Pavilion, the Lord of All Demons spoke quietly about his past experiences, without any strong emotions in his tone. But this silent and indifferent hatred is even more chilling. In order to gain the trust of the Heavenly Demon Lord, the Lord of All Demons even revealed this hidden matter. After listening, Lu Heng hesitated slightly and asked, Will that exotic treasure be unearthed in the capital of the Fire Pass country? The Lord of All Demons smiled faintly and said, This cannot be told to the Evil Lord if the Evil Lord wants to know more detailed information, he needs to establish a blood oath with us to truly understand the origin of that exotic treasure. Lu Heng smiled and said, if the information about the exotic treasure is true, then there is no harm in forming a blood oath. However, the Lord of Demons just said that when the exotic treasure appears, evil soldiers and demon generals will besiege the capital of the Fire Pass country at that time. There will surely be rivers of blood, and it is impossible for every evil soldier and demon general to have the qualification to benefit from the longevity of the exotic treasure, right? Lu Heng's inquiry made the Lord of All Demons burst into laughter and say, is the evil lord worried about becoming a pawn like those evil soldiers and demon generals? If so, there is no need to worry. Those group of evil soldiers and demon generals are under my jurisdiction, and they enjoy feasting on human flesh without the worry of being chased and besieged by the righteous path. They have lived a peaceful life of comfort and enjoyment. After raising them for decades, now is the time to use them and let them fight for once. Moreover, what are these evil soldiers and demon generals anyway? They are just a bunch of cruel and unscrupulous rabble that are extremely difficult to control even for the demonic instincts. They are nothing more than pigs and dogs, how can they be compared to the evil lord? And under the Blood League, there are a total of 78 people in the Green Hell Cave that can benefit from the life extension. But this is only because only 78 are qualified to enjoy such benefits, it doesn't mean that the weird treasure can only benefit 78 people. With the power of that weird treasure, even another 30 people would not be too many. After all, that weird treasure, regardless of one's level of cultivation, treats everyone equally. It can eliminate the old and stale air from the body and soul, essentially making a person youthful again, equivalent to a new lease on life. So, for cultivators like the Evil Lord or for Heaven Door Realm cultivators like me, the benefits obtained are the same, without any difference. The Lord of All Demons smiled and said words that were a huge temptation to all cultivators, the Evil Lord only needs to establish a blood oath, and even the two disciples by your side can also enjoy the benefits of the treasure. However, what took the Lord of All Demons by surprise was that after he finished his tempting words to the cultivators, not only did Lu Hang's expression remain unchanged, but even the two disciples behind him also had a calm expression. They didn't lose their composure despite the immense benefit of being able to live another life. Upon seeing this scene, the Lord of All Demons sighed in his heart. It seems that, as Xiao Juechen said, the two disciples by the Heavenly Demon Lord's side are also highly skilled cultivators in the evil path. Ordinary cultivators, upon hearing that they could live another life, were all excited like madmen, except for that group of long-lived demon cultivators. Even the long-lived demon cultivators cannot resist such temptation. However, the two disciples by the Heavenly Demon Lord's side didn't show any frivolity or lack of composure as junior disciples. No wonder they are the top disciples of the evil cultivators. They were able to engage a skilled cultivator like the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. The heavenly demon lord's background is even bigger than imagined. The lord of all demons felt emotional and determined to recruit the heavenly demon lord who was in front of him. Now the situation is murky and difficult. If the heavenly demon lord can lend his assistance, his plan may have a chance of success. But Lu Heng no longer mentioned the blood oath and that mystical treasure. 
He tilted his head and thought for a moment before smiling and speaking. I wonder how the situation is outside. Does the demon lord not care to take a look? That red-clothed woman, Uyen Sangqing, is quite capable. It's better to take a look. Lu Heng suddenly changed the topic, and the lord of all demons no longer insisted on bringing up the matter. After all, such a big matter certainly needs to be carefully considered. Besides, he is indeed worried about his wife's condition. Therefore, after Lu Heng spoke, the lord of all demons smiled and let the matter drop. Thank you for the concern, evil lord. Actually, I have been anxious for a long time. After speaking, the lord of all demons directly extended his hand and made a gesture in the sky. Then, the light in the sky above the bamboo forest dimmed slightly, and a huge image appeared. It was like a giant projection, projecting the events happening outside of the floating jade mountain onto here. Under the cold moonlight, Lu Heng and the others could see Lian Sangqing, the woman in red, suddenly frown and coldly look at Lu Heng and others outside the mirror. Lian Sangqing said, The Lord of all demons. You have the audacity to spy on me, but not the courage to come out. Just as the woman in red finished speaking, a figure full of evil energy soared out of the floating jade mountain. The raging and violent demonic energy flaunted itself in the night sky without any concealment. A woman dressed in a purple gown had somewhat empty eyes, but her imposing aura stood tall under the sky like a towering mountain. Instantly captured the attention of the woman in red. Hmm. You are the lord of all demons. A woman. Lian Sanqing frowned and said, with such strength, you are not considered weak, no wonder you have the courage to boast of being the strongest. As she spoke, Lian Sanqing waved her hand and released the gigantic dragon that she had been holding tightly, saying. But what about the heavenly demon lord now? Why isn't that jerk showing up? Lian Sanqing said angrily, let that jerk the heavenly demon lord come out. Tonight, I will kill both of you to sacrifice for my rebirth. Lian Sangqing's sudden curse not only surprised the lord of all demons in the bamboo pavilion, but also left Lu Heng confused. What happened? Why did this woman suddenly target him again? Could it be that his use of demonic magic to escape earlier angered this woman, and therefore was put on the death list as well? If that's the case, then this woman's mind is too small. Chapter 329 Inside the bamboo pavilion, Lu Heng had a strange expression, while the Lord of All Demons and Xiao Juechen looked full of surprise. The Lord of All Demons spoke directly, so the evil Lord knows this female cultivator. Lu Heng quickly shook his head and denied, I don't know her and I don't know what happened outside that made her hate me could it be because my previous behavior of not wanting to stay and insisting on leaving angered her. This is Lu Heng's speculation. The Lord of All Demons chuckled and said, if she hated you simply for that, then this female cultivator's mind is too shallow. Under the bamboo pavilion, the evil creatures were talking. In the enormous mirror projection, the eerie woman above the floating jade mountain, Wan Rong, spoke icily. The heavenly demon lord is a guest in my cave, you don't have the right to come here and give orders. Since you want to fight me, then just make your move directly. Within three moves, we'll see who wins. Compared to the brutal and wicked Lien Sangqing, the wife of the Lord of All Demons seems even harder to provoke. She directly threatened to fight without any fear of Lien Sangqing's distant palm technique. Seeing this situation, Lien Sangqing snorted coldly and said, To defeat you, two moves are enough. After speaking, the red dressed woman under the moonlight raised her right hand. Under the moonlight, her fair palm gradually became as smooth and flawless as beautiful jade. Even though they were only watching the projection through the water mirror and not physically present on the floating jade mountain. Lu Hang and his companions could clearly feel the terrifying killing intent emanating from the fair, jade-like palm. The expression of the lord of all demons became slightly solemn. No matter how relaxed he appeared, he could not truly remain indifferent to his wife's battle against such a formidable enemy. And above the floating jade mountain, Wan Rong, dressed in purple, also wore a serious expression. The furious evil aura surged violently around her body. Amidst the howling of the cold wind, the power of evil and wickedness was fully displayed. The entire floating jade mountain range was nearly completely shrouded by the evil energy. 
the terrifying power of demonic evil shook the heavens and even overwhelmed the stars in the sky. However, despite the intense surging of this evil energy, it could not even come close to the red-clothed woman under the moon in the distance. As all the energy of evil and wickedness surged and spread violently, they all moved away from Lien Sangqing and dared not come anywhere near this woman. Under the moonlight, Lien Sangqing raised her right hand and gazed towards the demons ahead, saying. Are you ready? Don't think that I am bullying those younger than me. Wan Rong gave a cold snort, refusing to back down. Her response caused Lien Sangqing to burst into a loud laugh, and she no longer restrained her own aura. In an instant, a white jade palm struck out through the air, cold and calm, heading towards the demon ahead. Annihilating blue hand. With a cold and ruthless low shout, the woman in red-clothed hand shot out an evil aura surging forth. The countenance of Wan Rong, who was enveloped in boundless malevolent energy, suddenly changed. As the palm landed, the endless aura of evil flowing between the two didn't change at all, with no invisible force emanating from afar. It seems that this Lien Sanqing really just lightly tapped from a distance. However, at the moment when the annihilating blue hand fell, her heart suddenly jumped, an incomprehensible sense of horror instantly emerged, as if she was standing on the edge of a cliff and about to perish. Without any hesitation or contemplation, purple-clad Wan Rong let out a low cry and instantaneously dispelled the infinite malevolent energy looming over the floating Jade Mountain. The pitch-black aura of evil immediately engulfed the figure of the woman in purple clothes. Transforming into the strongest formation, she protected herself within it. But in the next second, a sudden scream echoed from within the boundless aura of evil. Splurt! Amid the splattering of blood, the aura of evil above the floating jade mountain dispersed immediately, revealing the purple-clad woman at its center with an incredulous expression on her face. Wan Rong was in such a state that half of her body was covered in blood and her expression was one of shock. Half of her shoulder, along with her entire arm, had disappeared, and the bloody flesh trembled violently in the moonlight. The once stunningly beautiful woman now appeared frightening like a demon or a skeleton, devoid of her former grace and elegance. This cannot be possible. The lord of all demons under the bamboo pavilion suddenly stood up, his expression filled with shock. During the surge of evil aura just now, there was clearly no force of palm strength that flew into the evil aura formation. How did Lien Sangqing actually hurt Wan Rong? Could it be that she could really take someone's life from a distance? The expression of the lord of all demons was one of shock and anger. Outside the floating jade mountain, the woman in the red dress under the moonlight gave a cold smile and, satisfied, watched Wan Rong's angry and embarrassed display, saying. My first strike was just a warm-up, the next strike will take your life. After speaking, she took a step forward directly. With one step, radiance trembled. At the feet of Lien Sangqing, there appeared a brilliant golden light. With every step she took on the golden light, she instantly vanished from the sight of the crowd and appeared directly behind the purple-clothed Wan Rong, who stood at the center of the evil storm. From behind, she reached out and caught Wan Rong's neckline, and in an indifferent tone of voice asked, Have you recognized the footwork of this half-step to the brink of heaven the heavenly demon lord? Years ago, you disregarded my martial path, saying that it was nothing compared to your demon sutra. Have you seen the peak of this martial path now? However, I am broad-minded, unlike your petty nature. If you crawl out and knock your head in front of everyone, I will overlook the past and spare this woman's life. What do you say? You have half an hour to think about it. Lu Heng's heart skipped a beat upon hearing Lien Sangqing's indifferent tone. Demon Sutraith Heavenly Demon Lord is it really just a coincidence? Is it possible that the ancient giant who passed down the Demon Sutra to the Demon Stone was none other than the Heavenly Demon Lord? Do you have a history with this Lien Sangqing? Is there any animosity between you? Lu Heng, realizing this, almost had an impulse to swear. I randomly chose a nickname and it happens to coincide with an ancient powerhouse this is just too unlucky. No wonder this Lien Sangqing suddenly targeted him, Lu Heng. It wasn't because Lu Heng's previous behavior in escaping had angered her, but because Lu Heng had left using evil magic recorded in the Demon Sutra, and even named himself with the coincidentally fitting name the Heavenly Demon Lord. Watching the Lord of All Demons' hesitant expression, Lu Heng couldn't help feeling helpless. 
Alas it seems this matter cannot be resolved peacefully, sighed Lu Heng. The lord of all demons was slightly surprised and asked, does the evil lord plan to take action? Lu Heng was about to speak, but suddenly felt the ground in the green hell cave tremble violently. A dazzling light suddenly rose from the distance, illuminating the entire green hell cave. At the same moment, the floating jade mountain reflected in the water mirror also underwent a change. As the cornerstone of the three realms gathering formation, the floating jade mountain shook violently, emitting a dazzling light. Rising up from the mountain and transforming into a roaring five-clawed dragon that flew into the distance, bellowing in anger under the night sky. Seeing this scene, Lian Sangqing was startled and seemed to sense something. The dragon soul appears. She looked incredulously towards the direction where the five-clawed radiant dragon disappeared, and then casually threw away the hostage in her hand as if throwing away garbage. She immediately chased after the light. Only that somewhat disdainful call echoed in the mountains. I'll remember your arrogant attitude, and will come back to demand it from you next time. After speaking, Lian Sangqing directly emitted a golden light beneath her feet, and she disappeared from Lu Hang's field of vision by stepping on a mystical body technique that approached the edge of the heavens and earth. Chapter 330 Lu Hang was completely puzzled by the sudden turn of events, as well as Lian Sangqing's peculiar reaction. The dragon soul has appeared. Lu Hang looked at the Lord of all demons in surprise and said, Lord Demon, did you hide a dragon soul in the floating jade mountain and lure Lian Sangqing away? Shaking his head, the Lord of all demons said, the light that rose from the floating jade mountain was not the dragon soul, but just a sign of its appearance. The exotic treasure that is about to emerge in the Fire Pass country is related to the dragon soul that Lian Sangqing mentioned. Once the Three Realms boundary formation is set up on the key points of the Earth's veins, it sets up a warning system as soon as the formation is complete. If the dragon soul is about to appear, the Three Realms boundary formation will sense it. Not only will there be golden lights of the five-clawed divine dragon flying out of the three key points, but also a huge brilliance will rise from the green hell cave. Under the bamboo pavilion, the lord of all demons pointed to the huge brilliance in the distant sky that illuminated the entire demon cave and said. With such a manifestation of brilliance, it seems that the appearance of the dragon soul is just a matter of these few days sigh. Speaking of this, the lord of all demons shook his head helplessly and said, although the omen of the emergence of the dragon soul caused Lian Sangqing to leave, it saved Wan Rong's life. However, Lian Sangqing is bound to participate in the struggle for the dragon soul in the future and with her skills. I fear that the entire Green Hell Cave will not be able to resist the Three Realms boundary formation that I painstakingly set up was originally intended to guide our side to find the location of the dragon soul, but I didn't expect it to serve as a trap for us. This Lian Sangqing is so difficult to deal with. I am afraid that we have no chance of obtaining the magical treasure. The Lord of All Demons shook his head with a sigh, his tone filled with disappointment. Lu Heng smiled slightly and said, the Demon Lord need not worry. Although Lian Sangqing is powerful, she is not invincible. If we work together, we will surely be able to contain her arrogance. The words of Lu Heng made the Lord of All Demons instantly overjoyed. He immediately bowed down and kneeled, lowering his head. The evil Lord is willing to lend a helping hand. The entire Green Hell Cave is grateful and willing to serve the evil Lord, obey his orders and die for him without hesitation. The Lord of All Demons spoke earnestly and was extremely excited. Seeing the demonic Lord in such a state, Xiao Juechen on the side also followed suit and knelt down, saying, we are willing to serve the evil lord as our master. In the blink of an eye, Lu Heng became the lord of all demons in the green hell cave. However, Lu Heng shook his head with a smile at this great opportunity delivered to his doorstep. He helped up the lord of all demons and said. The demonic lord need not be so polite. The appearance of the dragon soul in the world also interests me. We just need to work together and fight the enemy with a united front. The demonic lord is still in charge of this matter. I am just an outsider who joined Midway, and I am not aware of the details of the plan. How can I lead all the demons? That's why the demonic lord is still commanding all the demons. I'll just lend a hand on the side, guard against that Lian Sangqing, and won't interfere in any other affairs. 
Lu Heng gave a smile as he gave assurance and revealed his desire to slack off. It is evident that the Heavenly Demon Lord doesn't care about the leadership of the demons of the Green Hell Cave, all it wants is the Dragon Soul. In that case, the Lord of all demons didn't hesitate and said with a smile, since the evil Lord trusts me so much, it would be impolite for me to decline okay. I promise the evil Lord that on the day when the Dragon Soul appears, if the evil Lord can hold back Lien Sanqing, the Green Hell Cave will do everything in our power to seize the Dragon Soul. The Lord of all demons became impassioned and didn't mention the matter of a blood oath anymore. It is fortunate enough that the Heavenly Demon Lord is willing to help now, so he cannot possibly mention such a demanding request again. Anyway, the Heavenly Demon Lord and Lien Sangqing are at odds, and as long as these two encounter the appearance of the Dragon Soul, the Heavenly Demon Lord will surely fight against Lien Sangqing even without the need for a blood oath to urge him on. After all, even if the Heavenly Demon Lord wants to hide, that aggressive and fierce Lien Sangqing would not let him go. Therefore, the Lord of all demons didn't mention the matter of a blood oath anymore, not wanting to offend this important helper. Lu Heng smiled faintly and said, the demon lord actually forgot to consider one thing. Although Lien Sangqing is terrifying, there is still something even more frightening that needs to be guarded against in the Fire Pass country the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Does the demon lord have any countermeasures? When Lu Heng brought up this matter, the Lord of all demons laughed and said, The demon lord can rest assured about this. The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is not as aware of the appearance of the dragon soul as Lien Sanqing is, and we in the Green Hell Cave have long since made a complete plan to take away the dragon soul. On the day when the dragon soul appears in this world, we can catch the wizard of the Fire Pass country off guard and easily take the dragon soul within a quarter of an hour. Even though the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain has unparalleled swordsmanship and invincible thunder power, can he be truly clairvoyant? By the time he realizes the chaos in the world of demons, we will have already taken away the dragon soul and escaped. Therefore, the wolf god doesn't need to be feared. However terrifying he may be, it will not affect our overall plan. The lord of all demons is extremely self-confident. However, Lu Heng shook his head and said, that may not be the case. Previously, the demon lord said that the dragon soul would appear in the capital. As far as I know, the wolf god has an excellent relationship with the Fire Pass country, and is even closer to Emperor Yan and Lianshan Jing. What if the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain happens to be a guest in the capital when the dragon soul appears won't we be butting heads with him directly? Lu Heng expressed his concerns saying so. However, the lord of all demons laughed and said, I too have plans for this, so the evil lord need not worry. Although the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is invincible, but he has a son and a daughter living in this world. Nowadays, his daughter is in my green hell cave when the dragon soul appears, I will send someone to take the girl to the west and notify the wolf god to come and fetch her. Faced with news of his daughter, the wolf god cannot remain indifferent and will surely go to meet her, but he won't do it in the capital. This is a plan to lure the wolf out of the mountain. It is simple, but it will definitely work. After all, the wolf god and the fire pass country still don't know what my true plan for the green hell cave is. By pretending to be careless, we will definitely catch them off guard and successfully take away the dragon soul. The lord of all demons plan is indeed very thorough. Lu Heng nodded after hearing this and said, it is indeed a good plan but the wolf god's daughter if the demon lord trusts me, he can hand over the wolf god's daughter to me. I have an evil technique in my hand that can be used on close relatives through their bloodline. If the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain really goes to find his daughter, the moment father and daughter meet, the evil technique will be activated and they will both be sent into a different dimension, wandering in chaos. Even if the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is extraordinary and can return from a different dimension on his own, it will still take a very long time. By the time he returns, it may have been several years. Even if he knows about the dragon soul appearing in the world at that time, so much time has passed that he would have no way to trace it and would never be able to find out where we are. Lu Heng proposed a more secure plan. After the lord of all demons heard it, his eyes lit up. He said, this method, evil lord, is truly better. Come. Xiao Juechen, later on you will take Evil Lord to meet the daughter of the Wolf God. With the help of Evil Lord, 
what does the green hell cave have to fear from failing in this grand endeavor ha 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 ha. Beneath the bamboo pavilion, the lord of all demons laughed heartily, feeling very happy. Chapter, 331. The lord of all demons is feeling very good. After all, with the support of an ancient demon like the heavenly demon lord, how could his mood not be good? Although the arrival of Long Huan's reincarnation was sudden, the violent and brutal woman Lian Sangqing was also aware of this and would surely get involved in the future. However, with Lian Sangqing's sudden involvement, such haste, how could she catch up with his hundred years of careful planning? By then, when Long Huan reincarnates, as long as the heavenly demon lord can delay this woman for a while, he can easily take away the reincarnated Long Huan and live another life with his wife. Even Han Yu Mountain's wolf god Lu Heng will stay in the dimensional space for several years. There is no need to worry about the threat of the wolf god in the short term. As a result, even the subordinates who were supposed to be abandoned as unwanted children have time to move and be taken away, greatly preserving the top combat power of the Green Hell Cave. For the lord of all demons, this is as perfect as it can get. Under the bamboo pavilion, the lord of all demons gave Lu Heng a detailed explanation of his plan, and took him to the edge of the Green Hell Cave, the core of the Three Realms Array. By completely confirming the time and location of Long Huan's reincarnation through the spiritual energy of the earth veins connected by the Three Realms Array. At noon, three days later, Long Huan will reincarnate in the mountains thirty miles east of the capital of Fire Pass Country. After the Lord of All Demons confirmed the time, he bid farewell to Lu Hang and went to gather his demonic army to begin mobilizing. He didn't have time to entertain Lu Hang temporarily. Lu Hang didn't need to be entertained. He was very chivalrous and wanted to meet the daughter of the wolf god, and take her away to perform demonic arts. Xiao Juechen took charge of the introduction. Led by Xiao Juechen, Lu Hang, accompanied by Xiao Ai and Wuyo, headed eastward, leaving behind the palace group that covered hundreds of miles of mountains. They crossed the vast wilderness where monsters roamed and arrived at the end of the border of the small world, near a huge gateway to the heaven door. Xiao Juechen said, this is another pivot point of the Three Realms Array, which can also lead to the outside world. The daughter of the wolf god has been temporarily placed here. Xiao Juechen's introduction surprised Lu Heng a little. Because this place is far from the core area of the Green Hell Cave, let alone the palace group covering hundreds of miles in the center, even the demon activity area outside the palace group is more lively than here. It is also safer. The area near this gateway in front of them was somewhat desolate and deserted, and it was right near the gate. Aren't you afraid that someone will sneak in to save the daughter of the wolf god? Lu Heng said with surprise. This place is too close to the gate, and there aren't any top-notch guards here. Even a Wuzhu can come in easily and take the daughter of the wolf god out, he added. Lu Heng was very puzzled. According to his guess, he thought that Shen Wuyu would be strictly protected and confined, and would be difficult for outsiders to see. So, is this all there is in the end? Lu Heng was greatly surprised, while Xiao Juechen could only force a bitter smile as he spoke. The evil lord is not aware that the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is extremely fierce, even the demon lord doesn't dare to truly provoke it. Although they took away his daughter, they still treat her well with good food and drink every day, meeting all of her demands and never daring to show any neglect. Even her personal freedom is not restricted and she can move around as she pleases. Not to mention the vicinity of this courtyard, even if she wants to leave the Green Hell Cave and wander outside through this gate, we cannot stop her and must agree. That is precisely why we dare not let her stay in the cave, for we fear that she may see the sight of the demonic blood feast and develop disgust and resentment. And in order to appease her emotions and make her believe that we are not bad people, within a radius of fifty li from this place, no evil cultivator dares to approach, and even farther away there is a confusing array set up. Which will make them return involuntarily once approaching, to ensure that she will not inadvertently wander into the depths of the demon cave and witness the horrifying sight of demonic feeding. By using such means, we barely manage to keep the daughter of the wolf god staying willingly, without imprisoning or provoking her. Xiao Juechen's account greatly astonished Lu Heng. So, you have been pretending in front of this young girl all along. She has no idea that you are the evil cultivators of the Green Hell Cave. Lu Heng thought this matter was truly incredible and couldn't help but ask, 
since you are not restricting her freedom, what excuse did you use to let her stay, and to make her obediently remain here? Xiao Juechen cleared his throat and said, in fact, it's simple. After all, the daughter of the wolf god is still young. In the beginning, we sent people to escort her twice, saying that we would take her to see her father. But both times, shortly after leaving, they encountered demons from the Green Hell Cave in the wilderness. The people escorting her were all killed by the demons while protecting her and allowing her to escape. After these two incidents, the daughter of the wolf god no longer mentioned the need for an escort to visit her father. She said she could stay here for a while and wait for the situation in the Fire Pass country to stabilize before going to find her father. Lu Heng's expression was strange while listening to Xiao Juechen's account. The little boy, Shen Wuyo, behind Lu Heng had a twisted expression on his face and a complicated mood. It turned out that his sister, whom he had been thinking about day and night and worrying about, was actually in charge in the Green Hell Cave. Not only do they have to carefully serve these demons, they even have to put on a show to deceive their sister and make her stay. I just don't know if those escorts who were killed by the evil demons are really dead. Shen Wuyo had a strange expression and Lu Heng was greatly shocked. He said with a wry smile. To deal with just a little she-wolf, such a big show of force you all really have a lot of patience. In Xiao Juechen's hesitant gaze, Lu Heng said, but brother Xiao need not worry, I understand. Next, we must act like good people in front of this young lady no problem, it's very simple. When brother Xiao takes me to meet her later, I will definitely not expose myself as a demon, and I guarantee that she will willingly come with me, without the need for force. Lu Heng's words made Xiao Juechen awkwardly smile and say. Actually, it doesn't matter whether we act as good people or not at this point. After all, with the evil lord's intervention, we don't have to fear the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain anymore. Ha 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 that's true, Lu Heng laughed and said, but if we're going to act, we might as well go all the way. Pretending to be good people and getting her to follow us obediently is much easier than dealing with her resistance and entanglement along the way. Now tear off the mask and let her see the truth. It's really sorry for everyone who has been deceiving her during this period of time. Although Lu Hang's words were thoughtful and also took into account the face of the Green Hell Cave. However, for some reason, Xiao Juechen still felt embarrassed and even had a vague feeling of being teased and ridiculed. After all, compared to the heavenly demon lord who dared to set up evil spells to harm the wolf god, the green hell cave who dared not offend the wolf god was really losing face. Chapter, 332 Crossing through the wilderness, Lu Heng and his companions arrived at a plain covered with flowers and grass. Here, flowers and grass are fragrant, and butterflies dance elegantly. Not far away is a crystal clear small lake, and in the distance, you can see the snowy mountains and a huge gateway that seems to lead directly to the sky. If an uninformed person were to come here, they would be afraid they had arrived at a fairyland on earth. After all, there is not even a trace of evil or demonic energy here, which is unimaginable compared to the dense demonic energy inside the Green Hell Cave. From a distance, Lu Huang and his companions saw a wooden house by the lake. The wooden house has an exquisite design and is built by the lake. There is a small terrace on the lake surface at the back, and the front is covered with blooming flowers and fluttering butterflies. It is truly a beautiful and enjoyable sight. Upon seeing the wooden house, Xiao Juechen took a deep breath and formed a seal with one hand, instantly dispelling the demonic energy and erasing any demonic features. Even Lu Heng, who is extremely sensitive to demonic energy, can no longer sense any demonic energy in Xiao Juechen's body. This initially weak-looking demon has truly become just an ordinary person now. Seeing Lu Heng's great amazement, Xiao Juechen smiled proudly and said, This is the technique of concealing energy that the demon lord inherited from ancient times. It is exquisite and can conceal demonic energy that is hard for outsiders to detect. It is precisely because of the extraordinary technique of hiding our presence with our unparalleled skills that we were able to silently establish a great foundation in this demonic land of the southeast. As he spoke, Xiao Juechen looked at Lu Hang and the two demonic cultivators behind him, who were covered in evil death chi almost to the extent of having I am a bad person written on their foreheads, and said somewhat apologetically. Since the evil lord has no intention to let the wolf god's daughter know about the true situation of this place. 
Xiao Juechen didn't continue with the rest of the words. But Lu Heng understood its meaning and smiled, saying, Brother Xiao, rest assured, I know how to handle this. After speaking, Lu Heng waved his sleeves, and directly dispersed the evil death chi that was taken from the Requiem seal on the three of them. However, while dispelling the evil death chi, Lu Heng directly activated the wish power in his body that had not been used for a long time, and attached it to the three of them. In an instant, Lu Heng and the other two, who were originally covered in evil death chi, not only got rid of the death chi, but also became sacred and majestic, just like the gods and legends, high above all. Xiao Juechen was stunned to see such a huge transformation. This what kind of sorcery is this? Xiao Juechen's eyeballs almost popped out. If Lu Heng had only dispelled the evil death chi and disguised himself as an ordinary righteous cultivator, even if he had concealed it perfectly, Xiao Juechen would not have been shocked. Although the techniques of demonic cultivation, such as concealment and illusion, were powerful, they could only disguise ordinary cultivators. The divine cultivators, who follow the path of incense worship and are opposed to demonic cultivation, were impossible to be disguised. Because wish power is a special divine power that the demonic cultivators cannot simulate or imitate. But the heavenly demon lord in front of him completely shattered Xiao Juechen's cognition. Standing beside the heavenly demon lord, it not only witnessed the scene where the evil lord trio dispelled the evil death chi and revealed their wish power. But it could also feel the aura around it clearly, which was undoubtedly pure wish power. Even the instinct of wish power, which is hated and loathed by demonic cultivators, now arises uncontrollably in Xiao Juechen's mind. It's just like the real thing. Xiao Juechen's heart was incredibly shaken. The common knowledge of demonic path, passed down by the elders, shattered at this moment. The common knowledge that demonic cultivators could not possibly disguise themselves as wish-fulfilling gods, was it not actually absolute? The true top-tier demonic cultivators, at the very least this person in front of them, the heavenly demon lord, could so realistically disguise themselves as a wish-fulfilling god. Truly worthy of being a demonic giant from the ancient times, daring to look down upon the top demonic figure Lian Sanqing this demonic technique is truly beyond what normal demonic cultivators can imagine. Xiao Juechen was completely convinced. And he couldn't help but marvel at how terrifying the heavenly demon lord's various ancient demonic techniques were. No wonder he dared to provoke the formidable wolf god of Hanyu Mountain and had the confidence to use demonic techniques to harm the wolf god without fear of completely offending him. With such a multitude of ancient demonic techniques at his disposal, the evil lord certainly had the capital to be arrogant. Before, they thought that the evil lord was on the same level as the cave lord in terms of skill, but now it seems that the evil lord is much more skilled than the cave lord by a substantial margin. Xiao Juechen couldn't help but feel extremely amazed and joyous for his own good fortune. It was by pure chance that he had encountered such a top-notch sorcerer, who had helped to resolve a great disaster for the Green Hell Cave. If not for encountering and receiving the assistance of the evil lord, then speaking strictly, that woman in the red dress, Lian Sanqing, would have been an insurmountable obstacle. It seems that this time, it was heaven's will that the Green Hell Cave would receive the dragon soul, as everything went so smoothly for them. Amidst such joyous celebration, Xiao Juechen led Lu Hang and the others to the wooden cabin by the lake. In the nearby grassland, there were several human cultivators who were not under the influence of evil demons. They were responsible for guarding the little girl in the wooden cabin and obeying orders. Lu Hang also didn't sense any demonic energy from these cultivators. He didn't know whether they were using a technique to conceal their energy or if they simply were not demons to begin with. Lian Shan Jing had previously told Lu Heng that among the living, there were many righteous cultivators who, for various reasons, became minions of the Green Hell Cave and remained hidden in the Fire Pass country to gather information for the demons. Lu Heng was not surprised that these cultivators guarding the wooden cabin were probably true human cultivators, even if they were not demons. After all, traitors were difficult to completely eradicate unless it was a wizard who cultivated the path of incense and divine way. Not paying attention to these cultivators who were not under the influence of evil demons, Lu Heng followed Xiao Juechen towards the wooden cabin. Along the way, none of the cultivators they encountered dared to step forward and stop them. 
Without any obstacle, Lu Hang and his companions arrived at the wooden cabin and found the little girl who was meditating on a small observation deck by the lake. The little girl opened her eyes and looked surprised upon sensing someone approaching. Uncle Xiao, who are these people? The little girl's curious gaze shifted between Lu Hang and his two companions. Lu Hang smiled and said, My name is Huafeng, the god of the weak water river. I was once indebted to the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, and I have come to repay my debt. After Lu Hang finished speaking, the little girl suddenly stood up with excitement. You you know my dad. Lu Hang smiled slightly and said, Several years ago, when the wolf god was traveling outside the Hanyu Mountain, he gave me some guidance when he passed by the weak water river. Therefore, when I learned that the daughter of the wolf god was stranded here, I came specifically to protect the little goddess and send you back to Hanyu Mountain to reunite with your father. Lu Heng casually spun a messy lie. Although no one present had heard of weak water before, Lu Heng's powerful divine aura made his words convincing. After he spoke, Xiao Juechen couldn't help but admire him and secretly held up his thumb in praise. Truly a giant figure in the demonic path, this lie was so well woven that there was simply no loophole. Chapter 333. Huafeng Weak Water River God. Inside the wooden house, the little girl repeated Lu Heng's words in a murmuring voice, not doubting him. After all, the uncle in front of them was covered in the genuine power of incense and gods, which could not be faked. However, the little girl was still curious, where did this weak water river god come from? She looked towards Xiao Juechen beside her and curiously asked, Uncle Xiao, did you bring the river god's master here? Xiao Juechen sighed and said, The situation is chaotic now. Not long ago, the wolf god came down from the mountain to travel the world, perhaps to stop the chaos of evil demons in the Fire Pass country. He is no longer at Hanyu Mountain. Our messenger sent to Hanyu Mountain didn't see the wolf god, so we asked some trustworthy righteous cultivators to spread the news of the wolf god's daughter, hoping to let the wolf god know your whereabouts and come find you. It's a pity that the wolf god's whereabouts are uncertain and difficult for ordinary people to know. We didn't wait for the arrival of the wolf god but instead received the arrival of the river god Huafong. He once received guidance from the wolf god and met the wolf god not long ago, knowing his whereabouts. Therefore, he came to us and wanted to send you home. Xiao Juechen continued to extend the life spun by Lu Hang, and both sides cooperated seamlessly. After listening, Wu Yu was very grateful and bowed down slowly, saying, Thank you Uncle Xiao, thank you to the river god master. Hey hey hey! Can't do that, can't do that! Xiao Juechen quickly reached out to stop her, not daring to let this little she-wolf bow down for real. The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is a highly respected and elevated being. Although his daughter, the little she-wolf, has a low cultivation, her station may not necessarily be low. I may not be able to withstand this little she-wolf's bowing down. After finally stopping the excited and joyful little she-wolf, Xiao Juechen wiped the sweat from his heart. Then he said, in that case, River God Hua will take you away from here and go find your father later. River God Hua is guided by the wolf god and has extremely high cultivation levels, much stronger than the rest of us. Even with the current chaos of devil demons, there are few evil demons in the Fire Pass country that dare to provoke him. So, Miss Wuyu, it will be very safe for you to travel with River God Hua. Xiao Juechen's words made the little girl even more grateful. She said, Thank you uncles for taking care of me. Wuyu will never forget your kindness forever. Oh no, no need to be so polite, Wuyu. In the wooden house, after some false politeness, the little girl went to pack her luggage and prepare to leave with Lu Hang. Later, under Xiao Juechen's guidance, they left the wooden house and headed towards the distant, huge heaven door. Soon, they passed through the heaven door and arrived in a secluded valley. Here, is another support point of the Green Hell Cave's Three Realms Array, which is located in the northern territory of the Fire Pass country. It is surrounded by perilous mountains and desolate wild spirits, and is located thousands of miles away from the floating Jade Mountain. It does indeed look like a scene of a catastrophic event where everything is withering away and evil forces are dancing wildly. 
But Lu Hung was aware that the desolation of the northern border was not caused by the demons in the Green Hell Cave even before the demons ravaged the area, the Fire Pass country's northern territory was already in such a state. The reason is related to the Yoshiong country to the north of the Fire Pass country. Yoshiong. To tell the truth, Lu Hung has always paid special attention to this country's name. After all, with a name like Yoshiong, there may be a connection to the Yellow Emperor Xianyuan Huangdi. However, with the current chaos in the Fire Pass country, Lu Hang simply doesn't have time to pay attention to what the Yoshion country is like farther north. Nowadays, in the secluded valley where they are located, it seems desolate and empty, but in fact, it hides many evil demons within it. It's just because of the appearance of Shen Wuyu that those demons cautiously hid themselves and didn't dare to show up. So now, this huge demon cavern is desolate and empty. Outside the secluded valley, Xiao Juechen bid farewell to Lu Hang and his team. The little girl was full of reluctance and gratitude towards Uncle Xiao, who had taken care of her, and said goodbye with fondness all the way. Xiao Juechen sighed and bowed to Lu Hang, saying, I'll have to rely on the river god for the rest of the way. Lu Hang smiled slightly and said, It is only natural. Brother Xiao, please put your mind at ease. I will definitely escort the daughter of the wolf god to see you again another day. Goodbye. Outside the valley where evil demons lurked, Lu Hang bid farewell to Xiao Juechen. It really looks like the separation of righteous cultivators. However, both Xiao Juechen and Lu Hang knew what the other meant, they would meet again in three days in the capital of the Fire Pass country. By then, the dragon soul will appear and the demon horde will descend the mountain. After leaving the valley, Lu Hang headed south with Xiao Ai and sibling Shen Wuyo. The gang wind blew around the four of them. As soon as they left the valley, Shen Wuyo, the little boy who was already unable to contain his excitement, spoke up. Sister. He grabbed Wuyu and happily asked, Can you see who I am? The little boy's face was full of excitement and Lu Hang smiled, dispelling the illusion on the boy. This allowed Wuyu to see the true appearance of the boy in front of him. The little girl, who had furrowed her brow slightly due to Shen Wuyo's sudden behavior, instantly widened her eyes and looked unbelieving as soon as she saw her brother's face. Wuyo Wuyo. How could it be you? The little boy laughed happily and said, Not only me, but also daddy and sister Xiao Ai. Amid the little boy's happy laughter, the illusion around Lu Hang and Xiao Ai dissipated and their true appearance was revealed. Seeing this scene, the little girl's eyes couldn't help but widen. This what's going on? The little girl suddenly realized that the situation seemed somewhat different from what she had expected. Despite her incredulous expression, the little boy talked incessantly to her about everything that happened to him after they parted. And as the little boy continued to speak, the little girl who was beginning to understand the truth, stared at him with ever-widening eyes. In the end, it had turned into an unbelievable shock. Uncle Xiao and the others are demons. This matter completely overturned the little girl's cognition. The fleeing light travels rapidly in the sky. Neither Lu Hang nor Xiao Ai said anything, but the little boy talked incessantly. He had been through so many twists and turns on the journey that he couldn't help but want to share it with his sister. Now that he finally saw his sister and his mood calmed down, he wanted to tell her all the things he had been longing to say all at once. When Lu Hang and his companions approached the capital of Fire Pass Country, the little boy's story was finally finished. The little girl Shen Wuyu looked at Lu Hang with hesitation and panic on her face, and nervously asked, You are you my father? Looking at her hopeful eyes, Lu Hang smiled and said, Indeed, I am Lu Hang, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. The little girl immediately took two steps forward with excitement, her hands clasped tightly to her chest, Daddy. The little girl said excitedly, I finally see you, Daddy. Lu Hang, however, let out a slight sigh and said, First, follow me down to rest. We will talk about this matter later. As Lu Hang sighed, they landed outside the capital of the Fire Pass country. On the broad and flat driveway, the wizards in the distance had already seen the escaping light coming from afar and stopped to wait for them. As Lu Hang landed, the wizards immediately recognized his identity and began to salute him one after another. The Wolf God Chapter 334 Outside the capital, 
several wizards came to greet and respectfully bowed. And further inside the city walls, the wizards heard the commotion from this side and immediately became excited. The little girl beside Lu Heng couldn't help but widen her eyes, watching the scene with shock, and the doubts about Lu Heng's identity in her heart were completely dispelled. So many wizards bowing to father this simply cannot be achieved by devilish disguises. Father is truly as legendary, majestic and commanding respect from all. The little girl's eyes were full of admiration. Lu Heng then said to the wizards who came to greet him, Is the lord currently in the capital? I have an urgent matter to discuss with her, please inform her. As the wizards greeted and led Lu Heng into the capital, they said, The lord is not currently in the capital, but if the wolf god has urgent matters, they can rest in the ceremonial hall and we will immediately inform the lord to return. Within three hours, the wolf god will be able to see the lord. Among the wizards of the Fire Pass country, there is a certain kind of long-distance communication technique. This is the reason why Lian Shan Jing, as the ruler of a country, is able to wander around freely. Although it may seem like she is aimlessly running around, in actuality she is well informed about various affairs, big and small, within the country. Many times, she even personally partakes in them. Lu Heng was not surprised by this and nodded, saying, then I'll trouble you all to inform her. This matter is of great importance, and I hope the Lord can come back as soon as possible. Lu Heng's expression was slightly solemn, which made the wizards even more cautious. Who dares to underestimate a matter that is so highly valued by the wolf god? However, before the Lord's arrival, they must be careful to entertain the wolf god and not neglect him in any way. Soon, escorted by the wizards, Lu Heng and his team passed through the city gates of the capital and boarded a flying boat, heading towards the floating islands in the sky. The capital of the Fire Pass country, known as Yanjing, is a massive city that covers a vast area. It was the largest city Lu Heng had seen since coming to this world. According to Yanshan Jing, there are a total of 15 million living beings in Yanjing, and there are 17 floating islands of different sizes. Standing on the floating boat, Lu Heng looked around and saw buildings and bustling crowds under the sky. Above the city, there were seventeen gigantic floating islands of different distances, silently standing in the void. In the sunlight, the houses and roofs on the floating islands were magnificent, and the spiritual beasts roared. Waterfalls were hanging in the air, falling into the vast lakes below. The scattered water droplets formed a rainbow hanging in the air. Although flying for cultivators is prohibited within the capital city, birds are not included in this category. Between the floating islands, numerous rare birds were flying back and forth, and even demon cultivators in bird form were swiftly flapping their wings in the air and heading towards a faraway direction. Of course, there are also land creatures like Lu Heng, who travel up and down on public flying facilities while standing on the floating boat. Demon cultivators humans, and many weird and strange non-human races the scene within Yanjing was too much for Lu Heng to take in all at once. It was even more bustling than the South Sea Mermaid Convention. After all, the Mermaid Convention was only open to the top cultivators, and it was always relatively deserted. It was not like Yanjing City, where ordinary mortal people without cultivation could share a floating boat with top cultivators. These scenes could not be portrayed even by the magical blockbuster movies from my previous life. After all, the scale of the scene was too large, and the resulting production expenses would undoubtedly exceed the budget. Only in this truly fantastical world, can one witness such astonishing scenes. Looking at this enormous city before him, Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh, thinking of what Lian Shan Jing had said before. The population of living beings in Yanjing City is 15 million, while in the Fire Pass country. The total number of registered living beings under the jurisdiction of the Fire God Temple in the various cities is 370 million if we include the nomads who are not under the jurisdiction of those cities, the number of people will be even higher. If the Green Hell Cave remains, the lives of these living beings will be threatened. I won't hide it from the Wolf God, as the Lord of the Fire Pass country, I have tremendous pressure. The nonchalant, seemingly lazy lord with red hair has been carrying such immense pressure on her shoulders all the time. Just listening to her talk about the numbers, Lu Heng didn't have much of a feeling. Now that Lu Heng has personally witnessed the magnificent sight of 15 million people living in the city, 
he finally experienced the pressure behind that number firsthand. If the demons are allowed to ravage and indulge the rampant evil demons of the Green Hell Cave, the living beings of the entire city and the vast architectural complex spreading to the distant land will all turn into ashes in three days. The plan of the demons in the Green Hell Cave must not succeed under any circumstance. Upon the floating boat, Lu Hang's gaze turned slightly cold. The fact that the lord of all demons considered him as a life-saving straw, a last resort, was the greatest disaster caused by these demons. The heavenly demon lord will not come in three days. What's coming is Lu Hang from Hanyu Mountain. The floating boat continued to fly over the city, at a speed that approached the limits of fast. However, due to the power of the formation, one didn't feel the strong and frigid winds, and the distance of several tens of kilometers was quickly traversed. Their floating boat, belonging to Lu Hang and his companions, docked in front of the tallest and largest of the suspended islands, where a pier extending into the void was already awaiting them, with wizards there to greet them. However, the wizards knew that Lu Hang didn't like ostentations, so there was no overly grand welcoming ceremony only Wu Zhu, the head of the fire god temple, and a few trusted aides came to welcome them. And standing next to Wu Zhu, the head of the fire god temple, was someone with red hair and red eyes, whose brilliant smile made it clear that she was. Lord Lian Shan. Lu Hang's expression was slightly surprised. You've come back so soon. Seeing Lu Hang's surprise, the red-haired woman giggled, revealing two sharp little tiger teeth. She said, the wolf god was mistaken, you see. I am not your lord Lian Shan. My name is Lian Shan Yu. I am the sister of your lord Lian Shan, born to the same mother as her. However, although we are not the same person, we look almost identical I have heard that the wolf god is still unmarried. I wonder if I might catch the wolf god's magic eyes and become his partner. The bold words spoken with a laugh by Lian Shan Yu suddenly caused the faces of the wizards present to turn pale. Lady Yu, what nonsense are you talking about? Apologize to the wolf god right away. The wizards became nervous in an instant. Lu Hang looked at the red-haired woman in front of him, who was exactly identical to Lian Shan Jing, and was truly unable to tell them apart. These two sisters not only look identical and have the same figure, but their breaths are also almost the same. This Lian Shan Jing actually has a twin sister. Why hasn't she mentioned it before? Moreover, it seems that she is even more unreliable than the careless and lazy Lian Shan Jing. Facing the nervous looks from the wizards, Lu Heng smiled and said, I am sorry, Lady Yu, but I have two tagalongs with me haven't you noticed? Lu Heng smiled and pointed to the siblings Shen Wuyu and Shen Wuyo by his side. To this, Lian Shan Yu giggled and said, It's alright, I don't mind being a stepmother. As long as I can cohabit with the wolf god, let alone two children, even if twenty more come, I can accept them. Chapter 335 Lian Shan Yu's expression was playful, yet her eyes were inexplicably serious. Seeing this scene, Lu Heng's heart couldn't help but skip a beat what's going on. What's going on with this sister of Lian Shan Jing? She doesn't seem to be joking, but rather serious. But this is their first meeting, isn't it? Lu Heng's expression was strange as he said, Lord Yu's kindness is too much for me to bear I suggest Lord Yu find someone more suitable for this honor. As Lu Heng finished speaking and before Lian Shan Yu could say anything, she was hurriedly dragged away by the wizards around her. The fire priest Wu Zhu said with an embarrassed expression, Lord Yu has always been mischievous, the wolf god, please don't laugh at us. Lu Heng laughed and said, no worries, no worries. Occasionally joking around is beneficial for one's physical and mental health. Led by the fire priest Wu Zhu, Lu Heng's group entered a secluded side hall to wait for Lian Shan Jing's arrival. Meanwhile the fire priest had a pleasant conversation with Lu Heng, discussing various aspects of life in Yanjing city and recent events. Xiao Ai stood by on the side and refused to take a seat, despite everyone else sitting down. She was to stand by Lu Heng's side. Shen Wuyo and his elder sister Wuyu, who had been separated for a long time, were reunited in a strange place. Despite their excitement, they forced themselves to restrain their emotions. Moreover, they couldn't even interject due to the elders talking beside them. This made the siblings, who had countless things to say to each other, very uncomfortable and on edge. 
Seeing the situation, Lu Heng suggested that the siblings should go out for a walk alone and catch up with each other after their long separation. In the side hall, Lu Heng chatted with the Wuzhu with a smile, while his divine sense occasionally paid attention to the sibling sitting in the courtyard outside, chatting happily. At one point, Lu Heng heard the young boy say to his sister. Sis, there's something I want to tell you. The little boy said, a few days ago, I went back home with dad and found that our house has been abandoned for many years. My mother had mentioned the rampage of the water god of Pang River, which was an old story that happened more than 300 years ago. Lu Heng didn't listen to the conversation that followed. But upon hearing these two sentences, a faint sigh escaped his heart. It was both a sigh for the wit of Shen Wuyo and for the cruel reality that the siblings had to face. If Lu Heng's speculation is correct, then the demon that targets him should also make a move on the day of the appearance of the dragon soul. After all, on the day of the dragon soul's appearance, demons will run rampant. And Lu Heng will need to deal with many demons from the Green Hell Cave it would be most appropriate for the enemy to take advantage of the situation and make a move then. Even if the other party can restrain themselves from making a move, Lu Heng can also pretend to be injured, weak, and reveal a flaw. That demon, who has been plotting against Lu Heng, will not be able to restrain themselves from seeing him getting injured during the Dragon Soul competition. So, these adopted children who met by chance, probably only have a few days together. In the side hall, the conversation between Lu Heng and the fire priest Wu Zhu continues. Two hours passed by quickly. Lu Heng, who was in the middle of a conversation, suddenly had a flash of inspiration and looked up towards the distance. In the sky far away, a blazing beam of light suddenly flashed and tore through the air. It was like a rainbow piercing through the sun. The residents of the Yenjing city all saw this scene and were shocked with widened eyes. Very few people are able to show off their use of lightness skills and fly in the Yenjing city. Soon, a figure landed outside the palace. Lianshan Jing rushed inside and said. Where is the wolf god? After entering the palace, she immediately looked towards Lu Heng and said with a smile, The wolf god is here, how can we not offer the best wine? Quickly bring the finest wine here for the wolf god to enjoy. Lianshan Jing opened her mouth to drink, but Lu Heng quickly reached out and stopped her, saying, The lord is too busy to drink right now, there are still important matters to discuss. As for the wine, there is no rush, we can drink it another day. Lianshan Jing nodded and said, All right then, when we have free time in the future, we'll go to Hanyu Mountain to drink with the wolf god the wolf god cannot refuse. Lu Heng nodded with a smile and said, If the lord comes, Lu Heng will welcome you with utmost hospitality. When Lianshan Jing saw Lu Heng agree, her eyes lit up and she quickly said, The wolf god has agreed, we have noted it down, and we cannot go back on our word. No going back on our word, the lord should take a seat, Lu Heng calmed the wine-loving lady lord and said, the green hell cave is now in imminent danger, so let's prioritize dealing with the demons in the green hell cave. With that said, Lu Heng didn't beat around the bush and waved his hand to set up a formation to prevent any spying from outside. Then, he, along with Lianshan Jing and the Wuzhu, explained the real plan for dealing with the green hell cave including the identity of the Lord of all demons, the time when the dragon soul will appear in the world, and the plan to attack the city by the Green Hell Cave three days later. As Lu Heng spoke, one by one, the words he said were shocking and alarming, making Lianshan Jing's expression increasingly solemn. Even Lianshan Jing, who has always had a lazy personality, can't laugh now. What Lu Heng revealed is an extremely terrifying evil plan. If the Lord of all demons actually carries it out, countless people in Yanjing city will surely be killed or injured. After listening, Lianshan Jing remained silent for a long time. After a while, Lianshan Jing said slowly, If this was not said by the wolf god, but by someone else even if it was my father who said it, I would think he was talking nonsense. The awakening of the dragon Suli didn't expect such a precious treasure to be hidden within my fire pass country. No wonder the outlaws can rampage in many parts of the world, while the lord of all demons doesn't go there and chooses to come to my fire pass country to confront us. So there was such a great temptation of interest. And there is that ancient woman named Lian Sangqing. Lian Shanjing looked at Lu Heng and said, according to the wolf god, 
who is stronger between us and Lien Tsangqing. Umwo Lu Heng hesitated for a moment and said, I have never seen the Lord take action, but Lien Tsangqing's body movement is strange, and her palm technique is devilish. Even the top innate cultivators would suffer if caught off guard against her. Lian Shan Jing nodded and said, I understand. Strength is secondary. Her unpredictable body movement and palm technique that is hard to defend against are the most troublesome things. If there is no way to deal with her strange palm technique and body movement, no matter how high one's cultivation is, they will end up being defeated like the wife of the lord of all demons. Lian Shan Jing said, Let's leave this person aside for now and first discuss how to deal with the rampage of the demons in the green hell cave the wolf god, wait a moment. I will immediately notify the fire god temples Wuzhu and wizards to come and discuss. Lian Shan Jing didn't bother with the location and directly used the special contact of the wizards to call for the top wizards from the fire god temple to come to this place and discuss important matters. Soon, figures came from all over the fire god temple, some even hurried over from the flame capital on floating boats, all gathering towards the side hall where Lu Heng and the others were located. However, in order to prevent the spies in the city from noticing any abnormalities, the actions of the wizards were very low-key and cautious, avoiding drawing attention to themselves. After all, the matter is of great importance, and this time we cannot allow the demon's plan to succeed. Chapter 336 In the side hall, Lu Heng explained in detail the Green Hell Cave Demon's plan to the many wizards who had hurried over, and he answered everyone's questions from time to time. In order to collaborate with Lu Heng without having to form a blood contract, the Lord of All Demons revealed all of his plans. Now, however, Lu Heng has informed the wizards of the Fire Pass country about it. In the remote Grand Hall, the wizards' discussion lasted until late at night. Shen Wuyu and Wuyo, who had a low cultivation level, had already had dinner and fallen asleep with the company of Xiao Ai, according to the arrangements of the wizards. Later in the middle of the night, the cold moonlight silently fell on the huge floating island. At the top of the Grand Red God Temple, on the crown of the huge fire god statue, burns a blazing flame. Watching the shining flame from afar, Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh in his heart. This true flame has existed since the establishment of the Fire Pass country. Although countless years have passed, it has never been extinguished. It is said that this is the fire god's pupil. The fire god can overlook this world through this blazing flame. Before, I only heard people talk about it. Now, it's the first time I've truly experienced it myself. Although very far away, Lu Heng could feel the subtle presence within the true flame, vast like a mountain and scorching like the sun, indicating it was not an ordinary existence. Even the current Lu Heng couldn't help but furrow his brows, feeling a great pressure. This true flame perhaps the rumors about it are true. The slight presence remaining within this true flame is certainly not an ordinary existence. Perhaps, it could even be above the innate level. In the small courtyard, Lu Heng stood with his hands behind his back, quietly gazing at the distant giant statue of the fire god. At a certain moment, footsteps sounded behind him, someone was approaching. After turning his head, he smiled and said, Is Lord not in there having a discussion? In the cool moonlight, the woman who appeared before Lu Heng was Lian Shan Jing, with red hair, red eyes, a slender and shapely figure, and the title of Lord. The discussions inside the side hall continued, but they had little to do with Lu Heng anymore. After all, Lu Heng was only responsible for introducing the situation. The specific measures to deal with it were the concern of the wizards who would have to deal with it, and Lu Heng was neither able nor interested in interfering. Therefore, Lu Heng came out for a walk alone, but he didn't expect that Lian Shan Jing would also come out shortly after he did. Just when Lu Heng was about to make a joke and liven up the atmosphere, the red-haired woman in front of him rolled her eyes and revealed a mischievous and playful demeanor, which was in stark contrast to Lian Shan Jing's laziness. You greet my sister with a bright smile, but you treat me with seriousness and rigidity husband, treating us differently like this makes me very sad. Lian Shan you said so. Lu Heng's eyes widened slightly. Then, feeling somewhat amused and helpless, he said, Lord you, you can't just shout out like that. We just met, how can you casually call me, husband are you always this carefree? Lu Heng took a small dig at the woman. But to him surprise, Lian Shan you didn't care at all. 
Instead, she just gave a slight HMP and said, I'm not a cold-faced old maid who needs to be reserved around her husband. Why should I be restrained towards my husband? What's wrong with being a little carefree in front of him? This is called the charm of the boudoir. Lian Shan Yu looked at Lu Heng, licked her lips, and smiled, What do you think, my husband? Lu Heng shook his head and said, I have never met such a unique woman as Lord Yu before. She wants to recognize her husband the first time she meets someone to be honest, my appearance is only average, and I won't make someone live forever if consumed. So how did I attract Lord Yu? Lu Heng was very curious about this matter. Lian Shan Yu, on the other hand, widened her eyes and said, Do you need a reason to love someone? Lu Heng innocently shrugged and said, Do you really think so? Do you need it? Don't you need it? Should I never mind? They say love at first sight, do you believe that, my lord? Asked Lian Shan Yu eagerly. Lu Heng shook his head and said, I don't believe it. Lian Shan Yu sighed, feeling very discouraged, my lord is such a clueless person when it comes to romance can't he even be moved a little bit by someone like her. She's such a stunning beauty, and yet my lord is not interested I mean, if a man came across a charming and beautiful woman like me, wouldn't he get excited? Lu Han once again shrugged, but surprises from unknown sources are like death, which can happen at any time and make people feel frightened. I really don't know what kind of virtue or ability I possess that would make Lian Shan Yu want to marry me at our first meeting. Lian Shan Yu said helplessly, didn't we already discuss this? Love at first sight means falling in love with someone at the first sight without any other reason but if my lord doesn't believe it, then there's nothing more I can do. Mm how about this? My lord, why not give me a chance to prove that I truly fell in love with you? What do you say? Lian Shan Yu looked hopefully at Lu Heng. Lu Heng was slightly curious and smiled, how does Lord Lian Shan plan to prove it? Lian Shan Yu giggled and said, from today onwards, let me accompany my lord and stay with him day and night, for eternity. I'll bear children for him and serve him for the rest of my life, as a practical demonstration of my love for him would my lord agree to this? Lu Heng shook his head and said, I don't think that's necessary. I also think it's unnecessary. The sudden third voice caught the attention of Lu Heng and Lian Shan Yu. Both of them looked over at the same time, only to see that Lian Shan Jing had already appeared in the courtyard without them noticing. She looked rather exhausted as she gazed at Lian Shan Yu and said, You reckless girl, you can goof around all you want on ordinary days. But now you dare to come and amuse the wolf god be careful, I'll throw you into the dungeon and loosen up your muscles and bones. Lian Shan Jing's threatening words made Lian Shan Yu look pained, but sister, I really like the wolf god and I want to marry him, be with him forever, and have his children. The wolf god is such a wonderful husband. I don't believe you are not moved at all. Both of us are burning with desire. Lian Shan Yu's mouth was instantly sealed by an invisible force. Lian Shan Jing gave her a conflicted look and stared at her, saying, even if I am moved, you have no right to interfere so get lost. With a wave of her hand, Lian Shan Jing disregarded sisterly love and slapped the pained Lian Shan Yu, sending her flying. The speed at which she was sent flying was so fast that it almost exceeded the speed of the usual cultivation technique. In an instant, she was several miles away. Then, Lian Shan Jing couldn't help but sigh and turn to Lu Heng, saying, Little Yu is ignorant and mischievous, which must have made the wolf god laugh. Under the moonlight, Lu Heng smiled politely and said, The Lord overpraises me. Lord Yu's innocence and carefree nature is something to be envied. After speaking, Lu Heng shifted the topic and inquired about the outcome of the discussion that took place in the side hall. As for what Lian Shan Yu said earlier, it seemed that both of them had forgotten about it. No one brought it up again. However, when Lu Heng bid farewell to Lian Shan Jing and took Xiao Ai to the lodging that was arranged by the wizards, the little girl's expression became somewhat gloomy. Very unhappy. Chapter 337 After being slapped away by Lian Shan Jing, Lian Shan Yu didn't know how far she had been slapped. She couldn't see the figure of Lian Shan Jing returning to Yanjing city for the rest of the night. Of course, it's also possible that she came back but instead of returning to the floating island, she went to the cities below. But this has nothing to do with Lu Heng, and he doesn't care either. 
For him, this mischievous and beautiful woman who keeps saying she wants to marry him is simply a trouble. Everywhere Lu Hain went in the past, everyone regarded him as an ancient monster and either revered him or feared him. Although Lu Hain has always been approachable and humble, people's respect for him is real. No one has ever dared to love like Lian Shanyu, who declares her love at the first meeting and loves so much even as a joke, it's too much. It's so absurd that it's to the point where Lu Hang finds it difficult to handle. If it's not a joke that's even more troublesome. Lu Hang is now somewhat afraid to meet Lian Shan Jing's sister, Lian Shan Yu, who has a hot figure, beautiful face, delicate skin, and exudes a strong female charm from inside out. After all, he is not very interested in her. This is not to say that Lu Hang doesn't like women. In terms of personal preferences, fiery mature women like Lian Shan Yu happen to be the type that Lu Hang likes. However, a good appearance is only for appreciation, not for marrying. Moreover, every time Lian Shan Yu causes trouble, his companion Xiao Ai adds to Lu Hang's pressure. Lu Hang thinks it would be better if Lian Shan Yu doesn't appear again. Therefore, the next morning Lu Hang met with Lian Shan Jing and after discussing how to deal with the Lord of all demons and other evil demons when the dragon soul appears in two days, he said goodbye. After leaving the towering floating island and descending on a float boat to the city below, Lian Shan Jing found a sufficiently concealed residence for her to prevent Lian Shan Yu from coming to find her. In the following days, the fire god temple wizards didn't appear to have made any major personnel arrangements, as if nothing had happened. The entire Yanjing city was calm. However, in secret, the numerous traps set against the evil demons were being intensively deployed, aiming to complete them before the arrival of the evil demons. However, in order to prevent any spies or creatures in Yanjing city from catching wind of this, everything was carried out in utmost secrecy. Among the living beings, there exist righteous cultivators who don't cultivate demonic power but serve the evil demons due to various reasons. These are the type of people that Lu Hang and his group need to guard against the most. Only by maintaining a peaceful appearance outside and ensuring the fire god temple remains unaware of anything, can the lord of all demons and his group come as per the original plan. In the secluded courtyard, Lu Hang instructed Xiao Ai to take Shen Wuyo and his sister out for a stroll. For the two siblings who had grown up in the mountains and never been to the outside world, the bustle and prosperity of Yanjing city were greatly attractive, and they had long wanted to go out for a walk. Nowadays, Lu Hang simply used some tricks to conceal the true appearance of the two siblings, so that outsiders could not recognize them, and then had Xiao Ai accompany them to go out and play. Meanwhile, Lu Hang sat alone in a quiet courtyard, silently setting up a black and white chess game. However, both Lu Hang's chess pieces and board were somewhat special. The chess board was formed by the condensation and visualization of spiritual energy, hovering in the void, and as the radiance trembled, faintly revealing the distant landscape of mountains and rivers. The black and white chess pieces were also formed by the condensation of spiritual energy, and every time they were placed, the radiance on the chessboard would tremble violently. It took Lu Hang a full three hours to set up the chess game, and yet he had only made a few moves. Meanwhile, there was already a knocking at the courtyard door. A thin and gaunt ascetic in a coarse linen robe perfunctorily knocked on the door, and then entered without waiting for permission. He asked, Is there any alms food for me here? This old ascetic cultivator is hungry. Lu Hang looked up from the chessboard and gave the old wandering monk a glare, saying, Isn't the whole point of asceticism to not accept alms from others? You old fellow are not devout. Jiu Mia laughed and sat down directly on the other end of the chessboard, saying, the old ascetic cultivator is very particular about his food. He can't easily digest ordinary food and requires wolf meat that is over a thousand years old. If you can't provide that, don't mention whether the old ascetic cultivator is devout or not. Saying this, Jiomia glanced at the chessboard and probably seeing the game situation clearly, he also reached out his hand and flicked it slightly in the air. A black piece appeared out of nowhere in his hand. Then, Jiu Mia placed the black piece on the chessboard and said, Your turn, my friend hm. Jiu Mia's body suddenly trembled after the move, and he finally realized that something was amiss. He immediately lowered his head and looked at the chessboard in front of him, as well as the faintly visible mountains, rivers, and the sun and the moon on it, staring dumbfounded. 
there's a problem with your chess game. Lu Heng laughed and said, I've been waiting for my friend to make this crucial move ha ha ha. Laughing, Lu Heng's black piece trembled slightly in his hand, and it directly transformed into a white piece as pure as jade, which he then placed on the chessboard. Pa! At the moment the white piece fell, a crisp sound echoed continuously in the small courtyard. The mountains, rivers, sun, and moon on the spiritual chessboard were fully revealed. The veins that represent the earth's spiritual energy were emerging and trembling, one by one. The small chessboard seemed like a real world, revealing an ancient and vast atmosphere. At the moment when the chessboard was fully revealed after Lu Heng placed his final white piece, both he and Zhou Mie trembled all over, as if all their energy had been completely depleted, and they suddenly weakened. Jiu Mia fell softly on the grass and murmured, a friend who does harm a friend who does harm. After this move, it will take at least two days to recover. Jiu Mia stared at Lu Heng and said, you cunning old devil, you set me up. Lu Heng also slumped on the long bench, laughing brilliantly and saying, as soon as you entered, my dear friend, you took the initiative to make a move. And I couldn't stop you besides, after the formation of the, heaven and earth go game, it can ensure the safety of one side. The creatures who escaped the demon's attack on the city two days later, thanks to the formation of the chess game, owe their lives to the compassion of my friend. Even if I had explained the situation, I believe that with the kind heart of my old friend, he would still have made this move. Lu Heng smiled and gave a high praise. Jiu Mie, who was slumped on the grass with head barely raised, glared at Lu Heng with annoyance after hearing his words and said, I can barely have enough food to eat and has been hungry all year round. Where do I have the compassion? Just look at me, do I look like a merciful person to you, my friend? Lu Heng smiled and nodded repeatedly, saying, in Lu Heng's eyes, my friend Zhou Mie is not only the most talented cultivator in the world, but also the most compassionate and kind-hearted person. He is truly the most unique and remarkable freak in the world, worthy of great admiration. While Lu Heng praised him repeatedly, Zhou Mie sighed heavily and said, Why do your compliments make me feel so uncomfortable, even though you are saying only good things? Uh, Lu Heng thought for a moment and said, Perhaps that's called being ambiguous and contradictory. Chapter 338 In the courtyard, both Lu Heng and Zhou Mie appeared exhausted and powerless. But when they met again and saw that each other was safe, they both breathed a sigh of relief. When they last parted, Lu Heng had to go to the Green Hell Cave to infiltrate the demons and gather intelligence, while Zhou Mie had to search for the mysterious woman Lian Sanqing and try to deal with the ancient demon there. None of them were dangerous incidents that could be taken lightly. Especially after Lu Heng witnessed the terror of Lian Sanqing, he had been worried about Zhou Mie. So, after leaving the Green Hell Cave, Lu Heng used the pre-agreed method to summon Zhou Mie back and asked him to temporarily give up on finding Lian Sangqing. However, Lu Heng didn't expect Zhou Mie to arrive in Yanjing City so late. After a while, the two who had regained some strength finally sat up straight. Zhou Mie also got up from the ground and sat back in his original position. Lu Heng asked, Why did my good friend come so late? Did something unexpected happen on the way? Jiu Mia sighed and said, it wasn't exactly unexpected, but during the process of searching for the woman in red, I accidentally stumbled upon a group of people who had willingly fallen into depravity. It took some extra time to clean up the chase. What's happened to you, my friend? You set up such a mysterious and strange formation, and then urgently summoned me back is it possible that the demon in the green hell cave is about to attack Yanjing city? Jiu Mie made a conjecture based on the situation of the game. Lu Heng nodded and said, as my friend said, the demon in the green hell cave is going to attack Yanjing city. As he spoke, Lu Heng took the opportunity to detail his experiences on his journey to the floating jade mountain, including Lian Sangqing's strange martial arts and the lord of all demons evil plan, to Jiu Mie. Jiu Mie was stunned to hear this and said, is the woman so terrifying? Can she take lives from a distance? Even my friend couldn't defend against her. Fortunately, the old ascetic cultivator didn't find her, or he would have died on the spot, wouldn't he? Lu Heng laughed and said, Don't worry, my friend. Although Lian Sangqing's palm technique is tricky, there is a way to crack it. In two days, at the appearance of the dragon soul, this woman will still need you to deal with her. 
you can't let others show off and take away your own glory. Lu Heng's words widened Zhou Mie's eyes, and he said, in two days. I'll deal with this Lian Sangjing. My friend, are you trying to make me die faster? Lu Heng laughed and said, it's okay. If my friend dies, I won't live alone either. In two days, when the demons gather and the dragon soul appears, the lord of all demons' plan will be obstructed and he won't be able to leave so easily. It will definitely be a protracted battle. Once a protracted battle occurs, dragon soul will definitely attract all the fiends and demons in the fire pass country, including the demon shadow that our friend encountered before. That guy set a trap using two children as bait to harm me. He can't pretend to be dead forever. Now that the dragon soul has appeared, he definitely can't resist attacking me. Although I don't know what means he has prepared, it must be powerful. So, compared to my friend, actually my probability of dying is even greater. Lu Heng's words were quite self-pitying. But Chiu Mie sneered and didn't buy into Lu Heng's words. If my friend didn't have a plan, with your cautious and calculating personality, always waiting to make your move, how could you sit here with me and chat peacefully? You must be busy going out to find someone to help us. Sitting steadily on top is clearly a well-planned move, waiting for the demon shadow to come and seek its own death. There is no danger. Jiu Mia said, but if you want me to deal with Lian Sangjing, you have to treat me to the most popular restaurant in Yanjing City. The Tianwei Tower has a great reputation, but sadly it is too expensive. Old ascetic cultivators, such as myself, can only watch and dare not even enter the door. After Jiu Mie finished speaking, he saw Lu Heng looking worried and couldn't help but doubtfully ask, don't tell me you can't even afford to eat at Tianwei Tower, my friend. Lu Heng spread his hands and said helplessly, I am a poor man with nothing to offer I can't afford to eat at Tianwei Tower, but what about the noodle stand at the end of the street? When I passed by just now, I sniffed and thought it smelled very good. The taste should be great. After Lu Heng finished speaking, Jiu Mie gave him a fierce glare and said, I came from a long way to help you, and you want to treat me to a roadside stand do you have no conscience? No. It has to be Tianwei Tower. Without a meal at Tianwei Tower, this matter cannot be resolved. Jiu Mie kept shouting non-stop. So Lu Heng could only sigh helplessly and take out his only purse, weighing it as he said. This was given to me by Xiao Ai before she left oh well let's go friend, we're going to eat at Tianwei Tower. Lu Heng said generously, even if Xiao Ai came back today, we cannot skimp on this money. Jiu Mia looked at him suspiciously and said, is this really enough to eat at Tianwei Tower? Full of confidence, Lu Heng said, this is all of Hanyu Mountain's wealth. Xiao Ai said it would be enough for a family of five to eat and drink for three years. Even if we can't have a sumptuous meal at Tianwei Tower, we will at least be able to have one or two dishes. Holding the wallet, Lu Heng took the lead and walked towards the door. A wolf and a monk walked through the street and soon arrived at the hottest and finest restaurant in Yanjing City. However, as soon as they entered the door, they heard from afar that the shopkeeper was checking out for a table of customers. Upon hearing the price, Jiu Mie's forehead suddenly twitched and he looked at Lu Heng. Lu Heng lowered his head and weighed the amount of money in his sleeve, then turned around on the spot. Let's just go eat at a food stall on the roadside. As soon as Lu Heng finished speaking, a piercing scream suddenly came from the depths of Tianwei Tower, where the sound of silk and bamboo was floating. Then a figure flew out and collided with Lu Heng, who was standing by the door. Upon seeing this scene, Lu Heng furrowed his eyebrows slightly and calmly avoided the flying figure. Meanwhile, in the direction where the figure was flying, a rather large conflict had broken out. Amidst the outbreak of spiritual energy, there was a familiar voice to Lu Heng's ear, coldly rebuking. You treacherous and heartless wretch, unworthy of living in this world. Immediately thereafter, a series of screams as well as angry and frightened shouting ensued. How dare you commit murder in the city of Yanjing? How dare you commit murder in the city of Yanjing? Upon hearing the sound, Jiu Mie couldn't help but turn to glance at Lu Heng, raising an eyebrow slightly. Do you know him? Lu Heng sighed and said, that person who spoke first was Gu Yin, whose master's physical body was taken by force. 
At the entrance, Lu Hang and Jiu Mie's figures faded at the same time and instantly disappeared from the perception of ordinary people. They stood at the doorway, simultaneously looking at the scene inside the Tian Wei Tower. Jiu Mie furrowed his brows and said. He's ruthless with his actions and seems to have some intentions of eliminating evil completely. We just don't know who he's conflicting with and who he really is coming to Tian Wei Tower to eat, it's clear that he has some connections and knowledge. Chapter, 339 Inside Tian Wei Tower, the once elegant and luxurious elegant room is now in a chaotic mess. Dressed in a musician's long robe, Gu Yin's eyes scan the people in the room coldly, blocking the only way out. The several young men who were blocked in the private room by him were all fearful and angry. The leader angrily shouted, I am Lin Yimo, the son of the patriarch of the Lin family in Yanjing city. Who are you, a vicious person who dares to act recklessly in Yanjing? Lin Yimo's expression was angry, but he was secretly afraid. He attempted to use the reputation of his family to scare off the person in front of him. Although the Lin family was not among the top clans in Yanjing city, they still had enough influence. The family's name could have an effect in many situations. However, this time, Gu Yin, who was threatened by him, remained expressionless and said. What does the Lin family matter? You, a heartless and cruel person like you, I'm killing you for the sake of justice. Obviously, the Lin family's reputation was not enough to scare off the person in front of them. Realizing this, Lin Yimo's expression became somewhat panicked. He looked at the man in front of him and the situation around him, and shouted, This is Yanjing City. It's in front of the fire god temple. It's where all the wizards gather. How dare you commit violence and hurt people here? Besides, we had no grievances in the past and no enmity recently. Why do you have the right to come and kill me? Lin Yimo shouted angrily. Gu Yin, with a cold expression and icy gaze, looked at the young masters in front of him and said, Do you happen to know the singer Yen Er from the Luoming Lake? You deceived and tempted Yen Er with your playboy ways and sweet speeches, then cruelly abandoned her, causing chaos from beginning to end. Now that Yen Er has committed suicide by drowning, as the mastermind behind this tragedy, you should pay for your actions with your own life. Gu Yin's cold and curt shout instantly stirred up excitement among the spectators both inside and outside the Tian Wei Tower. People looked towards the several young masters who were stuck inside the elegant chamber, shouting out loud. A faithless person like him doesn't deserve to live. Lu Hang and Jiu Mie stood among the crowd, although their figures were translucent and unknown to outsiders, they could still clearly hear the conversation inside the house. Jiu Mie exclaimed and said, I see, Gu Yin is here for revenge. At this time, the Fire Pass country, although governed by wizards and with many laws and regulations, had always been lax in dealing with revenge and private fights. If someone like Lin Yimo, who started and abandoned relationships with women, was sought out by the woman's family to be killed in revenge, the wizards would not punish the killer as long as the situation was true. In the folk, there is often a commendable attitude towards the revenge of blood relatives. Therefore, after Gu Yin explained the situation, the crowd at Tian Wei Tower was immediately aroused, denouncing and criticizing the several young masters inside the elegant room. Seeing such a situation, the young man known as Lin Yimo's face turned pale, but he still angrily shouted. So you are a friend of that bitches. I did have sexual relations with her, and I even promised to marry her. But this woman has a malicious heart, is jealous and biased. I haven't even married her yet, and she was already making trouble by asking me to divorce my wife and become her main wife. My legal wife and I have been childhood sweethearts for more than ten years. We have a son and two daughters together. She is also very filial to my parents and praised by everyone. Why should I make way for her, a newcomer? Just because I didn't want to divorce my wife, this bitch Yan Er caused trouble several times, making me look bad and being punished thrice by the elders of the clan. Why can't I kick her? Now she has jumped into the lake to commit suicide, purely deserved it. She deserved to die. Lin Yimo became more and more excited as he spoke. He angrily scolded Gu Yin, since you are her friend, you should know the karma. You are crying for her and seeking revenge on her behalf. 
have you ever thought about why things have come to this point now? This bitch ruined my future, causing me to be punished and criticized by the clan. I have been condemned by everyone in the family. Do I have to support her, marry her and let her make trouble every day? Lin Yimo's shouting made the onlookers quiet down for a moment. Gu Yin, who was the first to be hit, was not affected. He looked at the young master in front of him coldly and said, even if Yen Er has made mistakes, it is not enough for you to hide your family's situation, lure her into having sexual relations with you, and then abandon her afterwards. You deceived Yen Er about your family situation and lured her, saying that you would marry her as your legal wife if it weren't for your sweet words, she would not have come to this point today. Gu Yin's expression is frosty. On the other hand, Lin Yimo cursed out loudly, it's true that I didn't mention the main wife in my family at first, but I didn't abandon her halfway through. I actually made preparations to marry her as my legal wife. She brought all of this upon herself by being a seductive woman now that she has nothing left, is she going to blame me for it? Inside the Tian Wei Tower, there is a constant noise of quarrels. After hearing the whole process, Jiu Mia shook his head and said, it's a complete mess it's really hard to examine this matter and it's unclear who is right or wrong. After finishing, Jiu Mia turned to Lu Heng and said, what do you think, my friend? Lu Heng smiled and said, I think we are the ones who are wrong. We shouldn't have appeared here let's go, there's no way we can eat at Tian Wei Tower. The Fire God Temple's wizard is already on his way here because of the high-profile nature of this incident. In order to avoid trouble, let's just go and find a roadside stall. It will be more interesting than staying here and watching the monkeys. Saying so, Lu Heng straightforwardly left the place. While following along, Jiu Mia laughed and said, My friend, should we say hello to that Guin? At the very least, we are old acquaintances. As an elder, don't you think it's time for you to show your face? Lu Heng shrugged and said, getting involved in this trivial matter will only increase our troubles. Let's leave it to the wizards to handle. Moreover, we promise to retrieve the physical body of Gu Yin's master. Now that we have come back empty-handed, how can we show our faces? It would be better to leave silently and pretend that we haven't seen anything, he said, referring to Gu Yin. Lu Heng smiled and said, My friend, we can wait until you subdue the ancient female warrior Lian Sanqing and retrieve Gu Yin's master's physical body. Only then can we show up and look for Gu Yin. This way, we can make an entrance as esteemed elders. Lu Heng's words made Jiu Mia widen his eyes and say, When did I promise Gu Yin to retrieve his master's physical body? Isn't it the first time that I have seen him today? Lu Heng laughed and said, You, me, and our friend Candle Dragon stand together through thick and thin. His matters are my matters. I believe our friend would not simply sit back and watch if it were the other way around. So when I agreed to this Gu Yin, it also means that the three of us have agreed to it. Unfortunately, Candle Dragon is nowhere to be found in the Fire Pass country. Otherwise, we could have invited him to join us. With his help, there would be a greater chance of the dragon's soul manifestation in two days. Lu Heng had a bright smile on his face and spoke in a friendly tone. Jiu Mie was dumbfounded and greatly shocked. My friend, you really are. Shaking his head in silence, Jiu Mie jokingly said, Old Wolf Lu, you have no heart. With a chuckle, Lu Heng arched his hand and said, You flatter me, you flatter me. Chapter 340 Inside the Tian Wei Tower, the noise never stops. The dispute between Gu Yin and Lin Yimo, the young master of the Lin family, is still ongoing, but Lu Hang and Jiu Mie have already left the Tian Wei Tower and have no intention of getting involved in this matter. The streets are crowded with people bustling to and fro, yet Lu Hang and Jiu Mie, without uttering a single word, tacitly head in the same direction. Blending into the crowd, their figures disappeared completely, concealing their presence from outsiders. Ahead of them, a figure in the crowd appeared and vanished intermittently, constantly moving away. This figure, also leaving the Tian Wei Tower, had an eerie demeanor and an unusual aura, moving in an elusive manner. Without the need to communicate, Lu Hang and Jiu Mie tacitly followed him from behind. While teasing and joking with each other, they remained trailing this person. For Lu Hang and Jiu Mie, the person in front of them was a real surprise and the main reason for leaving the Tian Wei Tower. 
They never thought they would be lucky enough to come across something like this while just coming out to witness the spectacle. However, following along the way, Lu Hang and his group crossed streets, alleyways, and crowded crowds, walking through the heart of Yanjing city for half an hour. Towards the end, Zhou Mie had a headache and spoke up. Why does this thing keep moving around could it have noticed us? Lu Hang looked towards the figure ahead and shook his head. He said, it's impossible that it noticed us. It's probably just its habitual sense of vigilance. If this thing hides among the wizards within Yanjing city, and doesn't maintain a low profile, it's likely that its whereabouts have already been discovered by the wizards. During their conversation, the figure swiftly passed through two secluded and dark alleys with hurried steps. Lu Hang and Jiu Mie followed closely behind, even in the dimly lit and deserted alleys. The figure ahead remained unaware of Lu Hang and Jiu Mie's presence trailing behind. Finally, after taking these strange and winding routes, the figure arrived at the end of a closed alleyway. Up ahead was a high wall, turning this place into a dead end. However, without hesitating in front of the high wall, the figure walked straight towards it and disappeared in an instant. Lu Hang and Jiu Mie looked at each other and walked towards the high wall together, arriving at its front. However, what appeared in front of them was just a normal high wall. They couldn't feel any spiritual aura or sense any momentum of a formation. Even with their cultivation, neither of them could see through how to enter beyond this high wall. Both of them simultaneously put down their hands, looked at each other, and were at a loss. Jiu Mie asked, why does the Green Hell Cave have so many strange and peculiar techniques? With a sigh, Lu Heng said, the Lord of all demons inherited the ancient demonic cultivation legacy, which contains many miraculous and evil techniques. It's normal that we can't see through it. A wolf and a monk stood in front of the high wall, sighing at the sight of it. Jiu Mie suggested, perhaps we can try to forcefully break through this place. If we strike with our palms, we can see if we can destroy the evil here and reveal the presence of the demons. However, Lu Hang shook his head and said, there is no need for that. As he gazed upon the enormous high wall before him, Lu Hang remarked, now that the dragon soul is about to emerge, with the lord of all demons dispatching his troops, more and more demons and evildoers will appear in Yanjing city. We can destroy one of their strongholds, but not all of them. Striking now would only startle the snake and be counterproductive. Instead, before Lu Hang could even finish his sentence, a strange figure appeared from the nearby alleyway. The figure was also heading towards this place, obviously intending to enter through the high wall as well. Lu Hang and Jiu Mie stood on either side of the alleyway like two door gods. In the end, to the surprise of both Lu Hang and Jiu Mie, the ordinary-looking demon walked straight into the high wall without noticing them observing him. And once again disappeared from the sight of the two. However, this time, the two who witnessed the demon entering the wall up close found something even stranger. Jiu Mie frowned and said, this demon's aura, it's very strange. It's definitely not the evil demon of the Green Hell Cave. Jiu Mie looked at Lu Hang, seeking his opinion. Lu Hang sighed as well, saying, Indeed. This isn't a demon from the Green Hell Cave it seems that the lively atmosphere within Yanjing City isn't just limited to demons from the Green Hell Cave even the group of demons from beyond are unwilling to remain idle. Since they didn't plan on using violent means to break the stronghold, Lu Hang and Jiu Mie didn't linger any longer and left directly. As they walked, they talked. The situation is chaotic. When the dragon soul appears in two days, it's likely that more demons will be attracted than expected are you worried, my friend? After all, it seems that there are top-notch demonic giants among them, who are precisely targeting you, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Haha <laughs> my friend is too modest. Old monk Jiu Mie, who stands at the pinnacle of immortals and is unparalleled in the world, is someone no one dares to ignore. How about we find our friend Candle Dragon to join us in this effort since the three of us face the same challenges and share victories and defeats in life, how can we leave out our good friend Candle Dragon in such an important matter? I also want to it's just that time is running out what a pity, what a pity. Yes, what a pity what a pity. Inside the flame capital city, a monk and a wolf walked among the crowd, sighing with the same regret. It's a pity that Candle Dragon's whereabouts are too elusive, making it impossible to recruit him as a soldier. 
but they had not been lamenting for long before they heard another piece of news. Demons attacked and caused harm in the Tianwei Tower. The son of the Lin family, Lin Yimo, and the foreign musician Gu Yin were both seriously injured. Several city patrol wizards also died tragically. The sudden news that spread caused Lu Hang and the other person to furrow their brows slightly as they returned to the crowd. Jiu Mia looked towards the direction of the Tianwei Tower, his expression stunned. Demons attacked in public? Could it be that the Tianwei Tower from earlier still had a demon hiding? It was able to conceal itself from you and me? Lu Hang's expression also became serious. Daring to cause harm in public within Yanjing City, able to kill the city patrol wizards and get away unscathed it seems that Yanjing City has been infiltrated more severely than imagined. Could it be that the news of the Dragon Soul's reappearance has already been leaked? Otherwise, why have these foreign demons come here? Lu Hang couldn't quite understand. Jiu Mie spoke up, it seems that the storm is brewing and the wind is rising the situation in Yanjing City has become so strange, yet it appears calm on the surface. If we cannot figure out the movements of these demons or their purpose for gathering here before the reappearance of the Dragon Soul, which is imminently approaching, the Dragon Soul's reappearance in two days will likely be a hard-fought battle. Even Jiu Mie's brow furrowed at the possibility of such a gathering of demonic forces and the potential disappearance of righteousness while the demonic forces prospered. After all, among the foreign demons currently gathered within the Fire Pass country, there are some powerful and prominent figures in the demonic path that cannot be ignored. If all of these top-tier demons were to gather together, it would certainly be a huge disaster. If only he and Lu Heng were present, it would be difficult for them to handle the situation alone. Chapter, 341 On that night, the air was as cool as water and the stars filled the sky. As night fell, the city of Yanjing gradually became quiet. Although many places of fireworks and pleasure were still brightly lit, by such a late hour, most of the people in the city had already entered into a deep slumber. Lu Hang and Jiu Mie sat on the rooftop, with a chessboard made of condensed spirituality suspended between them. The monk and the wolf occasionally dropped a piece, but their gazes never left the massive city under the night sky. They remained silent, lost in contemplation. They had already gone to see Gu Yin who was attacked by the demon, but there was nothing particularly noteworthy found. We can only confirm that the demon also came from outside the territory and was not a fiend under the Green Hell Cave's jurisdiction. This situation left Lu Heng puzzled. Now that the dragon soul is about to appear, it's understandable that the demons of the Green Hell Cave are gathering towards Yanjing City. But why are these foreign demons also joining in the fun? They shouldn't know about the dragon soul's return, right? The most likely possibility is that there is something else in Yanjing City that has attracted the arrival of these demons. Or we can let the heavenly demon lord reappear in the world and go talk to the demons to see what's going on. At a certain moment, Lu Heng, who was holding the white jade piece, suddenly broke the silence under the eaves and spoke up. The old monk gave him a sideways glance and said, Be careful that the news hasn't been leaked yet and Lian Sangqing has been lured here that woman knows about the dragon soul, maybe she's already in Yanjing city now. If you make too big of a move and bring her over here remember that you promised Gu Yin to help him regain his master's complete mortal body. Jiu Mia intentionally emphasized the word, complete, with a heavier tone of voice. Lu Heng sighed helplessly after listening and said, then let's continue playing chess. After speaking, Lu Heng's white piece landed on the chessboard. It could be seen that as his white piece fell on the spiritual pattern chessboard, strands of earth spirit aura scattered around. The game of chess played by Lu Heng and Jiu Mia is not an ordinary one, but rather an ancient divine skill that Lu Heng learned from the book Divine Skill. Heaven and Earth Go Game Using mountains, rivers, and waterways as the layout of the chessboard, earth veins and spiritual aura as the paths. And supplemented by the purest true chi of advanced cultivation, it can be transformed into an unparalleled magic formation, protecting one side. Previously, Lu Heng set up a great heaven and earth formation using the terrain near Flame Capital City as the chessboard, in order to suppress the demonic aura during the attack of demons and monsters on the city. However, now that he realizes the precarious situation within the city, he has to set up another chessboard and protect the many living beings inside Flame Capital City. 
At the very least, he could protect more living beings from dying during the chaotic dance of demons. However, such a chessboard caused great mental exhaustion to Lu Hun and Jiu Mia. The monk and the wolf both lowered their heads, not even bothering to speak a word, looking exhausted. Just occasionally making a move. Time keeps passing by incessantly. The pitch black night becomes even deeper. The enormous Yenjing city gradually quieted down. Even the fireworks places where people sought amusement and enjoyment have gradually quieted down in the late night. In the courtyard below, Shen Wuyo and his sister Wuyu are fast asleep in the house, snoring incessantly. Today, Xiao Ai took the siblings for a stroll in the city, but the bustling scene of Yanjing City was overwhelming for these two who had just come out of the deep mountains. The two siblings were both extremely excited and played until they were exhausted. After coming back, they went straight to bed and fell asleep instantly. Xiao Ai stood under the tree, closed her eyes and meditated silently, patiently waiting for the wolf god who was playing chess on the eaves without saying a word. Above the sky, a huge floating island slowly drifted up and down, and even in the deep darkness one could clearly see the glow of the sacred fire inside the fire god temple. On the rooftop, the game between Lu Hang and Jiu Mia had come to a critical moment. However, at this moment, the two of them had dispelled their previous laziness and their expressions became solemn. Each move was made with a slight tension as they stared at the spiritual chessboard, closely observing the veins of the spiritual energy on it. This edition of the Heaven and Earth Go game was designed based on the entire city of Yanjing and a prior notice was given to the Fire God Temple. Therefore, theoretically, it should not have been possible for anyone to obstruct the game. As the game between Lu Hang and his opponent continued and their formation developed, a certain huge obstruction began to emerge. Each move made by Lu Hang and his opponent was even more difficult than the previous one. Even though both of them had strong cultivation, they were still slightly alarmed. There is definitely something wrong underground in the city of Yanjing. Under the moonlight, a monk and a wolf on the eaves faced each other with solemn expressions. If it weren't for the fact that this heaven and earth go game was being played with Yanjing city as its blueprint, this matter might not have been detected. However, the unfolding of the heaven and earth go game has completely touched that strange thing, sparking it to emerge. Perhaps this thing is the source of attracting numerous evil demons. Lu Hang and Jiu Mia looked at each other and understood each other's thoughts. Jiu Mia, who played with the black pieces, looked at the chessboard with a faint golden light. He looked at the patterns on the chessboard that represent the spiritual energy of Yanjing City's veins, as well as the arrangement and situation of the game, and shook his head slowly. As the game comes to a close and only three final pieces wait to be placed, this game of heaven and earth go will come to fruition. But Jiu Mie shook his head in resignation and didn't play any more moves. In the moonlight, Lu Hang looked at Jiu Mie's solemn expression and understood the meaning of his good friend. If this game were to be forcibly played out, it would thoroughly stimulate the thing that lies beneath the earth, and that thing would inevitably appear prematurely. Through the game, both Lu Hang and Jiu Mie could vaguely feel that the thing beneath Yanjing City was a divine object of the same level as the soon to be presented Dragon Soul. With the current situation of Yanjing City being filled with demonic creatures, once the divine object appears, there will inevitably be rivers of blood. Jiu Mie, playing as black, slowly lowered his hand and dispersed the black piece filled with spiritual energy in his hand. Looking at Jiu Mie's surrender, Lu Hen couldn't help but let out a long sigh and also scattered the white piece in his hand. As the two of them scattered the pieces in their hands, the spiritual chessboard suspended in front of them also vanished, representing the silent dissipation of the veins of spiritual energy in Yanjing City into the void. Under the cover of the night, a light breeze stirred within Yanjing City, accompanied by surging spiritual energy. However, most of the people who were sleeping in their dreams didn't notice the fluctuation of this spiritual energy, and merely turned over slightly in their sleep. And even the cultivators who could sense the dispersion of this spiritual energy could never imagine the marvelous magical techniques that this dissipated spiritual energy represented. The moonlight was cold and silent. Lu Hang stood up and said, Shall we go take a look underground? Jiu Mie put his palms together and said, That is precisely what I had in mind. After you, my friend. Please do. 
the two people whose game was blocked didn't refuse. At the same time as they spoke, they took a step forward and fell into the courtyard below. They silently blended into the soil of the courtyard. Xiao Ai frowned slightly upon seeing this scene. Lu Hang's last words left her feeling a little uneasy. Summon the heavenly thunder sword and keep watch in all directions. The wolf god's command caused a slight shock in Xiao Ai's heart. Does this mean the wolf god has discovered something requiring the use of the heavenly thunder sword? While pondering in her mind, Xiao Ai pointed her sword to the sky with her right hand. In an instant, a green light flew out from behind her and hovered directly above the courtyard. The dim long sword was concealed in the night sky, held high above the heavens, ready to be unsheathed at any moment. And beneath the sword scabbard, Yanjing city was deathly silent. Chapter 342 The Wolf God Has Drawn His Sword Surprised exclamations escaped from the lips of Lianshan Jing. She immediately jumped up from the edge of the steps. Lianshan Jing, at present, was sitting at the very edge of the floating island, with a sheer drop thousands of feet below her feet. The Fire God Temple has already been notified of the Wolf God's plan to set up a formation in the city tonight, and has been asked to make it convenient for the Wolf God. After all, the spiritual energy of the Earth's veins in Yanjing City is something that wizards are constantly paying attention to. If Lu Heng didn't give prior notice and tampered with the Earth's veins, it would inevitably cause unnecessary misunderstandings. Therefore, Lianshan Jing knew the Wolf God's plan in advance. After temporarily resolving the matter at hand, she came to this place with excellent visibility to observe the Wolf God's formation. However, just as the formation of the Wolf God on the roof was about to take shape, it suddenly stopped halfway. Moreover, after dispersing the formation, the Wolf God and the old monk Jiu Mie got up at the same time and fled underground. They even summoned the Heavenly Thunder Sword to be vigilant in all directions. Even though she didn't know what had happened, Lianshan Jing was aware that something big had occurred. Through the soul connection of the wizards, she immediately notified the most capable subordinates to come. Soon, Wu Zhu Gong Shu Jia and Wu Zhu Yan Rong of Thousand Needle City, as well as her sister Lian Shan Yu, came to her side one after another. Lord, has something happened? Gong Shu Jia and Yan Rong bowed at the same time and asked. Lian Shan Jing pointed directly to the secluded small courtyard below and said, The wolf god has taken out his sword. Lian Shan Jing's words made all three of them slightly surprised. Although the suspended island is more than 10,000 feet above ground, overlooking the earth from such a high altitude makes even the courtyard seem only the size of a grain of rice. But all three present were top-notch cultivators with excellent eyesight, and at a glance, they saw the dark green ancient sword hanging in the night sky. Even the most unrestrained Lian Shan Yu was shocked at this moment and said, why would he take out his sword for no reason? Could it be that a top-notch demon has infiltrated Yan Jing City? Lian Shan Jing said, that's the reason why I called all of you here, to investigate this matter. As she spoke, Lian Shan Jing transformed into a beam of light and flew directly towards the courtyard below. Behind her, Gong Shu Jia, Yan Rong, and Lian Shan Yu followed closely. Soon, the four of them landed outside the secluded small courtyard, standing beneath the dark green ancient sword. Looking at the dark green ancient sword high above their heads, even though the sword was not unsheathed and there was no visible intention to kill. Once they thought of the various legends of this sword, the four people present couldn't help but feel heavy-hearted. Lian Shan Jing spoke to those behind the door, Lian Shan Jing requests an audience with the wolf god. Soon, the distant gate was pushed open, and a young girl with a cold expression walked out and bowed to the four people outside the door. She said, the wolf god has retreated underground. The lord may enter for a moment and inquire about the situation when the wolf god returns. Xiao Ai, knowing the purpose of the four people's visit, directly recounted the events that had just occurred to them. In the courtyard, the four people looked up at the dark green ancient sword floating in the night sky, scanning the quiet night in all directions, all a little perplexed. There was no appearance of demons, no attacks by evil creatures and yet the wolf god voluntarily dissipated the formation and even retreated underground. Could something have happened underground? As Lian Shan Jing spoke, she once again used the power of the Lord to sense this vast land. However, 
Just like when she sensed it on the suspended island, the spiritual energy of the earth veins beneath her feet was calm and orderly, and there was no abnormality beneath the ground. Nothing had happened at all. But the wolf god must have a reason for his actions, Lianshan Jing frowned and said. I'll go down first and take a look. You all stay outside and keep watch over Miss Xiao Ai and the surrounding area. Since the wolf god had to summon the heavenly thunder sword before retreating underground, it meant that there must be danger outside. After leaving three top wizards behind, Lianshan Jing directly retreated underground and followed the breath of the wolf god. The earth quickly retreated beside her. Her method of burrowing underground was not a spell, but relying on the power of the Lord. It was extremely fast, much faster than ordinary escape techniques. Soon, she caught up with the breath of Lu Hang and Jiu Mie, and arrived at the deep underground, at least tens of thousands of Zhang away from the surface. The earth's spiritual energy here is incredibly rich and strong. However, the spiritual energy of the cultivators will be greatly suppressed here. Moreover, the deeper one goes underground, the greater the suppression, and ordinary cultivators cannot sneak in so deeply through escape techniques. However, Lianshan Jing still moves freely in the soil with ease, relying on her superior cultivation and the power of the Lord. However, despite diving so deep, she still couldn't catch up with the figures of Lu Hang and Jiu Mie. The person and the wolf that disappeared into the ground, except for a faint residual aura, could not be caught up with all the way. It seems that they are no longer in this world. Lianshan Jing, who was rapidly fleeing in the ground, suddenly stopped. Her expression was slightly strange. The wolf god and grandmaster Jiu Mie are nowhere to be seen, only their residual aura can be detected could it be that they have really entered a different dimension. Was there a small world unknown to outsiders hidden beneath the Yanjing city? Lianshan Jing found it incomprehensible. If there really was a small world hidden beneath the Yanjing city, no matter how deeply it was concealed, it could not escape the perception of her and the fire god. Meanwhile, in a world of molten lava burning with raging flames, Lu Hang and Jiu Mie stood shoulder to shoulder by a huge magma lake. Under their feet was an incessantly surging deep red magma. In the air, the scorching high temperature could instantly roast any living thing. Even Jiu Mie, who had cultivated to the realm of innate, now felt an incredible heat and could not disregard the eerie high temperature of this place. Following behind Lu Hang and following a subtle clue caught by the unfolding of the heaven and earth go game, the two of them ventured into such a bizarre underground world of molten lava. However, there was nothing else in this world except for surging magma and scorching high temperatures, desolate and empty. However, Lu Hang and Jiu Mie both knew that this place was definitely not as simple as it looked on the surface. Leaving aside other things, just take the magma in front of them for example, it was enough to make both Lu Hang and Jiu Mie sense a hint of danger. You should know that common high temperature magma is not to be feared by cultivators who have even just opened the heaven's door. However, the magma here seemed to be able to harm them. Jiu Mie frowned and said, Is there a master here? Why not reveal themselves? The words of Jiu Mie echoed continuously in the empty world of magma, arousing countless echoes. However, his call seemed to have really worked. Suddenly, the center of the magma lake started to boil and a huge demon stone steel slowly emerged from within the magma. Jiu Mie slowly read out the words on it. Zhu Rong, the god of fire, was killed here hm. Jiu Mie, who had just finished reading, was surprised to see Lu Hang's face change. Jiu Mie asked in surprise, Do you know this god of fire, Zhu Rong? Lu Hang gazed at the slowly rising demon stone steel with a strange expression on his face. Zhu Rong, the god of fire. He recalled the forest of demon subduing steels. If he didn't remember wrongly, there should be a tombstone of Zhu Rong's in the demon subduing steel forest as well. But now, a tomb of Zhu Rong appeared here again. This could it be that there was more than one Zhu Rong in the ancient times? Chapter 343 In the hot and scorching world of molten lava, the ancient and blurry words on the demon stone steel could still be partially read with divine thoughts. However, the content of the text above was somewhat incomprehensible to Lu Hang. The fire god Zhu Rong. He slowly explained to Jiu Mie, in ancient times, there was a powerful god named Zhu Rong, also known as the fire god, 
who was as famous as the water god Gong Gong. But I've seen Zhu Rong's tomb before, it's located in a cemetery of demon stones within the Mandala Flower Sea, at the center of the immortal kingdom. Lu Heng's words made Jiu Mia slightly frowned and said, could it be the difference between a tomb for burial clothes and a tomb for physical remains? The monk and the wolf both looked at the demon stone steel that was slowly rising from the magma. The majestic and terrifying demon stone steel, towering a hundred feet high, faintly emanated a terrible breath of suppression, exactly the same as the one Lu Heng had seen in the demon stone steel forest. It is not a fake. Jiu Mia extended his hand and sent out a palm strike, directly towards the magma lake below. This palm strike could destroy mountains, but when the palm force fell on the magma lake, it could not shake this strange magma. It didn't even stir a ripple. The seemingly surging magma lake was actually firmly suppressed by some invisible force, making it impossible to be shaken by any external force. After seeing this scene, Lu Hang and Jiu Mia looked at each other and acted at the same time. Boom! With an ear-piercing thunderous sound, the blazing white heavenly thunder flew out from Lu Heng's sleeve and struck directly towards the magma lake below. Meanwhile, Jiu Mia threw out his cane. The seemingly ordinary wooden cane now showed an incredibly powerful momentum, instantly expanding thousands of times, and fiercely smashing down like a supporting pillar that props up the sky towards the magma lake below. This time, both of them didn't hold back and almost used all their strength in their moves. However, despite the falling heavenly thunder and the smashing giant cane, they were still unable to break the invisible suppressing force above the magma lake and caused no harm to the magma at all. However, due to the enormous impact force, the violent hot wind raged and whistled within the world of magma, causing the earth to shake wildly. At the shore of the magma lake, Lu Hang and Jiu Mia stopped at the same time and didn't continue to test each other's strength. They had already realized that this magma lake could not be disturbed by external forces, as the enormous demon stone steel had completely suppressed this place. With such a grand battle, perhaps under this demon stone steel lies the corpse of the fire god Zhu Rong. Jiu Mia said, now the most terrifying thing is that something beneath this magma lake is about to emerge. Jiu Mia clasped his hands together and wore a look of distress, if it is really an ancient god returning to the world, the situation in Yanjing city will truly spiral out of control. Lu Heng shook his head and said, a solitary demon stone steel proves nothing. The demon subduing steel forest that I saw before, is the true land of divine suppression. The names and surnames recorded in the forest of steels are awe-inspiring, each one shaking the heavens and the earth. There is only this solitary steel here. Even if it is truly related to the fire god Zhu Rong, it may just be one of the relics left behind by the great god Zhu Rong. Lu Heng speculated as such. And in the world of roaring hot lava, every sentence spoken by Lu Heng and Jiu Mia caused the surrounding space to heat up even further. Although the demon stone steel completely suppresses the lava in this area and what lies beneath the magma lake, such suppression seems to have reached its limit. On close inspection, one can even see the intricate cracks on the surface of the demon stone steel. With each passing moment, the cracks on the stone deepen slightly, and the scorching heat of the lava world continues to rise steadily. Lu Hang and Jiu Mia both knew that what lay beneath the lake was about to surface. Whether it was the rebirth of an ancient deity or the discovery of the relics of an ancient deity, it would be a disaster for the current Yanjing city. Lu Hang was somewhat helpless, it's like bad things always happen at the worst possible time. The emergence of these divine objects is really ill-timed, and they must be forcefully suppressed. At the very least, its emergence should be postponed until after all the demons in the Green Hell Cave have been eradicated. As Lu Hang spoke, he formed seals with his hands and drew the spiritual energy of the earth from the void. In the scorching hot world of lava, Strands of dark red earth spirit energy converged towards Lu Hang's hands. With a flip of his sleeve, Lu Hang produced a small cauldron that flew out from his clothes. It was none other than the green state cauldron gifted to him by Jiu Mia earlier. Seeing Lu Hang take out the green state cauldron, Jiu Mia was somewhat surprised. My friend, do you already know how to use this cauldron? Lu Hang shrugged and said, Naturally, I don't know but the magic formation I have set up happens to require a top-quality divine object as its eye. 
Although this the green state cauldron looks simple and unadorned, it is incredibly sturdy and is indeed an ancient divine object. It's just right to be used as the formation's eye. With this, you don't need to stimulate its power to use this cauldron. As Lu Heng spoke, he directly threw the green state cauldron in his hand into the air. Only to see strands of dark red earth energy gathering towards the small cauldron in mid-air, rapidly submerging into the tiny bronze cauldron. With such scorching earth energy, ordinary magical treasures would instantly be burned and shattered. Yet amidst the countless strands of dark red spiritual energy, the small green state cauldron emitted no divine light, but calmly and steadily endured all the earth fire energy without being affected in the slightest. Even the temperature of the cauldron body didn't change in the slightest, remaining as calm and cool as gentle jade. Seeing this scene, Jiu Mia couldn't help but widen his eyes and say, this cauldron is indeed so wonderful. Lu Huang was also amazed by the divinity of the green state cauldron. Although aware of the extraordinary divinity of this cauldron, it was surprising that it could remain unaffected by such strong earth fire energy remember, the green state cauldron has not yet shown any power. It just passively endured the erosion of the earth fire energy. If the power inside this cauldron was really activated, no one knows what kind of terrifying scene it would be. Both Lu Hang and Jiu Mia were greatly amazed by the divinity of the green state cauldron. In the shadow of this molten world, there was a presence hiding in the depths, witnessing everything that happened and also seeing the small cauldron suspended in midair. He was frightened on the spot, his mind was unstable, and he almost exposed his figure. This cauldron this cauldron is one of the legendary nine cauldrons of the Yu King. The presence in the dark was stunned and looked incredulously at the white-clad wolf god on the shore of the lava lake. With the heritage obtained from the ancient ruins, it came here after facing numerous hardships, intending to secretly take away the divine object suppressed beneath the lava lake. As the divine object was about to appear and its plan was about to succeed, it suddenly attracted the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain and old monk Jiu Mia, who was proud among the immortals. If it had not seized the opportunity to escape into the shadows in time, it would have been killed by the monk and the wolf by now. Although it was confident in its strength, it dared not provoke both the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain and old monk Jiu Mia at the same time. Now it is hiding, only hoping for the monk and the wolf outside to leave, but didn't expect to witness such a terrifying thing with its own eyes. The Nine Cauldrons of the Yu King in ancient legends, the fierce and ominous nature of this object was often mentioned. The river chart emerges and the Luo book appears, as the nine cauldrons of the Yu King scattered throughout the sky. The three great evil creatures mentioned in ancient legends, once gathered in the present world, will bring about the earthly catastrophe once again. Now, the green state cauldron is in the hands of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain does this suggest that the earthly catastrophe is about to come again? Chapter 344 the existence lurking in the dark felt frightened and uneasy. The more advanced one's cultivation, the more one fears the horror of the earthly catastrophe. Once the earthly catastrophe descends, the world will revert to desolation and chaos, and all living beings will be destroyed. Even the top cultivators who can overwhelm an entire region and match the unparalleled power of the ancient gods, are often unable to escape once the earthly catastrophe arrives. During the earthly catastrophe, only those with top-notch cultivation and profound blessings can be spared from its destruction. Is it a sign of the impending earthly catastrophe that the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain holds the green state cauldron in this world? According to records from ancient relics, it has not been long since the last earthly catastrophe occurred. It is unlikely that the earthly catastrophe will happen so soon again. The existence in the dark is trembling with fear. Because it thought of another possibility. The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain used to be unknown and low-key, but in recent years his name has become well known. It is said that he is an old monster from ancient times who survived the earthly catastrophe. As soon as he appeared in this world, he was holding one of the nine cauldrons of the Yu King isn't that too much of a coincidence. According to the records in the inheritance of ancient relics, there are two types of people who can survive the earthly catastrophe. One type is the top-notch cultivators who survive by relying on secret magic, divine arts, and luck. The other type is the destroyers of the world. The river map and the Luo book, as well as the nine cauldrons of the Yu King, are all key elements in the arrival of the earthly catastrophe. 
When the catastrophe comes, in addition to the creatures that are annihilated, there are also the destroyers of the world who collaborate with tyranny. Exercise the power of disaster in accordance with the catastrophe, and kill the sentient beings. If the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain was the destroyer of the previous earthly catastrophe, who held the green state cauldron and killed the creatures and devastated the ancient spiritual objects in the ancient times, and survived by collaborating with tyranny, then it is not surprising for him to have the green state cauldron in his hands. However, this kind of destroyers, who act in such a way, have slaughtered countless creatures and are the most terrifying monsters imaginable. The title of destroyers is what makes them most fearful. Even the top evil demons who have eaten countless humans and caused havoc for thousands of years, when compared to these destroyers who have killed countless creatures, are as gentle as a lamb. And is the rumored righteous leader, who hates evil, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, actually the former destroyer? The monster who killed countless creatures? Looking from a distance at the green state cauldron floating on the magma lake, and the man in white who appeared to be ethereal and full of immortality, the hidden presence caused one to involuntarily swallow a gulp of saliva. Feeling anxious and panicky in the heart. It realized that it seemed to have accidentally uncovered a horrifying truth. People say the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain hates evil, but beneath the gentle appearance of the righteous leader lies such a terrible face if this matter were leaked, the wolf god Lu would definitely not let it go unnoticed. The hidden presence trembled both physically and mentally, feeling an unparalleled pressure. Now the most horrifying thing is that it not only broke through the true face of the wolf god Lu, but it also happened to be in the same small world as him, unable to leave. It relied solely on a secret technique to conceal and hide its figure. However, such a secret technique is not flawless. If the wolf god Lu were to look for clues in the surroundings, he would surely be able to find some traces and deduce that there is someone hidden here. It hastily covered up the traces of the scene and quickly hid away. And if those traces that were unable to be concealed carefully were to be discovered. The presence in the dark swallowed nervously. And under its gaze, Lu Hang by the lava lake had already formed a magic formation, using the terrifying green state cauldron as the core to suppress the earth's spiritual fire at this location. Trying to forcibly delay the appearance time of the divine object in this place. Regarding all of this, the hidden presence no longer had the leisure to contemplate it. Now, it only prays for the monk and the wolf in front of it to leave as soon as possible. As for the things underground, it directly doesn't want them. Once the monk and the wolf outside have left, it will immediately flee and leave Yanjing City, where ancient divine objects are buried, never to return to the terrifying fire pass country again. Although ancient divine objects are strong, life is the most important thing. Faced with the destroyer holding the green state cauldron, the hidden presence didn't have any courage to provoke or anger them. This is not the demon mentioned in the mortal world, nor the wicked person defined in secular ethics. The destroyer that caused the earthly catastrophe, killing countless creatures, was truly a ferocious and hostile entity. Merely the resentment accumulated from annihilating creatures is enough to crush and drive mad even the demon path giants in the mouths of ordinary people. However, this group of destroyers can carry on living under the weight of the countless creatures' resentment and hatred. And the wolf god Lu not only lives, but also lives so openly and honestly, appearing as a just and righteous cultivator admired by everyone this wolf god at Hanyu Mountain, even among the destroyers, is the most terrifying and menacing. Despite his pleasant smile and elegant demeanor, don't be deceived. The terrifying countenance lurking beneath his benign facade is no longer recognizable as that of a living being. It is an utterly terrifying thing. The more one thinks about the existence lurking in the dark, the more tense they become. The current state of it is one of regret and fear. If he had known that he would run into the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain here, and that this wolf god was such a terrifying creature, he would not have dared to come to the fire pass country. I had already stayed far too long. And under its incredibly frightened gaze, the wolf god in white robes, after forming an array and stabilizing the spiritual fire of this place, spoke out, Our business here is finished, let's go back first. Hearing this sentence, the lurking presence breathed a slight sigh of relief, feeling grateful for having survived the ordeal. Fortunately, fortunately the wolf god Lu seems to be busy and not able to linger here. However, as soon as Lu Heng finished talking, the ascetic monk in rough cloth robes, 
as if having discovered something, quickly walked a few meters away and found a talisman in the blazing red rocks. Hmm. There's a demonic talisman here. Under the raging, split-eyed gaze of the lurking presence, old monk Jiu Mie picked up the broken talisman from the mountain rock and said, and it was destroyed just now could it be that someone did it here before we arrived? As he spoke, Jiu Mie scanned his surroundings with his eyes. Meanwhile, Lu Huang, dressed in white robes, took the talisman and furrowed his brows slightly, it was indeed destroyed just recently. As he spoke, Lu Huang once again scanned the world of molten lava in front of him and said, it seems that there are people behind the scenes sabotaging the appearance of divine objects. Lu Hang's eyes swept around in a circle. As for the lurking presence in the shadows, its whole body stiffened when Lu Hang's indifferent gaze fell upon it. Its body and soul seemed to be frozen, and it didn't even have the slightest courage to resist. Fortunately, the gaze only briefly scanned the surrounding area and didn't detect its presence. Nevertheless, even so, the lurking presence was still frightened out of its wits, and couldn't help but burst out cursing in its heart. Almost wanting to rush out and fight old monk Jiu Mie to the death. Stop talking. You bastard. Chapter, 345 In the scorching hot world of molten lava, Lu Heng held a broken magic talisman in his hand and said, Since there is a friend in the dark, why not reveal yourself? Through the broken magic talisman, Lu Heng could vaguely feel that the demon hiding here was by no means an ordinary creature, at the very least, a top-tier demon cultivator at the level of demon lord. Demon cultivators like him have always been proud and arrogant, so it is impossible for him to ignore Lu Heng's provocation. However, after Lu Heng finished his sentence, he waited for a long time, but there was no response in the empty world of molten lava, and no figure could be seen. The demon lurking in the dark didn't show up. Seeing this scene, both Lu Hang and Jiu Mie were slightly surprised. Could it be that there really are no demons here? Ordinary magic cultivators would have already jumped out when faced with such provocation, right? Jiu Mie looked around and said, You are hiding your head and showing your tail. Are you trying to be a coward? Jiu Mie's provocation was even more excessive. Not to mention the proud and ambitious demon cultivators who always pursue a clear mind. Such provocative language even law-abiding cultivators couldn't tolerate. However, after Jiu Mie finished speaking, there was still no response in the empty world of magma, only the scorching high temperature was roasting everything in the space. Lu Heng furrowed his brow, opened his magic eyes, and scanned all around. In the empty world of magma, he didn't see any demonic figures, but upon closer observation, he also found many scattered fragments of demonic talismans by the magma lake. Indeed, someone had set up a formation and cast a spell here not long ago. Did he really leave? Both Lu Heng and Jiu Mie speculated as much. In the blazing firelight, Jiu Mie took out a palm-sized golden sword from a tattered bag and threw it straight out. Quickly. Empowered by the spell, the golden sword flew rapidly in the world of lava, seeking out the demons that might be hiding in the dark. However, after flying a circle, the golden sword flew back to Jiu Mie's hand, without finding any trace of demons. It seems that there really are no demons here. Jiu Mie said, let's go. Lu Heng nodded, and he and the wolf transformed into beams of light and disappeared into the intensely hot world of lava. And as the monk and the wolf left, this world of magma once again fell into a quiet and lifeless silence. The demon stone steel standing in the magma lake is full of cracks, but they have not continued to expand. Instead, they are temporarily suppressed in their current state. In the shadow, the demon lurking in the dark didn't appear recklessly. It almost exhausted all its strength to hide its own breath, and even because of the intense suppression of its true energy, it has even faintly heard its origin. But even so, the presence in the dark still dare not relax. A quarter of an hour, half an hour, three quarters of an hour time passed by minute by minute. After half an hour, the figures of Lu Heng and Jiu Mie appeared again in this red lava world. The two people who seemed to have left, unexpectedly returned without anyone knowing when. Standing by the magma lake, looking at this completely empty silent world, Lu Heng said, it seems that it has really left. Jiu Mie sighed and said, let's go to the city to inquire, I sensed some familiar breath on the command symbol. Saying that, 
Jiu Mia and Lu Heng left at the same time. However, this time, the demon who witnessed everything still didn't dare to be careless, and continued to hide in the shadows without showing itself. One hour, two hours, three hours soon, one night passed. On the earth, the sun is rising. The fierce sun brought up the true fire qi as it rose up in the sky, which affected the earth spirit qi underground. The demon, which had been hiding in the lava world without daring to exhale even a breath all night, now had bleeding nostrils, ears and mouth, and its face had turned blue and purple. The long-term forceful suppression of the true qi within the body has already injured its essence. It could not hold on any longer, and had to grit its teeth to get out of the shadow. The whole person collapsed on the ground like a surrender with rapid breathing. After a while, it gradually calmed down the true qi in its body, and then it dragged its injured body out of the lava world. The underground is filled with abundant and rich earth spirit qi, while the demon spits blood and flees. Although the demon wanted to directly escape from Yanjing city, there were formations set up around the city, even affecting the underground. Once a cultivator approaches the city wall using escape technique, even if they hide deeply, they will still draw attention from the wizards in the city. It could only first return to the temporary demon cave in the city and then find two trusted subordinates. With those two subordinates, it would leave using the original methods. At the moment when the demon left the underground, the sky light illuminated it. The place where it appeared was a pool of cold and dark blood water. This pool of blood water stands in the courtyard and is connected to the spiritual energy of the earth's veins, allowing it to quickly travel back and forth between the underground lava world. However, this time it doesn't plan to go back again. After standing up from the blood pool, the demon looked around and indeed saw one of its trusted subordinates, Chi Slave, kneeling beside it. The demon spoke up and said, Chi Slave, where is Blood Slave? The demon named Chi Slave is a naturally born creature of the demon world, with a pale blue body and not of human origin. She respectfully said, My lord, Blood Slave has acquired another excellent offering to replenish the blood in the pool. She left to retrieve it last night and should be back soon. The blood pool beneath the demon's feet is made by sacrificing the fresh blood of living beings that have lived for generations in Yanjing, and it possesses a special power that is connected to the natural energy of Yanjing. In addition, the blood energy of the pool dissipates constantly, requiring the occasional replenishment of fresh blood. However, the demon said, the pool doesn't need replenishing. You go clean up and when blood slave returns, we will leave Yanjing city. The demon's words made Qi slave slightly surprised. My lord she looked at the empty-handed demon, somewhat confused. Did you not retrieve the divine object underground? This question made the demon shake his head helplessly. I cannot retrieve it anymore let's go, it's not suitable to stay here for too long. After speaking, the demon didn't explain further. He walked straight through the pool, and the blood on his body automatically fell off and flew back into the pool. The demon, whose clothes were not wet, walked straight towards the house in front. This courtyard was a temporary devil lair that he set up using secret techniques learned from ancient relics. It was independent of the Yanjing city, and even top-level cultivators couldn't enter the door. But at the thought of the existence of a destroyer in Yanjing city the sight seen in the lava world made it tremble even with just a thought. If he wasn't ruthless enough and didn't hide deep enough, he might have already died last night. The demon was worried in his heart, and even walking appeared absent-minded. However, after pushing the door open, there were magic servants waiting to assist with dressing, eliminating the need for any effort on its part. The courtyard, which was entered and exited three times, was only a temporary den of devils, but it also recruited several mortals as magic servants who looked pleasing to the eye. However, these magic servants cannot be taken away now, and in order to prevent this place from being traced, these magic servants have to be eliminated when leaving. While letting the magic servants serve him by assisting with his dress, the demon was contemplating in his mind, considering the matter of leaving Yanjing city later. Chapter, 346 Boom! A loud noise suddenly sounded not far away. The magic servants inside the room were slightly startled, not knowing what had happened. Suddenly, the demon standing in the middle of the servants shook violently and spewed out a mouthful of blood. Splurt! The demon, who
who was holding his chest and almost lost his balance, looked extremely shocked. Just now, it clearly perceived that the blood slave connected to its mind was killed by someone. Moreover, it was slain with a swift and decisive move. With the strength of blood slave, even if it encountered Wuzhu from Yanjing city, it would be able to hold its own for a few moves as long as it was not Lord Lianshan. But now, it was slain with just one move, without even a hint of information being able to be transmitted. Suddenly pushing aside his panicked demon servants, the demon rushed out of the room and into the small courtyard. From a distance, it saw a monk and a wolf both stop in unison on the sky, bowing their heads to look down at the high wall of a small alley. It was quite apparent that it was this monk and wolf who had made the move to kill the blood slave. Upon seeing the wolf god Lu in his white robes, the demon's pupils suddenly contracted, and his heart and lungs almost stopped as he realized that old demon had come seeking him out. But in the next moment, the demon noticed that the monk and the wolf in the sky hadn't noticed him, but were instead continually looking down at the high wall. Obviously, the ancient secret method had taken effect. Even the cruel destroyer of all life, who had once killed countless creatures, couldn't see through the secrets of the ancient era and couldn't find the specific location of the demon lair. Realizing this, the demon's heart was slightly more at ease. After seeing Chi slave who had hurriedly arrived, it immediately waved its hand and sent out a blast of demonic energy, which swept over the several demon servants following behind Chi slave. As well as the few demon servants in the room behind the demon, all of whom were turned into blood and dissipated into the air. The demon said, the wolf god of Hanyu mountain has come knocking at our door. We must leave here immediately. The demon said to Chi slave, bring me the human skin puppet that I had previously sewn. The human skin puppet was a skillful technique of the demon. It was carefully crafted from the flesh and blood of living creatures, which not only concealed the demonic energy, but also disguised itself as an ordinary mortal. It was precisely with the carefully crafted human skin puppets that it was able to bring its two trusted subordinates into the heavily guarded Yanjing city in a completely open and honest manner. And now that it is leaving, it naturally must use the same trick again. However, this time when leaving, there will only be it and Chi Slave accompanying it. Blood Slave has been killed. Finally, it took a glance at the monk and the wolf in the distant sky, then turned its head and dared not look again. If someone else killed its blood slave, it would not give up until vengeance was taken. Even if it is the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, if it didn't know the identity of the one who destroyed the world, it would surely have sought revenge. But now it doesn't even dare to have the thought of revenge. As for the terrifying thing like the world destroyer, it only wants to stay as far away from it as possible. After putting on the puppet made of human skin handed over by Chi Slave, the demon turned into an ordinary mortal. With burly muscles and a bearded face, he looked just like a rough merchant. And after Chi Slave put on the puppet made of human skin, she turned into a man with a sharp nose and sunken cheeks, with a thin and agile build, looking like a thief with shifty eyes. Thus, the demon disguised as a mortal took Chi Slave and left the temporary demon lair. As it pushed open the door to leave, it appeared on the busy main street bustling with people. As for the demon's lair behind them, it had already been rid of evil energy and quickly dismantled, and it wouldn't be long before it dispersed on its own and returned to an ordinary courtyard. However, at that time, it is likely that the master and servant had already left the fire pass country. On the main street, the demon merged into the crowd with Chi Slave. Not far behind it, the monk and the wolf were relying on Blood Slave's corpse to try to uncover the secrets behind the high wall. Although the demon had guessed all of this, it didn't dare to turn back, not even daring to glance back. In the sky above, wizards on flying boats occasionally flew past in haste. However, not a single wizard had noticed the anomalies of the rough-looking merchant below. In the afternoon, the demon and Chi slave arrived at the city gate. The huge city wall stood as high as a hundred zhang. Meanwhile, the creatures and mortals below the city wall were made to appear small as ants in contrast. In addition to the guarding wizard at the city gate, there were also eight huge bronze sculptures of fierce lions and tigers, each towering twenty meters high on the left and right sides. Moreover, 
These eight bronze sculptures were alive, occasionally emitting red light from their eyes to scrutinize every creature passing by below, and inspecting all the living beings entering and leaving the city gate. However, the human skin puppetry technique was impeccable. Despite being a demon, it allowed Chi Slave to pass through several checkpoints, and withstand the scrutinizing gaze of the eight bronze beasts, without exposing its demonic aura. Easily passing through the city gate, they arrived outside Yanjing City. Arriving here, the demon breathed a sigh of relief, but it still didn't dare to completely let its guard down. It still wore the human skin puppetry disguise, pretending to be an ordinary human, and led Chi Slave all the way to the wilderness, just like a real merchant. The plan was to remove the human skin puppetry disguise and use magical escape once they were far enough. And so, it traveled with Chi Slave along the main road for over 10 kilometers, already far from the gates of Yanjing City. Although the main road was still bustling, with occasional villages appearing on both sides, this place was already considered secure. The demon was about to enter the forest and find a secluded place to remove its human skin disguise when it suddenly saw a figure blocking the way on the main road ahead. Moreover, the other party was sneering at it continuously. The demon's heart sank slightly. Could it have been discovered? However, the person in front of them was neither the wolf god Lu nor a wizard from the Fire Pass country. In the afternoon light, a figure stood menacingly in the way ahead on the main road, indicating trouble. The other party had a burly and robust figure, like a small mountain, yet they were wearing a scholar's robe, giving an incongruous impression. Their thick, muscular arms were covered in strange tattoos, completely at odds with the appearance of a scholar. It was this burly man, resembling a humanoid monster, who stood in the way of the demon on the road ahead. Realizing the situation was not good, the demon walked several meters away from the man and stopped. Then, like an ordinary merchant hesitating, he cupped his hands and said, Mister, are you trying to rob me by blocking the road ahead? I don't have any money left on me. As soon as the demon finished speaking, the burly man laughed heartily and said, My name is Ao Tianqing. I am not here to rob you, but to kill you. The burly man laughed heartily and raised his fists, touching them together with force. He said, You have an extraordinary temperament and a strong demeanor. Even though there isn't a hint of divine aura or Taoist charm surrounding you, you give me an immensely powerful feeling. My intuition tells me that you are a master. Ao Tianqing grinned ferociously and said, And I, Ao Tianqing, came to the Fire Pass country this time specifically to find a master. I will use the miserable defeat of you bunch of masters to tell the world that my, Ao Tianqing's proud sky secret, is the strongest in the world. On the road, the burly man who called himself Ao Tianqing burst into loud and boisterous laughter, showing off his unabashed arrogance. The demon felt a chill in his heart and cursed inwardly. Damn it! He's a lunatic. Chapter 347 The situation in front of them is simply the unluckiest condition for the demonic beings. Just as they had finally left Yanjing City, before they could even walk out of the danger zone, they were stopped by such a senseless lunatic. What is this Ao Tianqing's proud sky secret I have never even heard of such a thing. Please go away lunatic and find someone else. There are countless cultivators in Yanjing city not far away, such as the old monk Jiu Mia, who is at the pinnacle of immortality, Lu Heng, who wields thunder from the imperial order and holds half of the ancient sword. And then there is Emperor Yen of the Fire Pass country, and Lian Shan Jing so many cultivators to choose from, but you insist on provoking an ordinary person like me. Are you mentally ill or something? Normally, faced with such a provocation from Ao Tianqing, the demon would have already slapped him directly and destroyed him completely. However, in the current dangerous situation, it had to suppress its anger and still spoke kindly and politely. Sir, you are mistaken. I am very weak and have not even opened the heaven door, so how could I be considered a cultivator? If you are looking for cultivators, there are plenty in Yanjing City, all of whom are top-notch powerhouses. Each one of them has a reputation that can suppress an entire region. If you are looking for cultivators, then go find them. Why waste your time with someone like me? The demon endured the insults and kept begging for mercy. Unfortunately, Ao Tianqing in front of it was not fooled by its tricks. The brawny man in a scholar's robe snorted coldly and said, 
hesitating and making excuses, shrinking back in fear, it's sickening to watch. If you stand up straight and curse me a few times, I'll respect you as a man, and maybe even spare you. You carry unparalleled cultivation, yet you play games and hide from me. Today, I'm determined to beat you up. With a fierce glare, Ao Tianqing angrily shouted, Come at me. Either you die today, or I do. Wild true energy circulated around Ao Tianqing's body in an instant. The whistling dragon roar resonated from within him, and one could faintly see a huge dragon roaring behind him. Such a momentum was indeed extraordinary, causing a slight sinking feeling in the hearts of the evil demons. Though Ao Tianqing is crazy, his strength is so formidable damn it. Must you have a grudge against me? The evil demon secretly lamented in his heart. Now, outside Yanjing City, how dare it continue to fight with the madman? Once the evil aura is exposed, it will inevitably attract nearby wizards. If the movement is any larger, it will attract the treacherous and hypocritical wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, and then it will really be over. How could one's thousand years of cultivation be ruined here? At this thought, the evil demon couldn't help but curse loudly. You madman, are you crazy? What right do I have to fight you? Can't you see that I am busy? I kindly made a concession, but you always push for more do you think I have no temper? If you don't step back, I'll make you bleed and die without a burial place. The evil demon cursed loudly. Ao Tianqing laughed heartily and said, Good. You curse well and with pleasure. Since you are so eager for a fight, it would be impolite of me not to accompany you come on. Let's fight happily. The burly man, Ao Tianqing, gathered his true energy again and directly let out a terrifying dragon roar, and the huge dragon's howl echoed through the wilderness. Under the impact of the violent momentum, the evil demon's expression twisted. You insist on not making concessions, but getting angry at you doesn't work either are you really insane? At this moment, the evil demon also became angry. Has it ever suffered such humiliation before? Just because it swallowed its anger doesn't mean it had no temper. As he watched the wild momentum of Ao Tianqing, the evil demon no longer could bear it and directly roared in anger, tearing apart the human skin puppet on its body. In an instant, pitch black demonic energy pierced the sky, and the fierce and ominous demonic figure was revealed. My name is Refined Moon Demon Lord. Today I shall take your life. At the moment his demonic figure was revealed, refined moon demon lord immediately roared in anger, and his eight dazzling blue arms folded in front of him, each forming a different seal. Then, they both struck with a palm attack at the same time. Augustus soars to the sky. Amid refined moon demon lord's roar, eight rounds of pure and bright full moons rose directly along the track. The cold and gloomy lunar energy swept across the four corners, everything it reached, the trees froze, all things withered, and were directly transformed into ice sculptures. Within a radius of 1,000 feet, it instantly turned into a chilly world resembling ice and snow. As the first to bear the brunt, Ao Tianqing's entire body stiffened from the continuous impact of the lunar energy from the eight rounds of full moons. But the more it happened, the more excited his expression became. Ha 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 refined moon demon lord. Refined moon demon lord. Ao Tianqing exclaimed excitedly, the demonic leader of the kingdom of all demons from the north, I never expected to encounter you here in the fire pass country ha ha ha. Today, I, Ao Tianqing, will become famous, starting with you, refined moon demon lord. Not frightened by the infamous name of refined moon demon lord, Ao Tianqing instead laughed loudly as if awakening and invigorating himself for his good fortune. Seeing his insane appearance, refined moon demon lord became increasingly furious in his heart. The eight suspended, bright and clear full moons directly transformed into eight cold rays of light and flew towards Ao Tianqing in front, vowing to take him out with a single strike. Then, promptly flee from this place. However, as all eight full moons flew towards him at once, the chilly lunar true chi began to freeze everything, even the space became engulfed in the terrifyingly low temperature. Despite this, only the lower half of Ao Tianqing's body became stiff and he was not otherwise affected. He let out a loud laugh, as his true qi raged throughout his body. A massive, golden divine dragon flew out from behind him, madly dancing around him. 
Facing the eight incoming full moons, Ao Tianqing didn't shy away and went straight to meet them head on. Proud sky dragons roar. With a punch, a loud dragon's roar resounded instantly. The golden giant dragon charged directly towards the eight full moons in front of it. Terrifying shockwaves rampaged towards the surrounding mountains and fields. In an instant, several mountain peaks crumbled and exploded, causing miles of forest to turn into scorched earth. Fortunately, there were no villages near the galloping road where Ao Tianqing intercepted, and the vast aftermath didn't harm the innocent. However, the surging and billowing magic power, as well as the momentum of the two powers clashing, unavoidably caught the attention of the Yanjing city wizards. In the distant sky, dozens of figures flew towards here. Meanwhile, on the galloping road, Ao Tianqing with his half-stiff body covered in ice chips laughed out loud and said, Great! What a thrill! Come at me again! However, after the smoke and dust cleared away, what appeared in front of him was the empty wilderness of the galloping road. The refined moon demon lord, whose whole body was filled with magic power, has completely disappeared without leaving even a trace of breath. Ao Tianqing, who saw this scene, was completely stunned. Refined moon demon lord? He was a bit incredulous and shouted loudly, come out quickly. However, the refined moon demon lord, who dominated the north, really disappeared without any trace and didn't even stop for a moment. As soon as he struck one hit, he fled to the far distance. He didn't give Ao Tianqing any chance to continue bothering him. On the contrary, in the void, the flashing light continued to flicker and dozens of wizards appeared here, surrounding Ao Tianqing. The leader, Gong Shu Jia, had a cold expression and looked down at the madman below. He said. Who are you? Why did you use force outside Yanjing City? Chapter, 348 Gong Shu Jia asked, but Ao Tianqing glanced at him and said. Just a mere black-robed Wuzhumph. Not worthy to speak to me. After speaking, Ao Tianqing flew up and rushed outside, saying, Get out of my way. I'm going to find the refined moon demon lord. The moment he flew up, Gong Shu Jie's pupils slightly contracted, instantly recognizing this person's extraordinary might. Stop! The pitch black Wu Zhu robe billowed in the void. In the blink of an eye, Gong Shu Jie switched places with the wizard in front of Ao Tianqing, intercepting him in place of the wizard. At the same time, a surging flame divine power circled around Gong Shu Jie, and a fiery red spear appeared in his hand directly hacking towards the charging Ao Tianqing. The spear, which gathered flame divine power, carried an unmistakable aura of true fire that no one could ignore. As the spear thrust forward, Ao Tianqing's eyebrows suddenly jumped, but he didn't retreat. Instead, he punched straight up, roaring as he smashed his fist forward. Ao Tian is invincible. With one punch, the spear shattered. Boom! Amidst the deafening roar, the true fire spear dissipated in all directions. Ao Tianqing stumbled back two steps, his hands drenched in fresh blood. Hmm. Seeing his own injury, Ao Tianqing was somewhat surprised. Interesting. However, looking at the black-robed Wuzhu in front of him again, Ao Tianqing shook his head. It's a pity that your position is too low to earn me any fame. If the second strongest martial artist in the Fire Pass country, Gong Shu Jia, came here, we could have had a good fight. But unfortunately. As for me right now, I only wish to find the refined moon demon lord. After speaking, Ao Tianqing transformed his body into a blaze of light and rushed towards a different direction. The strength of Wu Zhu in front of him was not weak, and a real fight between them wouldn't have an immediate winner. But he didn't have time to waste. Having finally caught a widely reputed figure like the refined moon demon lord, he couldn't let go of this great opportunity to make a name for himself. However, when Ao Tianqing rushed away this time, Gong Shu Jie didn't make a move to stop him. Standing in the void, he silently watched the departing figure of the muscular man, with a cold and indifferent expression. The wizard beside him looked at him carefully and asked, Master Gong Shu, why didn't you tell this guy your name? Gong Shu Jie shook his head and said, Although Gong Shu Jie has some reputation, he is not as famous as the refined moon demon lord in the kingdom of all demons in the north. But this person in front of me only wants to seek a strong opponent to fight with and try to build a reputation. 
Amir Gong Shu Jia is not weighty enough for him to stay. Since we already know the origins of both sides that fought here, we'll just report it when we go back. As Gong Shu Jia spoke, he led the wizards towards Yanjing city. When leaving, he seemed to sense something, and he glanced slightly in a certain direction before nodding. And in the direction that Gong Shu Jia nodded towards, Lu Hang and Jiu Mie stood in the void, smiling as they both politely gestured in greeting towards the black-robed Wuzhu. After the monk and the wolf watched the wizards leave, they then drifted lightly to where refined moon demon lord and Ao Tianqing were fighting. Looking at the scorched earth in the scene, Lu Heng said, It seems that this refined moon demon lord is the demonic cultivator we encountered in the underground magma world. The demonic talisman in Lu Heng's hand emitted an aura that was somewhat similar to the remaining Taiyin true qi in this place. However, Jiu Mie said with confusion, but this refined moon demon lord's cultivation is outstanding, he is a top demonic leader that everyone in the kingdom of all demons in the north fears and respects. Why did he flee directly now? It spent who knows how long and put a lot of effort into setting up the formation and trying to remove the divine treasure underground, but now it doesn't have any sentimentality and is running so fast. The more Jiu Mie analyzed, the more he couldn't understand it. This is too strange, isn't it? Jiu Mie looked at Lu Heng and said, Could it be that the famous refined moon demon lord was scared by the world-renowned wolf god? Lu Heng smiled bitterly and said, Friend, please don't make fun of me. If Lu Heng's name was really that useful, I would not have been targeted by that mysterious demon shadow. According to rumors, the strength of this refined moon demon lord is probably stronger than you and me by a bit. Maybe only friend Candle Dragon can barely surpass him. Such a top-notch leader of the demonic path, how could he be scared off just by hearing my name there must be another reason. As Lu Heng spoke, he was also perplexed and puzzled, but what exactly scared it into this state? In the underground magma world earlier, besides the two of us, there seemed to be a uh, the green state cauldron. Lu Heng looked at Jiu Mie and thought of a possibility, could it be that the green state cauldron scared it into this state? Jiu Mie frowned and thought for a moment before saying, there is indeed such a possibility. It seems that this refined moon demon lord not only knows about the remains of the fire god Zhu Rong in this place, but also knows the true power of the green state cauldron. It's just unclear what power this cauldron actually holds that could scare the dignified refined moon demon lord into such a miserable state. Jiu Mie was perplexed and Lu Heng shook his head repeatedly. The monk and the wolf locked eyes for a moment and each sighed to themselves. It's a pity that we can no longer catch the refined moon demon lord, otherwise we could have uncovered some ancient mysteries what a pity. While they lamented, the monk and the wolf turned around and directly walked towards the city, leaving the sight behind. There isn't even a feeling of regret. Even with the strength of Lu Heng and Jiu Mie, it would be absolutely impossible for them to defeat refined moon demon lord in a direct confrontation, without using the heavenly thunder sword. When the dragon's soul appears tomorrow, it will definitely need the heavenly thunder sword to suppress the evil demons, so it cannot be used at this moment. So Lu Heng and Jiu Mie were merely boasting. For Lu Heng and his companions, it was actually a good thing that refined moon demon lord, who was after all the leader of the demonic way, was scared and fled in a miserable state. At the very least, the appearance of the dragon soul tomorrow would be free from the threat of a great demon. After returning to Yanjing city, Lu Heng met with Lian Shan Jing. With the dragon soul about to appear, if the matter with refined moon demon lord hadn't happened, Lu Heng and his companions would have gone outside the city to make arrangements by this time. But now there is still time. Having driven away a top-notch demon and sealed an upcoming sacred object underground, Lu Heng and his group finally had their hands free to deal with the demons in the Green Hell Cave. Fifty miles west of Yanjing city, Amidst barren mountains, Lu Heng and his companions set up a formation, disappeared into the void, and waited for the demons of the Green Hell Cave to take the bait. Fifty miles away in Yanjing City, it was all song and dance, and bustling with activity, as if the wizards were completely unprepared for the demons' plan to attack the city tomorrow. Such a situation was relayed through the demon scout to a mountain valley two thousand miles away outside Yanjing City. The Lord of all demons, upon receiving the message, nodded and said, Order the city scouts to continue monitoring the situation at the Fire God Temple and report back every hour. 
As the critical moment approached and his plan of hundreds of years was about to succeed, even the lord of all demons couldn't help but feel a little excited. Beside him, one Rome dressed in a purple outfit, had a cold and sculpted look on her face. Meanwhile, the three demons of the Green Hell Cave and the four elders almost all gathered above the demonic palace below. Except for Xia Yunyang, who had other plans and didn't arrive, all the key demon leaders of the Green Hell Cave are now present. Chapter, 349 Above the demonic palace, a congregation of demons gathered, and the evil demons and demonic aura rose to the sky. In order to act covertly, the disciples of the Green Hell Cave have always scattered to different places and acted on their own. They only return to the cave at specific times to report to the Lord of all demons. For the Green Hell Cave, such a grand gathering of demons like the one happening now is a historic first. Seated beneath the Lord of all demons, according to seating order, were General Tiger Dragon, Tian Kan Taoist, and Inyu Bone Demon, the three demon generals. Next are Xiao Juechen of the Four Elders, Niu Tai Yi, and Madam Green Bamboo. As for Xia Yunyang, she was not present at the seating arrangement. Beneath the Four Elders were the demon generals from various caves and lairs, all of them powerful demons. Even the weakest among them had the strength of a fellow Wuzhu in a city. With such strength, even when looking all over the world, they were a powerful demonic force, fully deserving of being called a gathering of talents. But now with all the demons gathered together, Niu Tai Yi growled angrily and said, Xia Yunyang has always been lazy and indifferent to the affairs of the cave I have been in the Green Hell Cave for eighty years. And have been promoted by the cave master to the position of one of the four elders, but she has always been lazy and shirking responsibilities. I have long been displeased with her. I never expected that she would be lazy and selfish as usual, but even on such an important day for the demon cave, she didn't bother to show up this Xia Yunyang. How dare she hold the same position as I do, one of the four elders. I, old bull, cannot accept this. The loud scolding of Niu Tai Yi caused the whispering of the demons below. Having just listened to the scout's report, the lord of all demons at the head of the group now saw Niu Tai Yi getting angry. Instead of speaking up to stop him, the lord whispered to his wife Wan Rong who was by his side. It was as if he was indifferent to everything below. And after Niu Tai Yi finished speaking, Madam Green Bamboo who had a good relationship with Xia Yunyang spoke up. She coldly said, Niu Tai Yi, are you being too meddlesome? The demon lord has already stated that Yunyang has other important matters to attend to, and it is normal for her to not come. We should understand this. You simply won't let it go. You're such a petty man for a grown adult I can see you're jealous that Yun Yang has a higher seat than you and you want to take advantage of the situation to push her down, isn't that right? Madam Green Bamboo's few words made Nyo Tai Yi's eyes turn bloodshot and caused him to slam the table and shout out in anger. What the hell are you talking about, Madam Green Bamboo? Do you think I'm that kind of person? I'm only pointing out that you two unscrupulous scoundrels have been taking high positions without doing your duties properly. If we're talking about cultivation, there are several demon generals in this hall whose abilities are comparable to yours. But when it comes to merit, which demon in this hall isn't stronger than you two scoundrels? You and Xia Yunyang are both constantly up to no good, not doing what you're supposed to. That Xia Yunyang is always running off and can never be found when there's work to be done. And you, who keeps that little fox that only cultivates the righteous path, and talks about cultivating the righteous path day in and day out it's really ridiculous. You're a demonic creature, do you really want to raise a righteous goddess? Nyo Tai Yi angrily rebuked, the most outrageous thing is that you were aware of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain situation, but failed to report back in time. But instead ran to the South Sea such a selfish and self-interested behavior is tantamount to desertion in the face of danger. If it weren't for the magnanimity of the Lord, you would have been sent to the demon slaying platform long ago. Nyo Tai Yi scolded angrily, but Madam Green Bamboo didn't yield at all, saying, How many times have I said it? I am taking Xiao Xiao to the South Sea to seek medical treatment. We are going to look for Wu Gu, one of the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain, to cure Xiao Xiao. What deserting the battlefield? After taking Xiao Xiao to see the doctor, didn't I immediately come back? Madam Green Bamboo retorted sharply, if we are talking about dereliction of duty, 
isn't it you, stupid ox, who committed a more serious dereliction of duty? The demon lord commanded you to retrieve the offspring of the wolf god, but you were only able to bring back one because you were ambushed halfway through. If you weren't so foolish, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain wouldn't have descended to mortal world. Up on the demon palace, there was endless noise and commotion. After watching for a long time and waiting for both sides to argue enough, the lord of all demons finally spoke up and said. As Yun Yang has stated that she is still young and doesn't need to prolong her lifespan, the battle for the dragon soul this time can naturally be excluded from her. Now, with the great battle imminent, everyone should hold back their temper and work together to take the dragon soul first. We can discuss the rest later. Watching the various demon generals below, as well as the four elders and the three demon generals, the lord of all demons said, after we take the dragon soul, I will rearrange the seating order based on merit. If anyone is dissatisfied with the current seating order, we will discuss it after we take the dragon soul does anyone have any objections, brothers? The lord of all demons released a major news with a casual tone. In an instant, all the evil demons on the magic temple became excited. They all stood up and bowed, saying, we all listen to the orders of the demon lord. No more words needed. Good. The lord of all demons stood up and said, with your help, I believe that this dragon soul will surely belong to the green hell cave. On the magic temple, after the oath-taking ceremony, the demons left to mobilize and prepare for tomorrow's siege. After the meeting dispersed, the lord of all demons walked in the midst of the mountain stream, watching the scenes of rising demon chi around him, and said to Xiao Juechen beside him. Is there any news from the heavenly demon lord's side? The departure of the wolf god's daughter with the heavenly demon lord is the biggest concern in the mind of the lord of all demons. After all, the heavenly demon lord will have to face the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Even though the lord of all demons knew that the heavenly demon lord had an extraordinary origin and was an ancient demon from the ancient era, and was also an acquaintance of Lian Sanqing. He couldn't help but feel uneasy at the thought of the heavenly demon lord facing the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, no matter how powerful he was. Regarding this, Xiao Juechen said, after the evil lord left, there has been no news from him. However, according to the reports of the scouts in Yanjing City, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, who arrived at Yanjing City recently, suddenly left the city today and it is still unknown where he went, as he hasn't returned yet. Xiao Juechen said, moreover, when the wolf god left, he took his sword servant Xiao Ai with him. Both of them left in a hurry and the wizards of Yanjing city didn't even have the chance to bid them farewell. Xiao Juechen's report made the lord of all demons breathe a slight sigh of relief. He said, it seems that the evil lord's plan has begun. However, it is unknown whether its plan can really succeed in trapping the wolf god. Xiao Juechen said, the evil lord is very powerful and it once faced the wolf god directly, causing the death of one of its disciples. Therefore, it knows the depth of the wolf god's strength. It must have complete confidence in speaking out, otherwise it wouldn't take the risk. Sigh I hope so, the lord of all demons shook its head, hands behind its back, looking up at the demonic aura that occasionally drifted away in the sky. And said, after hundreds of years of planning, I have finally witnessed the appearance of the dragon soul in this world. Even for me, I now can't help feeling a bit at a loss. May everything go smoothly on the evil lord's side, and successfully trap the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain at least delay it and prevent it from quickly returning to provide support. Otherwise, we really have to give up the vast foundation of the Green Hell Cave. In the tone of the lord of all demons, there was a slight touch of reluctance and regret. Chapter, 350 Although the initial plan was to abandon the foundation of the Green Hell Cave and focus only on seizing the dragon soul and taking away many key demon generals. However, the appearance of the heavenly demon lord gave the lord of all demons hope for a win-win situation. If we could not only seize the dragon soul, but also preserve the main forces of the Green Hell Cave, and then lead the demons out of the Fire Pass country borders. It would provide more power for when we seek revenge on the beast that harmed my wife in the Kangu Abyss. On the second day, early morning. As the first ray of sunlight shone into the mountain stream in the morning, the hidden demons in the stream were already lined up neatly, ready to depart. However, the number of evil demons appearing here is not many. 
the numerous demons under the Green Hell Cave are now in another location, preparing for the siege. Among the three demon generals, Yin Yu Bone Demon and Tian Ken Taoist have gone to lead troops, only General Tiger Dragon remains here. Among the four elders, Nyo Tai Yi has also joined the main forces, leaving only Madam Green Bamboo and Xiao Juechen by the side of the Lord of All Demons. Although the number of evil demons here is not many, they are all the backbone and elites of the Green Hell Cave led by the close guards of the Lord of All Demons, many demons have no weak ones. The Lord of All Demons stood on a high platform, looking down at many confidants below, feeling slightly excited. But it didn't say anything more, and instead took a deep breath, then waved its hand decisively. Let's go. As soon as the order was given, General Tiger Dragon on the side let out a huge dragon chant, blowing the horn of the Lord of All Demons. The desolate sound echoed through the mountains. The gloomy demonic atmosphere, accompanied by the sound of the horn of the Lord of All Demons, surged in the mountain stream and directly engulfed all the evil demons in the valley. Immediately after, the sound of the demonic horn faded away, but the formation of the Lord of All Demons' horn had already taken shape. Under the heavens, many demonic cultivators slowly shed their demonic energy, transforming into ordinary cultivators. With this disguise, even if one is usually near Yanjing City, which is close to the capital of the Fire Pass country, it will certainly not attract the attention of wizards. Not to mention that in the other direction of Yanjing City, where demonic forces are surging and evil demons are running rampant in the wilderness, wizards are busy dealing with the demon attack on the city. They have no leisure to pay attention to this group of less than 100 ordinary cultivators. Under the daylight, many demonic creatures led by the Lord of All Demons directly soared into the sky and headed towards the distance in a grand manner. Not afraid of the scrutiny of wizards at all. And in the wilderness to the east of Yanjing City, the black miasma is pervasive and the demonic clouds are surging. The dark clouds are coming from the east and are constantly advancing towards Yanjing City. The fierce and evil demonic aura ripples through the wilderness, frightening the rare and exotic beasts into a frenzy of escape. Amidst those dark demonic clouds, densely packed demonic figures can be seen, all of them wearing battle armor and wielding demonic weapons, shouting and bellowing in a terrifying and cacophonous manner. Among the demonic soldiers, flags fluttered in the breeze, and giant monsters ran rampant. Deafening shouts resounded through the mountains as the demonic clouds advanced unabatedly. Break through Yanjing City. Flood the Fire God Temple. On the earth, countless creatures who witnessed this scene all had their faces change color in shock. Whether they were wizards from the Fire Pass country or ordinary cultivators passing by, they all panicked and hastily retreated when they saw the pitch black demonic clouds obscuring the sky and approaching. Everyone who saw this scene knew in their hearts that the witchcraft war, which had lasted for years within the Fire Pass country and caused countless casualties on both sides, was likely coming to an end today. The monsters from the Green Hell Cave, which had always behaved mysteriously, were now directly leading their army towards Yanjing City without any sign of hiding or avoiding. This is clearly a plan to gather the forces of all the monsters from the Green Hell Cave in order to have a fight to the death with the Fire God Temple, and thereby bring this witchcraft war to a complete end. Does the Lord of All Demons already have the certainty of victory and intend to capture Yanjing City today? On the ground, many cultivators panicked and fled, and through various means each spread the news of the monster's attack on the city. Soon, not only Yanjing City, which was thousands of miles away, but also other cities farther from this place and cultivators who were not in Yanjing City, received this horrifying news one after another. The Lord of All Demons, who had been hiding his strength and avoiding battles for many years, is finally going to gather the power of all the demonic caves and have a decisive battle with the Fire God Temple today. Under the sky, the overwhelming demon clouds cover the sun and the sky. Wherever the demon clouds went, all the villages, houses, and all living beings were urgently evacuated by the warriors who had come after hearing the news. The enormous demon clouds advanced for over a hundred miles, only to see empty villages with desolation and not catch a single living person. The demons who had been looking forward to a hearty meal before the war were immediately filled with disappointment and resentment towards the Wizard of Fire God Temple. You think you can move people away? Can you move the entire Yanjing city away? 
The tens of millions of creatures in Yanjing City are all going to become food today. Within the demon clouds, the evil demons were roaring with anger. Failing to catch any bloodthirsty creatures made these demons extremely restless, to the point that the demon clouds advanced even faster. Incited and encouraged by the demon generals, all the demons were ravenous and eager to rush into Yanjing City, killing and devouring every living person they saw. In the desolate and turbulent wasteland of demon clouds, on a barren mountain, there were two figures standing quietly at the top, one tall and one short. Together, they watched in silence as the horrifying sight of the pitch-black demon clouds covered the sky and passed by. However, there was not the slightest fear. Slightly small in stature but with a bulky body, Mother Ghost sneered, saying, it seems that today is the day you will put your plan into action. The Lord of all demons cannot contain his desire to attack the city and has put up such a huge front. Today will surely not end well. With the relationship between Emperor Yen and the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, the wolf god will surely come to lend a hand today. At that time, there will be the demons of the Green Hell Cave to attract the attention of the wolf god in the front. Finally, there will be space to carry out your sinister plot. Beside Mother Ghost, the sinister figure with indistinguishable features and aura shook its head and spoke. Although the demonic clouds are vast and mighty, my intuition tells me that the Lord of all demons is not among them. Although these demonic soldiers and evil generals are numerous, they are all weak before the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. The evil shadow said, after all, according to legend, the wolf god can command the heavenly thunder. In the face of this group of demons attacking the city, he doesn't even need to do anything. He just needs to summon the thunder clouds and that will be enough to deal with these little devils with their skyrocketing evil energy. Looking at the demonic clouds in the sky, the evil shadow said, whether or not we can use that secret technique today depends on the lord of all demons' subsequent actions. Since he dared to make a move today, he must have been confident in dealing with the heavenly thunder commanded by the wolf god otherwise, he wouldn't dare come here for a decisive battle. But it is also not impossible that it made a stupid decision to actively come and seek death. The evil shadow laughed and said, either way, we'll just watch this group of demons perform from the shadows for now. If we don't get an opportunity, we can always wait until the next time. Nowadays, within the Fire Pass country, there are many demons targeting the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, not just me. Chapter, 351 In the wilderness, the sinister figure and mother ghost watched the terrifying sight of endless demonic clouds covering the sky without any emotional response. However, the demons hidden intentionally among the mountains below were not detected by the demons within the dark clouds. Of course, even if they had noticed, they wouldn't have paid any attention. After all, given the chaotic situation and the influx of monsters within the Fire Pass country, the Green Hell Cave's flamboyant mobilization will certainly attract the attention of various parties. Not far away from the vast demonic clouds, in the void, a cold-faced woman dressed in a scarlet robe was staring apathetically at the Green Hell Cave's procession of demons, her presence openly displayed with no attempt to conceal it. The appearance of this scarlet-clad woman was detected by many demons within the demonic clouds. However, none of the demons took the initiative to provoke her. After all, this woman didn't possess the fire god's divine power and was not a wizard of the fire god temple. The current situation within the fire pass country is chaotic, with not only numerous demons and evil creatures coming around in response to the rumors, but also many foreign cultivators coming to join in the fun. Although these cultivators cultivate orthodox cultivation, not every cultivator bears a deep-seated hatred towards evil and would fight to the death with the Green Hell Cave. This scarlet-clad woman is of high cultivation level, and since she didn't take the initiative to provoke them, they were also too lazy to bother with her. Of course, if General Tiger Dragon of the Three Demons Army or Shao Juechen of the Four Elders were here, they would be terrified and dumbstruck upon seeing this scarlet-clad woman. However, both Shao Juechen and General Tiger Dragon are absent, and leading the troops here are Yin Yugumo and the Tianken Taoist, alongside with Nyo Tai Yi. As a result, the enormous demonic cloud covered the sky and obscured the sun as it passed, but all the evil creatures ignored the scarlet-clad woman in the distance. From a distance, Lian Sanqing watched the procession of the evil creatures and the demon sutra passing by. However, she couldn't find the figure of the heavenly demon lord within the demonic cloud, 
which caused her to furrow her brows slightly. She was about to leave when she suddenly noticed a streak of light rushing towards her from a distance, intercepting her directly. The one in the streak of light was a burly man dressed in a scholar's robe. Facing Lian Sanqing, the man grinned and clasped his fists, saying, My name is Ao Tianqing, the unrivaled and solitary figure who strides across the world. I wonder what is the name and origin of the lady I'm privileged to meet. This strange man suddenly striking up a conversation caused Lian Sanqing to furrow her brows slightly. Because she discovered something strange, this ill-intentioned guy had surprisingly clear eyes and no evil intentions towards her, showing that he was not a frivolous person who came to harass her. If he wasn't coveting her physical appearance, then what did the other party want by abruptly rushing towards her like that? Slightly puzzled in her heart, Lian Sangqing remained indifferent and said, It's none of your business. After speaking, Lian Sangqing intended to leave. However, she had just turned around when a loud dragon roar came from behind. Immediately after, the fierce wind rushed towards her face. Miss, please wait a moment. The ferocious fist wind, carrying a roaring golden dragon, flew past Lian Sanqing. With a serious expression, Ao Tianqing said, I can tell that you are exceptional, coming to see the invading demonic army in such dire circumstances you must not be an ordinary person. If you were to tell me your name and have a good fight with me, it would not be in vain for your extraordinary cultivation base. Ao Tianqing's words made Lian Sanqing wear an odd expression. She looked at the man in front of her again and said, So you're a madman good. Since you're looking to die, let me give you a technique. Without waiting for Ao Tianqing's response, Lian Sanqing raised her fair right hand and struck a palm as she finished speaking. Miss Pft. Before Ao Tianqing, who had just spoken, could react, he was blasted away by a tremendous palm force, turning into a brilliant meteor that disappeared into the sky. Lian Sangqing watched as the brilliant light crossed the sky and knew that this strike didn't take away her opponent's life. It seems that although this lunatic who calls himself Ao Tianqing is insane, his strength is quite impressive. However, she always despised crazed people like him, therefore she could not be bothered to pay him any attention. Directly leaving this place, Lian Sangqing flew towards the place where Long Hun is about to appear. Since the heavenly demon lord is not here, they might be found where Long Hun appears. That old guy has also survived the earthly catastrophe, which is a pleasant surprise for Lian Sangqing. Because of this, she can personally slay this old demon and vent her hatred. Beneath the azure sky, Lian Sangqing departed with the power of escape light. Meanwhile, in Yanjing City, upon receiving the news of the demon invasion, the wizards of the fire god temple, who were already prepared immediately convened and formed a defensive formation for Yanjing City, closing the city gates and cleaning up the streets. Yesterday's bustling and lively Yanjing City is now deserted and desolate, with empty and cold streets. People are hiding in their own homes, afraid to go out without permission. As for the capture of demon spies, it began straight away at the moment of locking down the city. In these recent days, the intense activities of the demon spies were almost completely visible to the prepared eyes of the fire god temple. However, these spies were not dealt with in order to deceive the green hell cave. Now that the demons are invading Yanjing city is locked down, the impending battle cannot tolerate these scoundrels who are acting as henchmen for the demons and allowing them to frolic around any longer. Beneath the suspended island, one floating boat after another rapidly flew by, and one radiance after another fell into the residential area below. Each beam of radiance that falls represents a demon lair being destroyed and several demon spies being captured. High up in the sky, within the fire god temple, Lian Shanyu, who acted as the commander-in-chief of all city affairs, now stood beside the enormous sacred fire. Through the sacred fire, she was overlooking the entire scenery of the city and occasionally issuing new commands. Although it may seem like nonsense in front of Lu Heng, as the head of the royal family and bearing the title of Lord of Yan Country, she is one of the top authorities in power within the Fire God Country. There are no more than five people within the Fire God Temple who have the power to surpass her. As someone who holds a high position, when dealing with important national affairs, she would naturally not act recklessly. Instead, she would skillfully and efficiently handle all matters within the city. She issued one command after another, 
detaining and catching demon spies, stabilizing the situation within the city, guiding residents from outside the city to take refuge. Deploying the flame capital great array, and summoning wizards to prepare to block and kill demons under her direction, many matters were being carried out in an orderly manner. There were no mistakes or flaws. At this moment, in the Green Hell Cave, located in the mountains 50 miles to the west of Yanjing City, there was no one paying attention to the situation where the demon army was at the border. The demon clouds covered the sky and came from the east, causing all eyes in this world to now turn towards the east, awaiting the final battle between the demon army and the wizards. These mountains and forests, far away from the battlefield, remained as peaceful and quiet as ever. The birds and beasts in the mountains continued their lives as usual, with no one aware of the impending crisis that was to come. And it was precisely in this peaceful atmosphere that dozens of figures suddenly appeared in the mountains all at once. They stood in an open space in the mountains and scanned the empty forests around them. As planned, they didn't attract the attention of the wizards from the Fire Pass country. The leader, the lord of all demons, spoke, prepare to draw the earth's chi and gather the dragon's soul. Chapter, 352 The so-called manifestation of the dragon soul in the mortal world doesn't refer to the actual soul of a divine dragon. Dragons have always been elusive and difficult to find in the mortal world, hence the saying a glimpse of a divine dragon's head but not its tail. Even in the mortal world, it is extremely rare to see a dragon, such as a scaled dragon that transforms from a snake through cultivation, or a dragon that sheds its skin to become a true dragon with the ability to control the clouds and rain. The Lord of all demons is waiting for the manifestation of the dragon soul, which according to rumors refers to the earth dragons instead of true dragons. Earth dragons are born from the essence of the earth and nurtured by the essence of heaven and earth. Although they are not true dragons, they possess unparalleled power and limitless uses. However, the birth of each earth dragon requires a long period of nurturing by the earth. Lord of all demons was accidentally able to obtain that ancient scripture which records the existence of earth dragons hidden within Fire Pass country. Earth dragons were discovered in ancient times. It is only now, after numerous cultivation bases, that they are able to break through the earth and ascend to the sky. The length of time required to nurture an earth dragon is evident. Once an earth dragon breaks through the earth and ascends to the sky, it immediately emerges from the clouds and roams the earth and sky, never to be found again. Therefore, the opportunity to seize an earth dragon's soul only comes once. Once it is missed, there is no chance to recover it. For the sake of today's plan, the lord of all demons has expended tremendous effort and he dares not take it lightly. It personally leads the situation, sets up formations to gather earth energy and attract dragon souls. It also remains on guard against any potential meddling from the fire god temple wizards in Yanjing city. Although the wizards in Yanjing city should not have time to care about what is happening in this remote mountainous area, it is neither too far nor too near, a distance of 50 miles. As long as nothing unexpected happens during the process of them taking away the dragon soul, the wizards of Yanjing city will be helpless to stop them. Hmm. Just as the lord of all demons thought of this, he suddenly sensed something and his facial expression slightly froze. Suddenly, scorching hot flames rose up from the mountains and forests. This breath. Not good. There's an ambush. The lord of all demons' face changed greatly. And just as it opened its mouth, the scorching hot flames rising up from the mountain and forest had already turned into a massive net, enveloping and falling down from the sky. In an instant, it separated all the demons in the green hell cave. The figures of wizards led by Lianshan Jing appeared in the sky and mountains, and at some point, had surrounded the demons of the green hell cave in the middle. The holy fire demon binding net, led by Lianshan Jing, is far more powerful than the usual methods of a wuzhu. On that crimson binding net for demons, the flowing lights and vibrant flames were so intense that even the top demons present, who were peak cultivators of demonic cultivates, didn't dare touch it without cause. The lord of all demons who saw this scene had an unsightly expression and could barely believe everything that his eyes were seeing. This is impossible. It looked incredulously at Emperor Yen and Lianshan Jing in the void, roaring in anger, you cannot know my plan. You cannot be here. 
The plan of the manifestation of the dragon soul in this world is an absolute secret of the Green Hell Cave. And the location of the manifestation of the dragon soul in this world is even more confidential. Before arriving at this place, not many people, not even the confidants of the Lord of all demons, knew about it. But Emperor Lian Shan Jing, who is in front of him, was able to come to this place where a trap has been set up in advance. Clearly, they were well prepared. The Lord of all demons cannot accept this fact. As soon as the Lord of all demons roared in anger, dark clouds began to gather continuously in the sky above. Soon, a huge cluster of disaster clouds appeared over the heads of all the demons, shrouding the entire forest. Lu Heng's figure appeared under the disaster clouds, smiling as he bowed down to the Lord of all demons below and said, Hanyu Mountains Lu Heng, greetings to the Lord of all demons. In the instant Lu Heng appeared, the Lord of all demons suddenly narrowed his eyes, immediately understanding the karma. The heavenly demon lord was killed by you. Staring intently at the wolf god, the lord of all demons let out an unbelievable yell. The current situation clearly showed the failure of heavenly demon lord's plan to exile the wolf god and not only had it failed, but it also revealed the secret of the appearance of dragon soul in the world. Otherwise, there would be no way to explain why the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, who should have been led away, appeared here. And during these days, why did the heavenly demon lord suddenly disappear without any news? The lord of all demons was seething with fury, while Lu Heng under the calamity clouds looked slightly surprised. He was planning on revealing the fact that he is the heavenly demon lord, but didn't expect the lord of all demons to have such a suspicion. Looking down at the many demons on the ground, watching the fear in their eyes, and the lord of all demons's eyes filled with both fear and hatred, Lu Heng thought for a moment. Instead of explaining the situation, he acknowledged the matter according to the demon's speculations. Smiling, he said, so it's called the Heavenly Demon Lord. Hasek an arrogant name, but it does match its style of doing things. Being a demon, yet attempting to set traps for me, but it doesn't know that its little tricks are no different than child's play in my eyes. Challenging me alone is like a flea shaking a tree, it's ignorant of its own insignificance. Although bravery is commendable, one could also call it foolishness. Finishing these words casually, Lu Heng looked at the increasingly fearful eyes of the demons below and said with a smile, now that the dust has settled, if you surrender, at least you can have a good death. Otherwise, both body and soul will perish under the lightning tribulation. It will be an unbearable agony. Lu Heng's low tone instantly made the demons in the mountains and forests tremble in fear. Even the lord of all demons is somewhat out of control, with eyes almost bursting with anger. The lord of all demons had learned firsthand the strength of that person, the heavenly demon lord, an absolute master of the demonic path, far superior to it. Even though the heavenly demon lord was so powerful, he was defeated by the wolf god. Listening to the tone of the wolf god, it seemed that the heavenly demon lord's defeat was worthless and didn't even cause any harm to the wolf god. This situation completely dealt a fatal blow to the morale of the demons in the Green Hell Cave. Faced with the wolf god Lu in the void, the demons almost couldn't conjure up any thoughts of rebellion. Beneath the disaster clouds, there was only anxious despair in the hearts of the demons. Is the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain truly so powerful? Is there really no one who can rival him? Even the lord of all demons couldn't help but tremble at this moment and realized that he was in a desperate situation. But at this moment, a woman's cold voice suddenly sounded in the distance. The voice carried an undisguised icy killing intent. You said you killed the heavenly demon lord. Under the sky, the figure of a red-clothed woman in a bloody dress suddenly appeared. As soon as she appeared, she stared coldly at Lu Heng under the calamity clouds and angrily asked, Say it again, did you kill the heavenly demon lord? The sudden appearance of Lien Sanqing instantly brought a slight change to the atmosphere of despair and silence. The demons and wizards all looked in astonishment at the red-clothed woman, wondering how she had suddenly appeared. It's unclear where this woman got the courage to provoke the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Upon seeing this scene, the lord of all demons felt delighted and exclaimed loudly. The wolf god Lu. Even if you can kill the heavenly demon lord and get your daughter back, what about your Hanyu mountain? Are you just going to abandon it? As Lu Heng watched in surprise, the lord of all demons laughed loudly and said, 
in our actions, we always strive to be safe, how could we only have the heavenly demon lord as our backup? In your Hanyu mountain, a great disaster is about to happen. If you don't rush back immediately, I'm afraid that all of the disciples at the mountain gate will be wiped out. Chapter, 353 Inside the holy fire demon binding net, the lord of all demons burst into loud laughter. The spoken words also made Lu Hang's heart sink slightly. In Hanyu Mountain could it be that the lord of all demons has also sent demons to cause trouble there? Outside Hanyu Mountain, the Wind Strike Department of the Li tribe is adjacent to it. Priest Li Pu of the Wind Strike Department, according to the information Lu Hang received, is the most experienced and powerful among the nine priests of the Li tribe. Although the girl Qian appeared mischievous, she possessed extraordinary abilities and strength to fight against innate cultivators. She is the seedling for the next priest. Not to mention, every member of the Wind Strike Department cultivated divine abilities, and the strength of each person was remarkable. It is precisely because the Wind Strike Department is stationed in Hanyu Mountain that Lu Heng can descend to the foot of the mountain without any worries in the current chaotic situation. But now the Lord of all demons has mentioned Hanyu Mountain could it be that it has other plans and has summoned demons to attack Hanyu Mountain? Knowing that the Wind Strike Department is stationed in Hanyu Mountain, they still dare to provoke. Lu Heng lowered his head and looked down at the Lord of all demons below, saying, If anything unexpected happens to our disciple, even if you escape to the ends of the earth, I, Lu Heng, will never give up until justice is served. Lu Heng's tone was casual and there was no excessive emotion. However, such a cold warning made the Lord of all demons tremble slightly, feeling great pressure. The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain will never give up until the end of the earth. Such a warning and threat are enough to keep all the demons in the world awake at night. However, despite the critical situation, the Lord of all demons cannot show any signs of weakness. It forced a smile and said, if the wolf god has the spare time to threaten here, it is better to immediately return to Hanyu Mountain. With the wolf god's cultivation and speed, perhaps there is still time to make it back. After the lord of all demons finished speaking, Lianshan Jing on the side immediately spoke, with us here, the wolf god doesn't need to worry and can return to check on the situation in the mountain. If the disciples of the wolf god have accidents because of this, no one will be able to bear the consequences. However, Lu Heng shook his head and said, it's okay. If any demons dare to go to Hanyu Mountain, it is like throwing themselves into a trap. As soon as Lu Heng finished his sentence, under the ground about 1,500 kilometers away from this place, a huge white wolf suddenly opened its eyes and leaped out of the darkness. During this trip down the mountain, Lu Heng's physical body had been following him behind, about a thousand kilometers away, hidden in the dark and keeping watch. If that evil shadow hidden in the dark could really use its evil techniques to harm Lu Heng's soul, his physical body can promptly arrive to support Xiao Ai and use the heavenly thunder sword to kill the enemy. Catch the evil demon hidden in the dark off guard. But now that Jiu Mia and Lian Shan Jing are by his side, even if Lu Heng's soul is damaged, he doesn't have to worry about Xiao Ai's safety. He can directly control his physical body remotely, and fly to Hanyu Mountain with great speed. This place is about one day's journey away from Hanyu Mountain if flying normally. However, Lu Heng possessed a top-level body technique called Floating Light and Shadow, which allows his physical body to arrive at Hanyu Mountain within half an hour. Above the sky, the pale lightning flashes rapidly, and the speed of the Floating Light and Shadow technique reaches its limit. Even passing cultivators would not be able to see the figure inside the light if they caught a glimpse of the lightning flashing across the sky. And in the direction where the thunder light disappeared into the sky, there are new guests arriving at the remote and quiet Hanyu Mountain today. In the midday sunlight, Sun Yen, a white ape dressed in ordinary clothes but covered in white fur, was sweeping fallen leaves in front of the wolf god temple with a broom. As the autumn season grows stronger, the number of fallen leaves in Hanyu Mountain gradually increases. The withered yellow leaves appear even more dull yellow under the blazing sunlight. In the peach orchard at the back of the mountain, the fat bird with bloodshot eyes stood on a tree branch with one leg, lazily yawned, closed its eyes and went back to sleep. Since Lu Heng left, several peaches had ripened on the trees in the peach orchard, but no one went to pick them. And as more peaches ripened, it also meant that there were more cracks on the peach wood staff buried under the peach tree. 
Amid the turmoil and fierce conflict of the outside world, everything in Hanyu Mountain remains as peaceful and serene as always. But at a certain moment, the fat bird sensed something and suddenly opened its eyes, looking towards the direction of the mountain gate. A woman's figure slowly appeared on the winding stone steps leading up to the mountain gate. The tight leather armor was cool and simple, covering only the essential parts, making her look seductive and alluring. Her slender figure and delicate, milky white skin were so exquisite that she looked like a divine goddess in a painting. It was only the deep eye shadow and sharp gaze that made her look unapproachable. Even though she was dressed in a seductive way and had an enticing figure, she was as intimidating as a rose with thorns, making people hesitant to touch her. In this way, under the surprised gaze of Sun Yen, who was sweeping the floor, the woman in leather armor walked up the steps and arrived in front of the wolf god temple. Looking at the white ape in front of the wolf god temple, Xia Yunyang asked, Are you a disciple of the wolf god? Xia Yunyang's inquiry puzzled the white ape, Sun Yen, just a little bit. He opened his mouth wide and said, Master has gone down the mountain if you have anything to say, I can pass it on. Sun Yan's speech was as stumbling as ever. Xia Yunyang looked at the white ape in front of her and shook her head, saying, I know that he went down the mountain otherwise, I wouldn't have come here. After speaking, Xia Yunyang threw a command flag directly into the sky in front of the white ape, Sun Yan. In the Hanyu mountain, which was shrouded in dark clouds, the black command flag seemed unremarkable. However, once the flag was hoisted into the sky, it immediately began to tremble violently, and countless black ink flew out from the flag, spreading in all directions. Just like rapidly spreading dark clouds. Under the dark clouds, the Hanyu mountain below was quickly engulfed by the rapidly spreading ink. The deep black ink turned into a huge black cover directly covering the main peak of the Hanyu mountain within it. Looking from the outside, under the surging dark clouds, there was no trace of the Hanyu mountain or the wolf god temple to be seen. What appeared in people's field of vision was only a huge black cover that obscured everything. In the windstrike department camp outside the mountain, Xian, who was washing clothes by the lake, saw this scene and was suddenly shocked, immediately standing up. Oh, Grand Priest! The girl shouted and called out to the old priest in the camp, then flew up and headed towards the huge black ink cover. Inside the huge ink cover, Xia Yunyang threw out four black shadows from her sleeve in front of the shocked face of the white ape. After the four black shadows landed, they quickly revealed their original appearance. M.O.Y., with a head as big as a fight and chin filled with wriggling tentacle-like whiskers, the red-blue twin devils. One with blue and another with red, each with only one arm, and Ningpa, with a worried face, thin body and quiet personality. The few monsters who previously discussed important matters at the Ink Lake Water Mansion have now all come to Hanyu Mountain and appeared in front of the Wolf God Temple in a grand manner. In an instant, the originally peaceful and serene Hanyu Mountain became eerie and terrifying, full of evil energy. Chapter 354 these five monsters are all leaders of the demonic gang in one region. Now gathering at Hanyu Mountain, just the terrifying momentum alone is enough to scare off countless people. Moreover, under the cover of the treasure inky cloud cover, the disaster clouds in the sky were unable to sense the demons underneath the cover, so they didn't bring down a heavenly calamity. At this moment, these evil monsters dared to reveal themselves in front of the wolf god temple. Standing in front of the wolf god temple, Looking around at the situation, the blue demon with the left arm laughed wickedly. Aside from the lord of all demons' other abilities, the concealment technique under his sect is indeed mysterious. Without Yun Yang's guidance, we wouldn't dare to approach this disaster cloud at all. The red demon with his right arm laughed, saying, Mo Ye's inky cloud cover has also made great contributions. Without the cover, even if Yun Yang let us inside, we wouldn't dare to reveal ourselves. The red-blue twin devils changed its previous attitude and began to flatter Xia Yunyang. But Xia Yunyang couldn't be bothered with the flattery of the devil pair, and said directly, there is still the wind strike department beyond the mountain. Everyone move faster and don't drag. Boom! With a terrifying roar, the entire Hanyu mountain trembled violently. The inky cloud cover in the sky also shook violently, as though it was being heavily bombarded from the outside. Xia Yunyang, whose conversation was interrupted, frowned and looked up, saying, 
they've come really fast. Beside her, Mo Yi rubbed the squirming tentacle-like beard on his chin and said, Don't worry. The inky cloud cover is the thing that I owe my life to. Even if the wind strike department priest is strong, it will not be broken in a short time. Boom. 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 The deafening sound suddenly echoed outside the inky cloud cover. As if being struck by a dense meteor shower in an instant, the black inky cloud cover was rattled terrifyingly from all directions. Even Xia Yunyang and the others could see that the black inky cloud cover was on the verge of collapse. The red-blue twin devils' expression was shocked, and he quickly said, Moe, don't chicken out at such a critical moment. If the inky cloud cover breaks, we will be trapped with no place to escape. That's right, Moe. We brothers trust you, so you can't deceive us. The red-blue twin devils cried out anxiously, startled by the precariousness of the inky cloud cover. Mo Ye's expression was shaken and he felt the enormous pressure from the inky cloud cover, as he said, this this is the whole wind strike department that has been mobilized. Even without looking, it could feel that the continuous shocks outside the inky cloud cover were not coming from one person. There were strong and weak impacts, densely packed and continuously sounding. Obviously, the entire wind strike department had been mobilized. And the destructive power. Mo Ye's expression became solemn as he said, This is bad. The strength of the wind strike department far exceeded my expectations. It's true that the Li tribe's nine subdivisions cannot be underestimated. I need help from others. Saying so, Mo Ye flew directly into the air and said, Brother Ning, come help quickly. Calling out directly to the strongest demon among the group, Ning Pe, Mo Ye flew towards the inky cloud cover. With his hands spread out, his body rapidly expanded and transformed into a giant over a hundred feet tall. 88,888 huge octopus tentacles flew out from the giant. These dense and enormous tentacles each flew out and supported all the nodes of the inky cloud cover. They continued to absorb true energy, maintaining the inky cloud cover's indestructibility. Below, Ning Pe, who was always taciturn, also flew up and arrived beside Mo Yi, who had already transformed into a giant over a hundred feet tall. Ning Pe infused his own true energy into Mo Ye's body, helping him maintain the inky cloud cover. Even so, Mo Ye still felt overwhelmed and powerless. It couldn't help but shout loudly, Everyone, hurry up. I can only support it for two quarter hours at most. The inky cloud cover is about to break. The speed at which the inky cloud cover was damaged far exceeded its expectations. Below, Xia Yunyang said, that's enough. As she spoke, she flew directly towards the back of the mountain to search for the treasures and essences of Hanyu Mountain. While the red-blue twin devils grinned, he slaps away the white ape Sun Yen who tried to fight his way up and cheers as he rushes into the main hall of the wolf god temple. Oh wow! The Wolf God Temple The Wolf God Temple I actually set foot in the Wolf God Temple today. Ha ha ha. Apart from us brothers, which demon in this world can achieve that? Wow. There's wine. Could this be the legendary peach blossom wine? It's really amazing, and there's even a whole barrel of it. Take it away, take it away. Quickly take it away. Inside the Wolf God Temple, the red-blue twin devils cried out in excitement and cheered for achieving a feat that no other demon had achieved before. Upon arriving at the back mountain, Xia Yunyang immediately noticed the peach orchard at first sight. After flying into the peach forest, a gigantic peach tree of unparalleled size appeared before her eyes. The peach tree's trunk was thick and its roots were dense, as if it were the ancestor of ten thousand trees that had grown for countless years. The strong and abundant vitality surged in the peach orchard. The huge canopy covered the sky and blocked out the sun, as if it were a vast forest. And on the branches of the peach tree hung one peach after another. However, the peaches in front of her kept shrinking into the branches as if they were trying to escape into the trunk. With one bloodshot eye, the fat bird had plunged more than half of its body into the peach tree, blending almost seamlessly with it. When Xie Yunyang arrived, all of the peaches on the tree, except for a few that were plump and already ripe and had not completely disappeared into the trunk, had all shrunk and become unripe, smaller in size, and had completely disappeared into the tree. 
impossible to detect any longer. Upon witnessing this scene, Xia Yunyang flew over and seized the only body part of the fat bird that was still exposed, its head, and pulled it out from the trunk. At the same time, she opened her right hand and several black light strips flew out from her palm, which directly pulled out the nine ripe peaches that had not yet shrunk into the trunk from the top of the tree and collected them into her bag. After completing these tasks, she landed on the ground and spoke to the fat bird in her hand, Are you also a disciple of the wolf god? The moment Xia Yunyang landed, the ground of the peach garden cracked open and several thick peach tree roots broke out of the soil, directly coiling around the body of Xia Yunyang, who was full of demonic energy. As the roots swept through, the extremely vigorous vitality made Xia Yunyang's eyebrows twitch, and she instantly turned into a jet black escaping light and fled away. However, despite her lightning fast speed, she was still struck by those tree roots. In mid air, Xia Yunyang grunted as half of her arm was struck by the roots, causing her to instantly shed half a level of skin and flesh and blood to spray out in all directions. The powerful vitality exceeded the capacity of the demon's body to bear. Xia Yunyang, who had always been tough, loosened her grip and let go of the red eyed fat bird when she unconsciously suffered from the pain. Meanwhile, more roots of peach trees came sweeping furiously from behind. After Xia Yunyang took away nine ripe peaches from the tree, which was originally inanimate, it went berserk, and its stout roots started to wildly sweep around. Xia Yunyang fled away in her escape light, but there were constantly thick roots of peach trees breaking out of the ground, twisting and thrusting towards her. In an instant, the whole Hanyu mountain trembled. Countless thick tree roots broke out of the ground and swayed madly in the ink cloud, sweeping and raging in anger towards Xia Yunyang, who had taken away the ripe peaches. Looking from afar, those wildly dancing peach tree roots were even more fierce and terrifying than the tentacles of the octopus above the sky, owned by Emoyi. This sight made people's scalp numb. Chapter 355 Inside the wolf god temple, the red-blue twin devils, who carried the peach blossom wine and rushed out, saw such a terrifying scene. Those wildly dancing peach tree roots were crazily lashing out. And with Xia Yunyang's escape, more and more peach tree roots were spreading and rushing towards this area. Even the earth in front of the wolf god temple was constantly cracking, and tree roots began to spread out. Under this vast Hanyu mountain, it had long been occupied by the roots of that enormous peach tree. Now that the peach tree had gone mad, countless roots were breaking through the soil and crazily strangling Xia Yunyang. Witnessing this scene, the red-blue twin devils was stunned and couldn't help but exclaim in amazement. Xia Yunyang, what on earth are you doing? How did you provoke such a terrifying thing? Oh my god! Xia Yunyang, you're in deep trouble. The red-blue twin devils screamed in horror as the roots of the peach tree that broke through the soil in front of the wolf god temple were already strangling towards him and his brother. These peach tree roots were no longer content with lashing and strangling Xia Yunyang, as they had now set their sights on other evil creatures in the mountain. The vigorous and vibrant life force contained within the roots of the peach tree is the most terrifying thing for evil creatures, who dare not even touch it. Amidst the rough and sturdy roots that had been strangling and lashing, the red-blue twin devils frantically dodged and cursed loudly. Mo Yi, who was trying hard to maintain the stability of the Mo Yun barrier in the sky, looked down at Hanyu Mountain below, where he witnessed an even more terrifying scene. The once peaceful and serene Hanyu Mountain is now in a state of complete chaos. Countless peach tree roots kept breaking the ground and violently lashing at the three demons below. The entire Hanyu mountain no longer has the peaceful and serene appearance it once had. The wildly dancing peach tree roots were lashing frantically at the three demons in front of the wolf god temple. Moreover, it is expected that these frenzy tree roots will soon sense the presence of Mo Yi and Ning Pe in the sky above. At that time. At the thought of such a scene, Mo Yi, who was using all his energy to sustain the ink cloud shield and could hardly move, suddenly frowned and anxiously shouted. Xia Yunyang. You must find a way to stabilize this strange peach tree. Do not let it continue to run amok. Otherwise, the ink cloud shield will break, the evil energy will trigger the disaster clouds, and we will all die under the thunder of heaven. At this point, even Mo Yi, who is the most mature and prudent, has lost his composure. 
They planned meticulously and prepared hundreds of measures against the wind strike department outside the mountain and the disaster clouds overhead, in order to ensure safety before coming. However, no matter how many calculations were made, no one expected such a terrifying thing to exist in the Hanyu mountain to which the wolf god had departed. Because based on previous information, even among the disciples of Hanyu mountain, Lu Ai Shao Ai, who is just attending to the wolf god, has not yet reached the innate realm in her cultivation. And apart from Lu Ai, others were not worthy mentioning. But this strange peach tree in front of us. Mo Ye's eyes were stunned, while Ningpa behind him silently stared at the numerous chaotic roots below, and all of a sudden began to speak. This is the All Souls Ancestral Root. Under Mo Ye's stunned gaze, Ningpa explained indifferently, among all living creatures in heaven and earth, plants are the most difficult to evolve into spirits. However, as the old legends say, there is a special demon creature in the world named the All Souls Ancestral Root. This object is created by the nature of heaven and earth, and is supported by those who have great divine powers to cultivate extraordinary physical bodies and condense the chi of all living things. Although it has no spiritual wisdom and is not a demon cultivator, it is invulnerable to demons and evil demons. Moreover, the fruit nurtured by the All Souls Ancestral Root is a first-class spiritual and divine fruit in the world, possessing an awe-inspiring power beyond the imagination of ordinary people. The peach tree of Hanyu Mountain is obviously a specimen of the All Souls Ancestral Root. Xie Yunyang must have taken its fruits, causing it to become so enraged. Above the sky, Ningpa explained indifferently. In front of the Wolf God Temple, the red-blue twin devils and Xia Yunyang dodged left and right, trying hard to avoid the numerous thick tree roots that kept whipping towards them. Unknowingly, they had been trapped in front of the Wolf God Temple and could no longer escape. The number of peach tree roots around them increased, and the frequency of whipping became faster and faster. It was almost beyond their ability to dodge with their escape technique. The red-blue twin devils shouted anxiously. You're still explaining. It's already this late, and you're still talking nonsense quickly tell us how to deal with this thing. Yes. It's already urgent and you're still telling stories is this the time to tell stories? Who the hell cares what kind of spiritual roots it has? The red-blue twin devils was so anxious that he burst into a foul-mouthed tirade. The calmness in the sky remained indifferent and continued in a flat tone, although the All Souls ancestral root lacks intelligence, it possesses high spirituality, knows good from evil and can recognize one's kinship. It was born in Hanyu Mountain, blessed by the Wolf God, and must be close to the Wolf God sect. Since you have captured the White Ape, using its life as a threat will surely restrain the ancestral root's madness. As soon as Ning Po's voice fell, the red-blue twin devils shouted in unison. If only you had said this earlier, you wouldn't have been scolded. As the voice fell, the blue devil lifted the white ape in his hand and roared at the peach trees around. If you come one inch closer to me, I will immediately turn this monkey into monkey brain soup. As soon as this remark was made, the violent roots of the peach trees in Hanyu Mountain suddenly stopped and the angry and frenzied momentum finally came to a halt. After that, under the red-blue twin devils's nervous gaze. The roots of the peach trees near the Wolf God Temple finally stopped their beating attacks and silently retreated to a distance of several meters, leaving the space in front of the Wolf God Temple empty. Only then did Xia Yunyang and the Red Blue Twin Devils breathe a sigh of relief, standing on the vacant lot and breathing heavily. Although the three evil demons were not weak in strength and their escape speed was astonishingly fast, the peach tree roots whipped them so densely that even they suffered some injuries. Now all of them are colored in bruises and half covered in fresh blood. However, the most uncomfortable thing was not the injuries, as the physical injuries could be restored with just a thought at this level of demonic cultivation. What made the three evil demons most uncomfortable was the whipping of the peach tree roots. Each root of the peach tree carries a strong vitality, which is like a deadly poison to the evil demons. Every whip made them writhe in pain, gritting their teeth and quivering all over. Even the toughest Xia Yunyang was now drenched in sweat and breathing heavily, not from exhaustion, but from bearing the unbearable pain. Now seeing the peach tree stop whipping, the red-blue twin devils couldn't help but shout loudly. Enough! We got the peach blossom divine brew and nine peach fruits. It's time to go. 
Yeah. This Hanyu mountain is so terrifying. If we don't run now, we might run into something strange and everyone will be trapped here. The demons came here only planning to take some precious artifacts, secret cultivation techniques, or divine weapons while the wolf god of Hanyu mountain was away. Although we didn't get the secret cultivation technique or see any divine weapons, we did obtain the legendary peach blossom divine brew and nine peach fruits, which counts as a good haul. The most important thing is, if we don't leave now, we might not be able to leave at all. Chapter, 356 The red-blue twin devils felt like retreating, and M.O. Yi in the sky also nodded and said, Indeed, it's about time. Outside the ink cloud barrier, the members of the Wind Strike Department were bombarding relentlessly, and even with Ning Po's support, it couldn't hold out much longer. Surviving for two quarters of an hour under such intense bombardment seems like a pipe dream now. When the Red Blue Twin Devils decided to leave, Mo Yi simply went along with the flow and agreed. In front of the Wolf God Temple, Xia Yunyang looked at the white ape in the hands of Qin Mo and said, Take this white ape with us. Perhaps we can interrogate it and get some information. Okay. Hurry, go. Xia Yunyang's proposal immediately received the agreement of the demons. Above the sky, Missouri Yi said, Everyone, come up here immediately and enter the ink cloud cover with me. Let it carry us away. Mo Ye's ink cloud cover, in addition to the power of shielding Qi and blocking everything, can also be used to escape in critical situations. According to the plan, as soon as everyone enters the ink cloud cover, Mo Yi will release its formation. In an instant, ink will burst and all living things in Hanyu Mountain will be covered and hidden by the Qi shielding power of the ink cloud cover. At that time, the ink cloud cover will transform into the most inconspicuous escape light, carrying the demons away with it. Despite the great concern of Ren Tianlei and the strength of the Wind Strike Department priests, they were unable to detect Mo Yi and the others who escaped in the dispersed ink clouds. In front of the Wolf God Temple, Xia Yunyang and the Red Blue Twin Devils flew up, intending to leave according to the plan. Below the Wolf God Temple, in the underground area rich with spiritual energy, and within the Heavenly Thunder Prison, the Maluo evil spirit let out a mournful and miserable scream, but shouted loudly. Hua Fong. If you don't take action now, the disciple of that evil wolf will be captured by someone. Within the Heavenly Thunder Prison, Hua Fong, who was constantly bombarded by the Heavenly Thunder day and night, now looks haggard like someone on the brink of death. At this moment, Hua Fong, who had been quiet inside him, finally spoke up. Three years is too long. I will only give you six months. Otherwise, I would rather watch Sun Yen be captured than let you, this demon, catch your breath for a moment. Hua Feng's words made the Maluo evil spirit mad with rage. You only give me half a damn year all right. Half a year it is. Now you take care of this body. Amidst the Maluo evil spirit's furious roar, the demonic energy within the heavenly thunder prison instantly dissipated. Hua Feng took the initiative to take over the body and opened his eyes in the underground divine palace. When the group of demons arrived at Hanyu Mountain, Maluo evil spirit had already sensed it and offered a deal to Hua Feng. As long as Hua Feng is willing to take over the body and spare it from the pain of heavenly thunder, the Maluo evil spirit is willing to lend its power to Hua Feng and let him go out to drive away the demons and protect Hanyu Mountain. Within the Heavenly Thunder Prison, even if the Maluo evil spirit wants to hide in Hua Feng's soul to avoid the Heavenly Thunder, it cannot do so unless Hua Feng takes over the body voluntarily. But if Hua Feng takes over this body voluntarily, then the Maluo evil spirit can temporarily hide and be free from the pain of Heavenly Thunder. Naturally, Hua Feng didn't accept the demon's offer. After several years of the Heavenly Thunder's torture, the Maluo evil spirit was already close to madness. It was only a matter of time before the last trace of its will would be eradicated, causing its automatic death. Now if it were given some time to breathe and rest, even if this demon were to be struck by heavenly thunder again three years later, it is unknown how long it would take to torment it to its current exhausted state. But now the demons from outside the mountain not only took away the wolf god's treasure, but also held Sun Yen hostage with the loss of peach fruits and divine brew, Hua Feng could not turn a blind eye. However, this white ape, Sun Yen, was a disciple of the wolf god, and he could not sit idly by no matter what. 
directly taking control of this body and letting the Maluo evil spirit hide in his soul, Hua Feng opened his eyes and stood up inside the heavenly thunder prison. Lowering himself to bow towards the outside, Hua Feng said, Please, the wolf god, set me free and drive away this evil demon. After the matter is resolved, Hua Feng will voluntarily return and enter the prison once again. The sound of Hua Feng's respectful report echoed far through the heavenly thunder prison. After a few breaths, a sigh was heard from within the divine palace underground. Then, the heavenly thunder prison that imprisoned the evil demon opened up and transformed into two hand rings sparkling with heavenly thunder, landing on Hua Feng's wrist. To trap the Maluo evil spirit within Hua Feng's body, preventing it from escaping. Lu Heng's sigh was heard from within the underground divine palace. Now that you have given the evil spirit some breathing room, little do you know how many more years you will have to stay underground. Within the underground divine palace, Hua Feng's expression was solemn as he said, Even if I have to stay underground for another thousand years, I will never complain. As soon as the words fell, Hua Feng, who was full of demonic energy, ascended and flew out of the underground divine palace. In the blink of an eye, he arrived on the surface, then broke the ground directly in front of the wolf god temple. The surging and violent evil demon immediately shrouded the entire Hanyu mountain. Hua Feng's cold words echoed in the ears of Xia Yunyang and other demons. Release Sun Yen. Give yourself a good death. Under the cover of ink clouds, Xia Yunyang and other demons were shocked and looked down, only to find a terrifying demon suddenly rushing out from the Hanyu mountain below. The sharp and fierce evil demon, which was as sharp as a peerless devil sword, was surging. It seemed to have the cries of billions of resentful spirits, and it was unknown how many creatures were killed to cultivate such a terrifying momentum. The man standing in the midst of the black evil demon cloud was wearing the clothes of a Yun sect disciple, but his black hair, black eyes, and cold and intimidating gaze showed that he was not a member of the Yun sect. The opponent just stood there, like a peerless devil soldier, with a fierce momentum that suppressed all the demons and made them tremble in fear. Is there still such a demon in Hanyu Mountain? At a glance, Ningpen noticed the heavenly thunder ring on the black-haired man's wrists. His indifferent expression finally couldn't hold on and revealed a shock and fear that the demons had never seen before. This demon was tamed by Lu Heng. Ningpo's words startled all the demons present. They looked once again at the terrifying man within the demonic cloud, feeling a shudder in their souls as they sensed the demonic aura that was far stronger than their own emanating from him. Such a terrifying demon, was actually subdued and captured by the wolf god. Otherwise, why would it show up just to save the white ape under the wolf god's door? Mo Yi had a frightened expression, and quickly saluted Hua Feng below, junior demon cultivator Mo Yi, greetings to the senior in the demonic path may I ask why the senior is here? Have you been insulted by the wolf god? If so, we juniors will do our best to rescue you, senior. Facing this immensely terrifying and brutal demon, even the most arrogant Mo Yi had to lower his head. However, amidst the demonic aura below, Hua Feng with black hair and black eyes, filled with evil energy, held an indifferent expression. He completely disregarded the respectful salute from Mo Yi and said coldly. Release Sun Yen, leave the peach fruits and the peach blossom divine brew, and I will not hold you accountable for your desecration of the wolf god temple. You are free to leave. Otherwise, when the sword energy soars into the sky, your blood will end up splattering on Hanyu Mountain. There is no escape. Chapter, 357 The cold and merciless words of Hua Feng instantly filled the entire Hanyu Mountain with a chilling killing intent. All the power of the ancient demon sword, Maluo evil spirit, is now under his control. As the wicked aura emanates from the sword, all the demons present can only feel their hearts pounding in a faint pain between their eyebrows. It seems as if being invisible, his chest was simultaneously pressed against by billions of sharp demon swords, making it almost impossible for him to breathe. However, what confused them even more than the threat they were facing was the fact that the demonic elder before them had such an extraordinary cultivation, yet he willingly accepted the orders of Lu Heng. Under the ink cloud cover, Mo Yi anxiously shouted, Senior. We are all fellow disciples of the demonic sect. Why make things difficult for us because of that demonic enemy, Lu Heng? If you encounter any difficulty, please tell us directly. 
we will certainly find a way to help you break free from the cage and avoid the humiliation of being enslaved by the wolf god. Underneath Hanyu Mountain, there is a terrifying demon that no one could have ever imagined. In front of the wolf god temple, even if another Lu Hain were to appear, it would not provoke such fear in Imo Yi and the others. After all, it is not surprising that the wolf god, with his unparalleled cultivation, would have left some tricks up his sleeve in the mountain. Yet what emerged from the underground was a terrifying demon, who went to great lengths to protect Lu Hang. Mo Yi and the other evil demons only feel a chilling sensation on their backs and shivers running down their spines. The fact that the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain can enslave and brainwash such savage demons is terrifying beyond belief, truly unheard of. Suddenly, Ningpa thought of a rumor and said, This is the Maoyuo sword master, the notorious Huafong. Ningpo's words caused a slight shock to Mo Yi and the other demons. Maoyuo sword master. Lowering his head to take a closer look at the man exuding demonic energy, he found that the evil aura emanating from his body was indeed somewhat similar to that of the rumored Maoyuo evil spirit. The Maoyuo evil spirit, who was rumored to be imprisoned in the heavenly thunder prison and tormented by lightning tribulation day and night, actually voluntarily came out to guard the mountain for the wolf god. The evil demons looked at each other and all had the same idea at the same time. Let's go. The terrifying power of this ancient demonic sword is permeating through, and it would be absolutely difficult to defend against if one really fought against it. Moreover, the opponent's status and identity as a predecessor in the demonic path means that they are not just someone who can be resolved through words, but a true henchman of the wolf god. All the evil demons fled immediately. Beneath the pitch-black ink cloud cover, a silent and colossal water droplet descended and fell towards the five demonic beings. Seeing this scene, Hua Feng immediately guessed the intentions of the evil demons and flew up directly. He said coldly, want to leave? It's not that easy. The Maoyuo sword's energy. Under the ink cloud cover, Hua Feng let out a loud shout, and the demonic sword energy which filled the evil demon cloud that spread throughout the entire Hanyu mountain immediately soared into the sky. Transforming into one black magic sword after another in the void. Millions of Maoyuo swords appeared at the same time, almost covering the sky. Millions of demon swords' sharp edges were all directed towards the five devil beasts underneath the ink cloud cover. As Huafeng soared into the sky, millions of the Maoyuo swords swept across like a torrent of sword chi, crazily rushing towards the five evil demons under the ink cloud cover. Kill. In Hua Feng's eyes, the killing intent surged. In the void, the formidable and sinister sword energy of magic spells was even more chilling. Upon seeing this scene, the red-blue twin devils was directly frightened and screamed in terror. What the hell is this terrifying power of the Maoyuo sword? The pitch-black droplets that fell from the ink cloud cover had already enveloped all the evil demons within them. However, at the same moment, several million Maoyuo sword auras also surged and swept through the air. In an instant, the black droplets that enveloped the five evil demons were submerged in the densely packed sword auras. The surface of the black droplets trembled wildly and were about to be pierced in no time. Seeing this scene, Mo Ye's eyebrows jumped wildly with shock on his face, almost unable to believe what was happening before his eyes. The ink cloud cover, which he had risked his life to obtain, could only persist for a few moments under the Maoyuo sword aura. Seeing the situation becoming critical, Xia Yunyang suddenly rushed to the red-blue twin devils aside and snatched the white ape away from him. Then she raised Sun Yen and shouted at Huafeng below, you take another step closer now let the white ape's blood splatter on the spot. The tactics used to drive away the threat of the peach tree were now being employed again. However, amidst the eerie magic and biting sword energy of the millions of swords surging, Hua Feng with his black hair and eyes remained cold and indifferent, carrying with him an overwhelming malicious aura as he charged towards this place. He ignored Xia Yunyang's threat outright. Between his right hand, the magic and malicious sword energy frantically surged and gathered, actually condensing into reality. And directly using millions of sword energy to refine a truly genuine Maoyuo sword that was almost indistinguishable from a real one. The sharp sword aura directly slashed towards Xia Yunyang. In an instant, the sword edge pierced through the outermost level of protection of the ink cloud cover and slashed towards Xia Yunyang's neck. 
The outer level of the ink cloud cover, under the Mauyuo sword, was surprisingly fragile, as if there was no protection at all. The cold sword energy penetrated through her body, instantly making Xia Yunyang feel chilly all over and her limbs stiff. As she was about to have her head cut off, Ningpe, who had been silent all along, bravely made a move. A bright crystal head suddenly flew out of Ning Po's sleeve and instantly met Hua Feng's Maoyuo sword. At the moment of the clash between the two sides. With a loud bang, the terrifying impact exploded directly beside Xia Yunyang's ear. She groaned, blood spurted from her nostrils and ears, and she was shaken away to the side. However, the brilliant crystal head was full of cracks and almost falling apart after the attack. Using Ningpe to offer the crystal head, she appeared weak and seemed to have suffered a huge injury. However, when Huafeng made his move, he only had a slight tremble in his right hand, and after a few breaths, he recovered. He was not injured at all. However, just as Huafeng was about to wield the Maoyuo sword again to kill Xia Yunyang, who was bleeding from seven wounds and injured, she suddenly threw away the white ape in her hand and shouted angrily. She actually forced herself to activate her true qi despite her injuries. The pitch-black demonic energy surged around her body. A large, translucent scorpion tail emerged directly behind Xia Yunyang and viciously stabbed towards Hua Feng outside of ink cloud cover. At that moment, Hua Feng's expression was slightly stunned. Although the translucent scorpion tail was not particularly fast, it proved to be inevitable and blocked all the escape routes for Hua Feng. He could only watch helplessly as the huge scorpion tail struck towards him. And then. Ah! A painful groan escaped from Hua Feng's mouth. At the moment when the scorpion tail pierced the back of his hand, an indescribable and intense pain surged out. With the strength of Maoyuo's sword master, he couldn't resist it. The Maoyuo sword, with its chilling sword aura, was unconsciously released by him. Unbearable pain twisted his face and convulsed his body. And the five demons inside the ink cloud cover took advantage of the moment when Huafeng was stung by the scorpion tail and in great pain, and fled directly into the distance. Black water droplets turned into an escape light, rushing towards the distance. And the ink cloud cover in the sky instantly collapsed, turning into countless mysterious black substances, spreading among the mountains. Chapter 358 As the demons fled in front of him, the unbearable pain allowed Huafeng to do nothing but forcefully concentrate his mind amidst the endless agony. By controlling the direction of the Maoyuo sword that had flown away from his grasp, he aimed it directly at the escaping dark water droplets in the distance and struck a blow. Amidst the raging demonic sword energy, Huafeng only heard a piercing scream. Immediately afterwards, everything in sight was engulfed by the black substance that dispersed after the ink cloud cover collapsed. In Hanyu Mountain, the ink cloud cover suddenly collapsed and burst, turning into strange black substances that submerged everything for dozens of miles. Even in Shuishin village outside the mountain, villagers working in the fields were also submerged by the strange black substance while in a daze. This eerie black substance arrived so suddenly and so violently that the creatures around Hanyu Mountain couldn't react in time. Furthermore, within the black substance, the cultivator's divine sense was greatly restricted and unable to sweep and track things further afield. When all members of the wind strike department exerted their efforts and cleared the black substance in the mountain with Chinchi within a dozen breaths, the trace of the five demons had vanished beneath the huge Hanyu mountain. What appeared before the wind strike department was the slightly devastated wolf god temple and Huafeng sitting silently in front of it, covering his right hand without saying a word. The fat bird with red eyes was crouching in front of Huafeng, curiously looking at his slightly purple hand. A uh, Qian, who saw this scene, paused and landed in front of the wolf god temple, curiously asking, Brother Hua, what happened to your hand? When Huafeng entered the mountain, Qian had seen him before as a disciple of the Yun sect who was possessed by the Maoyuo sword, therefore, she didn't treat him as an enemy of the demons. Although in terms of age, she could easily be Huafeng's grandmother, she still addresses him as Brother Hua. Hua Feng watched as the girl Qian and the old priestly Pe descended, and after a moment of silence, he still trembled with pain in his face. But he still forced himself to speak slowly, there were a total of five demon heads, carrying peach blossom divine brew, nine ripe peaches, and Sun Yan ran away. 
As for the direction he went, I can't he track it, and I suggest that you all don't go after him either. Amidst the astonished gaze of everyone in the wind strike department, Hua Feng slowly spoke, of the five demon heads. Even the weakest was at the innate realm, and the strongest had trained with a strange crystal human head, possessing extraordinary strength. Although I have gravely injured two of them, the five innate realm demon heads are fleeing side by side, which is something ordinary people cannot track or stop. Don't needlessly sacrifice your lives chasing after them. Especially that female demon who has turned into a scorpion, her scorpion tail is unavoidable. Once you get close to a certain distance, you will be stung by it without reason. Raising his hand which still had black and blue bruises, Hua Feng took a deep breath and said, although the poison of the scorpion tail is not fatal and doesn't harm the soul, even ordinary people would be in grave danger if stung, Wuyo. The unbearable pain is something that even the wolf god himself would writhe in agony if he were present. These five demon lords each have their own advantages, and cooperate with each other seamlessly. They have definitely been planning for a long time. We should wait for the wolf god to come back and discuss how to save Sun Yen. While speaking, Hua Feng's right hand, which was stung by the scorpion tail, still trembled unconsciously. Several members of the Li tribe looked at each other in confusion at the sight. Is the poison of the scorpion spirit really that powerful? The demonic forces fled in Hanyu Mountain, but Lu Hang now had no time to deal with the affairs in the mountain for the time being. Except when Hua Feng opened the heavenly thunder prison in the underground of the Divine Palace remotely before he came out, he was busy commanding the heavenly thunder and striking the evil demons below for the rest of the time. Under the cover of calamity clouds, the demonic spirits trapped tightly in the holy fire demon binding net in the green hell cave were still struggling frantically. What is even more strange is that these demonic spirits were cultivating their cultivation under the calamity clouds, but they surprisingly didn't attract the attention of the calamity clouds above their heads. The concealment technique used by the lord of all demons to hide his demonic aura is simply terrifyingly powerful. In order to help the wizards trap and eliminate all these demonic spirits, Lu Heng had to blend into the calamity clouds and rely on his thoughts to trigger heavenly thunderstrikes. And at the moment of the outbreak of the war, a woman named Lian Sanqing directly rushed towards Lu Heng. She wanted to find Lu Heng and ask him about the matter with the heavenly demon lord. But Lu Heng has no time to deal with her now. Moreover, when it comes to her strange martial arts that can harm people from a distance, Lu Hang has no other means of defense except to use the Heavenly Thunder Sword to kill her directly. Therefore, Lu Hang directly shouted, My friend. Your opponent has appeared. In the void, Jiu Mie's figure appeared and helplessly faced the murderous Lian Sanqing. He said, Friend Lu Hang, you really love to drag others into the mud. As soon as the voice fell, Jiu Mie clasped his hands together and his whole body was illuminated by a dazzling golden light, instantly revealing a majestic Dharma image. The originally thin and frail figure suddenly became strong and sturdy in the blink of an eye. Even the skin and eyes turned into a bright golden color, transforming directly into an invincible golden deity, facing Lian Sanqing. If you want to find friend Lu Heng, you have to pass through me first. So spoke Jiu Mie. In response, Lian Sangqing's gaze became cold and she directly slapped her palm without even bothering to speak any nonsense. With a loud sound, the palm strike that had previously shattered the wife of the Lord of All Demons from a distance reappeared once again. However, when this palm landed on Jiu Mie's dazzling golden body, it only caused a huge boom, as if a giant hammer had struck solid steel. Although the deafening sound was unbearable, it didn't harm Jiu Mie's golden body in the slightest. Amidst Lian Sangqing's astonished gaze, Jiu Mie looked troubled with his hands clasped together and said, Miss, your palm strength is astonishing and your footwork is bizarre. I am no match for you. Fortunately, I have the indestructible golden body and impenetrable dharma. Although I can't beat the young lady, she won't be able to destroy my physical form for a while why don't we stop here and wait for the demons in the green hell cave to be captured, then let friend Lu Heng talk with you. Although he was self-confident about his indestructible golden body, Jiu Mie still didn't he want to fight with this thorny woman. It is a pity that Jiu Mie had good intentions, but Lian Sangqing was unwilling to stop. She coldly snorted and said, It's just a strong turtle shell, watch me break it. 
After speaking, Lian Sangqing circulated her true energy again and punched out. Under the sky, a deafening roar of tremendous magnitude reverberated continuously. Resounding on the battlefield of the decisive battle between witches and evildoers, it was like an inspiring war drum that continued incessantly. It was a pity that what was struck was not a real war drum, but Zhou Mie's face that was wearing a bitter expression. Beside him, Lian Sangqing moved like a ghostly figure, constantly delivering powerful punches and strikes. Each blow was enough to take down a peak-level cultivator with a direct hit. Her extremely eccentric body movement was so dazzling to watch that it made one's eyes spin. Many times, Jiu Mie could not even see where Lian Sangqing's fists and palms were coming from before he was hit viciously. Normally, in the midst of such a violent and fierce bombardment, even peak-level cultivators would have long since been defeated. Although Jiu Mie, who had a face full of sorrow and distress, was hit with tremendous force, not a single crack appeared on his dazzling golden body. Meanwhile, deep in the mountainous forests below, the holy fire demon binding net blazed a brilliant crimson, its flames burning so fiercely that they almost outshone the sunlight in the sky above. Trapped within the demon binding net and driven to a dead end, the lord of all demons roared and bellowed, unleashing a furious stream of curses upon the sky above. Lu Hain. You will have a horrible death. High in the sky, the figure of Lu Hain emerged slowly from within the roiling clouds. As Lu Hang looked down upon the lord of all demons and his spouse, herded together by wizards such as Lianshan Jing into a single area below, his expression remained utterly devoid of mercy. This couple possessed astonishing strength although the lord of all demons' cultivation was only at the level of heaven door, the surging power of his true energy was actually more terrifying than that of ordinary innate masters. Not to mention Wan Rong, who is even more powerful than the lord of all demons. Although defeated by Lian Sanqing earlier, it was solely due to her inscrutable body movement martial art, and any other innate master would have met the same outcome. It was only during a real battle that the true horror of Wan Rong's prowess was revealed even when Lian Shan Jing personally took action, she was unable to suppress the woman known as Wan Rong. Now, relying on the concerted efforts of the wizards, they managed to reluctantly force the couple together through coercion. Having witnessed the success of the plan, Lu Heng immediately appeared from the roiling clouds, no longer spectating. Confronted with the roaring lord of all demons below, Lu Heng remained indifferent, gesturing with a cold expression. Clang! With a clear and crisp ringing of a sword, it instantly drowned out all other sounds in the world. Amidst the terrified and despairing gazes of the demons in the Green Hell Cave, the rumored unparalleled ancient dark green sword flew silently out from behind its owner Lu Ai, hovering soundlessly in the sky. Coldly pointing downwards towards the lord of all demons couple. Without even exchanging pleasantries, let alone inquiring about the last words of the cave master, Lu Heng drew his sword directly. Amidst the clanging of sword cries, a blazing red light flashed across the sky. Subsequently, the demons wailed and perished. Facing the descending god-slaying heavenly thunder, both the lord of all demons who can rival the innate, and Wan Rong in the purple dress who is overwhelmed by it. Become as fragile as a sandcastle being swept away by a big wave in an instant, they melt away and no longer exist. The battlefield, which was filled with the continuous sounds of shouting and killing, fell silent for a moment. The remaining demons all had terrified expressions, shocked at the power of this sword, and were left speechless. The ominous aura of thunder reverberates through the mountains and forests. Even just watching the descent of this sword, the demons in the mountains and forests were shaken by an indescribable sense of dread and fear. Even the most ferocious Lian Sangqing subconsciously stopped her hands at this moment. She stood in the void, incredulously looking at Lu Heng in his white robe, barely able to believe her own eyes. God's downfall heavenly thunder. Lian Sangqing's widened eyes were filled with shock. As one who had witnessed the god slaying heavenly thunder slaughtering creatures firsthand, she had a deep understanding of the horror of the earthly catastrophe, a thing that came to annihilate countless lives. And the painful memories. This terrifying thing, which has always only destroyed and tortured living beings, has actually appeared in the human world. And it was even controlled by someone. Lian Sangqing looked at Lu Heng, who was dressed in white, in a daze and suddenly remembered something. Was it you who released me from underground? Chapter, 
359. Lien Sangqing's stunning and abrupt scream shattered the almost suffocating silence on the battlefield. The demons and wizards suddenly regained their senses, but at this moment, both sides of good and evil stopped their hands tacitly and silently looked at the shocking and inexplicable Lien Sangqing in the void. And Lu Heng, who was being questioned by Lien Sangqing. Jiu Mie, shining in golden light, clasped his hands together and hurriedly said, Yes, yes, that's it. Friend Lu Heng is the one who rescued you from the cage that was like a sea of suffering. He traveled 3,000 li with one sword, and his sword aura covered 15 cities. Where his sword fell was the place where the girl was sealed. When the sword aura fell, it broke the seal of the evil cauldron, and that's what allowed the girl to see the daylight. Lu Heng's face changed drastically when he heard Jiu Mie's words, and he hurriedly said, You can't say such things lightly, my friend. You can't just say whatever you want. If it were someone else, it wouldn't matter that Jiu Mie said that. After all, a normal person would know that it was Lu Heng who saved her and would surely repay the favor. But the woman in front of him is like a lunatic. Under the astonished gaze of onlookers, Lien Sangqing, dressed in vibrant silk and a blood-stained dress, snorted coldly and said. I knew it was you. Looking at Lu Heng again, Lien Sangqing said, Thank you very much for saving me. There is something I must tell you. During the first millennium I was trapped underground, I told myself that if someone could rescue me, I would kill for them, regardless of the strength of the target. During the second millennium, I vowed that if someone could rescue me, I would fulfill one of their wishes and satisfy one of their requests. During the tenth millennium, I swore that if someone could rescue me, I would devote myself to them, even until death. And by the twentieth millennium, and even in the long and distant time that followed, so distant that even I forgot how long I had been underground, I told myself every day and every night. If someone rescues me from underground, I will tear them to pieces. Amid Jiu Mie's stunned gaze, Lien Sangqing, dressed in a bright red wedding dress, revealed a brilliant and ferocious smile to Lu Heng. Congratulations, Lu Heng. From this day on, Lien Sangqing will be with you in life and in death. In the mountains and forests, both the righteous and evil sides were dumbfounded when they heard these words. Lu Heng covered his face with an expression of unbearable pain and said, My friend, you have really screwed me over this time. After speaking, facing Lien Sangqing's bright smile, Lu Heng sighed and said, You can kill me, but you'll have to step over the body of my friend first. Your martial arts skills are indeed impressive, but you cannot even break through my friend's indestructible golden body, so you are not qualified to kill me. First, break through my friend's indestructible golden body, then we'll talk about other things. With just one sentence, Lu Heng left Jiu Mie stunned and speechless, Hey, hey! Friend Lu Heng, you! Lien Sangqing snorted coldly and looked again at Jiu Mie, who was shining in a golden light, saying, Before killing you, I naturally have to destroy this old monk first. However, considering that you have no time today, I'll spare your lives. But come back another day and I'll kill you hey. Old monk, what's your name? Asked Lien Sangqing. Jiu Mie looked bitter and clasped his hands together, sighing heavily. I am the god of Zhong Mountain, Zhu Jiuyo, he said. If the young lady wants to pursue this matter, just come to Zhong Mountain and I, Zhu Jiuyo, will accompany you at any time. Zhu Jiuyo, the candle dragon's name. As Jiu Mie said this, the expressions of both sides, the righteous and the evil, became extremely subtle. Lien Sangqing nodded and said, Good. Jiu Mie, the one at the peak of immortality and the most arrogant in the world. I'll remember that. After speaking, Lien Sangqing, dressed in bloody clothes, didn't even look at the reactions of Lu Heng and Jiu Mie. She directly vanished into the sky with her nimble light. But it was true that she had no intention of intervening in the matter of Lu Heng and others eradicating demons today. Watching Lien Sangqing leave, Lu Heng coughed and said, My life and property will rely on you from today on. As long as you are alive, this woman won't come after me well, my friend, you must take care of yourself. Jiu Mie's expression became more and more sorrowful. Alas fate plays tricks on us, fate plays tricks on us, how could she know my name? Jiu Mie murmured, then looked down at the many demons in the mountains and said, 
let's take out the demons here first several weaklings escaped during the previous attempt to kill the lord of all demons couple. We can't let the remaining ones back into the mountains. Chiu Mie's words made Lu Hun nod. I completely agree with my friend's opinion. Let's take out the demons here first, then we'll see. As he spoke, Lu Hun looked in the direction of the distance. But he wasn't looking towards Hanyu Mountain because he had already somewhat grasped the situation within the mountain through the miniature version of the Heavenly Thunder Prison on Huafeng's wrist. However, what Lu Hun was looking at was the direction in which a demon was escaping. Earlier when the Lord of All Demons and his wife were surrounded and killed, several of the demons led by Madam Green Bamboo took advantage of the chaos and escaped from the Holy Fire Demon Binding Net. Madam Green Bamboo, who had met Lu Heng several times but had never fought him, seemed timid but was actually also in the innate realm. Her cultivation was not inferior to that of Xiao Juechen among the four elders. Placed outside, she could also be considered a big demon of the demonic path. However, it seems that most of her cultivation was focused on the spells for self-preservation and fleeing. During the battle between the wizards and demons inside the Holy Fire Demon Binding Net, the pressure Madam Green Bamboo brought to the wizards was the weakest among the four elders and the three demon generals. However, when the flaw of the demon binding net was exposed, she was the only demon among all present who managed to break free from the net using magic and flee with several other demon generals. However, even though Madam Green Bamboo managed to escape, the wizards had no intention of letting her go. Gong Shu Jie directly chased after her alone. With Gong Shu Jie's strength, Madam Green Bamboo would probably find it difficult to escape unscathed. At this thought, Lu Heng's emotions became somewhat complex. This green snake is intricately entangled with him in a web of karma. Not to mention that Lu Heng's past was harmed by Madam Green Bamboo, even the little fox that he admires was raised by Madam Green Bamboo herself. Despite the numerous karmic ties between the two, Madam Green Bamboo is nothing but an insignificant minor character to the present-day Lu Heng. Whether she dies under Gong Shu Jie's hands or escapes from him, it seems unimportant to Lu Heng. Just like this group of demons from the Green Hell Cave in front of him. They were the first group of demonic cultivators that Lu Heng encountered after arriving in this world, and the dark cloud that had been hanging over his head for a long time. But today's Green Hell Cave has already been defeated and completely ruined. In Lu Hang's heart, the three words Green Hell Cave no longer hold any weight. For the present Lu Hang, it is more important to deal with the abducted Sun Yen than to take care of the remaining aftermath, sweep away the remnants of the demonic cultivators. Just tying up loose ends, one should also participate personally. Consider it a farewell to the previous self. Lu Heng smiled and looked into the distance once again. Just wait a little longer, Sun Yen. Your master will come to save you soon. Chapter, 360 After Lian Sanqing left the battlefield and stopped causing trouble, Lu Heng and the others exerted all their efforts to deal with the remaining demons and evil demons. As a result, all of the powerful forces in the Green Hell Cave that were trapped in the Holy Fire Demon Binding Net were quickly killed and annihilated. Although the Lord of All Demons couple was strong, without the suppression of Lu Hang's heavenly thunder sword. Giving them the freedom to act would result in the Fire God Temple side suffering heavy losses even if they could kill all the demons and evil demons in the Green Hell Cave. However, because the heavenly thunder sword destroyed the Lord of All Demons couple with a single strike, eliminating the two most difficult demons. The remaining innate demon cultivators, Xiao Juechen and General Tiger Dragon, although strong, were vastly outnumbered and could not affect the course of the battle. When the sun began to set, the group of demons in the mountains and forests were completely eradicated. As for the demonic army that was heading towards Yanjing City, they fell into almost all of the traps set by the wizards of the Fire God Temple halfway through and were almost entirely trapped. Compared to the demons here around Luhang, those heading towards Yanjing City were almost all cannon fodder and small fry. After the wizards eliminated the group of demons led by the Lord of All Demons, they were able to easily defeat the remaining evil demons heading towards Yanjing City with just a flick of their hands. At this moment, when the dust had settled, Lu Heng bid farewell to Lianshan Jing. I will go back to the mountains to check the situation first, and the remaining tasks will be entrusted to all of you. As Lu Heng spoke, he grabbed Jiumya and said, Dear friend, 
come with me for a journey. Lu Heng was worried that he might encounter Lian Sanqing blocking his way or the sinister demon shadow that had cursed and harmed him, so he pulled Jiu Mia along for the journey. The Heavenly Thunder Sword can only be used once, and now that it has been used, it is the weakest moment for Lu Heng. Although he still had his trump card, the aura of thunder that he had been accumulating for years could be used to defend against the enemy. There is also his Requiem Seal. But just to be safe, Lu Heng dragged Jiu Mia along as a bodyguard to accompany him. To this request, Jiu Mia naturally could not refuse, and could only let Lu Heng drag him along. Xiao Ai went to Yanjing City to pick up Shen Wuyo and his sister, and then the group of five left the battlefield of the Wizard and Demon War, heading straight towards Hanyu Mountain. It is worth mentioning that the Lord of All Demons' long-awaited dragon soul appeared at a crucial moment in the battle between wizards and demons. However, at that time, neither side of the war could afford to divert their attention to capture the earth dragon soul, so they could only watch helplessly as the dragon soul flew into the sky and disappeared into the clouds. Of course, Lu Heng didn't care about this dragon soul. He headed west all the way to quickly reach Hanyu Mountain. Although his physical body had long arrived, Lu Heng didn't let his physical body appear. It's better to keep the secret of his physical body and spiritual soul being independent of each other hidden. Not long after Lu Heng and the others left the battlefield, they saw a ray of light rushing towards them in the distance, which turned out to be Gong Shu Jia who had previously chased Madame Green Bamboo and other demons. Lu Heng stopped in mid-air and greeted with a smile, Gong Shu Wuzhu, have you eradicated all the evil? Gong Shu Jia shook his head, then nodded and said, more or less except for Madame Green Bamboo, all the other demons have been eliminated. Although Madame Green Bamboo escaped, she was hit by my Yen Luo Palm, which shattered all her muscles and veins, and severely damaged her cultivation. Even if she managed to run away, she won't survive for long. Gong Shu Jie's words made Lu Heng fall into a brief silence. However, Lu Heng didn't offer any evaluations, but instead he bowed to Gong Shu Jie again, bidding farewell to each other. After that, there were no more incidents on the road. The previously departed Lian Sangqing didn't spring a surprise attack on Lu Heng halfway through the journey as he had feared. And the bizarre demon shadow that Lu Heng had been guarding against never appeared either, as if Lu Heng's journey with Jiu Mia had scared it off. And so, Lu Heng and the others arrived smoothly at Hanyu Mountain and landed in front of the Wolf God Temple. The devastated Hanyu Mountain was being cleaned up by several cultivators from Huafeng and the Wind Strike Department. Upon seeing Lu Heng return, Huafeng's face was ashamed as he said, I was not strong enough and allowed that group of demons to escape. However, Lu Heng patted his shoulder and said, It's fine, they cannot run away Xiao Ai, didn't you make a magical artifact using Sun Yan's hair? Could you pluck a few strands off and give them to me now? Tracking someone's whereabouts through their personal hair is not a particularly profound secret technique, and Lu Heng, who has read extensively, naturally knows how to do it. After receiving the white monkey hair handed over by Xiao Ai, Lu Heng said, it would have been fortunate if they didn't capture Sun Yen. But by taking him away, they have actually given me a target to track. Lu Heng smiled and said, next, I will go after Sun Yen. Please take care of Hanyu Mountain for me, friend Jiu Mie. If that Lian Sangqing comes knocking on the door, my good friend, you can just use the indestructible body to face her. Jiu Mie's eyes widened at Lu Heng's words. But there was no way to refuse, so he could only say, but let me say this first, your Hanyu Mountain is poor and desolate, and even a place to eat can't be found in the mountain. The peaches on the back of your mountain have ripened, and I won't leave them for you. Jiu Mie's words made Lu Heng laugh heartily, saying, as long as my friend likes it, feel free to take them. After speaking, Lu Heng looked towards Hua Feng and said, Brother Hua has made a deal with Ma Yuo evil spirit to let it rest for half a year. During this time, Brother Hua will take over its body well, why don't you take advantage of this time to reunite with your family in the East Sea? Hua Feng, however, shook his head and declined the proposal given by Lu Heng. I understand the good intentions of the wolf god, but half a year of being together won't change anything, said the junior. The child has finally adapted to life without his father around. If I were to go and see him, and then disappear again in less than half a year, he will find it even harder to endure. It would be better to not see each other at all, 
so that both parties can be spared the agony of separation in the future. While speaking, Huafeng let out a slight sigh and said, Sai must have had the same idea. This is why she didn't bring the child to visit the mountains. She is afraid that it would be difficult for the wolf god and also considering the child's situation. Moreover, the wolf god promised to everyone present that he would not dispatch Huafeng nor would he allow the Maoyuo evil spirit to exist. If I were to bring the Maoyuo evil spirit to the mortal realm, wouldn't that be a humiliation to the wolf god's reputation? At this point, Huafeng folded his hands and said, So I will stay in the mountains and guard them for the wolf god. If there are any more evil demons causing trouble, I can also intervene in time and prevent today's events from happening again. Huafeng's words made Lu Heng fall silent for a moment. He looked at the slightly disheartened man in front of him and knew that he must have been longing to reunite with his family at the Luan Xian Gu, and to hold his child whom he had never met before. However, under such circumstances, Huafeng didn't allow himself to take the Maoyuo evil spirit down the mountain to the mortal world. Despite his young age, the young man of the Yun sect has already experienced many ups and downs in life. However, now he is full of vitality and spirit compared to when he was first met. On the contrary, he seemed a bit weathered and old. Thinking about this, Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh and said, If we encounter such a situation again, Brother Hua, please don't come out again. If you are trapped in this Hanyu mountain and unable to reunite with your family because of me, then my conscience will be troubled, said Lu Heng. Chapter 361 In the early morning, a slightly cool breeze from the mountain passed through and rustled the curtains of the bamboo house at the mountain top. As the window screen shook, it made a soft rustling sound. The girl sitting cross-legged in the bamboo house hurriedly opened her eyes and exclaimed, Madam Green Bamboo. However, when the little fox demon stood up, she realized that there was nothing in front of her, Madam Green Bamboo hadn't returned, it was just the wind rustling the window screen. In the empty room, the little fox demon gazed stupefied at the misty morning fog in the mountains beyond the balcony, let out a melancholic sigh. Why hasn't Madame Green Bamboo returned yet, she wondered aloud. The little fox demon's face was filled with a worried and distressed expression. Three days ago, she had a terrifying nightmare in which Madame Green Bamboo crawled on the ground, covered in blood. While above her the sky was filled with lightning and thunder, and countless wizards were roaring in anger, determined to exterminate the evil demons. Even though three days had passed since that terrifying image and she knew it was just a nightmare, the little fox demon couldn't help but feel scared every time she thought about it. Madam Green Bamboo said that this time would be her final journey out of the mountains, and after helping the cave master obtain the dragon soul, she would return. After that, the two of them would go far away from the Fire Pass country and find a place where they could live in complete seclusion without anyone disturbing them. They would never again be involved in the struggle between good and evil in this world. However, for some reason, ever since Madame Green Bamboo left the Green Bamboo Cottage, an unshakable worry had been plaguing her. And this inexplicable anxiety and fear reached its peak three days ago. Madame Green Bamboo said that cultivators all experience a connection between heaven and man, and we should trust our own intuition. But this time, Su Xiao Xiao hoped that she was just being overly anxious and paranoid, rather than something truly happening to Madame Green Bamboo. In the room, the little fox had a bitter and sorrowful expression on her face. She really wanted to go down the mountain and inquire about the situation, but now that the situation in the Fire Pass country was chaotic. She would be extremely vulnerable outside of the green bamboo cottage, when even her heaven door had not been opened. Any passing evil demon could easily catch her and eat her. She could only sit alone in the green bamboo cottage, silently waiting for Madam Green Bamboo to return. Bang! A strange muffled sound suddenly came from outside the green bamboo cottage. The sound was very faint, but the little fox's pointed fox ears suddenly stood up and she jumped up entirely. With the sudden surge of indescribable emotions, the little girl rushed out of the door anxiously. Under the morning sun, what appeared before her was a woman lying unconscious on the ground. The familiar clothing and the friendly face. Madam Green Bamboo Su Xiao Xiao was both surprised and happy. She hurried over and hugged the unconscious Madam Green Bamboo, anxiously saying, Madam Green Bamboo, please wake up. It's Xiao Xiao, 
it shall shall. However, the call of the little fox demon was unable to awaken the unconscious Madam Green Bamboo. Under the bright sunshine, Madam Green Bamboo's complexion was pale like a dead person, and her body was so cold that it felt like ice. The little fox demon had only been hugging her for over ten breaths, but she became so cold that her whole body was trembling and even the cultivator's body could not resist this strange coldness. Her complexion became even more anxious and fearful, tightly gripping her heart and making her breath quicken. Madam Green Bamboo. Please wake up. Wake up quickly. Under the sunshine, the little fox demon cried and shook Madam Green Bamboo in her arms in despair. However, Madam Green Bamboo who had raised her and loved her like a mother, completely stopped responding, even her breath gradually weakened. The breath that belonged to the living was fading away inside Madam Green Bamboo's body. The twilight breath of the deceased gradually emerged. The little fox's cry became increasingly desperate. Who will come and save who will come and save Madam Green Bamboo? Who will come and save Madam Green Bamboo? However, the Green Bamboo Cottage was located in a remote area, far away from the worldly bustle, and it was simply impossible for anyone to come. Even if the little fox spirit's cry was more heartfelt, it was impossible for anyone to come and save her. Normally, it is like this. A gentle breeze brushed by, and outside the gate of Green Bamboo Cottage, a silent figure appeared. That Wu Gu, who had disappeared for several years since parting ways in the South Sea, reappeared before the fox demon Su Xiao Xiao. Facing the bewildered eyes of the little fox spirit, Wu Gu sighed and said, Madam Green Bamboo has been struck by one of the Fire Pass Country's divine and extreme skills, the Yen Luo Palm. The meridians all over her body have been shattered, and her soul has suffered injury. It's already a miracle that she managed to escape and make it here alive. For ordinary people, this is an irreparable injury. Of course, to me, although the injury is terrible, as long as the person is still breathing, I as one of the ten witches of Spirit Mountain can save them. Despite the little fox's expression of immense joy, Wu Gu shook her head and said, however, the rule of the ten witches of Spirit Mountain is not to save wicked demons. If I were to save your Madam Green Bamboo, I would suffer the pain of the blood oath. It could mean my soul scattering, or worse, being tortured before having my soul dispersed. So it's impossible for me to help your Madam Green Bamboo. Wu Gu's words made the smile on the little fox spirit's face freeze. The hope that the little girl had just lit up was instantly extinguished. But immediately after, Wu Gu said, Although I can't save her myself, you can you're not one of the ten witches of Spirit Mountain. If you learn my medical skills, saving Madam Green Bamboo will be as easy as turning over your hand. Wu Gu's words made the little fox tremble and bow her head in regret. If only I had known if only I had learned medicine back then. The little fox's despair and regret were written all over her face. Wu Gu smiled and said, How about it? Do you regret leaving now? Hey little girl, you finally know what regret feels like, don't you? If it were someone else, if you dared to abandon me and leave, you can forget about ever seeing a good expression on my face again. But who made you such a likable little girl hmm, now I will give you one last chance. If you are willing to become my disciple and carry on my legacy, I will teach you the wonderful medical skills of healing all beings. I guarantee that you will be able to save even the life of your Madam Green Bamboo. How about it? Are you willing to become my disciple now? Wu Gu's words left the little fox demon looking bewildered. But even if I were to learn medicine from you now, it's already too late to save Madam Green Bamboo. Wu Gu glared at her and scolded, Who do you think you're looking down on? As long as you are willing to bow and become my disciple, I will immediately teach you how to refine medicine on the spot and guarantee that Madam Green Bamboo's life can be extended. After Wu Gu finished speaking, a grotesque bird with a human face flew out and landed nearby, screeching in a shrill voice. Don't believe this old woman, she's just bragging. Madam Green Bamboo is beyond saving. Letting her die peacefully now can spare her any further pain. If you believe this old woman forcibly extend her life, even if she is saved, she will undoubtedly become a disabled person with shattered tendons and bones and depleted cultivation. A demon woman at the level of innate realm, if turned into a waste, what's the point of living? It's better to die. Chapter, 362 
the sudden appearance of the human-faced owl startled Su Xiao Xiao. Before Wu Gu could retort, the human-faced owl continued to shrilly cry out. Moreover, you know nothing about medicine and pharmacy. Even if you could use the soul-prolonging pill taught by this old woman to prolong her life, it would only be temporary. Before completely mastering this old woman's ultimate technique, the Nine Heavens Divine Needle, you can only rely on medicine to keep your godmother's life hanging by a thread. And every time one eats the soul-prolonging pill, it is more painful than death. If I were Madame Green Bamboo, I would rather die here than live a miserable life. The human-faced owl screeched and screamed at the top of its lungs. However, as soon as that harsh sound fell, Madame Green Bamboo in the arms of the little fox demon weakly opened one eye and murmured with her last breath. I am willing. The sudden weak words from Madame Green Bamboo made the area outside the Green Bamboo residence slightly quiet. Then, the human-faced owl opened its mouth and spat out a mouthful of phlegm. He. Toy. After spitting phlegm, the human-faced owl finally spoke, Look, she is already on the verge of death. Let Madame Green Bamboo go. Leaving now is truly the best way to die. After the human-faced owl finished speaking, Wu Gu, who had been restraining herself for a long time, finally couldn't help but speak. You filthy bird. Haven't been disciplined in days, do you want to play around? What does it have to do with me taking an apprentice when it comes to you, a spare food material? Keep making noise, I will stew you in a pot. Wu Gu's scolding left the little fox demon stunned. It was the first time she had seen which Wu Gu swear like this. But thinking about what the human-faced owl had just said, she couldn't care about her shock and hurriedly said, Noble lady. I am willing to be your apprentice and inherit your mantle. I beg you to accept me as your humble disciple. I am willing to serve and follow you for my whole life, only asking that you teach me how to rescue Madame Green Bamboo. As the little fox demon spoke, she cowed out to Wu Gu repeatedly, paying respects as if to a master. As she received the little fox demon's kowtows, Wu Gu glared at the human-faced owl nearby and mouthed a curse. If you cause any more trouble, I'll stew you and make soup tonight. After warning the human-faced owl, Wu Gu quickly helped Su Xiao Xiao up and smiled kindly, saying, Good. Very well, I will teach you the method of refining the soul prolonging pill and help you take revenge for Madame Green Bamboo. After that, I will teach you the life-saving Nine Heavens Divine Needle. As long as you master it, reviving Madame Green Bamboo will be a piece of cake. Well, since time is of the essence, we can skip the formalities for now. We'll make up for the apprenticeship ceremony later. Let me first teach you how to refine the reviving soul pill. Outside the bamboo house, Wu Gu's face was full of joy. In contrast, the human-faced owl, with its fierce appearance and ominous expression, snorted discontentedly, flapped its wings and flew away. It was indeed afraid of being made into a stew. After all, this old woman is a person of her word. Wu Gu accepting new apprentices and a fox demon paying her respects at the small bamboo house. While in the mountains to the north of the Fire Pass country's border, the harsh wind howled and all things withered away. The land that borders to the north between the Fire Pass country and Yoshion country seems to have been in a barren state for a very long time. Pitch black desolate mountains, rugged and treacherous cliffs jutting out of the earth like the ribs of a consumptive patient. Not to mention the dense jungles to the south and the wandering birds and beasts in the mountains, even wild grass is rare in this desolate mountain. Such a barren land cannot be called a no man's land anymore. One might even say that it is a dead land outright. As for the Fire Pass country in the Yoshion country, this vast, barren land which stretches thousands of miles is the most solid natural barrier. Apart from cultivators with extraordinary cultivation bases, ordinary merchants are unable to cross this wasteland. As a result, for a long time, the Fire Pass country located in the southeast corner had little contact with the outside world. Because to the east and south of the border lies a vast sea, to the west an endless desert, and to the north a barren, lifeless land. Apart from cultivators, it is rare to see people from outside of this country. And in the midst of this barren and lifeless land, there is now a group of demons lurking. After escaping from Hanyu Mountain, they fled all the way north, 
hiding in the barren and lifeless land at the edge of the country's border to avoid being caught by pursuers. However, to their surprise, it had been three days since they escaped from Hanyu Mountain, but there was still no sign of pursuers. According to the news from the outside world, the wolf god is still staying at Hanyu Mountain and has not immediately rushed to rescue his disciple as they had expected. Inside the pitch black cave, several demons stand facing each other. Deep inside the cave, multiple levels of formations have been set up to isolate any breath or scent from being tracked, ensuring that no one can follow and reach this place. However, even so, the demons are still uneasy. They are always ready to flee and prepared to escape. Even Emoyi, who was injured when he escaped from Hanyu Mountain and now his condition has been getting worse, has also been tense these days and dares not be careless. Looking at the demons present there, Xia Yunyang, who had just returned from outside, took a deep breath and said. We have received reliable news that the cave master was killed by the wolf god with a single sword strike outside Yanjing city three days ago. The many demon soldiers and generals who followed the cave master were also all executed, and not one of them survived. On the day of the demon's annihilation, blood was splattered over hundreds of miles of land outside Yanjing city, directly turning the mountains and forests into blood red. They were unable to capture the dragon soul, and it directly fled beyond the sky, disappearing into the clouds. A clear and concise report was given regarding the latest obtained reliable news. Xia Yunyang looked at the demons present there and said, Now that the Green Hell Cave has been completely destroyed, I have lost my refuge. The cave master who promised you the dragon soul is also nowhere to be found. The road ahead, we can only walk it ourselves. After Xia Yunyang finished talking, there was silence in the pitch black cave for a long time. It was not until the hunched and coughing Emoyi, who was sitting in the corner, coughed painfully and spat out several mouthfuls of ink black blood, that the deathly silence of the cave was broken. The demons quickly spoke up to comfort him, saying, Emoyi, don't worry. Let's take it slow. Immediately after, the red blue twin devils looked at each other. The blue devil spoke up, since the dragon soul is gone, let's leave the fire pass country. The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is fierce and terrifying. We must keep our distance from him. The red devil said, exactly. Now that the green hell cave is destroyed, it is conceivable that after the wizards of the fire god temple have rested, they will definitely use the power of thunder again to sweep away all the monsters within the country. It may be that the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is busy with worldly affairs and has not chased after us immediately. The even more terrifying storm is yet to come. Therefore, I propose to leave the Fire Pass country and head north. The blue devil repeatedly nodded and said, North is good. The kingdom of all demons in the north is divided between good and evil. The Blue Hill country is ruled by a beautiful and outstanding lord, and the lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace is cold and intimidating. They are truly the best places in the world to go. The Red Devil said, I like the lord of the Blue Hill country, but unfortunately, the demons can only go to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace. Alas! What a pity! The Blue Devil sneered and said, What a pity! Even though the lord of the Blue Hill country is good, can't we choose the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace? I prefer the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace. She is the most beautiful woman in the demonic path. I have longed for her. If I can be the palace lord's dog and be at her disposal in this life, I would not have lived in vain. Chapter, 363 The Blue Demon said, revealing an intoxicated expression involuntarily. It seemed as though they had already arrived at the Arctic Sky Arc Palace, bowing down at the feet of the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace. After remaining silent for a long time, Ning Pa next to them saw the heated discussion and finally spoke up. The kingdom of all demons is divided between good and evil, and is a gathering place for all demons. The reputation of the Nine Phoenix echoes throughout the Four Seas, while the Arctic Sky Arc Palace towers over the northern borders. It is truly a good refuge for us to escape to. However, the Arctic Sky Arc Palace is far away and the journey there is a distance of 18 million miles. Along the way, one must cross the vast Yoshion country and the Blue Hill country under the governance of the Blue Hill country. Under the governance of these two countries, they are not friendly towards us, the Devil Path. Moreover, 
The Arctic Sky Arc Palace is not an ordinary demonic cave, and it is rumored that the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace is an ancient monster that survived from ancient times and has lived for no one knows how long. I forbid you to speak of the Palace Lord in such a way. Suddenly, the furious Blue Devil shouted, looking extremely angry. While speaking, Ningpa paused slightly, and then continued as if nothing had happened, the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace is powerful and strict in controlling her subordinates. It's not easy for anyone to enter the Arctic Sky Arc Palace and be accepted by her. We would be unwise to go empty-handed. We must prepare unique and rare gifts that are one of a kind in the world to have a chance at getting the favor of the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace. However, we are currently unable to produce this gift. Therefore, I suggest that we part ways here and take our own gains from this trip with us. As for this white ape, we can send it to the nearest big city where it will be safely escorted back to Hanya Mountain by the wizards from Fire God Temple. Just for a few pieces of peach fruit, the wolf god of Hanya Mountain won't chase us to the ends of the earth. After Ningpa finished speaking, he looked at the people present and asked, What do you all think? Inside the mountain cave, there was silence for a few moments. The blue devil was the first to speak, shouting, Who said we didn't have gifts? These nine peach fruits from Hanyu Mountain and this white ape are the best gifts, aren't they? This white ape came from under the tutelage of the wolf god. Given its aptitude and the fact that it has only been cultivating for a few years, it has already achieved such an impressive aura and couldn't have been nurtured by natural resources alone. From this white ape, one can see that the previously circulating news is probably true. The divine being who made the world change color and the day turn to night a few years ago has gained enlightenment to a new and wonderful method, which is the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Although we were in a hurry in the mountains and could not find the wolf god's secret book, isn't this white ape a disciple of the wolf god? If we offer it to the lord of the nine phoenix palace, it is equivalent to offering the peerless cultivation method that the wolf god has gained enlightenment to. Such a great gift, are you afraid that the lord won't reward us generously? The Blue Devil said with a sneer, when the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace takes notice of us, we can enter the Arctic Sky Arc Palace. We will no longer be wandering cultivators and with the Lord's protection, we won't have to worry about being pursued by the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain or fear the calamity of the earthly catastrophe. We will have a secure place to live and won't suffer any more fatal dangers. After listening, the Red Devil nodded repeatedly and said, although I prefer the Lord of the Blue Hill Country, the Blue Devil has a good point. Being able to enter the Arctic Sky Arc Palace is a great opportunity. If we ran away with a few peach fruits, without even obtaining the dragon soul or seeing the peerless secret book, it would be really too much of a loss. As he spoke, the red-blue twin devils looked at Xia Yunyang beside him and said, Yunyang, do you feel the same way? Going through all this trouble and even offending the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, we might have even been added to the demon destroyer list. If we only get a few peach fruits, it's simply not worth it. Moreover, there are only nine in total and there are five of us. How are we going to split them? Even if we only split the peach fruits, it won't be easy to divide them. The red-blue twin devils echoed, shouting confidently and clearly expressing their desire to go to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace. Xia Yunyang looked at Ningpe and said, Mr. Ning, what do you think? Under the gaze of Xia Yunyang, Ningpa remained silent for a while before slowly speaking up. Bringing peach fruits and the white ape to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace can indeed win the favor of the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace. But the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is not an easy opponent. His unparalleled swordsmanship is likely unmatched in the world. Even the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace may find it difficult to withstand the power of that sword. We will only take the peach fruits, otherwise the wolf god will not let us go easily. After all, he is not that idle and may chase us to the end of the world for a few peach fruits. But if we abduct his disciple, it will be a different story. He will definitely not let us go easily. Not to mention the long journey ahead of us towards the Arctic Sky Arc Palace, how can we avoid being caught up by the wolf god before reaching the Sky Arc Palace? Even if we successfully arrive at the Sky Arc Palace, does that guarantee safety? Ningpa looked at the red-blue twin devils and said, if the wolf god chases us all the way to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace, he will directly break in and force the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace to hand us over. Facing the unparalleled swordsmanship of the wolf god, 
Will the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace really be willing to go to war with the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain for us few little guys who just arrived? Under normal circumstances, wouldn't they just hand us over to appease him, and let the wolf god go? Looking at the furious face of the blue devil, Ningpa said indifferently, from the way you look. Do you really think that the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace would hold a deadly grudge against the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain for strangers like us? Ning Po's inquiry angered the Blue Devil. The Blue Devil slammed the ground and jumped up, angrily saying, The Lord of the Palace has a broad mind. And once said that anyone who enters her Arctic Sky Arc Palace is her disciple and she will never allow her disciples to be bullied by others. That if the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain really came knocking and started a fight, it's uncertain who would come out as the victor. As ancient beings from the same period, in terms of seniority and strength, the lord of the palace is not inferior to that wolf. On what basis do you falsely accuse the lord of the palace of being afraid of that wolf? The blue devil was extremely excited and the red devil nodded repeatedly, saying, absolutely true. They are all ancient beings, and the lord of the nine phoenix palace may not be inferior to the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Although the wolf god is arrogant, he is only rampant in the fire pass country in the southeast. He may not be able to continue his dominance in the outside world. The blue devil added, that's right. Although that wolf is powerful, it only bullies the weak. I have never heard of it fighting against any powerful character. Maybe it's just a showy, but useless, character. The words of the red-blue twin devils left Ningpa speechless for a long time. After witnessing the unparalleled swordsmanship of that sword that flew three thousand miles, he can still say such words. For a moment, he couldn't even tell if the red-blue twin devils was pretending to be crazy or actually stupid. Just at this moment, Mo Yi, who had been silent all this time, opened his eyes again and hoarsely said, Should I say a few words? Mo Ye's sudden statement startled all the demons. The red-blue twin devils hastily said, You should rest now. What's the point of struggling when you're so seriously injured? Rest and make your death more comfortable. Chapter 364. Upon hearing the words of the red-blue twin devils, Mo Ye's eyes widened in astonishment. If it weren't for the severe injuries and inability to control Qi, it would have slapped those two bastards at this moment. Ningpa then turned to Mo Yi, asking, Do you have any suggestions, Mo Yi? Ningpa eased the tension and then Mo Yi glared fiercely at the red-blue twin devils, saying, You seem to have forgotten something about how we should proceed from here. Mo Yi took a long breath and coughed painfully a few times before continuing, The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain actually possesses the demon destroyer list. The demons from the Green Hell Cave that previously made it to the demon destroyer list have all been executed, except for Yun Yang who luckily escaped. It is quite clear that the rumors about the wolf god possessing the demon destroyer list are not unfounded. While we snatched these nine peach seeds and a whole jar of peach talk wine from Hanyu Mountain right from under its nose, aren't we already in deep trouble? Do you still think Ning brothers, that our names are not listed in the demon destroyer list? Mo Yi weakly smiled and said, even if our names are not officially on the list due to our hidden movements, the wolf god has the power to set up the demon destroyer list. He despises the deviant ways so much that after we appeared in his field of vision, would he be willing to let us go so easily? Even if we return the white ape, or even the peaches and peach blossom wine, the wolf god may not let us go. After all, the green hell cave didn't provoke or offend him. It was just because it existed within the same borders as him that it caught his attention and was uprooted by him. The green hell cave, which didn't provoke him, ended up in such a tragic end, while we, who provoked him, can escape unharmed. Do you believe in these words, Ning brothers? Mo Ye's voice, extremely weak. He spoke a sentence, even gasping for breath three times. However, the stuttered words made all the demons in the cave fall silent. Even the crazy red-blue twin devils have shut their mouths and looked very bad at this moment. The red devil murmured, the most regretful thing is that we didn't get the dragon soul. It said that fortune favors the brave, but now we've taken the risk and haven't even caught a single hair, a big loss. The blue devil also angrily said, it's all because of that lord of all demons. What kind of junk is that? They talk about a perfect plan to take away the dragon soul within 15 minutes and leave the fire pass country before anyone reacts. 
They brag loudly but fell short in real combat. They fell into someone else's trap. The wolf god had already set up an ambush. The red devil also angrily cursed, they're just useless people. A plan that important was discovered by the righteous path in advance, they're just trash. The red-blue twin devils cursed and blamed the green hell cave for seeking death on their own. They actively led the whole cave to fall into the trap and die. Regarding this, Mo Yi and Ning Po remained silent and didn't say a word. After all, they also think so. If we follow the original plan, everything will be perfect. However, when the lord of all demons fell into the trap, it directly affected them on this side. Now, not only have they not received the benefits, they were unable to escape with the benefits in time, and are now being targeted by the wolf god. No matter who came in this predicament, they would all curse their misfortune. Inside the cave, the red-blue twin devils kept cursing for a long time before stopping. Ningpa then looked slowly at Xia Yunyang and asked, Yunyang, can you tell us truthfully if the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain really has a copy of the demon destroyer list? Ningpo's inquiry made Xia Yunyang slightly confused and she asked, Why do you ask me this, Mr. Ning? Ningpa said, According to my investigation, the news about the demon destroyer list was first spread by the Green Hell Cave. I'm not entirely sure if it's a rumor released by the Lord of All Demons. After all, the time when the news about the demon destroyer list was spread was during the days when the wolf god wielded his sword and frightened the demons for thousands of miles. At this time, the Green Hell Cave spread the news of the Demon Destroyer list. I have reason to suspect that the Lord of All Demons deliberately released the rumor of the Demon Destroyer list to intimidate the demonic path in order to forcefully consolidate his power. Ning Po's words made the Red Blue Twin Devils widen their eyes in surprise. What? There is such an operation. Heavens! Is the Lord of All Demons not afraid of giving birth to babies without an asshole? How could he do such a thing? This is too damn immoral. The red-blue twin devils cursed again while Xia Yunyang faced the gazes of the other demons and smiled bitterly. She said, to be honest, I really can't answer this question. Because the news was indeed released by the demon lord. And the demon destroyer list, demon lord also indeed informed us that it does exist, and provided several examples continuously. Before the official exposure of the Green Hell Cave, the Wolf God had already killed several of our disciples. A demon seed that was carefully cultivated was destroyed in Hanyu Mountain. There's also Red Lady and Madam Green Bamboo. They both encountered the Wolf God and the former died on the spot, failing to pass on the news. The latter barely escaped. The news that was passed on showed that, before she took action in Fu Shan City, the Wolf God had already set a trap for her. Just like how the cave master led everyone in this action but fell into the trap set by the wolf god. Facing the gazes of all the demons, Xia Yunyang murmured, Upon closer inspection, I realized that all the actions in the green hell cave that I thought were secret had actually been seen through clearly by the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Before we even knew his name, he might have already seen through the reality of the entire green hell cave, that's why he was always able to anticipate our moves and calculate us so accurately. Such methods, the existence of the demon destroyer list is probably true. Earlier, when the cave master mentioned the demon destroyer list, I also thought it was just a rumor used to intimidate subordinates, Xia Yunyang said with a bitter smile. But now, I think that if the demon destroyer list didn't actually exist, how could the wolf god always anticipate our moves and take the initiative in every encounter? The cave master's plan was only disclosed to less than ten people before the day of implementation. But the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain already knew about the trap that was set in advance. This is not a matter of keeping secrets well or not. It is obvious that the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, with the demon destroyer list in his hand, has become so terrifying that it has exceeded the imagination of all of us. Xia Yunyang's words made the hair of the red-blue twin devils stand up and made them shudder. Damn. Damn it, if the demon destroyer list is so terrible, doesn't that mean that we are also on the list since we are going to Hanyu Mountain? Of course. The Green Hell Cave was already on the list even before we went to Hanyu Mountain. We sneaked around the mountain, fought with Mayuo Swordmaster, and even stole the peaches from the All Souls Ancestral Route. If we don't make the list after all of this, 
then the tens of thousands of evil demon descendants from the green hell cave who died miserably will never rest in peace. Chapter, 365 The more the red-blue twin devils talked about, the paler their faces became. Obviously, they were truly frightened. A demon destroyer list that nobody had ever seen before, which detailed the names and backgrounds of the evil demons that the wolf god was going to eliminate. Suspended high above the sky, it seemed like the indifferent eyes of the heavens were watching the mortal world. All the hidden actions of the green hell cave, which they thought were secret, were already clearly seen by those eyes. All the plans made by the lord of all demons were completely exposed by the demon destroyer list, and nothing could escape from its scrutiny. As the day of destruction approaches, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain will silently appear and, with indifference, take the lives of the frightened and desperate evil demons that are being killed. In the shadows of the Fire Pass country, there have always been a pair of eyes watching the evil demons with indifference. On ordinary days, it remains hidden, waiting for the right moment to ruthlessly and indifferently strike down its victims with thunderous force. Hiss. At the thought of this, the red-blue twin devils couldn't help but shudder. The blue devil's face turned white as a sheet, and his fingers trembled. They actually recklessly broke into the home of such an existence. They even stole the other party's treasure and abducted his disciple. Slowly, the red-blue twin devils looked at Ningpa and said, We must go to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace. Whoever doesn't go, I'll fight him to the death. That's right. We must go to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace. Besides the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace, there is no one in the world who can save us. Said Blue Devil. Red Devil said, going to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace doesn't guarantee survival. Blue Devil said, but if we don't go to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace, we will definitely die. Red Devil said, and it will be a miserable death. Blue Devil said, before you die, you won't even know why you die or how you die. Red Devil said, maybe you're just squatted in the outhouse and suddenly the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain jumps out and suffocates you in the pit. Because he has already anticipated that you need to poop today. When Xie Yunyang heard the words of the red-blue twin devils, her face turned black, but for a moment she didn't know how to refute them. Ningpa looked at the insane red-blue twin devils and said slowly, it is true that someone with the surname on the demon destroyer list has no way out. But going to the Arctic Sky Arc Palace still needs to be carefully considered. How to hide our sound and not be caught by the wolf god during our escape, that is the most important thing we need to consider. As he spoke, Ningpa looked at Xia Yunyang and said, The Green Hell Cave has been destroyed, the lord of all demons is dead. Can Yunyang teach us the secret technique of hiding and concealing the breath which the Green Hell Cave doesn't pass on? If we all learn Yunyang's skill of concealing our breath, the journey north will be much safer. Regarding this, Xia Yunyang didn't hesitate and directly said, the incantation is as follows. In the pitch black cave, the last demon of the green hell cave passed on the technique of hiding and concealing the breath, which had been passed down to it by the lord of all demons, to the other demons. While far away in Hanyu mountain, tens of thousands of miles away, Lu Heng opened his eyes and said, it's time to go down the mountain. Beside him, Zhou Mia was greatly surprised, so fast. Didn't you say you needed at least ten days of rest? It's only been three days, and you're leaving. Lu Heng stood up with a smile and said, I'm afraid Sun Yen will have problems. Saying so, Lu Heng shouted outside, Xiao Ai, Wuyo, Wuyu, get ready to go down the mountain. This time Lu Heng will travel with Shen Wuyo and his sister Wuyu. After gathering three small children, Lu Heng went down the mountain. Among these three people, Xiao Ai is the oldest, but she is the smallest in size. However, although she is small in size, no one dares to underestimate her on Hanyu Mountain. Even Shen Wuyu, who just arrived, calls her sister Xiao Ai. The little girl is not very old, but the aura of the big sister is still strong. Under Hanyu Mountain, Lu Heng smiled and said goodbye to Jiu Mia and Huafeng, I intend to go to the east and visit the Lord of Lianshan in Yanjing City first, and then go to rescue Sun Yan. As for Hanyu Mountain, I'll entrust it to friend Jiu Mia and brother Hua to take care of. Please. Jiu Mia puts his hands together and says, Please, my friend. 
Watching Lu Heng quickly leave Hanyu Mountain to the east with three children, Hua Feng felt puzzled and said, didn't the wolf god say he was going to stay in the mountains for ten days? Chiu Mie frowned and said, perhaps he really cares about Sun Yen. Saying so, Chiu Mie turned around and walked towards the mountain gate. However, just as the two of them returned to the entrance of the wolf god temple, a woman's cold voice suddenly sounded from outside of Hanyu Mountain. Where is Lu Heng? Come out. I am here to kill you today. This woman's voice was not loud, but it instantly spread throughout the entire Hanyu Mountain. Not to mention Jiu Mia and Hua Feng in front of the Wolf God Temple, even Qian who was getting water in Wind Strike Department Camp outside the mountain could clearly hear it. In front of the Wolf God Temple, Jiu Mia's face immediately turned dark. The woman's voice that sounded from outside of the mountain was simply too familiar. Lu Heng, you wimp. Jiu Mia clasped his hands together, his face filled with sadness and bitterness, so this is the reason why you went down the mountain beforehand. Hua Feng, who was on the side, was very surprised, Senior, who is that woman outside the mountain? How dare she come to Hanyu Mountain to provoke us? Could she be an old friend of the wolf god? Jiu Mia with a sad face gave him a glance, and let out a long sigh, and said, she's not an old friend, but a feud. A deep-seated feud. In the morning breeze, Jiu Mia, with Hua Feng, once again left the wolf god temple and arrived at the front gate. Beside the mountain river, where the fish were surging, a woman wearing a bright red wedding gown was holding a flat boat and pausing in the middle of the river. The clear river water reflects the figure of the woman, remarkably beautiful like a character in a painting. However, the chilling and murderous aura is frightening to behold. Upon seeing the arrival of Hua Feng and Jiu Mia, Lian Tsangqing sneered and said, Aren't you the god of Zhong Mountain? Why did you come to Hanyu Mountain? Jiu Mia clasped his hands together, sighed deeply and said, that is another story. Miss Lien, if you are interested, you can sit down and listen as the old ascetic cultivator slowly tells it to you. Lien Sangqing snorted heavily and said, not interested. Go bring Lu Heng out, don't tell me he's not in the mountain. Lien Sangqing's words made Jiu Mia's expression even more sorrowful. The old ascetic cultivator sighed and said, it's just bad luck, Friend Lu Heng is really not in the mountain. Miss Lien, if you have any grievances, you can vent them at me. I only hope that you have not yet broken through my indestructible golden body. Even if you have, please pretend you have not. I don't want to die in such a boring thing. Jiu Mia had a sad expression while Hua Feng frowned and said, Senior, is this woman really here to kill the wolf god? Speaking, he directly stood in front of Jiu Mia and said to the woman on the river surface. Do you want to harm the wolf god's life? Step over Hua Feng's body first. The ferocious Ma Yuo's evil demon Qi instantly submerged both sides of the long river and the towering mountains. If it weren't for the heavenly thunder ring on Hua Feng's wrist, such a terrifying demonic energy would have already attracted the imminent wrath of the heavenly thunder. At the moment when the Ma Yuo evil spirit appeared, the woman on the small boat showed a surprised look and said, Ma Yuo evil spirit? Lien Sangqing's expression suddenly became playful. He he. Within Hanyu Mountain, there is still such a thing hidden. Chapter, 366 Lien Sangqing's words made Hua Feng's heart tremble, and suddenly he had a sense of ominous premonition. In his ears, he could hear the panicked voice of Ma Yuo evil spirit. Something's not right. This woman is suspicious. Hua, you need to ask for this woman's name and surname quickly. My gut feeling is telling me that this woman is not right. The tone of Mao Yuo evil spirit made Hua Feng frown slightly. It was the first time he had ever noticed Mao Yuo evil spirit showing a sense of fear. Looking directly at the woman on the river, Hua Feng asked, May I ask for your name and surname, madam? On the small boat, Lien Sangqing smiled revealing her teeth, and had a cold gleam in her eyes, the immortal of martial arts, the lord of kings. Lien Sangqing. Although it was just a casual remark, it exploded in Hua Feng's ear like thunder. The Ma Yuo evil spirit hidden in the soul let out a howl and directly rushed out from the soul and took over the body in an instant. Soon after, under Hua Feng's shocked senses, the Ma Yuo evil spirit took control of the body, burrowed into the ground, entered the underground of the heavenly thunder prison again. 
and then entered into the underground of the Divine Palace, taking the initiative to activate the Heavenly Thunder Prison. He didn't even want half a year of rest. A mournful scream rang out the second it formed in the Heavenly Thunder Prison. The excruciating pain of the Heavenly Thunder pressing down on it made the Maluo evil spirit want to die. While Huifeng in the soul was full of shock, this. This Lien Sangqing, is she terrifying? Huifeng couldn't understand why the Maluo evil spirit was scared like this. However, inside the Heavenly Thunder prison, the Maluo evil spirit was being struck by the Heavenly Thunder, screaming miserably, yet it gritted its teeth and refused to answer Huifeng's questions. As if it couldn't hear Huifeng's inquiries. Meanwhile, on the ground in front of Hanyu Mountain's entrance, Jiu Mia looked somewhat puzzled as he watched Maluo evil spirit fleeing, then turned his gaze to the woman in the red dress who was laughing coldly. He understood that the two sides of good and evil must have had some connection or grudges in ancient times. However, the Maluo evil spirit, who was extremely stubborn, was scared like this. Jiu Mia put his palms together and said sorrowfully, in this world of suffering, living beings struggle to survive. My friend, you have transcended yourself and pushed Jiu Mia into the depths of suffering. As the sound fell, Jiu Mia's body radiated with dazzling golden light, directly revealing his indestructible golden body. He sat cross-legged on the ground, closed his eyes and said, Miss Lien, start now. I would rather die than tell you that friend Lu Hang has gone north. Lien Sangqing sneered and said, You two really are birds of a feather. All right. I'll take note of it and won't tell Lu Hang that it was you, his good friend, who leaked his whereabouts. As she spoke, Lien Sangqing directly transformed into a streak of light and headed north. But before leaving, she left behind a cold and ruthless remark. If I find out that you lied to me, when I come back, I will not only kill Lu Hang. Cold words echoed in Jiu Mie's ears. With a sad expression on his face, he watched Lien Sangqing's streak of light disappear to the north, murmuring, Friend, oh friend, this time you owe the old ascetic cultivator a great debt. As he spoke, Jiu Mie got up from the ground and headed directly for the wind strike department camp outside of Hanyu Mountain. He planned to leave Hanyu Mountain directly and hide his identity for a while, wandering in the human world for a period of time. On the east side of Hanyu Mountain, Lu Heng, who had just left Hanyu Mountain not long ago, suddenly discovered something. Sun Yan's monkey fur. Has it lost its spirituality? Lu Heng's streak of light came to a stop in the sky. He looked at the monkey hair in his hand that had wilted and lost all its spiritual energy and realized that things were not looking good. This monkey hair has been indicating Sun Yan's approximate location to Lu Heng all along, which is why Lu Heng can wait so calmly in the mountains for the nurturing of the god slaying heavenly thunder. Wait for the heavenly thunder sword to nurture new god slaying heavenly thunder before coming down from the mountain again. After all, no matter what plans those demons have in mind, they cannot harm Sun Yan's life after he was taken away. As long as Lu Heng remains alive, those evil creatures must protect Sun Yan and keep him alive. Living hostages are the ones with value. However, now that Lu Heng has just left Hanyu Mountain, he has noticed that Sun Yan's monkey hair has lost its spiritual energy and can no longer indicate Sun Yan's approximate location for him. There are only two possibilities for this situation to occur. 1. Sun Yan is dead. 2. Sun Yan's breath is hidden by some powerful sorcery, so much so that Lu Heng's secret technique learned from divine skill cannot track him. However, both of these situations are very unfavorable for Lu Heng. The possibility of Sun Yen already being dead goes without saying, but the second situation is equally troublesome for Lu Heng because this means he can no longer track Sun Yen's location through Sun Yen's monkey hair. Initially, his plan was to first go to Yanjing City, have a detailed conversation with the Lord of Lianshan, and understand the rescue status of mortals inside the Devil Cave after the destruction of the Green Hell Cave. But Lu Heng, as of now, doesn't have that time. In the sky, his escaping light directly changes direction and heads straight towards the north. As the fleeting escape technique appeared, Lu Heng directly used the fastest escape technique to arrive at the position where those demons had stayed before, in the shortest amount of time. With the residual demonic aura there, perhaps Lu Heng could continue to track the position of the demons. 
Otherwise, in such a vast world, if he lost the position of those demons and Sun Yen, it would be difficult for Lu Heng to find the lazy white ape who never cultivates again. Lu Heng also needs to be cautious of the possibility that those demons might capture Sun Yen and use him for other purposes. The escaping light hurries towards the north. On the earth, the demon mob is scattering in retreat. After the news of the Green Hell Cave's destruction spread, all the foreign demons active in this land are now fleeing in fear. Because everyone knows that when the wizards of the Fire God Temple have dealt with the matters of the Green Hell Cave and are free, they will next deal with these foreign demons. One after another of escaping lights flee towards every direction. Against the background of the collective escape, Lu Heng's escaping light heading north appears unremarkable except for its speed. While already having packed up and carrying the unconscious Madame Green Bamboo, the little fox looked back again at the bamboo house and courtyard behind her. Looking at this place where she had grown up, she knew that she might not be back for a long time. But there was not much sadness on her face. In the little fox demon's heart, there were only anxiety and anticipation, looking forward to quickly returning with which Wu Gu to the spirit mountain, to start learning the nine heavens divine needles. The escaping light left the green bamboo cottage. The crisp voice of the little fox demon scattered in the wind. Madam, where is the spirit mountain? In the wind, Wu Gu's soft and shallow laughter sounded. Towards the north, silly child. The journey ahead of us is quite long. You should prepare yourself. Aha, uh Xiao -huh, Xiao is already prepared. Just feeling a bit sad. If we go from the west, we might pass by Hanyu Mountain and bid farewell to the wolf god. The wolf god. Maybe next time. Madam Green Bamboo's illness cannot be delayed. After you return from your studies, you can go to Hanyu Mountain to thank the wolf god for his care. Aha. Uh -huh. In the escaping light, the fox demon Su Xiao Xiao stared blankly towards the direction of Hanyu Mountain in the west, tightly gripping her small hand. Muttering in her heart, Xiao Xiao decided to take the right path. This time, I will not disappoint the wolf god's expectations and will definitely work hard. After Xiao Xiao has achieved some cultivation bases, I will come back to see the wolf god again. Goodbye, the wolf god. Chapter 367 The cold and harsh wind howled through the streets of Zhuxian town, sweeping up a few withered leaves. A tattered beggar leaned against the street corner, weakly watching the passing pedestrians, occasionally squeezing a hoarse whisper from his throat. Sir, please be kind. I haven't eaten for three days. However, his weak and helpless plea was not only ignored by passers-by, but even the beggar himself felt like he was just going through the motions. Located in the southern border of Yoshion country, Jusian town is rumored to be an ancient town that has existed since ancient times, but now has already declined. The streets and alleys that were once said to have been sprinkled with countless divine blood are now just old and dilapidated, without any hint of glory. But today's Jusian town is unusually lively. People of all shapes and colors filled the old city, and the accent of the northern regions echoed in the beggar's ear in the South Sea. However, the beggar was not actually a local resident, he had come here as a refugee from outside. Originally, he lived in Mingxin village, which is about 100 miles away from Zhuxian town. But not long ago, during a fight between passing monsters, the two evil demons destroyed the monument that protected the village. Although the two great monsters didn't kill anyone in the village, they left while fighting and riding the wind of monsters. Without the protection of the monument, the village will never be safe again. The villagers scattered and fled, leaving Mingxin village. He had no relatives or acquaintances to rely on, so he came alone to the Zhuxian town, which was more than a hundred miles away from home, and became a beggar to make a living. According to the beggar's rules, he shouldn't have come to this Yunhun street where he is now. This Yunhun street is the busiest and most prosperous street in Zhuxian town. Beggars are strictly prohibited from appearing here in the city to prevent the smelly beggars in ragged clothes from accidentally colliding with some high-ranking officials. But today, the beggar broke this rule and came secretly alone. Because according to the rumor, the important figure from the capital city is going to hold a grand banquet here today. To entertain cultivators from all over, and recruit enthusiastic cultivators from the common people to go out of the town to slay monsters. 
In the past six months, monsters have been rampaging in the southern part of the Yoshion country, destroying and annihilating countless villages like Mingxin village. The important figures from the capital city also noticed the chaos in the southern area and finally decided to make efforts to rectify it. As for the beggar, he is very eager to witness the opening of this grand event with his own eyes. Although he is not a cultivator and cannot join the effort to subdue the demons, as a mortal whose village was destroyed by the monsters. He at least wants to see the cultivators gathering together to prepare for the heroic act of eliminating demons. Before coming, the beggar prepared himself to be driven away. However, when he arrived at Yunhan Street, he found that there was no one to drive him away. When the patrol guards wearing armor patrolling the street saw him, they all turned a blind eye and didn't come up to cause trouble. At first, the beggar was a little surprised, but after staying there for a while, he realized that there were quite a few people in the crowd who were as shabbily dressed as he was. Among them were several people carrying magical weapons, obviously cultivators, who were covered in dirt and rags and looked even more like beggars than he did. Being in Yunhan Street, perhaps the patrol guards mistook him for a cultivator who came to attend the conference, which is why they didn't drive him away. Realizing this, the beggar's courage grew much stronger. He left his original spot and moved his beggar's bowl to the side of Fuyu Tower in the middle of Yunhan Street. This is the main venue for today's conference, where top cultivators are qualified to enter and meet the distinguished figure from the capital city. Outside the Fuyu Tower, however, there are dozens of banquet tables set up, ready to entertain the cultivators who come to attend the conference. Later, the distinguished figure himself will come out to respond to the many cultivators and give face to everyone. Above the long street, a stage was set up and a theatrical troupe was invited to perform. Both sides of the street were filled with a variety of delicious food and drinks, all available for cultivators to enjoy at will. If there is still a need, one can even directly flag down the patrolling city guards and make a request to them. However, although the beggars barely manage to mix in, they dare not provoke the city guards and are even more afraid to touch the street food on both sides. Although he was interested in the grand event happening outside of the Fuyu Tower, he only dared to sit in a corner relying on his ears to listen and not daring to approach and see it up close. However, just sitting in the corner of listening to the cultivators chatting and hearing about their magical experiences of slaying demons and vanquishing evil was already very satisfying for him. Moreover, gradually the beggar came to understand many things. As it turns out, the demons that have been wreaking havoc in the southern border for the past six months didn't appear out of thin air, but escaped from further south. Cultivators say that at the other end of the barren wasteland in the south, there is a place called Fire Pass Country. That country is different from ours. They actually don't respect their ancestors or worship the human king. Instead, they believe in some fire god. Even their ruler is not an emperor, but a lord. There was no court, nor civil or military officials. The wizards who were too busy worshipping the fire god every day were in charge of governing the entire country. While the greatest and most devout wizard in the Fire Pass country is the Lord. The beggar was astonished as he heard about all the strange things mentioned by the cultivators. And just at this moment, the performance on the stage had just ended, and another storyteller came up to perform and sing. The beggar recognized the storyteller, named Hu Yi, who could read but had limited knowledge. He usually performed stories and jokes at major taverns and inns in the Zhuxian town to earn some money. However, because he could speak about all sorts of strange things, whether it was about places or creatures, love or relationships, and could cater to the audience's interests in any situation, even the women in the brothels enjoyed listening to his stories. Therefore, this Hu Yi was somewhat famous in the Zhuxian town. It wasn't surprising that he was invited to this grand event today. However, in the past, Hu Yi would always tell stories to cater to his audience's interests. Today, with so many cultivators among the crowd could it be that he will tell some stories about cultivators? In the corner, the beggar was very curious. On the raised platform, the storyteller in a long gown cleared his throat and, after smiling at the audience below, actually began to tell stories about cultivators. Today I will tell you a story about beyond the barren and desolate land in the south, within the borders of a country called the Fire Pass Country. How the wolf god, with his sword, destroyed evil creatures and millions of demons scattered in all directions. 
Hu Yi's voice rose and fell with rhythm. However, as soon as he finished speaking, the entire street suddenly fell silent. In an instant, all the eyes on the long street turned to him. Those cultivators who were originally talking, working, or eating, even those at the other end of the long street, put down what they were doing in great unison, and turned their heads to look at him. The scene of those hundreds of eyes all looking at him made Hui suddenly startled and cold sweat broke out on his back instantly. Those present were all high and mighty cultivators. Is the story he told a taboo among cultivators? Otherwise, why would all these cultivators have the same reaction? Chapter 368 The strange reactions of the cultivators directly left Hu Yi bewildered. He, an ordinary person, how could he withstand these cultivators? And offend cultivators and even offend hundreds of cultivators at the same time. Such things just thinking about them made Hu Yi's scalp numb. Just as Hu Yi was frightened and contemplating whether to change the topic and tell a different story, a young boy's voice suddenly sounded from the crowd. What kind of story is it about the wolf god? The young boy's curious voice wasn't particularly loud, but in the currently silent street it sounded incredibly clear. Hu Yi's gaze looked over and found that it was a young boy who was sitting by the side of the road, about five or six years old, looking at him curiously and expectantly. Waiting for him to tell a story. And sitting next to the young boy was a girl who looked about the same age and had a similar appearance, probably his older sister. Seeing that everyone was looking over, the young girl quickly hit the young boy's head and said, Wuyo. Don't talk nonsense. And sitting beside these two little boys and girls was a man in a white shirt. Standing behind the man was a little girl who appeared to be around ten years old. However, this young girl had cold eyes, silvery white hair and two furry wolf ears on top of her head. She was also carrying an old dark green sword on her back. At first glance, one can tell that she is not an ordinary person. Seeing the young girl reprimand her brother, the man in the white shirt chuckled, raised his cup and took a sip of tea, saying, Just childish talk, no need to pay attention please continue, please continue. The man in the white shirt had a friendly smile and an extraordinary demeanor. Just sitting there gives a feeling of transcendence, immediately setting oneself apart from most cultivators on the street. After this man spoke, several other voices of cultivators could be heard in the crowd. Please continue, we also want to hear the story of the wolf god. Yes, listen to the legend of the wolf god exterminating demons. The tone of the cultivators suggests that they had already known this legend. However, as the atmosphere eased up and everyone let him speak, Hui breathed a sigh of relief and quickly began telling the story of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Who scared numerous demons and forced them to flee and disperse in all directions within the Fire Pass country. However, now Hui was nervous and his words became more cautious. Many exaggerative adjectives and plot lines that were originally for the sake of the show's effect, were changed by him on the spot. He narrated a story that he had arranged for a long time, which was supposed to be exciting, but he told it in a flat and uninspired manner. However, even so, Hu Yi's story obviously attracted all the cultivators present. In front of the Fuyu Tower, the expressions of the cultivators became increasingly serious and they gradually became entranced by the story. Even the doors and windows of the Fuyu Tower were opened one after another, and the main characters inside all seemed to be listening, with nobody speaking. In such a huge meteor soul street, only the voice of the storyteller who he kept echoing, with no one else to be heard. As everyone gradually immersed themselves in the story, while watching this, Hui felt a little proud and his tone also became slightly more excited. The might of that sword, with its sword chi spanning 3,000 miles, swept across the horizon and frightened countless evil demons on the earth, causing them to flee in panic. The so-called heavenly demon lord, who was such a conceited and powerful being, bid farewell to the lord of all demons and set up a trap alone to harm the wolf god. Little did he know that he would never return from his journey, and that the heavenly demon lord would never be seen again in this world. Outside Yenjing city, the demonic might was so overwhelming that it covered the sky and shook the earth. If it weren't for the wolf god's warning that Yenjing city received in advance, the siege today by the demonic forces would have surely resulted in untold casualties and deaths. From then on, the wolf god returned to Hanyu Mountain, closed the mountain gate once again, and disappeared from the sight of secular visitors. 
Inside the Fire Pass country, the demonic forces fled in defeat, and evil demons were never seen again. Outside the Fuyu Tower, a storyteller in a long robe let out a long sigh, and slammed the table, saying. This is precisely the imperial decree, thunderbolts of heaven shall punish the wicked, while the half-mouthed ancient sword shall suppress all in the world. Snap! The storyteller heavily slammed the wooden block on the table, awakening numerous cultivators who were immersed in the story, while also drawing many perplexed and curious gazes. Inside Fuyu Tower, someone asked with surprise the Zhuxian town's lord beside them. Is this storyteller possibly a foreigner from the southern lands? Upon inquiring those around him, the Zhuxian town's lord, Nan Gong Hao hastily replied to Lai Lao, report to Lai Lao. This storyteller's surname is Hu and his given name is Yi, hailing from the local community of the Zhuxian town, and has never traveled to the foreign land southward. This story might have been heard and modified from others, though it is well told. Nevertheless, the performances of Hu Yi's storytelling are fascinating and it is for this reason that he was invited here. Nan Gong Hao replied as such. However, the middle-aged man referred to as Lai Lao burst into laughter and said, heard and modified from others? Not necessarily. Although there are elements of exaggeration in the stories told by this Mr. Hu, many of the details within them are not something an ordinary person could imagine. Without doubt, a true practitioner must have informed him of this story. After Lai Lao finished speaking, a cultivator outside could be heard questioning. Oh, storyteller. You speak with such realism, could it be that you didn't witness with your own eyes the process in which the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain defeated evil and vanquished demons? Have you just arrived from the south? Oh yes. Storyteller, how could you, a mere mortal, know more than us? Cultivators continued to question, and Hu Yi on the podium quickly smiled and apologized, saying, Please rest assured, this matter is actually quite simple. I am indeed a mortal who has never left the gates of Zhuxian town in my entire life. How could I have had the opportunity to personally witness the wolf god exterminating demons? Mainly because not long ago in Zhuxian town, I met a cultivator from the south. That person asked me about some things, but also said he didn't bring any money. Instead, he told me some stories from the south as a reward. I only learned about the various deeds of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain just now, Hu Yi said. According to that person, these are all news spreading from the south. Some are exclusive insider information that only he knows about and the general public is unaware. Hu Yi's words made Lai Lao inside the Fuyu Tower show a curious expression. A person from the south? He knows so much detail. Could he be a wizard cultivator from the Fire Pass country? Lai Lao didn't wait too long before someone outside immediately asked. Did you ask for the name of that person at the time? In front of everyone, Hui shook his head and said, I certainly dare not ask for the name of the person. But that person acted generously. He told me his name is Ao Tianqing. An arrogant person who walks alone across the world, Ao Tianqing. He also said that the reason he knows so many stories about the wolf god is that he planned to go to Hanyu Mountain and fight the wolf god there to prove his own strength but he didn't expect that the wolf god had already left Hanya Mountain. So he went north to find the wolf god. He also said that soon I will hear his name echoing throughout the entire Yoshion country. And when that time comes, he will come back to find me, and let me tell the story of his deeds to the world. Chapter, 369 Hu Yi's words caused a slight quietness to fall upon Yunhun Street. Then someone shouted out loud. Has the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain come to the north? Could it be that he has come to the Yoshion country? This isn't right. Didn't you just say that the wolf god had destroyed the Green Hell Cave, then returned to the mountain and closed the doors to the mortal world? How come now you are saying that the wolf god has come to the north? Yes. You are full of nonsense. Which statement is the real one? What Ao Tianqing is there really such a person? The cultivators questioned one after another, and Hu Yi on the high platform coughed embarrassingly for several times, saying, Well everyone please calm down, let me explain slowly. After seeing the crowd quiet down again, Hu Yi awkwardly said, Actually, everything I said is correct. After the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain had defeated the demons, 
He indeed returned to Hanyu Mountain and closed the doors to the mortal world, thus this cultivator, Eo Tianqing, was unable to see the wolf god. And not long after the wolf god went into seclusion, he did indeed come out and went north, this is also true. Just telling a story, there has to be a perfect ending, right? Since what we are talking about is the story of the Green Hell Cave being destroyed, then the ending must be the Green Hell Cave being destroyed. If the ending is something like the wolf god destroying the Green Hell Cave, resting in the mountains for a while, and then going north again wouldn't the ending of the story be full of lack of interest? Hu Yi smiled in an appeasing manner and apologized to everyone. The various cultivators remained silent for a moment and then someone spoke. Ao Tianqing what an arrogant name. Storyteller, are you sure this guy has claimed that he wants to challenge the wolf god? The wolf god of Hanyu Mountain is so terrifying. This guy dared to challenge the wolf god. Could it be that he, too, is a top-notch cultivator? But why haven't we ever heard his name before, despite his tremendous power? It's really strange. Well, it's not really surprising. After all, how many of us here know the details about the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain from half a year ago? The world is vast, and not everyone outside of the Yoshion country has heard of every top-notch cultivator. That's true. The cultivators discussed one after another. After Hui finished his storytelling, everyone let go of him and stopped paying attention to him. Instead, they began to discuss Ao Tianqing and the wolf god with their family and friends around them. After all, they are different from Hui. The story of the wolf god is really just a story for mortals like Hu Yi. But for this group of cultivators, that is an existence that must be revered and feared. If they happen to encounter it in the wild one day, they must be careful and handle the situation delicately. On the high stage, Hu Yi breathed a sigh of relief upon noticing that nobody was asking him questions. He quickly and shamefully stepped down from the stage to collect his reward money. As he looked out at the storyteller leaving the stage from the Fuyu Tower, Lai Lao couldn't help but laugh. This storyteller is quite interesting to have it if all the stories he tells are true, it could get quite troublesome. The Fire Pass country went north and encountered not only the retreating demons at Yuxiong, but also the arrogant Ao Tianqing and the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. To tell you the truth, if I had not come to this place today and heard the storyteller's words, even I would not have known that the wolf god had already gone north. Lai Lao said, sighing continuously. Should I, as a junior, go invite this storyteller in and have him elaborate on the matter of Ao Tianqing? Nan Gong Hao asked from the side. Lai Lao thought for a moment, shook his head, and said, There is no need. Even if we invite him, we won't be able to get any answers. He is just an ordinary person, how could he see things beyond human eyes? If Ao Tianqing truly has the strength to challenge the wolf god and came to the Yoshion country with intentions of becoming famous, he will eventually make a name for himself. Perhaps tomorrow, when I go out, he might encounter me coming over to pick a fight. Compared to that storyteller, I am more concerned about an outside cultivator. As he spoke, Lai Lao looked towards the long street outside, his gaze resting on the young boy who had first expressed interest in hearing stories of the wolf god. There, a man dressed in all white was traveling with three children. Even among the cultivators who wore varying attire, he was still considered an outlier. The other's extraordinary and ethereal temperament is what truly caught one's attention. Lai Lao sat by the window, furrowing his brows slightly as he watched the man dressed in all white. With his level of cultivation, he couldn't even see through the man's virtual and real existence. However, it seemed that the other party was completely oblivious to the scrutiny from this side, as he continued to smile and chat with the siblings in front of him. Lai Lao's eccentric behavior was also seen by everyone in the private room. Everyone also curiously looked outside and saw the extraordinary man dressed in white. Nan Gong Hao curiously asked, Lai Lao, are you a fan of that cultivator? Why don't we invite him to join us and chat? I think he's extraordinary and worthy of making friends with. Nan Gong Hao's words made Lai Lao burst into laughter. He shook his head, saying, I've heard plenty from extraordinary people. What catches my attention is the appearance of this cultivator Hadoas and his all-white attire, along with his sword servant carrying an antique sword and silver beast ears on his back, look familiar. 
don't you think his outfit is quite similar to someone's? Lai Lao's words made everyone in the private room look at each other with surprise. Nan Gong Hao was even more shocked and said unbelievably, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Lai Lao laughed out loud and shook his head, if it's really the wolf god, that would be too coincidental. But in the storyteller's tale, there was no mention of the wolf god going out with two children. Perhaps it's just a coincidence. After all, cultivators dressed in white are everywhere, so having a silver-haired sword servant with beast ears is not that remarkable. It's just that these two images combined together seem like a coincidence. While speaking, Lai Lao said, however, this cultivator has remarkable bearing and is indeed worth befriending. City Lord Nangong should personally invite him and see if he is willing to have a conversation with us. Nangong Hao naturally obeyed Lai Lao's orders. He stood up immediately, clasped his fists and said, yes. After finishing his speech, Nangong Hao left the private room, descended the Fuyu Tower, walked out the door, and headed towards the long street outside. Wherever the city lord went, both cultivators and patrol guards couldn't help but stare at him in succession. Finally, amidst the curious gaze of countless onlookers at both ends of the long street, Nangong Hao in his dashing attire walked directly to a man in white on the side of the road and solemnly clasped his hands together in respect. The city lord of the Zhuxian town, Nangong Hao, pay my respects to this Daoist friend may I ask for the name of the esteemed friend? With the sudden appearance of Nangong Hao, the man in white seemed a bit surprised. However, he also stood up and clasped his hands together, saying, as a wandering cultivator, or Fong of the Yun sect, I pay my respects to city lord Nangong. The man in white's words slightly relieved Nangong Hao's anxiety. Huo Fong of the Yun sect excellent. He really isn't the wolf god. If he really is the wolf god from Hanyu Mountain, he truly doesn't know how to deal with this situation. But since he was just an ordinary cultivator, the pressure in Nangong Hao's heart wasn't that great. Chapter 370 Facing Huafeng of the Yun sect in front of him, Nangong Hao smiled and said, I have long heard that cultivators from the Yun sect are open-minded, free-spirited, and extraordinary. Now that I meet one in person, your reputation is truly well-deserved. Does Brother Huafeng have some free time? The elders in my family enjoy befriending heroes from all over the world. When they saw Brother Hua's exceptional temperament, they couldn't help but feel impressed and urged me, Nangong Hao, to invite Brother Hua for a chat. I wonder if Brother Hua would be willing to honor us with your presence. With courtesy and a friendly smile, Nangong Hao uttered these words of invitation, instantly causing a commotion outside the Fuyu Tower. The cultivator's gazes towards the man in white clothes changed. Could this white clothed man actually catch the attention of that prominent figure in the capital city? This is truly a heaven sent opportunity to rise to success. The cultivators who saw this scene were all envious. This grand gathering has assembled many cultivators from the southern regions. Those qualified to enter the Fuyu Tower have already gone in, while those left outside are mostly ordinary wandering cultivators with lower cultivation levels. For everyone present, entering the Fuyu Tower is an unimaginable honor. Moreover, the favor of the prominent figure and the personal invitation of City Lord Nangong have elevated his status even further. Everyone looked on eagerly at the white-clothed man, wishing they could immediately jump out and take his place in accepting the offer. However, despite everyone's hopeful gazes, the white-clothed man smiled and shook his head, saying, I happened to pass by the Zhuxian town and stopped by to join in the fun. But I actually have other important matters to attend to, so I am unable to participate in the important task of defeating demons and exorcising evil with all of you. So I have to decline I'm sorry. After bowing apologetically to Nan Gong Hao, the white-clothed man patted the little boy beside him on the head and said, Stop staring. Let's go. He said as he bowed again to Nan Gong Hao, As you all have matters to attend to, I won't trouble you any further. I beg the city lord's forgiveness. When fate allows us to meet again, I will make it up to you. After speaking, the white-clothed man turned around with the three children and walked directly towards the outside of the Yunhun Street. All the cultivators along the way stepped aside and looked at him in great astonishment, unable to believe that he dared to refuse such a great opportunity. Inside the Fuyu Tower, Lai Lao watched the white-clothed man's departing figure, and his heart skipped a beat. 
If he thought it was just a coincidence earlier, the man's carefree behavior now provides some evidence for that strange speculation. Especially when he left, he glanced at this side with a smile. At the moment when their sights crossed, Lai Lao couldn't help but feel a sense of suppression. But it was not the white-clothed man's provocation, but his own instinct that arose spontaneously. Compared with this white-clothed man, he feels himself as small as an ant. This feeling made Lai Lao, whose true name is Lai Yang, look serious. But when Nan Gong Hao returned, he felt a little ashamed and said, I feel ashamed for not being able to invite the cultivator over and instead making him leave I am sorry for disappointing Lai Lao's trust. Beside the window, Lai Lao shook his head and said, It was my recklessness that caused this, it's not your fault. As he said this, Lai Yang looked towards the direction where the white-clothed man had left again. Although he had already disappeared on the street, his ethereal and transcendent figure seemed to still be watching this side. Thinking of this, Lai Yang sighed and said, Next time I meet this cultivator, I should personally greet him this time, I was impolite and left it to someone else. Lai Yang's words made the people inside the private room exchange puzzled looks with each other. Do we really need Lai Lao himself to greet him as that person's identity really that noble? Inside and outside of Fuyu Tower, all cultivators were ablaze with excitement and discussing in a flurry about the white-clothed man's departure. And after the white-clothed man left the street with three children, he quickly disappeared from people's sight. When they appeared in the world again, they were already on a thoroughfare outside the Zhuxian town 30 miles away. In the mountains and forests, Lu Hanyin White smiled and shook his head, saying, that was close. We almost got conscripted. This Lai Yang from the capital has sharp eyes. Even in the crowd, he was able to spot us. He's quite formidable. Beside Lu Hung, the little boy Shen Wuyo had a bitter expression and said, the promised feast we didn't even get to eat before it disappeared. So frustrated. This Lai Lao, couldn't he have acted like he didn't see us? The little boy was still unhappy. In order to pursue the demon who had taken Sun Yan and headed north, they had been surviving in the wilderness for more than sixty days. When they descended the mountain, it was already deep into autumn, but now the cold wind is howling and it's almost midwinter. Lu Hang and Xiao Ai are fine, their cultivation is high, so they are not particularly eager for delicious food and satisfying meals. If they have it, that's good, and if they don't, it's not a big deal. But Shen Wuyo and his sister Wu Yu are different, they need three satisfying meals a day. However, after more than 60 days of wilderness survival, nutrition deficiencies have caused them to suffer from frequent toothaches and yellowing of the skin. Moreover, due to eating excessive amounts of barbecue, they suffered from severe internal heat, causing pimples and blisters to appear on their faces and around their mouths to varying degrees. Therefore, when passing through the Zhuxian town and hearing about a grand feast for cultivators, where free banquet will be provided. Lu Hang took his sister along and entered the city, intending to treat them to some good food after three months of wilderness survival. At the same time as supplementing their nutrition, it was also an opportunity to give them a change in taste. However, unexpectedly, Lai Lao from the capital city recognized Lu Hang at a glance, which forced Lu Hang to leave early, so he was unable to enjoy the promised feast. Looking at the distressed faces of the sister and brother, Lu Hang smiled and said, Don't worry. In the next city, I'll take you to a restaurant and we can order whatever we want, instead of relying on free food. I guarantee that you can eat your fill. However, although Lu Hang's promise was good, the sister and brother couldn't be happy at all. Beside them, Xiao Ai reminded them, the wolf god, we have no money left. We can't afford to eat in a restaurant. Lu Hang widened his eyes and said, what's the big deal? It's just money. Let's find and kill a demon on the roadside right now, then collect the reward. The Yoshion country is offering rewards for killing demons. Depending on the cultivation level of the demon, different rewards will be given if we find and kill a demon that has opened the heaven door, the reward money will be enough for us to feast and drink. Lu Hang was full of confidence, while Xiao Ai sighed and felt that it was beneath the dignity of the mighty wolf god to kill demons for reward money. Wuyo and Wuyu's siblings also looked troubled and said, Father, this is not appropriate. Yes, Father. You are the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. 
how can you go and kill demons for reward money if this were to spread, it would damage your reputation. Lu Heng gave the three of them a glare and said, nonsense about reputation can reputation put food on the table? Besides, we're just killing demons for reward money. How does that damage our reputation? If others can do it, then why can't I, Lu Heng? If such a thing can damage my reputation then that reputation is too weak to be worthwhile. It's better not to have it. Lu Heng's words left the siblings looking at each other in confusion. The siblings turned to Xiao Ai, seeking her help to persuade father. Seeing this, sister Xiao Ai nodded repeatedly and said, what the wolf god said is absolutely correct. The siblings' faces immediately turned dark. Wu Yu thought for a moment and said, Father, but isn't senior son Yen still in the hands of the demons? If we delay too much time on the usual path and lose senior son Yen, it will be terrible. The little girl reminded thus. Lu Heng, however, sighed and said, I also want to catch up but those demons have encountered some strange situation these past few days and have stopped moving north. They've just been staying in the vicinity and I don't know what they're up to. And since they are not moving, naturally, we cannot move either. Lu Heng was very helpless. Three months ago, he relied on the fleeing light speed of his lightness skill to arrive in time at the cave where the demons were hiding, and collected some demonic aura. And relying on this fading trace of demonic aura, Lu Heng once again traced the position of the demons. But this time, Lu Heng was unable to accurately pinpoint the location of the demons. In his perception, the group of demons seemed to have vanished into the world. Even with the help of their residual demonic aura, Lu Heng could only roughly determine the area they were in. Since Lu Heng was unable to pinpoint the exact location of the demons, he could only follow them from a distance, maintaining a certain distance, trying to wait for the group of demons to reveal a flaw. Lu Heng didn't believe that these demons could hide their demonic aura forever. After all, in order to conceal their demonic aura, the northward speed of these demons was painfully slow. Obviously, while hiding their demonic aura, they were unable to use demonic skills to flee or mobilize the demonic chi within their bodies. However, the Yoshion country is a country with a strong emphasis on order, and doesn't welcome the presence of demonic cults, and even goes as far as vigorously suppressing them. These demons cannot continue to conceal their identities while wandering on the land of the Yoshion country. Sooner or later, there will be conflicts with the local cultivators. Once they reveal their demonic aura, Lu Heng will be able to locate their position promptly. However, Lu Heng had been following them for three months, but in the recent days, these demons had ceased moving further north. Consequently, Lu Heng, who had been tailing them, had some leisure time to stop and enjoy himself. For example, killing a few passing demons for a bounty, then taking that money to enjoy feasting and drinking in the city. Lu Heng is also very interested in the cuisine of the Yoshion country. However, Lu Heng's plan just came to mind and had not been able to put it into action yet, so it was temporarily shelved. Standing solemnly on the galloping path ahead, there is a man wearing a musician's long robe and carrying a chin case on his back. He is standing at the roadside, respectfully bowing to Lu Heng. It is obvious that he had been waiting here for quite some time. Lu Heng was not surprised by the appearance of Gu Yin, as he had previously seen him in the Zhu Xian town. He also knew that after he left the Zhu Xian town, Gu Yin had followed him and flown several laps outside the town before finally finding Lu Heng walking on the galloping path. After stopping his steps, Lu Heng smiled and clasped his hands in return to Gu Yin. He said, I never expected to see brother Gu Yin here in the northern Yoshion country. It is truly fate. Why did brother Gu Yin visit the north for leisure? Lu Heng had thought that this musician was still in the Fire Pass country. Despite looking melancholic, Gu Yin let out a sigh and said, as a native of the Yoshion country. I come from the Tsushue village not far from the outskirts of the Zhuxian town, but I have been wandering outside for over 70 years and haven't been home since. After heading north from the Fire Pass country, I returned to my hometown after a long time. I wanted to see how my hometown had changed, but I never expected to meet the wolf god this must be divine guidance. The wolf god took care of me greatly in the fire pass country. This time, I would like to invite the wolf god to stay in my humble abode for a few days and fulfill the role of a gracious host. 
Gu Yin's face was full of anticipation. When the wolf god was in the Fire Pass country, he provided assistance to him and also brought along the female jinx, Lian Sangqing after helping him. Now that he has met him in the Yoshion country, he must express his gratitude and cannot ignore the encounter. However, Gu Yin's original plan was to leave once he had paid his respects. After all, as a senior cultivator like the wolf god, he considers himself unqualified to bother him. But just now he overheard the conversation between the wolf god and the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, and found out that the wolf god brought them to attend the conference in Zhuxian town, aiming for the banquet. Moreover, the wolf god even stooped to killing common demons to get the reward so that the siblings could have a good meal upon hearing this, Guin had the idea of inviting the wolf god and his party into the village for hospitality. At the very least, the chefs in his clan are not much worse than those in the big city taverns. Since the wolf god loves gourmet food, he should be given wholehearted hospitality. After Guin finished speaking, Lu Hang looked up and down at the man in front of him, smiled and said, Brother Gu Yin is really generous haha. Okay, since Brother Gu Yin has invited me so warmly, I won't be polite. Let me make it clear in advance. Although there are only four people in our group, our appetite is not small. If we end up eating everything, Brother Gu Yin, don't regret it. Lu Heng jokingly smiled. As the wolf god agreed to visit the village, Gu Yin, feeling excited, couldn't help but show a little smile on his perennially sorrowful face. I will do my best that night to try and get the wolf god to eat all the food in the Tsushue village. With a hearty laugh, Lu Heng let Gu Yin lead the way. The group changed direction and headed towards the Tsushue village. As old friends met, Lu Heng and Gu Yin couldn't help but talk about past events. Lu Heng asked with some confusion, Previously I heard from Lord Lian Shan that Brother Gu Yin participated in the operation to exterminate the evil demons in the Green Hell Cave. And has been looking for any surviving enemies and hunting the remaining evil demons within Fire Pass Country. So why did you suddenly come to the north? What Lu Heng actually wanted to ask was, did you abandon your master's body? But it was difficult to speak such straightforward words. After all, it was Lu Heng who had promised to help Gu Yin recover his master's physical body in the first place. And up to now, Lu Heng still had no way to deal with Lian Sangqing. Lu Heng actually felt a little guilty towards Gu Yin. Gu Yin sighed and said, I understand the wolf god's intentions. But in fact the wolf god needn't worry, during these days in Fire Pass country, Gu Yin has already figured out many things. The news of Master's death had already come long ago, it's just that I was unwilling to accept it. Without the soul, Master is just a corpse. She should have been buried long ago. But I held on to an unrealistic hope, deceiving myself and refusing to accept reality, wandering around with Master's body. Such behavior could already be considered as betraying the teacher and destroying the ancestor, a madman with an abnormal mind. Chapter 371 Gu Yin's words made Lu Heng slightly stunned. He looked at the man in front of him, and saw the melancholy and sad but much brighter eyes of Gu Yin, knowing that it was his true thoughts. It was not said to comfort Lu Heng out loud. As a result, Lu Heng was momentarily speechless and didn't know how to comfort the musician who had lost his master. After all, the experience of this master and apprentice can really be described as miserable. Gu Yin then smiled self-deprecatingly and said, To be aware of this, I actually have to thank Lian Sangqing, who took away my master's physical body. If she hadn't violently taken away my master's physical body and brought the cold and cruel reality mercilessly to my face, I would still be deceiving myself. Wandering around with my master's body, hoping that one day, the soul of my master in Kangu Abyss could return and revive my master. It was Lian Sangqing who took away my master's physical body, which made me accept the reality of my master's death after complete despair. With a sigh, Gu Yin looked at Lu Heng and said, I was reckless to ask the wolf god to retrieve my master's physical body before. But now, the younger generation wants to request one thing from the wolf god again and hopes that the wolf god will agree. Gu Yin's words left Lu Heng somewhat confused. Lu Heng said, You speak. Gu Yin took a deep breath and said, the younger generation wants to give up on the idea of taking back my master's physical body, and hopes that the wolf god will not cause any more trouble for Lian Sangqing. 
Lu Heng looked surprised and said, Ah. Why? Lu Heng didn't quite understand, how come Gu Yin, who he hasn't seen in months, suddenly started protecting Lian Sanqing. Seeing this, Gu Yin forced a bitter smile and said, Within the Fire Pass country, the junior has learned a lot and understood the strength of that ancient evil god. Although I am aware that the swordsmanship of the wolf god is unparalleled, if the wolf god were to exert all his strength, then Lian Sanqing would surely die. If the wolf god strikes, while Lian Sanqing perishes, that physical body would probably be destroyed along with her. At this point, Gu Yin's expression became somewhat uncomfortable, after all, it is my master's physical body. Although it has been taken away, I still hope that the physical body can remain intact. Lian Sanqing is an ancient evil god with immense power. It may not be a bad thing for her to have taken my master's physical body. She took away my master's physical body, and naturally, she will face the creatures in the Kangu Abyss. Perhaps the evil creature under the Kangu Abyss, which killed my master, will also be killed by Lian Sanqing in the future. At this point, Gu Yin smiled bitterly, but even if Lian Sanqing doesn't confront that creature, I still hope that the flesh of my master can remain safe and sound, and not be destroyed. Gu Yin's plea was somewhat confused and inarticulate. But Lu Heng still understood. Although this musician claimed to have let go and understood, deep down, he still couldn't let go of his master. He even didn't want to harm the flesh of his master. When he realized that Lu Heng could not help him retrieve his master's body, he surprisingly settled for less and begged Lu Heng not to trouble Lian Sanqing anymore. Otherwise, under the heavenly thunder sword, both Lian Sanqing and the body would be destroyed. Lu Heng's feelings were somewhat complicated. This teacher-student relationship is really tragic. No wonder Gu Yin returned to his hometown alone. It is estimated that he had lost hope for the future and planned to find a quiet place to retire and spend the rest of his life. Thinking of this, Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh and said, Actually, there is something I wanted to tell you earlier. Saying so, Lu Heng directly summoned the Requiem Seal. With a thought, the Requiem Seal instantly blasted Gu Yin's soul out of his body. Half-transparent Gu Yin stood stunned on the road, looked at the wolf god in front of him, and his flesh body beside the wolf god, feeling a bit confused. He doesn't know what the situation is. Lu Heng sighed, waved his sleeve to let Gu Yin's soul return back to his body and then put away the requiem seal, saying. As brother Gu Yin has seen, I have some means regarding the soul, so I also know a lot of information about soul-related matters. As in the case of your master, after the soul left the body for 300 years, there was almost no residual connection between the body and soul. Even if the soul returns in the future and comes back to this body, it cannot be called a resurrection. It's just like Lien Sanqing's case, it's just borrowing a body. Moreover, your master's cultivation level certainly could not reach the level of Lien Sanqing. Even the ancient fierce god like Lien Sanqing, relying on the suppression of powerful cultivation, was unable to completely integrate into your master's body, and to this day her cultivation has not been restored to the peak of her lifetime. If your master returns to this body, it may be even worse. Not to mention the recovery of cultivation, even the vitality of the body will become harder and harder to maintain. Lu Heng stopped talking here and didn't continue. But Gu Yin had already understood Lu Heng's meaning. Under the gloomy sky, the musician's expression became even more sad. He smiled bitterly and said, The cruel reality conveyed by the wolf god finally extinguished the last trace of hope in my heart it also eased my conscience a lot. Thank you, the wolf god. Gu Yin deeply bowed and said, From this day on, Gu Yin will no longer have nightmares. The musician's words were filled with heavy sadness and a hint of melancholy. Lu Heng didn't know how to evaluate it for a moment and could only change the subject, talking about other things inside Yoshion country, trying to dilute the atmosphere of sadness. At the same time, less than 500 miles away in the desolate mountains, there was a dark cave where an evil demon fell. Strange black blood continuously sprayed out of its body. The surging Maluo sword aura raged in its body, wildly increasing the wounds on its body. Mo Yi, who had some reputation in the demonic path in the Fire Pass country, finally couldn't suppress the raging Maluo sword aura in his body 66 days after escaping from Hanyu Mountain, and completely fell down. 
The power of the sword that Huafeng exerted with all his might on that day is finally showing its might now. This powerful and oppressive demonic overlord is now lying on the ground, convulsing with all four limbs, and even the strength to breathe is quickly fading away. Meanwhile, the red-blue twin devils, Xia Yunyang, Ningpe, and the white ape Sun Yen who was bound, all silently watched the death of Mo Yi, without anyone speaking. After a while, the dying Mo Yi finally reached out his hand like a last glimmer of hope and shouted desperately towards Ningpe. Brother Ning Ning, save me. Also injured by a sword at Hanyu Mountain, but not as severely as Mo Yi, Ningpe said with his head lowered. Mo Yi, you are beyond saving. But we will take care of your corpse, you need not worry. Ning Po's words became the last straw that broke the camel's back, causing the dying Mo Yi to angrily widen his eyes and immediately become emotional. You cannot pft. Suddenly, Mo Yi spurted a mouthful of blood. Despite his intense emotions, he couldn't even make it through his last moments. The vicious aura of the Maoyuo sword instantly caused its tendons and soul to be riddled with holes and directly took away the last breath of this demon. Upon seeing this scene, Chi Mo couldn't help but give Ning Po a sideways glance and say, Brother Ning, you are too cruel. Mo Yi has been our companion through thick and thin for three months, yet you are not willing to grant him a decent death such a cruel heart. Blue Devil smirked and said, on the surface, a certain individual appeared to be the most sympathetic, always voluntarily helping Mo Yi control his out-of-control sword Qi and alleviate his suffering. He seemed incredibly kind, but who would have thought that he is actually the most ruthless, selfish, and self-centered of us all? The red-blue twin devils were speaking in a strange tone, but Ningpa remained indifferent. His indifferent expression didn't waver because of the two mad demons' sarcasm. It only walked to Mo Ye's corpse and said calmly, it's just the rules of the demonic path. Doesn't Mo Ye know what his fate would be after death? Since you two are so righteous, don't fight over the spoils later. Ning Po's words immediately made the red-blue twin devils jump with rage. They approached and surrounded Mo Ye's corpse, staring with eyes wide open, and said, don't even think of having all the spoils to yourself. That's right. Let's split this corpse equally, no one should even think of monopolizing it. The red-blue twin devils shouted loudly, and after watching for a long time, Xia Yunyang also sighed and walked straight up. The four evil demons directly surrounded Mo Ye's corpse in the middle, and then simultaneously stretched out their right hands, stacking them above Mo Ye's corpse. Then, under Sun Yan's horrified gaze, the body of the evil demon named Mo Ye silently split into four equal parts. The red-blue twin devils, Xia Yunyang, and Ningpo the four evil demons each carried a piece of the corpse to a corner and sat down. Sun Yan's pupils suddenly dilated in shock. Because after these four evil demons left with the corpses, they all raised the corpse pieces and each took out a ripe peach fruit. The red-blue twin devils sitting back to back together hummed happily. This peach, when paired with the flesh and blood of the innate evil demons, will absorb even more evil energy. Let us thank the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Thank him for these peaches. The red devil added, and Mo Yi. Thank you, Mo Yi. He he. The red blue twin devils giggled incessantly. They each opened their mouths and, in Sun Yan's horrified gaze, began to chew and devour the corpse of Mo Yi and the plump, juicy peaches brimming with juice. Seeing this terrifying scene, Sun Yan couldn't bear it anymore and screamed in horror. What what are you saying? That ISN tour companion. Why are you able to him? Sun Yan's loud scream caught the attention of the four evil demons. Ning Pe, who was in the corner, glanced at Sun Yan, frowned, but didn't say anything. Xia Yunyang looked at the white ape in surprise and said, Don't you know about the demons and monsters sharing meals together? The red-blue twin devils approached with a grin and said, Wow! The disciple of the wolf god is really naive and innocent. Don't you even know about the demons and monsters sharing meals together? What do you think evil cultivators rely on for their cultivation? It's bloodthirst. Human blood is a small supplement, but for cultivators, bloodthirst is a big supplement. The flesh and blood of fellow cultivators in the demonic path is not just a major supplement, it's the ultimate supplement. 
The red-blue twin devils began to laugh weirdly with comments like with such basic common knowledge, you don't even know about it and you are a disciple of the wolf god. He who asked the wolf god to protect him so well. Don't blame the wolf god either. This monkey has only been cultivating for a few years, not even ten years yet. His aptitude is average at best. If it weren't for the great opportunity of being sheltered by the wolf god, how could he have such good fortune? That's right. This monkey has simply been hit by a stroke of good luck, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If it were me, I would definitely work harder and have higher cultivation than him. He he if it were us, we would be even more wicked and cruel. After all, a lazy guy like him is just good material for demonic cultivation. That's right, I've seen many lazy people, but rarely someone who is so lazy. If it weren't for the wolf god's care, this monkey would have already succumbed to the loneliness of cultivation and turned to demonic cultivation. Most other demonic cultivators turn to the dark path due to deep-seated grudges or desperation, but this monkey turned to demonic cultivation because he couldn't stand the loneliness of cultivation haha <laughs> hates really embarrassing. Even among demonic cultivators, he is the lowest of the low. Hehe <laughs> this monkey is still unwilling to accept it. Look at his eyes, he is clearly saying that you guys are all talking nonsense. What do you think? Brother, should we educate this lucky monkey? I totally agree. This stinky monkey has wasted such good luck and yet his cultivation is so terrible, it just makes me angry. If only we had such luck back then, would we be in such a sorry state? That's right. If we had such good luck as well, would we end up in such a pathetic state? Every time I see this stupid monkey acting so self-important, I get mad. Absolutely. It's infuriating. A worthless piece of crap who had the good fortune to be favored by the wolf god, but still slacks off and is lazy. Such a piece of garbage, how dare he act like a big shot wolf in front of us. Is he worthy? Shame. Without the wolf god, you are nothing. Where do you have the confidence to look down on us? Even the most useless demonic cultivator is a thousand times stronger than you, a worthless leech who relies solely on luck. Shame on you. The red-blue twin devils became more and more excited and angry as they spoke to the white ape. Next to them, Ningpa couldn't help but furrow his brows and reminded them, don't go too far, this is a hostage. The red-blue twin devils grinned and said, don't worry, my brother and I know what we're doing. That's right, that's right. We know what we're doing and we promise not to harm this useless person's life. The red-blue twin devils held up peaches and bloody pieces of flesh, revealing a ferocious smile to the white ape in the cage. You worthless monkey, didn't you look down on our evil demon? Why don't you come and have a taste? That's right, have a taste. It's amazing. Your cultivation will soar instantly, and it's much more enjoyable than hard training. Won't you give it a try? The red-blue twin devils had ferocious expressions, while the white ape inside the cage had an angry look and shouted loudly. Go away. Go away. I won't eat. I won't eat. It struggled frantically, dodging the devilish pieces of meat offered by the red-blue twin devils. Absolutely unwilling to fall into the demonic path. Chapter, 372 Inside the cage, the white ape struggled and dodged desperately, unwilling to touch the bloody flesh of the demon. While seeing the white ape resist like this, the red-blue twin devils couldn't help but chuckle and say, don't be afraid, monkey, eating a bite of flesh won't turn you into a demon. That's right. Even if you eat this piece of meat, as long as you don't actively absorb the blood and refine the true energy in it, you won't be possessed by a demon. That's right. Being possessed by a demon requires strong willpower. As long as you don't subjectively refine blood food for cultivation, even if our brothers forcibly feed you blood food and help you refine it, you won't be possessed by a demon. As long as you can always hold on to the integrity of the righteous path, unwilling to fall into the demonic path. And not take the initiative to refine blood food, the true energy in your body will not deteriorate, and you will not be possessed by a demon. But if you waver, and enjoy the feeling of refining blood food for cultivation, and take the initiative to eat humans he your whole body's righteous true energy will instantly transform into evil demonic energy. You will fall into the demonic path and become the demon that you despise the most. 
you will become the thing that your master, the wolf god, detests and hates the most. Ha 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 I wonder if you will take the initiative to be possessed by a demon. It's really intriguing. Yes, it really makes one curious. In unison, the red-blue twin devils finally broke Sun Yan's tough facade with their words. It vigorously shook its head and crazily shouted, I won't eat it. I absolutely won't eat it. I don't want to eat it. The desperate cry was even tinged with a hint of weeping. Hearing this sound, Xia Yunyang who was refining blood food couldn't help but furrow her brows. She opened her eyes again. She looked towards the red-blue twin devils who surrounded Bai Yuan and said, that's enough. What ability do you have to scare a beginner cultivator who has only been cultivating for a few years? Even if you really lead it into demonic cultivation, its good fortune will not transfer to you. Xie Yunyang's words immediately drew the sardonic sneers of the red-blue twin devils. Oh our beautiful Yunyang has started to feel sorry for the monkey what? Have you taken a liking to this monkey? Are you planning to please him and let him lead you to Hanyu Mountain? Wow! This is a wonderful plan. If we can use the beauty's scheme to seduce this monkey, wouldn't she become a disciple daughter-in-law of the wolf god? She will instantly become half a disciple of Hanyu Mountain. Although the wolf god holds a grudge against evil, would he still want to harm his own people? At that time, he will definitely help our beautiful Yunyang to get rid of the demonic energy. Yunyang will be able to transform and become a righteous person, and from then on she will see the sunlight again. Maybe you can even become a distinguished guest of the Fire God Temple, chatting and laughing with those wizards who have destroyed the Green Hell Cave, and no longer need to hide and sneak around. Ha that's really great, but I'm not a female, otherwise, would have joined in too. I am not a female either, it's a pity, it's a pity. Such a good opportunity can only be given to Yunyang. The red-blue twin devils, with their strange and eerie way of speaking in unison, made Xia Yunyang's face turn cold with the words they spoke. She gave a cold snort, closed her eyes, and was too lazy to waste any more breath on these two things. After Xia Yunyang stopped talking, the red-blue twin devils no longer continued to entangle with her. Instead, they turned their heads again, and surrounded Sun Yan, the white ape, with a smiling expression. Come on, monkey! take a bite and I guarantee you'll feel amazing. Exactly. And we also have the peach fruit from your master, we'll feed you a bite. The divine fruit coupled with the meat of the innate demon is simply a perfect match. Only we are so extravagant in the world. That's right. Each person can only have one of these peach fruits, the rest must be offered to the Lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace. They are extremely precious. Although these peach fruits are so precious, we brothers are willing to share them with you you better appreciate it. The red-blue twin devils laughed cheerfully and paid no attention to the white ape's frantic resistance. They tore off a piece of M.O. Ye's flesh and a small piece of fruit pulp, then stuffed them directly into the white ape's mouth. Inside the prison cell, although the white ape struggled desperately, how could it be a match for these two innate evil beings? Even if the red-blue twin devils didn't use the evil aura in their bodies, the white ape would still be unable to resist. Very smoothly, the bloody demon meat and fruit pulp were swallowed by the agonizing white ape. The red-blue twin devils placed their hands on the white ape's chest and back respectively, forcefully stimulating Sun Yan's true chi to cultivate the demonic technique and refine the blood food in the stomach. Visible to the naked eyes, the aura on the white ape and Sun Yen became stronger and their cultivation level kept improving step by step. With Sun Yen's cultivation level, that piece of innate evil demon meat was an absolute tonic, combined with the mystical effect of the peach fruit pulp, the effectiveness of the evil demon meat was further enhanced. After one day and one night, when the red-blue twin devils stopped and stood up, Sun Yen in the prison cell had completely changed his appearance. The white ape hair that covered the whole body has completely disappeared and has been replaced by human skin. The small body has actually grown a bit, but it still looks like a slender teenage boy. The disheveled black hair, full of sweat, and the appearance of crying and sobbing while lying on the ground, all gave the impression of a frail human teenage boy. Under the red-blue twin devil's exertion, astonishingly, it took only a day and a night to break through Sun Yan's cultivation to the Heaven Door Realm, thus breaking through the heavenly barrier and transforming into human form. Beside the prison cell, 
the red-blue twin devils looked satisfied at the sight of the young man's crying and desperate appearance, and burst into a big, hearty laughter. From now on, the true chi within your body is in between the righteous path and the evil path. As long as you have the slightest lazy thought and want to refine blood food again he he the true chi throughout your body will become demonic chi. The wolf god's disciple, has fallen into the path of demons, and transformed into a demonic cultivator ha 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 if this thing really happens, it will be so much fun, ha ha ha. The red-blue twin devils laughed heartily, feeling satisfied, and turned away to leave. The thin and weak young man kept crying inside the prison cell, feeling hopeless and in pain. Although the feeling of refining blood food should be extremely refreshing, he suffered torments as if he had experienced torture. Upon seeing the situation, Xia Yunyang, who had remained silent for a day and a night, couldn't help but stand up. She temporarily put down her own blood food and came to the front of the prison cell. The red-blue twin devils are up to no good. The white ape is an important hostage, so don't let them actually cause any trouble. Thinking so, Xia Yunyang waved her hand and disbanded the prison cell that confined Sun Yen. She squatted down beside the young man and frowned. Are you okay? Xia Yunyang's hand poked the despairing young man lying on the ground and weeping. The young man's body stiffened for a moment, then he lifted his head fearfully, hugging himself and shrinking backwards while murmuring in his mouth. Don't don't come over don't come over. At that moment, Xia Yunyang clearly saw the tear-streaked face of the young man, with an expression of despair and fear. This scene looked so familiar, so terrifying. Her head, with a buzz, exploded. In her ears, she seemed to hear the crying sound of her brother before he died many years ago. Don't come over I beg you not to come over. Don't come over. Chapter, 373 Gun Smoke bloodshed, despairing cries of young men, mad and arrogant demons, standing by and watching everything happen helplessly. This scene looks so familiar, so painful. Piercing Xia Yunyang's heart that has been cold for hundreds of years, causing it to shrink violently with pain. Little brother. Xia Yunyang's hand reached out instinctively to wipe away the tears from the corner of the young man's eyes. However, when the demon's hand reached out, Sun Yen, who was as frightened as a bird, immediately became hysterical and slapped Xia Yunyang's hand and cried out. I will never let you go. Before opening the heaven door, Sun Yen spoke with a stutter, but after opening it, he could finally speak fluently. However, he had no joy at this moment. He despairingly huddled in the corner, painfully watching the group of demons in front of him, feeling the surging cultivation spirit in his body, wishing to die here and now. Demun may turn into a demun might fall into the evil way. Thinking about such things, even just for a moment, made him so painfully that he wanted to commit suicide. He is the wolf god's disciple and a white ape under the ancestors' sect. How can he, as such, fall into evil ways? How can he let the ancestor be ashamed? The young man was in so much pain that his face was marked with tears. As he slapped Xia Yunyang, she snapped out of her trance. Wearing a cool leather armor, the demon slowly looked at the young man in front of her, and her eyes once again regained their former indifference. She looked at the boy's face and confirmed that he was indeed not her brother her brother had died many years ago. Such thoughts restored her calmness. She stood up and looked down at the young man at her feet, saying, Stop crying. Falling into demonic ways is not that easy. Those two scumbags lied to you. Xia Yunyang said, it is true that there has been a change in the true chi in your body, but if we say that this means you have fallen into demonic ways, that would be too fanciful. How could you fall into demonic ways when you don't even understand demonic methods, don't even know any sorcery, and are completely ignorant of how to refine blood food? With such a lack of understanding, how could you fall into demonic ways? Although demonic cultivation may seem easy and only requires an ample supply of blood food, it's not as simple as you think. Do you really think that demonic cultivation is just about knowing how to eat people? Xia Yun's words left the weeping young man completely bewildered. The young man looked up in confusion at Xia Yun in front of him, unsure which one of the demonic beings had spoken the truth. And Xia Yun Yang continued speaking. If you stop refining blood food and focus on cultivating yourself, 
allowing the red-blue twin devil's heterodox true energy, forcibly injected into your body, to transform into your own, then you will not be at risk of demonic possession. Of course, refining this heterodox true energy is much more difficult than refining ordinary heaven and earth spiritual energy. At the end of the day, although you have entered the heaven door realm and opened the heaven door overnight, the time it will take for you to fully refine the heterodox true energy in your body will be longer than the time it would take for you to gradually cultivate to the heaven door realm. The red-blue twin devils, those two scoundrels, were only trying to scare and disgust you. You don't have to worry about demonic possession at all. With a strong kick, Xia Yunyang knocked over the dazed youth and coldly said, it's more useful to spend time refining the heterodox true energy in your body than to cry here. It's more effective than crying ten thousand times. After finishing speaking, Xia Yunyang waved her hand again to lock Sun Yan up, then returned to her original position to continue refining blood food. Not far away, the red-blue twin devils looked at her actions and laughed coldly repeatedly. The red devil said, Oh, oh, oh our beautiful Yunyang is so kind-hearted, caring about the monkey like this. The blue devil said, Who made him a disciple of the wolf god? If I were a disciple of the wolf god, Yun Yang would be even more initiative than now, maybe she has already climbed onto my bed in the dark night, hee <laughs> hee. The red devil suddenly understood and said, oh, so it's like that after seeing the monkey transformed into a weak young man, the beautiful Yun Yang's heart was moved. She wants to climb onto this monkey's bed. Blue devil said, she wants to dual cultivate with him, mate with him, and then have children. The red devil said, it's to give birth to a monkey. Blue Devil said, why not give birth to a scorpion instead? After all, the beautiful Yun Yang is a scorpion demon. The baby she gives birth to will definitely be a scorpion, right? The Red Devil said, this is not necessarily true. Who knows what species will be born if a monkey mates with a scorpion? This kind of thing has never been seen before. Blue Devil said, ha 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 maybe we'll be able to see it next. The Red Devil whistled, then it depends on the efforts of the beautiful Yun Yang, ha ha ha. Inside the cave, the red-blue twin devils continue to sing and talk nonsense in a weird manner. In the corner, Xia Yun Yang's eyebrows slightly furrowed, her back to the face of the red-blue twin devils, her eyes becoming even colder. For some reason, the previous her could ignore whatever nonsense these two bastards said. Her heart remained calm while listening to the nonsense they spewed. But this time, the more she listened, the angrier she became. If the situation wasn't so critical and the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain could come knocking at any time, she would have already taught these two bastards a lesson. Let their foul mouths, which are full of crap, learn to shut up. Fu Xia Yunyang let out a faint sigh, forcibly closing her eyes and shutting down her hearing, no longer listening to the vulgar language of those two bastards. For her, this morning's refining of her own share of blood food was the most important thing. In such a crisis situation, the higher one's cultivation grows, the greater the chance of survival. As for those red-blue twin devils, once this matter is resolved, there will be plenty of opportunities to deal with them. Sooner or later, these two bastards will pay the price for their foul mouths. Ignoring the red-blue twin devils all the way, Xia Yunyang had been holding a grudge against them in her heart at this moment. But Sun Yen, who had just transformed into a human form inside the prison cell, was unaware of all this. The red-blue twin devils, who had the habit of speaking foully and disgustingly provoking everyone, were unaware and just spouting nonsense as usual. Only Ning Pe, who had been silent in the corner, narrowed his eyes and looked silently at Xia Yunyang not far away. Then he looked at the young man Sun Yen, who had already followed Xia Yunyang's instructions, sat cross-legged with closed eyes, and was trying to assimilate the strange true qi in his body. Ning Pe frowned slightly. It had accompanied these evil demons all the way, but now its expression seemed a little perplexed, as if something incomprehensible had happened. But after the red-blue twin devils provoked for a while and Xia Yunyang didn't even pay attention to them, even the red-blue twin devils felt bored and started to cultivate the blood-feeding cultivation method. There was no more noise in the quiet cave. Both the righteous path and the demonic path were all immersed in cultivation and no longer spoke. Watching this scene, Ningpa also closed his eyes and continued to refine his blood-feeding cultivation method, without saying a word. 
However, the strange discovery just now had deeply imprinted itself in his heart. Chapter 374 The Tsushue village is situated alongside the road, which was 50 miles west of Zhuxian town. Although it's called a village, it's actually more like a bustling small town. Perched halfway up the mountain, the Tsushue village commands a magnificent view of the road below. The buildings inside the village, including pavilions, towers, carved railings, and jade walls, are all extravagantly luxurious. It was the palace of Lu Hang's past life's world, but in terms of grandeur and style, it was definitely not comparable to an ordinary villa in this world of immortals and martial arts. Although the area of the Tsushue village is certainly not as large as the Forbidden City. While at the foot of the mountain, there are many tenant farmers and villagers living, and even further away there are cultivated fields and crops. It looks like a scene from ancient times, where a large landowner is enslaving many peasants. Actually, these tenant farmers and villagers only need to submit a small amount of grain. If they encounter a disaster year, the cultivators of the Tsushue village will also distribute relief food and clothing to the tenant farmers and villagers. With the protection of the cultivators, the tenant farmers and villagers here don't have to worry about the threat of demons, so they live much more comfortably than ordinary villagers and townspeople. The reason for this is that most of the tenant farmers living near the Tsushue village are descendants of servants who have been serving the cultivators for generations. These villagers have been serving the cultivators of the Tsushue village for generations, doing miscellaneous tasks in the village, and are already considered half of the Tsushue village's members. Most cultivators don't need to eat, and don't have a strong desire for material things. Moreover, the productivity in this world is extremely high, and cultivators don't need to exploit and enslave ordinary people. Therefore, the atmosphere in the Tsushue village is harmonious, and all tenant farmers and villagers have a deep affection for the village. Of course, ordinary villagers in other villages definitely wouldn't feel as comfortable here. However, Lu Heng's arrival didn't cause too much of a stir within the Tsushue village. Mainly because Lu Heng didn't publicly reveal his identity, he only came as a friend of Gu Yin to visit the Tsushue village. Therefore, the Tsushue village didn't know that this man in white was the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, who has recently become so famous. In the Tsushue village, Gu Yin's cultivation level is unique, even higher than that of his father, the village chief, having already condensed the five types of qi in the chest and started to nourish the top three flowers on the head. In the eyes of ordinary people, Gu Yin has already achieved a successful cultivation in the path of Daoist truth. However, Gu Yin's presence is not very strong in the Tsushue village. This musician, who was picked by a cultivator at a young age and taken out for cultivation cultivate, rarely returned to the Tsushue village throughout the past centuries. After his master was killed, Gu Yin came back even fewer times. For the Tsushue village, Gu Yin is more like an outsider who only exists in legends. Many young people among the new generation have only occasionally heard of the stories about this ancestral figure in conversations with their elders. Although Gu Yin has returned, he has never paid much attention to the affairs of the estate. He lives in his own secluded courtyard, staying aloof from everyone and even turning away the servants that were assigned to him. When Lu Heng arrived, the estate owner wanted to arrange for a few maidservants to take care of him, but this offer was also declined by Lu Heng. Therefore, in the eyes of the people in the Tsushue village, Lu Heng who came to visit was indeed a friend of Gu Yin, and the two of them were cut from the same cloth of eccentricity. However, although Lu Heng declined the servants arranged by the estate, he didn't refuse the delicious food provided by the estate. Lu Heng even unabashedly had the kitchen prepare dish after dish of food, sitting in Gu Yin's courtyard every day, eating and drinking to his heart's content. The appetite of cultivators is nothing to scoff at. Even Wuyo and Wuyu, two little kids with not very high cultivation, could eat heartily and had oil dripping from their mouths. After wandering in the wilderness for three months, the siblings finally ate human food. How could they not be excited? While the siblings enjoyed their hearty meal, it was not the same for Lu Heng. Most of the time, Lu Heng sat on the side, chatting with Gu Yin about various random things and listening to Gu Yin's stories of wandering around with his master's physical body over the years. He also learned that Gu Yin went to the Spirit Mountain and sought help from the Ten Witches of the Spirit Mountain to save his master's life. 
Unfortunately, even though the ten witches of the Spirit Mountain were skilled in medicine, they were helpless in treating a soulless body and were unable to help Gu Yin. Despite being secluded, Gu Yin's courtyard was situated on the slope of the mountain, providing a wide and panoramic view of the Tsushue village. The small pavilion where the two sat offered an unobstructed sight of more than half of the Tsushue village. On the fourth day of Lu Heng's stay in the Tsushue village, at noon, a group of unfamiliar guests arrived at the entrance of the village. It was evident that the guests held high positions and statuses, as the village head personally greeted them and the welcome ceremony was lively. Sitting in the courtyard, Lu Heng and Gu Yin looked at the scene by the gate from afar. Lu Heng smiled and said, It seems that truly distinguished guests have arrived at the village. Lu Heng joked with a smile. He recognized the leader of the group who came to the Tsushue village, it was none other than Lai Lao, the prominent figure from the capital city whom he had met before in the Zhuxian town. Lu Heng didn't expect to see the other party again in the Tsushue village after only four days had passed. After casting a glance at that direction, Gu Yin was also a little puzzled, at this time, Lai Lao should have been out to exterminate the demons and monsters, why would he come to the Tsushue village? Gu Yin was puzzled by this. After a while, Lai Lao was welcomed into the village, and the Tsushue village became lively. At Lu Heng's location, one could clearly see the crowd surging throughout the Tsushue village, obviously preparing for a feast to entertain their distinguished guests. Everywhere was adorned with red and green decorations, joyful and festive. However, even in such a lively atmosphere, Gu Yin's small courtyard remained deserted. It was as if he was in a completely different world from the rest of the Tsushue village. After another half an hour had passed, a middle-aged man walked towards the small courtyard. It was Gu Yin's second elder brother, Chu Fengchun. That's right, Gu Yin's surname is not really Gu his original name was Chu Fengyu. After being taken in as a disciple, his master didn't like the name Chu Fengyu and thought it didn't sound pleasant. Seeing Gu Yin's cold personality, she gave him a new name. After entering the courtyard, Chu Fengchun walked straight to the small pavilion where Lu Heng and Gu Yin were located. After politely greeting Lu Heng, he looked towards Gu Yin. He said, Younger brother, father has asked you to go out and meet the guest. Lai Lao is visiting today and the entire Tsushue village should be attentive and not neglectful. Lai Lao appreciates you very much and wishes to have a meeting with you in the lobby. Chu Fengchun's words made Gu Yin frown slightly. He said, I have already talked to father and during this period of time, I have friends to entertain. Don't come looking for me for matters in the village. Why do I have to go meet guests now? If Lai Lao asks, tell him I'm not in the village. Gu Yin strongly resisted this matter. Chu Fengchun spread his hands helplessly and said, Lai Lao wants to meet you. You cannot possibly refuse to give face, can you? Gu Yin said indifferently, Lai Lao mentioned earlier that he wanted to meet me. I have already followed my father's words and attended the gathering at Fuyu Tower, giving him face. However, when Gu Yin mentioned this matter, Chu Fengchun immediately glared at him. How could you bring that up? Father asked you to go to Fuyu Tower to meet Lai Lao, but you ran away halfway without even saying hello. Such a rude behavior is simply disgraceful. Chu Fengchun's accusation made Gu Yin fall silent for a moment. Just as Gu Yin was about to speak, Lu Heng smiled and said, Since Lai Lao wants to meet you, brother Gu Yin, why not go and meet him? Lai Lao is a good person, just a little too enthusiastic. You can treat it as a kind act and make the old man happy. Don't mind me. With Lu Heng's words, Gu Yin hesitated for a moment, then stood up and said to Chu Feng Chen, Let's go. After speaking, this proud musician walked straight out without paying attention to his elder brother beside him. In this regard, Chu Feng Chun was very dissatisfied, but with guests present, he couldn't lose his temper, so he followed silently without saying a word. Meanwhile, Lu Heng sat in the courtyard and watched Gu Yin's departing figure, letting out a long sigh. With silver hair and animal ears, Xiao Ai silently arrived by his side. Watching Gu Yin's departing figure, Xiao Ai frowned and said, Senior Gu Yin's situation in his family seems to be quite awkward. Lu Heng sighed and said, It's expected. Gu Yin has a solitary personality and is not good at socializing with words. 
He has also been away from home since childhood and has hardly come back in hundreds of years. He doesn't have much emotional attachment to this place. He only came back this time to find a place of retreat because he was disheartened, but the Tsushue village is no longer the way he remembers it. Just like if you, Shao Ai, were to cultivate cultivation for another few decades and then come back to Shueisheng village, you would also feel unfamiliar. Lu Heng's words made Shao Ai slightly startled. Then Shao Ai shook her head and said, when Shao Ai came back to Shueisheng village now, it was already very unfamiliar. But Xiao Ai doesn't need to go back to Xueixing village either. She looked at Lu Heng's profile and said, Xiao Ai's home is no longer in Xueixing village. The little girl's words made Lu Heng laugh out loud and say, that's true. One thing about Hanyu Mountain is that there are enough people. Even if I am gone someday, you still have Sun Yen and Gu Yen to amuse you. Otherwise, I would worry that you would end up like Gu Yin, without even a warm place to go. Lu Heng's words made the little girl slightly furrow her brows. She really wanted to ask the wolf god not to make this kind of joke, but when she saw the joyful profile of the wolf god, her little dissatisfaction in her heart disappeared. In the Tsushue village, it is exceptionally lively. However, the courtyard where Lu Heng and Xiao Ai were located was quiet and soundless. It felt like being in the Hanyu mountain, with only the company of one little girl and a wolf. However, such tranquility was quickly shattered. Gu Yin's older brother, Chu Feng Lin appeared in the courtyard and walked straight towards Lu Heng. Facing Lu Heng, Chu Feng Lin smiled and said, My father heard that Mr. Hua was alone in the courtyard and blamed us, so he sent me to invite Mr. Hua to the banquet I wonder if Mr. Hua can honor us with your presence. Lu Heng stood up with a smile and said, Master Chu invited us, so naturally Hua Feng will go too let's get going. My stomach is already empty, we must have a hearty dinner tonight. Lu Heng didn't show the reclusiveness and refusal that Chu Feng Lin worried about, instead he left with him with a smile, without any difficulties or excuses. That casual and friendly smile greatly surprised Chu Feng Lin. He never thought his fifth younger brother's friend could be so adept at socializing. He thought that this Mr. Hua Feng was also an eccentric person like his fifth younger brother, with a reclusive and cold character. Now it seems that things are completely different. Chu Feng Lin breathed a slight sigh of relief in his heart. And the main hall of the banquet is located in the central area of the Tsushue village. The courtyard here is large, with flying eaves and hidden beams, and lush vegetation and trees, creating a beautiful and magnificent scene. Among them, there are flowing streams and winding waters, with colorful fishes swimming and jumping, making it as beautiful as a fairyland. By the time Lu Heng arrived, the banquet was about to begin. Seven tables were set up in the courtyard, and the guests sitting at the tables were all extraordinary cultivators. While Lai Lao was seated at the main table with the host of the Tsushue village, Chu Min next to him were the Zhuxian town's lord, Nan Gong Hao, and several other top cultivators. It is worth mentioning that among the several brothers of the Chu family, only Gu Yin was seated at the main table while the rest of his brothers sat in ordinary seats. Lu Heng followed Chu Feng Lin and sat beside him. This table was quite far from the main table, indicating that while Lu Heng was fortunate to be invited, he could only sit at the last seat. Behind Lu Heng, Xiao Ai with her silver beast ears followed all the way, which greatly surprised Chu Feng Lin. After coming inside, Xiao Ai didn't go to sit at a table with the sword servants who were accompanying the cultivators, instead, she followed all the way into the main hall and stood behind Lu Heng. This scene greatly surprised Chu Feng Lin. Why do they have to bring a sword servant to such an important occasion isn't it too impolite? Does this Mr. Hua Feng really understand manners? He looked at Lu Heng, wanting to speak but stopping himself. Xiao Ai gave him a sidelong glance and said, There is no need to arrange a seat for me. Just pretend I don't exist. After speaking, Xiao Ai stood behind Lu Heng. With a thought, she instantaneously concealed her breath. Even Chu Feng Lin, who had been staring at her all the time, almost ignored the little girl standing beside her at this moment. Such a exquisite breath-hiding technique instantly widened Chu Feng Lin's eyes. What who is this Mr. Hua Feng? Why is even his sword servant so powerful? 
Surprised in his heart, Chu Feng Lin stopped talking and turned his head to no longer look at this sword servant. Lu Hang then smiled bitterly, turned around and gave Xiao Ai a glare, silently mouthing the words, Stinky brat. The little girl with silver beast ears, however, had a serious expression, stood up straight like a statue, and completely didn't see Lu Hang's mouth movements. Lu Hang shrugged helplessly at this and didn't feel like responding to this stinky brat anymore. Anyway, as soon as Xiao Ai displayed her qi hiding technique, she became completely unnoticed. Among the whole banquet, those who could sense her presence are less than five people. With this in mind, Lu Hang smiled and turned his head to start exchanging pleasantries and boasting with Chu Feng Lin and the other cultivators at the table. However, he turned a blind eye to the surprised gazes on the main table. Although Lu Hang came in without any fanfare, low-key and ordinary, the moment he came in, he caught Lai Yang's attention. Lai Yang looked at Huafeng of the Yun sect, whom he had only met once in Jusian town, in shock. He didn't expect to see him again here. And Nandong Hao clearly also noticed Lu Hang. His brow furrowed slightly. Next, under the gaze of Nandong Hao and Lai Yang, the little girl with silver hair and animal ears behind Lu Hang promptly hid her presence and disappeared from the perception of the crowd. Even with their cultivation, they wouldn't be able to detect the presence of a little girl standing there unless they deliberately observe. Such exquisite qi hiding technique. Nan Gong Hao was stunned. He couldn't help but transmit his voice, Lai Lao, Hua Feng of Yun's sect has appeared again should we greet him? Chapter 375 the astonishing art of stealth exhibited by the young girl with silver hair and beast-like ears left both Nan Gong Hao and Lai Yang utterly astounded. Especially Lai Yang, who prides himself on his extensive knowledge and profound cultivation, had never witnessed such a formidable display of stealth as showcased by this young girl. Among all the techniques of concealment he had ever encountered in his life, the method of concealing aura employed by this young girl can be hailed as unparalleled, claiming the foremost position exceeding the second and third by an indeterminate margin. And Nan Gong Hao's inquiry was also a hesitation in Lai Yang's heart. Sitting at the main table, he observed from a distance the white-robed man sitting at the edge, engaging in cheerful conversation with the ordinary cultivators by his side. At that moment, he found himself in a quandary, unable to make a decision. The last time, in Zhu Xian town, he abruptly startled away the stranger. If he were to startle the other party away again, it would be rather awkward. Contemplating this, Lai Yang let out a sigh and conveyed through a voice transmission, for now, let's set it aside. This cultivator disregards my position and authority. It would be inappropriate for us to intrude hastily, so we shall let him be. In Lai Yang's heart, there was also a steadfastness. Considering his distinguished status, how could someone like Lai Yang be neglected by anyone, not even a sovereign, in the past. Since this Huafeng of the Yun sect looks down upon him, he is simply too indifferent to bother with. Among the countless extraordinary individuals in the world, why bother getting on bad terms with a member of the Yun sect? With a settled mind, Lai Yang no longer glanced at Lu Heng sitting on the periphery, but instead engaged in lively conversations with the cultivators nearby, creating a harmonious atmosphere. Soon, exquisite dishes were brought up one after another. In order to entertain this group of cultivators, the kitchen of Tsushue village has spared no effort to prepare the finest dishes to welcome the guests. Lu Heng couldn't help but smile as he watched the array of exquisite dishes being brought to the table. If Wu Yo and Wu Yu were to see it, they would undoubtedly be extremely excited. Unfortunately, both siblings are currently outside and are not qualified to attend the main event. Not everyone possesses the audacity and determination like Xiao Ai, who disregards the astonishment of others and insists on joining in. At the banquet, the atmosphere was harmonious. Amidst the clinking of goblets and the intertwining of toasts, there were various performances and entertainments for the guests. While immersed in the midst of it, Lu Hang had no burdens to bear, delighting in a leisurely and joyful embrace of the current ease. As for what this group of cultivators gathered here is doing, Lu Hang is too indifferent to bother about it. However, Lu Heng remained apathetic, while the rest of the people never overlooked him. After being well-fed and having their fill of wine, a cultivator sitting at the same table raised a glass to Lu Heng and said, Esteemed fellow cultivator, you appear unfamiliar. 
pray tell, from whence do you hail? Smiling, Lu Heng replied, I am Hua Feng of the Yun sect, a wandering cultivator who hails from the Fire Pass country. As soon as these words were spoken, a peaceful silence fell upon Lu Heng's table. The previously enthusiastic cultivators, at this moment, all furrowed their brows and turned their gaze towards Lu Heng. The cultivator who had spoken before was slightly taken aback and said, The Fire Pass country. Hua Feng. You are the presumptuous individual who had offended Lai Lao in the Zhuxian town a few days ago. This cultivator didn't lower his voice, and everyone present were accomplished cultivators who could not be deceived by any slightest movement. As soon as these words were spoken, the entire courtyard fell into an instant silence. The cultivators who were previously engaged in cheerful conversations and toasting, all turned their heads and looked in this direction. Even Lai Yang and others at the main table, all looked over as well. Upon witnessing such a situation, Lu Heng was slightly taken aback. This. Hua Feng's reputation, has it deteriorated to such an extent? Isn't it just the rejection of Lai Lao's invitation four days ago? How did everyone present become aware of it? This Lai Lao, his position in the hearts of the crowd, isn't it too high? It is quite evident that Lu Heng's refusal of Lai Yang's recruitment and his direct departure on that day has long been regarded as the acts of an arrogant individual, and his name has spread among this group of cultivators. Perhaps this group of cultivators is secretly plotting, intending to find this arrogant Hua Feng in the future and teach him a lesson on behalf of Lai Lao. Observing the unfriendly gaze of the cultivators, Lu Heng couldn't help but smile wryly in his heart. If I had known about this situation earlier, I would have chosen a different alias. Facing the cold gazes of the crowd, Lu Heng found himself in a difficult situation but could not retreat. He could only sigh and say, Indeed, it is I. Lu Heng's acknowledgement instantly caused a tumultuous wave to surge throughout the courtyard. The cultivators, who had originally displayed a friendly attitude, all now glared at him angrily. Fiery words filled the air, resounding incessantly. You rejected the invitation from Lai Lao back then, and today you audaciously infiltrated our banquet. Are you bloody here to wreak havoc? Damn it! This is an outrage! The cultivators of the Fire Pass country? Pfft! A bunch of forsakers of human decency, indulging in religious rituals. What gives you the audacity? Stop with the pretense. You, surnamed Hua. Show some courage and fight me. I've been wanting to pummel you for a long damn time. In the courtyard, emotions are stirred fervently. In an instant, the cultivators united in enmity, regarding Lu Heng as a reckless provocateur who came to disrupt the scene. In regards to this situation, Lu Heng was quite helpless. He stood up and said, examine my conscience, I truly had no intention of provocation in coming here this time. It was only upon the invitation of Master Chu that I attended this banquet, without any intention of provoking any of you. Lu Heng earnestly offered his explanation. And the gaze of the crowd immediately shifted towards the figure of Master Chu Min, seated at the head. Chu Min was suddenly taken aback and quickly responded, Mr. Hua's words are not false. He is indeed a close friend of my son, Gu Yin, who arrived at the estate a few days ago. Today, a grand banquet is being held in the estate. Out of courtesy, I extended an invitation to him. It is absolutely not Mr. Hua's intention to provoke anyone or cause trouble by infiltrating. Chu Min's explanation brought a considerable improvement to the countenance of the cultivators. However, the looks cast upon Lu Heng remained unfavorable. The cultivator who had previously expressed the desire to have a match with Lu Heng stood up and proclaimed, I don't give a damn whether you were invited or not. Since you dare step foot here today, you better step forward and fight me. First, you declined Lai Lao's invitation, and now you've managed to sneak in. What exactly do you mean? Looking down on Lai Lao. Looking down on us, the Yoshion clan. The cultivator angrily declared, If I don't give you a good lesson today, you will surely go back with your tail between your legs, spreading rumors that the Yoshion country is weak and defenseless. Step forward. Fight me. My name is Hong Tianba. Today, I will loosen your bones and show you that there are realms beyond realms. The Yoshion country is not a place where you can act recklessly. 
Hong Tianba provocatively shouted out, roaring in anger repeatedly. Gu Yin, who was seated at the main table, instantly stood up, his expression turning icy cold. I challenge you, he replied. The remark made by Gu Yin instantly diverted everyone's attention. All eyes turned towards the son of the Tsushue village's proprietor, and then towards Chu Min, the village's owner himself. In that instant, Chu Min was so frightened that he felt as if his very soul was about to flee. He knew that his son had a solitary and peculiar personality, yet Lai Lao was right there beside him, not uttering a word. For you to forcefully intervene in such a moment. It is clearly seeking death. Chu Min immediately stood up and angrily exclaimed, Rebellious child! What nonsense are you talking about? Sit down at once. With these words, Chu Min reached out and placed his hand firmly on Gu Yin's shoulder, attempting to guide him back to his seat. However, as Gu Yin caught sight of his father's outstretched hand and was about to resist, he suddenly heard the sigh of Lu Heng ringing in his ears. Brother Gu Yin, please have a seat. This matter is not suitable for your involvement let it be handled by me. Upon hearing this voice, Gu Yin's body stiffened slightly, and he ceased to resist, allowing his father to guide him back to his seat, where he sat quietly. Chu Min was greatly astonished by his son's cooperation. In the moment when he reached out, he even thought that his rebellious and aloof son was about to strike him. Now that Gu Yin was cooperating so well, he immediately heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. After guiding his son back to his seat, Chu Min hastily turned to Lai Lao beside him and said, I kindly request your discerning insights on this matter. Mr. Hu Fong is indeed a close friend of my son, and he has been staying at the estate for several days now. He came to the banquet tonight at my invitation, and truly without any intention of provocation. I hope that Lai Lao and all our esteemed guests are aware of this, and let us not spoil the harmony. Chu Min spoke respectfully, intending to ask Lai Lao to use his profound wisdom to stabilize the situation and calm everyone. At this moment, as long as Lai Lao uttered a word, those cultivators would naturally have to stop their actions as well. However, after Chu Min finished speaking, Lai Lao didn't pacify the situation as he had anticipated. Lai Lao smiled and glanced at Lu Hang, saying, I dare not make rash judgments regarding whether he harbors provocations. After all, we can only know someone superficially, not their true intentions. Who knows what thoughts this Mr. Hua, who hails from the south, might hold. As soon as these words were spoken by Lai Lao, a sinking feeling seized Chu Min's heart, indicating that things were not going well. Hong Tianba, who stood up and intended to attack Lu Hang, roared in anger and charged towards him. Damn bastard! Stand up and fight me, for heaven's sake! Don't behave like a coward, hiding like a timid turtle. Hong Tianba's fist thundered directly towards Lu Hang. The ferocious true energy swiftly swept away the dining table in front of Lu Hang, disintegrating all the plates, bowls, and utensils on it. The might of this punch was capable of obliterating everything, leaving not even a trace of residue behind. Upon witnessing this scene, Lu Hang reluctantly closed his eyes. Xiao Ai, Lu Hang said slowly, be more gentle. Understood. Lu Hang's voice echoed, and behind him, the silhouette of a young girl with silver hair and animal ears suddenly materialized from the courtyard, appearing before everyone. In Hong Tianba's utterly astonished gaze, the petite young girl, carrying a green ancient sword on her back, took a step forward and directly confronted his fist. Amidst the watchful gazes of the crowd, the young girl raised her seemingly laughable small fist and fiercely directed it towards him. Is she really planning to confront him head-on with her fist? While anger surged in Hong Tianba's heart, he instinctively wanted to restrain his strength, lest he accidentally strike and harm the young girl with a single punch. However, before he could even restrain his strength, the young girl had already collided with his force, moving at a speed that reached its utmost limit. In an instant, the fists of the two, one large and one small, collided, and a surge of ferocious true energy instantly engulfed the surroundings. Rumble Amidst the deafening explosion, the surging waves of true energy flattened everything within a radius of three meters. And this was only possible because the residual shock waves were individually blocked by everyone, preventing them from reaching even farther. 
Inside the courtyard, the eyes of the gathered cultivators widened instantaneously. After the dissipation of that gust of fist wind, Hong Tianba, who was originally fiercely aggressive, took half a step back, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth, clearly indicating that he had been injured. While the little girl who exchanged a punch with him stood coldly in indifference, completely unmoved. The winner between the two sides was immediately determined. The cultivators, all fell silent, unable to accept this reality. Although Hong Tianba may not be considered exceptionally powerful among them, the raging force of his punches is not something that just anyone can withstand. But how could this sudden appearance of a young girl, petite in stature, bravely withstand the force of Hong Tianba's punches and directly push him back, defeating him in the very domain he prided himself on? Could this seemingly frail little girl also be a cultivator who has diligently trained in the art of boxing? The expressions of everyone looking at Xiao Ai changed completely. Lai Lao, who witnessed everything, furrowed his brow even further. However, at this moment, the Hong Tianba, who had been pushed back by a punch and was left staggering half a zhang, suddenly spoke out in anger, exclaiming, Damn it, this is an outrageous insult. If you have the guts, come forward yourself. What's the meaning of sending a little girl to fight me? Show yourself, surname Hua. Hong Tianba, filled with both frustration and anger, has become enraged. Upon seeing him in such a state, Xiao Ai let out a cold snort and said, If you can't even withstand a single punch from me, what right do you have to speak of maintaining appearances? If I were you, I would dig a hole and bury myself, so that I would never have to show my face to the world again. For the little girl, the majesty of the wolf god was absolutely not to be offended. However, this group of foreigners dared to hurl offensive words towards the wolf god, and she could no longer bear it. Now that she had received the wolf god's permission to take action, she retorted directly. Go away. With your level of cultivation, you shouldn't embarrass yourself by appearing in public. As Xiao Ai uttered two cold and indifferent remarks, Lu Heng instantly covered his face, unable to bear witnessing such words. This stubborn girl's temper is getting worse. With such words coming from you, how can tonight turn out peaceful? Although this group of cultivators had no intention of letting Lu Heng off easily, but isn't this girl too arrogant? Indeed, as Xiao Ai uttered these words, the cultivators once again erupted in excitement. Everyone glared angrily at the little girl in the center of the field, united against a common enemy. Such arrogance from a child. An elderly cultivator with a head full of white hair, yet possessing the countenance of an immortal, stood up and exclaimed indignantly, even if your cultivation surpasses that of Hong Tianba, you should not stoop to such humiliation. You are so disrespectful. Today, I will personally teach you a lesson on behalf of your elders. Let me make you understand the principles of being a decent person. With a swipe of his dusting tool, the elderly cultivator released a beam of sword light from the sleeve of his robe, suspending it by his side. The surrounding cultivators cheered for him one after another. Buddhist layman Sanyi, quickly discipline this arrogant little girl. Yes. Let her understand the significance of respecting teachers and upholding moral principles. The cultivators were filled with excitement, while the elderly cultivator arrived riding the winds and said, I, as an old ascetic cultivator, call myself Sani. Fair maiden, may I know your name and surname? Xiao Ai gazed at him coldly, and then emitted a radiance from her mouth, directly slashing towards the sword light beside the elderly cultivator. A majestic sword aura swept across with determination. Buddhist layman Sanyu was suddenly filled with a chilling dread, as if facing imminent disaster. Immediately, he summoned his life-bound flying sword and rushed forward to meet it. In the moment when the two radiances collided. Clang! With a resounding clash of swords, Buddhist layman Sanyu let out a muffled groan, clutching his chest in pain as he took several steps back. The sword light he summoned was instantly shattered, transforming into a palm-sized golden sword that fell to the ground. And the sword energy that crushed this golden sword also revealed its true form. Surprisingly, it was saliva spat out by the young girl. Chapter, 376 Upon beholding the true countenance of the sword's radiance, all those present were left utterly dumbfounded. At the moment when the little girl emitted a radiant sword light from her mouth, 
they were under the impression that this young maiden had also cultivated some divine weaponry or precious artifact. However, they now realized that it was nothing but expelled saliva. This young maiden, with a mere spit, vanquished the sword radiance that Buddhist layman Sanyi had dedicated his life to refining. People looked at Xiao Ai's expression, filled with astonishment. This scene, compared to Xiao Ai directly shattering Hong Tianba with a punch, was even more inconceivable. After all, Hong Tianba's cultivation level was not high, but Buddhist layman Sanyi could be considered one of the more powerful cultivators among the crowd. However, even Buddhist layman Sanyi, despite being so powerful, was defeated in such a ridiculous manner by this young maiden. And what's more, he suffered such a miserable defeat that he couldn't even withstand a single move. The anger in the hearts of the cultivators burned even more intensely. Indeed, as the saying goes, like master, like servant. This Huafeng of the Yun sect is so arrogant, and his sword attendant is equally insolent. These two, master and servant, are truly excessively arrogant, relying on their formidable strength to act tyrannically. This humiliation today, I absolutely cannot tolerate. While the cultivators grew increasingly furious, Buddhist layman Sanyi, on the other hand, clutched his chest, gazing blankly at the fallen golden sword, his whole being bewildered. No. This cannot be. Impossible. Upon witnessing this situation, the surrounding cultivators quickly supported him and helped him down, allowing him to rest. While Xiao Ai, with her silver hair and animal ears, coldly gazed at the people present, she said, Is there anyone else who wishes to challenge me? Step forward quickly, and don't waste my time. The words of provocation such as these are tantamount to trampling on the dignity of everyone present, further fueling the growing anger among the cultivators. Immediately, someone stepped forward and said, Allow me to have a contest with you. The person who spoke instantly caught the attention of everyone. It was a young gentleman dressed in exquisite attire, holding a folding fan, exuding extraordinary charm. Upon seeing his willingness to take action, all the cultivators breathed a sigh of relief. This young gentleman is named Lai Yi, a talented and handsome member of the Lai clan, one of the prominent clans in the capital city. He is a skilled successor brought forth by Lai Lao. Although young, being under 40 years of age, his cultivation level far surpassed that of ordinary individuals. Even among the cultivators present, this gentleman, Lai Yi, could be considered as one of the top elites. On the verge of completing the condensation of the five vital energies within his chest, he could step into the realm of the triple primordial at any moment. Furthermore, coupled with the Lai clan's numerous secret techniques and extraordinary lineage, any action taken by the esteemed Lai Yi is bound to elicit a distinct response. In the gaze of everyone's anticipation, Lai Yi stepped out from the crowd and approached Xiao Ai, saying, I am Lai Yi, a member of the esteemed Lai clan. May I inquire about the surname of the young lady? Confronted with this arrogant little girl, even though she was rude and uncivilized, Lai Yi still extended her face and respect. However, Xiao Ai was not falling for his tricks. Confronted with Lai Yi donning extravagant attire, Xiao Ai coldly remarked, Why put on such a pretentious act? If you want to fight, then fight. Your insincere facade is truly nauseating. The little girl showed no mercy and this group of people directed hateful remarks towards the wolf god, leaving her with no favorable impression of them. Even if Lai Yi carried herself with grace, she found it disgusting if you truly understand manners, why didn't you speak up when everyone was ganging up on the wolf god just now? What are you pretending to be a good person for now? Bah! Xiao Ai's gaze was icy, while Lai Yi slightly hesitated and helplessly said, since it is so, then please enlighten me, young lady. Not far away, Nangong Hao frowned as he observed the situation and couldn't help but transmit his voice, Lai Lao, this young girl's strength is extraordinary, and her background is unclear. Should we stop the young master Lai and let the younger generation take over? Nangong Hao was worried that this young master who came from the capital city would lose face in public to the little girl in front of him. After all, if Lai Yi were to lose face, Lai Lao's reputation would undoubtedly be at stake as well. However, Lai Lao shook his head and said, Let him go, even if he loses, it's for the best. It will prevent him from being conceited and underestimating the heroes of the world. 
Lai Lao's mindset was quite tranquil. Therefore, Nan Gong Hao refrained from speaking any further. Meanwhile, in the arena, adorned in exquisite attire, Lai Yi stepped forward and addressed Xiao Ai, saying, Fair maiden, do you wish to compete in magical artifacts or arcane techniques? This debonair gentlemanly figure, Lai Yi, indeed possesses exceptional demeanor. Despite Xiao Ai's offensive words, he still maintains his composure. Coupled with his handsome appearance and privileged background, numerous female cultivators in the crowd gaze at him with admiration and their hearts are filled with envy. However, Xiao Ai furrowed her brow and said, Are you treating this as a mere game? Must we establish rules? Just use your most formidable means to attack, and let victory or defeat be determined by our abilities. Are you also bound by limitations when engaging in a life and death duel? Xiao Ai's words left Lai Yi increasingly astonished. The little girl before him surprisingly didn't play by the rules. Could it be that in her eyes, this is a life or death battle? With these thoughts in mind, Lai Yi closed his folding fan and his expression became solemn. Apologies for my abruptness, please pardon me, young lady. After finishing his words, Lai Yi's mind stirred, and he directly summoned his most powerful treasured weapon, the cracked dome blade. From the darkness, a gleaming dark golden blade emerged, but instead of launching a direct assault, it circled in front of Lai Yi. Lai Yi said, Young lady, be careful. As the voice faded, the cracked dome blade in front of Lai Yi disappeared from the sight of the crowd. To my surprise, in an instant, it vanished from this world. Upon witnessing this scene, all the cultivators became filled with excitement. The cracked dome blade, known as a renowned magical tool of the Lai clan, possesses a razor-sharp blade that is difficult to anticipate. It can effortlessly cut through space and transcend into realms beyond, only to abruptly unleash its lethal strike. It can be described as elusive and difficult for ordinary people to defend against. Did this young master Lai Yi actually unleash this most powerful killing technique directly? They all turned to look at the silver-haired girl with animal ears, wanting to see how this fierce girl from the south would respond. Upon the main table, Lai Lao's expression also displayed a subtle astonishment, as he had not anticipated Lai Yi directly summoning forth the formidable cracked dome blade. He furrowed his brows and transmitted his voice, saying, We must not unleash our ultimate technique. Merely defeating and chastising him will suffice to uphold the reputation of our beloved Yoshion country. That Huofeng of the Yun sect possesses considerable strength, so let us avoid forging a truly fatal enmity with him. Lai Lao earnestly entreated with concern, fearing that Lai Yi might harbor murderous intentions or find it difficult to restrain himself once his techniques were exhausted. Lai Yi nodded, indicating his understanding. Meanwhile, in the midst of the scene, the silver-haired girl with animal ears coldly uttered. Dare you still daydream? Seeking death. In the instant when the voice fell, the little girl in the midst of the scene swiftly transformed into a blur of afterimages and charged directly towards a certain direction. In the span of a moment, the fleeing brilliance broke through the distance between the two individuals, reaching a speed so rapid that even Lai Yi couldn't react in time. In the instant that the cracked dome blade was swung from the void, it somehow cleaved through empty space. And Xiao Ai's right hand had already reached towards Lai Yi's countenance. In the blink of an eye, the distance between the two sides had narrowed down to merely an inch. Lai Yi's heart suddenly skipped a beat, yet he couldn't even react in time to what had just happened. Before his eyes, there was simply no trace of Xiao Ai's figure. Because the rapid disappearance in this fleeting moment had surpassed the speed of light, Xiao Ai in the eyes of people remained motionless in her original position. However, amidst this critical moment, the strike of the cracked dome blade, which cleaved through empty space, abruptly vanished. Only to reappear with preemptive speed, surging forth from Lai Yi's front and directly aiming its cleave towards Xiao Ai. The automatic protective enchantment of a top-tier magical tool was so swift that it even surpassed Xiao Ai's speed. Among all the cultivators present, only Lu Heng, Nan Gong Hao, and Lai Yang managed to discern the fleeting exchange in that brief moment. Lai Yang and Nan Gong Hao instantly rose to their feet, wearing expressions of profound astonishment on their faces. They knew this young girl was formidable, but they never anticipated her strength to be this exceptional. This skill. At the very least, 
the speed of this escaping light is no less than that of an innate talent. In the blink of an eye, Xiao Ai's figure returned to its original position. However, the dark golden cracked dome blade silently descended in front of Lai Yi, momentarily severing the connection with him. Within the Tsushue village, all the cultivators were completely dumbfounded. In their eyes, the silver-haired girl with animal ears seemingly stood still and didn't do anything, yet the cracked dome blade of Lai Yi inexplicably fell down. Meanwhile, Lai Lao and city lord Nangong abruptly rose from their seats, their faces filled with astonishment as if they had witnessed an incomprehensible scene. What exactly occurred in that fleeting moment earlier? The crowd was utterly stunned, while Lai Yi's face turned pale, and his back was drenched in cold sweat. Through the connection between his consciousness and the cracked dome blade, he vaguely understood what had occurred in that fleeting moment just now. The speed at which this young girl struck was astonishingly beyond his utmost capacity to react. If it weren't for the timely protection of the cracked dome blade, he would have suffered a miserable defeat. But even though the cracked dome blade saved him, in that brief moment, the uncontrolled cracked dome blade was subject to tens of thousands of instantaneous strikes from the girl's fists causing it to lose all its spiritual energy and sever its connection with him. Returning this time, it seems that he will have to meticulously cultivate for a long time in order to once again master the usage of this top-tier magical tool. With this in mind, Lai Yi's face wore a bitter expression as he respectfully gestured to Xiao Ai and said, My skills are inferior. I, Lai Yi, humbly admit defeat. After saying that, Lai Yi's complexion turned pale as he withdraws, appearing next to Lai Yang. Uncle. Lai Yi called out. Lai Yang, however, patted his shoulder and said, focus on your cultivation. After saying that, Lai Yang and Nan Gong Hao looked simultaneously at the little girl in the field, as well as Huafeng of the Yun sect, who was still smiling behind the girl. Regarding such an outcome, Huafeng appeared completely unsurprised, as if everything was within his grasp. Upon witnessing such a situation, Lai Yang couldn't help but feel a hint of anger welling up within his heart. When he was in the Zhuxian town that day, he already anticipated that this individual was extraordinary and possessed great power. However, he hadn't expected the same level of dreadfulness from this person's maid. This master and servant indeed possessed the ability to be arrogant. However, the current situation is not an ordinary confrontation but rather a scenario where cultivators from the southern region have come to provoke, compelling the Yoshion country to take action. The Yoshion country's side will never retreat. Lai Yang said, City Lord Nangong, go and experience the methods of this cultivator from the southern region, so as not to tarnish the prestige of our Yoshion country. At this moment, Lai Yang finally agreed to let Nangong Hao take action. Although there are cultivators stronger than Lai Yi in the realm of cultivators, having Nangong Hao to intervene might raise suspicions of bullying the weak and taking advantage of the situation. However, Lai Yi was defeated too quickly and mercilessly just now, and this young girl's movement technique is unusually fast. It is more reliable to have Nangong Hao, a true innate cultivator, take action. At the very least, in the upcoming battle, the Yoshion country's side must win, and win decisively. Leaving no room for the young girl to put up any resistance. This way, Lai Yang can step forward to take control and promptly suppress the increasingly intense hostility between both sides. And, to prevent the possibility of that man in white taking action. At this point, Lai Yang has already confirmed the formidable strength of Huafeng of the Yun sect. Even his sword servant is so powerful, indicating that Huafeng himself must be even more terrifying. It is most appropriate to frame the conflict between both sides as a battle of spirit. If this Huafeng of the Yun sect were to step onto the stage, it is feared that Nan Gong Hao would not be able to withstand it, necessitating his intervention. And if he were to step onto the stage, if he wins, it would be fine but if he loses, the Yoshion country would be utterly defeated. It is a significant blow to the reputation of the Lai clan. Lai Yang pondered in his heart, never expecting that he would be cornered into such a desperate situation by two individuals, a master and a servant, from the southern region. Within the Fire Pass country, apart from Emperor Yen, who cultivates the divine path of incense and fire, and the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, who dominates over evildoers, there has unexpectedly emerged such a powerful human martial artist. 
Lai Yang gazed at the young girl with silver hair and animal ears, as well as the white-clad Huifeng of the Yun sect, and felt a sense of admiration in his heart. As for the possibility of this one master and one servant being the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. Previously, when in Zhuxian town, Lai Yang did indeed have a fleeting thought of such a possibility. However, that was merely a fleeting moment of whimsical thoughts, and it was never taken seriously. Having witnessed Xiao Ai's actions with his own eyes, he completely dispelled the possibility of such speculation. It is rumored among the people that the sword master Xiao Ai possesses formidable strength and is an ancient predecessor who has accompanied the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain for countless years. With gray hair and a youthful appearance, she exudes an aura of wisdom and maturity. Her killing techniques are icy and merciless, unleashing a horrifying scene of sword energy sweeping across the land, making all living beings within a thousand miles wail in agony. This truly defies the order of heaven. Therefore, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain has always forbidden Xiao Ai from taking action. In most cases, Xiao Ai merely follows behind the wolf god as a sword attendant. However, the little girl before my eyes, despite also having silver hair and animal ears, is arrogant, domineering, and bullies the weak with a sense of superiority. She completely lacks the wise and composed demeanor of an ancient predecessor like Sword Master Xiao Ai. How could she possibly be Xiao Ai? These two individuals, master and servant, have come from the southern kingdom. It seems that after the fame of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain spread, a trend of imitating the master and servant of the wolf god has emerged within the Fire Pass country. That is why Hua Feng and his servant are dressed in such a manner. Having pondered extensively in his heart, Lai Yang was planning how to act later, while Nan Gong Hao had already arrived in the field and approached the little girl ahead. Little child, I have come to spar with you. Nan Gong Hao's appearance left all the cultivators stunned. This. City Lord Nangong personally taking action. They all looked towards Lai Lao, finding it somewhat difficult to accept. City Lord Nangong is indeed a master at the innate realm. Even in the entire southern region of the Yoshion country, he is known as one of the few cultivators. Yet now, they actually made him step onto the field. If this spreads, wouldn't it imply that the Yoshion country bullies the weak? Taking advantage of the elderly against the young. Or perhaps, is this silver-haired girl with beast ears actually equipped with the power of the innate realm? However, despite possessing the power of the innate realm, why would she willingly serve as a sword attendant? Could it be that her master, that Hufeng of the Yun sect whose name has never been heard of before, is so formidable that even innate cultivators are only fit to be his sword attendants by his side? How could such a powerful existence have gone unnoticed in the past? The expressions of the cultivators were somewhat embarrassed. Lai Yi couldn't help but speak up, saying, Uncle, City Lord Nangong. Do not speak further. Just observe, Lai Yang interrupted Lai Yi, gesturing with his hand. He continued, The situation is not as simple as you think. Upon hearing these words from Lai Lao, a sense of awe fell upon the gathered individuals. Could it be that this? Lai Lao's statement implies that this young girl is indeed a cultivator in the innate realm. In an instant, the way everyone looked at Xiao Ai changed. Chapter 377 Cultivators of Innate Cultivation This appellation carries an immense weight. Among cultivators, those who can refine the five inner energies in their chest and begin nourishing the three blossoms at the crown can truly be considered as accomplished cultivators, embodying the profound essence of Tao. Wherever one goes in the world, they are entitled to be an honored guest. And a cultivator who has refined the five inner energies in their chest, nurtured the three blossoms at the crown, has entered the realm of the innate, transcending the mundane, and can truly be said to be superior to all living beings. Every profound cultivator of innate cultivation is a powerful and influential ruler who commands respect wherever they go. People have never heard of such a magnificent spectacle where innate cultivators serve as sword servants. Is this Huifeng from the Yun sect of the Fire Pass country truly so formidable? Even his sword servant is an innate cultivator. The cultivators of the Yoshion country were all shocked beyond words and unable to speak. They couldn't accept such a thing, but Lai Lao's words clearly implied that this little girl who had beaten everyone to a pulp was an innate cultivator. 
The exhilarated cultivators, all fell silent and silently watched Nan Gong Hao and the little girl in the field, eager to witness the ensuing development. And as Nan Gong Hao stepped forward, Xiao Ai furrowed her brows slightly and said, You want to fight with me? She glanced at the crowd present, then her gaze returned to Nan Gong Hao, as she said, One defeated, and now another one emerges, it's like stringing candied haws can't you just call out the strongest person directly? Xiao Ai looked at the innate cultivator before her with disdain, thinking, I don't want to waste my time on a mere riffraff. The arrogant words, instantly ignited the previously tranquil courtyard once again. People stared in astonishment at the little girl before them, wondering if she truly understood the formidable reputation of Nan Gong Hao. This is undeniably one of the top innate cultivators in the southern region. Even if you were to look across the entire Yoshion country, they would still hold a prominent position. And the meaning behind the little girl's words was it really that she desired to engage in direct combat with Lai Lao? At that moment, everyone felt that this little girl had gone mad. Lai Lao, on the other hand, had long been renowned as an innate cultivator and was among the foremost in terms of strength among all innate cultivators. Even if this little girl is an innate cultivator, challenging Lai Lao directly seems excessively arrogant and presumptuous. Nan Gong Hao's face displayed an expression of anger as he retorted, You insolent little girl! Has no one ever taught you the concept of etiquette? Lu Hang could only laugh and cry, and helplessly spoke, Why don't you just have a friendly match with city lord Nan Gong and not go too far? Others may not be aware of Xiao Ai's cultivation, but isn't Lu Hang aware of it as well? Although relying on the characteristic of constant cultivation day and night without any bottlenecks, as well as the unique cultivation of the combined forces of incense power, heavenly thunder, and demon cultivator. Amplified by the multiple nourishment of Hanyu Mountain's peach fruits, and several years of arduous cultivation of the Tao scripture, Xiao Ai has already refined the five qi within her chest, even approaching the cultivation of the three flowers. She is just one step away from stepping into the realm of innate power. Her speed of cultivation is terrifyingly fast. However, the disparity in this final step is like the difference between heaven and earth. Even relying on the various exquisite divine techniques passed down by Lu Heng in the divine skill, Xiao Ai can barely contend with an cultivator at the innate realm. However, she can only barely exchange blows with a cultivator who has just entered the innate realm. Don't even mention Lai Lao, who came from the capital city. Even if Xiao Ai were to fight against Nan Gong Hao, it would be quite tough. But this little girl directly challenges Lai Lao she seems to have become highly agitated, disregarding everything and making up her mind to embarrass this group of people. After all, as the top cultivator of the Yoshion country, if Lai Lao were to participate in such a situation, even if he were to instantly defeat Xiao Ai, it would still bring shame upon his reputation. And as for Lu Heng's words, although they were meant to restrain, Xiao Ai's arrogant remarks have already caused everyone present to feel embarrassed and humiliated. Nan Gong Hao's face darkened, and he gritted his teeth in anger, saying, You little girl. You've crossed the line. After this little girl's wild and unfounded remarks are spoken, even if he were to defeat the opponent next, once this matter spreads, both Lai Lao and he himself will have their reputations affected. Nan Gong Hao has already ignited his true fire. Meanwhile, Lai Lao maintained an unwavering expression, coldly gazing at Xiao Ai in the center of the arena, as well as the man in white standing behind her. Upon seeing this situation, Lu Hang sighed and said, Forget it, take back what I said earlier, Xiao Ai, do as you please, just make sure nobody gets hurt. Lu Hang's expression was helpless as he said, To be honest, it's quite ironic. I was merely invited to have a meal, but now someone insists on putting me on the hot seat. And now, when the heat is insufficient and the roasting is incomplete, they blame us Sai being a good person is truly difficult. Lu Heng's soliloquy made the faces of the cultivators even more unsightly. While Lai Lao's face turned dark, he couldn't help but feel a tinge of regret in his heart. Previously, during the period of collective excitement, he had the opportunity to restrain the anger of the crowd and turn swords into plowshares. However, due to a momentary lapse in judgment, he ended up following the anger of the crowd. Now, he has kicked the iron board and lost all dignity. Once the little girl uttered the final sentence, 
even if Nan Gong Hao emerged victorious in this confrontation, both sides would have become irreversibly embroiled in hostility. Having provoked such a formidable cultivator, Lai Yang couldn't help but feel a twinge of regret deep within his heart. However, at this point, he could no longer utter another word. Could only darken his complexion and said, City Lord Nan Gong, it's up to you from here. Nan Gong Hao let out a muffled grunt, took a step forward, and declared, Little girl, draw your sword. Today, I shall show you the meaning of inviolable innate talent. However, Xiao Ai coldly retorted, Draw my sword. You are not worthy. The even more arrogant words were promptly retorted back. Nan Gong Hao, filled with fury, responded with a smirk, saying, Such an audacious little mouth. Today, I will tear you apart. Xiao Ai, with a cold expression, looked at him, unfazed. The statement Lu Heng made just now already implies that Xiao Ai is allowed to utilize the Heavenly Thunder Sword. However, once the Heavenly Thunder Sword is unsheathed, it will undoubtedly expose the identity of the Wolf God. Currently, Sun Yen is still in the clutches of the demons. Xiao Ai, unwilling to attract undue attention, refrains from divulging the news of the arrival of the Wolf God here and will not invoke the use of the Heavenly Thunder Sword. Furthermore, in Xiao Ai's heart, Amir Nangong Hao certainly doesn't have the qualification to lay eyes upon the Heavenly Thunder Sword. She stood in place, her body slightly taut, with true energy circulating throughout her being, awaiting Nangong Hao's move. Xiao Ai is also aware of the immense gap in the strength and realm between both parties, thus she dares not be presumptuous. Although she may exhibit arrogance in her words, it is merely a means to tarnish the reputation of these individuals. Following beside the wolf god, she has never been arrogant or conceited due to her own cultivation level. It was only when this group of individuals verbally besieged the wolf god that it provoked her, and she retaliated in kind. Since you deem yourself so highly and feel insulted, resorting to verbally attacking the wolf god, then let your words become a reality and your dignity be completely tarnished. The thoughts within the little girl's heart were, indeed, that simple. As the true energy circulated around the little girl's body, she focused her attention and waited. Nan Gong Hao let out a cold snort and said, I will only use one move after that, regardless of the outcome, I will not intervene again, to avoid accusations of taking advantage of the younger generation. As long as you can withstand my attack, you are free to strike me down. I, Nan Gong Hao, will not retaliate. Nan Gong Hao attempted to regain the advantage in momentum, making every effort to salvage the reputation they were about to lose. As the voice fell, Nan Gong Hao raised his right hand, revealing a blood-red tattoo on his wrist. The tattoo depicts a roaring blood kylin. In the Yoshion country, there is a legend that the esteemed ancestors of the Nan Gong family had a deep connection with an ancient divine beast, the blood kylin. When the divine beast perished, it left behind a lingering soul to protect the successive heads of the Nan Gong family. And Nan Gong Hao, is the current patriarch of the Nan Gong family, inheriting the remnants of the Blood Kylin. As Nan Gong Hao raised his right hand, the Blood Kylin tattoo on his wrist began to writhe, transforming into a blood-red aura that soared into the air. The vast and ancient ambience resonates within the Tsushue village. The enraged Kylin roared, resonating throughout the entire night sky. Within the Tsushue village, many cultivators felt a subtle tremor in their hearts, as they encountered for the first time the aura of an ancient divine beast, rendering them almost unable to remain calm. And by Nan Gong Hao's side, there now stood a semi-transparent, blood-red kylin. In the blink of an eye, the presence of the blood kylin overshadowed the entire scene, instantly suppressing the aura of the little girl. Lu Heng's heart, in an instant, soared with anticipation. Blood Kylan Nan Gong Hao's cultivation may not be high, yet he possesses such an eccentric creature as a protector. In this way, Xiao Ai is simply no match, without wielding the formidable power of the Heavenly Thunder Sword. Witnessing the dire situation, with a single thought, Lu Heng readied the power of the Requiem Seal at any given moment. Through the connection between their souls, Lu Heng conveyed, Xiao Ai, go ahead and take action, there will be no harm. The connection between their souls is not just a mere telepathy apart from Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, outsiders are completely unaware of it. 
Upon hearing Liu Hang's voice, Xiao Ai exhibited no visible signs of disturbance. She continued to gaze coldly ahead at the blood kylan, completely disregarding its fierce and intimidating presence. However, Nan Gong Hao had already roared in anger, mobilizing his entire true qi and commanding the remnants of the kylan spirit to charge forward. Kylan Ancestral Spirit, Annihilate My Enemies. Roar. A deafening roar of a terrifying beast reverberated throughout this domain. The ferocious remnants of the Kylan spirit, with blazing flames, charged directly towards the silver-haired girl with animal ears. The ferocious bloodlust stained the entire night sky in crimson. The horrifying momentum left all cultivators trembling with fear, making it indescribable. The world has long spoken of the unparalleled ferocity of the Kylan remnants from the Southern Palace clan, yet little did they anticipate its terrifying extent. Even the spectator, Lai Lao, couldn't help but wear a shocked expression. He never expected Nan Gong Hao's Kylan's blood soul to be this formidable. However, in the instant when the blood-red Kylan spirit surged forth and confronted the overwhelming terror akin to the collapse of heaven and earth, the silver-haired girl with animal ears simply let out a casual sigh. Exhale. A cold gust of wind silently brushed through the courtyard. As the chilly wind passed by, the ferocious blaze of Nan Gong Hao's Kylan's blood soul dissipated instantly. Amidst the astonished gazes of everyone present, it transformed into fragmented crimson vapors, retracting into the grasp of Nan Gong Hao. It transformed once again into the Kylan's tattoo. Meanwhile, Nan Gong Hao maintained the posture of fully mobilizing his true energy to execute his technique, standing frozen in place with a bewildered expression. Unable to comprehend what had transpired at all. The ancestral spirit of the Kylan dispersed in a single breath. Who is this young girl? What is her background? Nan Gong Hao found himself immersed in a state of bewildered astonishment, the intensity of which was so overwhelming that for a moment, he even forgot his whereabouts and what he was doing. Just stood there, in a dumbfounded stupor, unable to accept this harsh reality. Upon the main table, Lai Lao's complexion grew slightly pallid, and his hand, clutching the armrest, trembled ever so slightly. The majesty of the Kylan ancestral spirit, witnessed by his own eyes, was something he acknowledged even personally, finding it challenging to confront such a move. However, this terrifying ultimate move, was effortlessly neutralized by the seemingly casual actions of the young girl before him and remarkably, what appeared to be the most formidable strike thus far, was counteracted with utmost ease. Lai Lao gazed blankly at the silver-haired, bestiered young girl, realizing that she must possess some sort of artifact or secret technique specifically targeting spiritual beings, enabling her to dismiss Kylan's blood soul with such ease. Even if he could anticipate such an unlikely occurrence, the sight before his eyes completely shattered Lai Lao's emotional defenses. Even if it is a secret technique restraint. Even if it is a coincidence. To be able to disperse Kylan's ancestral soul in an instant such a coincidence is too fatal. It's as if heaven intends for the Yoshiong country's side to lose. They want to make them lose all face. In the courtyard, there was a sudden silence, tranquil as an empty library devoid of any human presence. The originally impassioned and intimidating cultivators from the Yoshion country, now became speechless, their expressions filled with confusion, disbelief, and shock. It wasn't until Xiao Ai's cold words resounded that everyone was jolted awake. The blood kylan is not too bad. With a casual remark, it conveyed a mutual admiration that is often shared between formidable opponents. However, speaking such words in this context was imbued with a sense of contempt and mockery. Upon regaining his senses, Nan Gong Hao, who had just regained consciousness, heard such words and instantly felt his true energy surge uncontrollably, his eyes filled with fury. You ahem. Nan Gong Hao's directly spewed out a mouthful of fresh blood, and his entire body collapsed heavily to the ground. He fainted on the spot. And this time, no cultivators from the Yoshion country dared to speak out or roar in protest. They all remained silent, gazing in astonishment at the silver-haired girl with animal ears standing in the midst of the scene, and staring in disbelief at Nan Gong Hao's collapse. As if everyone was sleepwalking. Upon witnessing such a scene, Lu Han couldn't help but cover his face, sighing deeply in his heart. Oh brother Hua, brother Hua, 
it seems that in this lifetime, you probably won't be able to come to the north. Moreover, in the future, when traversing the Yoshion country, Lu Heng will also have to adopt a new pseudonym. In the future, if one were to openly declare oneself as Huafeng of the Yun sect, they would likely face an immediate onslaught from all sides. This Xiao Ai, usually appearing silent and not adept in words, how can her sharp tongue become so venomous when she gets provoked? After executing a series of continuous techniques, not only did it shame these group of cultivators, but it also caused one innate cultivator to faint on the spot it's truly terrifying. Lu Heng believed that in the future, he absolutely must not engage in verbal disputes with this young lady, otherwise, he feared it might provoke a myocardial infarction out of sheer anger. As he observed the silent crowd, Lu Heng stood up and declared, the duel concludes, everyone ahem farewell, farewell. Lu Heng had initially intended to deliver a few diplomatic words to ease the atmosphere before departing. However, as soon as he opened his mouth, he noticed that everyone was staring at him with expressions filled with despair, dullness, and numbness. That gaze, seemingly saying, another face slap. How excessive! In such a situation, it seemed that whatever words Lu Heng uttered would be perceived as provocation and met with contemptuous disregard. In order to prevent the situation from spiraling out of control, Lu Heng had no choice but to keep quiet and refrain from speaking. From a distance, Lu Heng gestured a farewell to Gu Yin at the main table. Then, he firmly took hold of the little girl's hand and swiftly led her away, determined to prevent any further trouble that the young girl appeared to instigate. If this little girl were to jump again, it is possible that Hua Feng's name would truly become the nation's public enemy of the Yoshion country. After all, it is using someone else's name let's not go too far. Chapter 378 Outside the Tsushue village, Lu Heng led Xiao Ai and the two siblings Wuyo and Wuyu, as they departed directly. Regarding the events that happened inside, these two siblings were still unaware. While the feast was only halfway through, Lu Heng called them away. The two siblings felt somewhat bewildered. Especially Xiao Ai's words, if we don't leave soon, the people of the Tsushue village will capture you and make you part of a grand wolf feast. This completely befuddled the two siblings, as they couldn't understand how they had suddenly become enemies with the people of the Tsushue village. Weren't things going well between them before? Father and sister Xiao Ai also don't seem to have a nature inclined to provoke unnecessary disputes. The two siblings were incredibly perplexed. As Lu Heng and the others left the Tsushue village, they had only walked a short distance when someone followed closely behind them. Surprisingly, it was Gu Yin. Facing Lu Heng's bewildered gaze, Gu Yin, on the contrary, remained remarkably calm and said. I stand united with the wolf god in both advance and retreat. After a silent pause, Lu Heng let out a sigh and said, I have implicated brother Gu Yin. However, Gu Yin shook his head and said, I have never had a sense of presence in this village. Having been away from home for many years, I have only recently returned. I am not familiar with them, and they also have little attachment towards me. I have been living in the village, and ironically, we feel awkward around each other. Even before the arrival of the wolf god, I had already planned to leave, but there was never a suitable time. Now, it is precisely the right moment to return to the gates of the mountain that is where my true home lies. At the very least, I can take in one or two disciples and pass on the master's profound teachings. Gu Yin's words made Lu Heng sigh in silence as he said, if brother Gu Yin has any leisure in the future, you are welcome to visit Hanyu Mountain. Gu Yin nodded and bowed, saying, farewell for now, the wolf god. After speaking, this introverted and taciturn man immediately transformed into light and headed straight towards the west. After bidding farewell to Gu Yin, Lu Heng turned his gaze once again towards the Tsushue village behind him. Inside the Tsushue village, everything appeared normal, and the group of Yoshion country cultivators, who were known for discriminating against foreigners, didn't catch up. However, a feud between the two sides was indeed established. Regarding the despicable attitude of these cultivators from the Yoshion country, Lu Heng could actually comprehend it. The phenomenon of exclusivity is prevalent in many places. Moreover, the Yoshion country is a mighty nation known for its humanitarian values, where cultivators are devoted to the principles of humanity. 
In regards to the Fire Pass country to the south, they harbor a profound sense of superiority and disdain. In the eyes of the cultivators from the Yoshion country, the wizards of the Fire Pass country, who follow the incense-worshipping divine path, could never surpass Emperor Yan, regardless of their level of cultivation. However, Emperor Yan's cultivation level could never reach that of the enigmatic and unfathomable fire god. In comparison to the limitless prospects of cultivating the human path, the potential of cultivating the divine path is fixed and unchangeable. Moreover, the cultivation of the divine path is much more convenient and effortless compared to the cultivation of the human path, primarily focused on accumulating wish power. In the eyes of Yoshion cultivators, the Fire Pass country, with its cultivate of the incense-worshipping divine path and abandonment of the human path, is inherently heretical. Furthermore, Lu Hain, as a cultivator hailing from the Fire Pass country, even if he doesn't cultivate the incense-worshipping divine path, to expect favorable treatment from Yoshion cultivators is nothing short of a delusion. Therefore, Lu Hain was not surprised by the hostile attitude of this group of cultivators. He could only sigh at the fact that this conflict had taken a toll on Gu Yin and the Tsushue village. Therefore, after Lu Hang departed, he didn't simply go far away. Instead, he intended to stay in the vicinity and observe for a period of time. If the Tsushue village and its inhabitants are affected by his actions, he will be ready to lend his help promptly. If nothing happens, he will be able to depart with peace of mind. However, just as Lu Hang had stepped out and ventured a short distance, a streak of escaping light suddenly flew across the night sky from afar. The speed of that streak of light was not particularly fast, making it highly conspicuous in the night sky. Lu Hang could discern the figure within the streak of light at a glance. Simultaneously, the person within the streak of light also caught sight of Lu Hang and his companions walking along the thoroughfare. The other party hesitated for a moment quickly suppressing the streak of light and landing in front of Lu Hang, their face filled with delighted excitement. I, Fu Feng, have met the wolf god. Standing before Lu Hang, to his astonishment, was none other than the great sage of Fu Feng, the tiger demon, who he had previously encountered as the master of the roaring goose sword in the South Sea. Lu Hang looked surprised and said, Brother Fu Feng. How did you come to the Yoshion country? From the South Sea to the Fire Pass country, the journey can already be considered a long one, let alone reaching the Yoshion country, situated further north within the Fire Pass country. Lu Hang never anticipated encountering this majestic great sage of Fu Feng in the Yoshion country. The great sage of Fu Feng chuckled and scratched his head, saying, This matter requires a lengthy explanation. If the wolf god doesn't mind, shall we find a place to sit down and discuss it at length? Smiling, Lu Hang said, In that case, Brother Fu Feng, please show me the way. I am currently wandering without a fixed destination, so anywhere will suffice. So the group left the main road and arrived at a nearby small hill. Under the cool moonlight, the spacious mountaintop was adorned with lush vegetation, albeit slightly disordered. However, the great sage of Fu Feng recited an incantation, causing the spiritual energy to circulate. A gentle breeze swept through, and the once extremely disordered mountaintop rapidly transformed into a tidy and spacious space. The entangled vines and shrubs retracted and wriggled, while the ground swiftly rose, forming an exquisite pavilion. Meanwhile, the great sage of Fu Feng quickly stepped into the pavilion, retrieving a set of tea utensils imbued with a graceful aura. He proceeded to prepare tea and boil water on the spot. Amidst the lingering fragrance of tea, this individual even took out delicate pastries and offered them to Xiao Ai as well as the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings. However, Xiao Ai showed no interest in these pastries and sweets, and continued to stand behind Lu Hang. After taking a seat, Lu Hang looked at the meticulous and respectful appearance of the great sage of Fu Feng, unable to help but chuckle and shake his head, saying, Fu Feng, my brother, you really came well prepared. In an instant, you've turned this desolate mountain into a reception hall. The great sage of Fu Feng grinned and said, I don't have any other hobbies, just a little bit of gluttony. So wherever I go, I make sure to bring plenty of food and drinks come, come, the wolf god, please enjoy some tea. The great sage of Fu Feng, speaking these words, hastily offered a cup of clear tea with utmost respect. Lu Heng smiled and accepted it, 
taking a gentle sip and discovering that it was indeed a fine spirit tea. This great sage of Fu Feng, who appeared rough and reckless, had an unexpectedly refined taste. No wonder he runs around everywhere wearing a scholar's robe every day even if it is a pretense of elegance, he truly carries it off convincingly. Lu Heng said, Brother Fu Feng, you haven't yet explained why you have appeared here. The great sage of Fu Feng glanced at the Tsushue village in the distance and said, In fact, I sense the presence of ancient divine beasts in this vicinity, so I came to witness the spectacle, but I didn't expect to encounter the wolf god Hee Hee. The words of the great sage of Fu Feng made Lu Hang suddenly realize, so it was the presence of the blood kylan that brought you here. Previously, when Nan Gong Hao summoned the remnants of the blood kylan, indeed, the display was grand and magnificent. The great sage of Fu Feng, being perplexed, inquired about the matter regarding the blood kylan, to which Lu Hang took the opportunity to narrate the events that had occurred in the Tsushue village. After listening, the great sage of Fu Feng shook his head repeatedly and said, What a laborious matter, this Yoshion country. Where the cultivators here seem to carry an arrogant air as if it were imprinted on their faces, each one behaving as if they were of utmost importance. They look down upon the cultivators who cultivate the divine path in the south, they scorn the cultivators of the demonic path in the north. And even those few great and small countries in the West who cultivate the path of human cultivation are deemed unworthy in their eyes. The wolf god, fortunately, only faced scorn and exclusion. As for someone like me who comes from overseas, we are directly regarded as uncivilized barbarians by these bunch of bird people, it's infuriating, to say the least. I have traveled to many countries across the four seas, yet I have never seen cultivators from any other nation as bothersome as those from the Yoshion country. No wonder King Jinbei was so arrogant and conceited when he went to the south it turns out it's not just his own foolishness, but the demeanor of all the cultivators from that country. The great sage of Fu Feng, when speaking of it, also seemed to carry a profound sense of resentment. Clearly, his encounters with the cultivators of the Yoshion country have been far from pleasant. Lu Heng couldn't help but laugh and said, Brother Fu Feng, as an innate master, would you also be ostracized and seen as a barbarian here? The great sage of Fu Feng shook his head and said, Those idiots dare not exclude me, but witnessing their behavior of ostracizing foreign cultivators disgusts me. Moreover, seeing how they treat ordinary cultivators with disdain and yet show me excessive reverence makes me even more disgusted. To put it bluntly, they are a group of bullies who prey on the weak, self-righteous ruffians. The great sage of Fu Feng said, however, what the Yoshion country takes pride in is nothing more than the fact that the contemporary ruler emerged from the Yoshion country itself. The human emperor is not exclusively the ruler of the Yoshion country he is the revered lord of all human races across the four seas, possessing wealth and influence over the entire world. The human emperor palace is not even located within the confines of the Yoshion country. I fail to comprehend the arrogance of these individuals. Speaking thus, the great sage of Fu Feng poured himself a cup of tea and remarked, however, not everyone in the Yoshion country is as repulsive. During my journey northward, I have encountered some fellow cultivators who are truly worthy of befriending. However, such is the prevailing custom in this place, where most cultivators harbor a sense of superiority. Even if there are a few good individuals mixed in, they cannot alter the overall situation. So later on, I stopped mingling with the cultivators of this country. Wherever I go, I prefer to be a lone figure, uninterested in appeasing their egos. The narration of the great sage of Fu Feng brought continuous laughter to Lu Heng. After not seeing each other for several years, this great sage of Fu Feng remains as lively and carefree as ever. However, how could brother Fu Feng be suddenly thinking of heading north when he's doing well in the South Sea? Lu Heng asked, Is there anything interesting happening in the north? When Lu Heng mentioned this, the great sage of Fu Feng shook his head and said, It's not a matter of amusement, but rather a matter of great trouble. Saying this, the great sage of Fu Feng glanced around, waved his hand to set up a soundproof barrier, preventing others from eavesdropping, and then spoke earnestly. The wolf god still remembers the prison in the mermaid kingdom of the South Sea, the South Sea Deep Trench, right? Lu Heng nodded and said, I remember. The great sage of Fu Feng said, within that South Sea deep trench, there lies a dazzling starry sea, 
within which is the legacy of an ancient deity this was discovered by the mermaid kingdom just a few years ago. The great sage of Fu Fong spoke cautiously, while carefully observing his surroundings, as if revealing a colossal secret, fearful of anyone unrelated eavesdropping. Of course, this is indeed a colossal secret. However, this secret was originally discovered by Lu Hang and informed the Mermaid Kingdom. Upon witnessing the cautious expression of the great sage of Fu Fong, Lu Hang restrained his amusement and refrained from mentioning that he was the one who discovered the ancient legacy. He nodded with sudden realization and said, So that's how it is there are ancient legacies within that starry sea and then? Lu Hang inquired about what comes next. The great sage of Fu Fong continued, The ancient legacy is incredibly mysterious. The mermaid kingdom has been selecting individuals throughout its borders in an attempt to find a suitable mermaid who can inherit the legacy, but all attempts have ended in failure. Coincidentally, during that time, I was a guest in the mermaid kingdom and inexplicably got chosen. They said I could go and inherit the ancient legacy of the great deity. The great sage of Fu Fong said, after I agreed to a myriad of requests from the mermaid kingdom, I was then brought into the South Sea Deep Trench, where I encountered the divine consciousness of the ancient predecessor who oversees the legacy. That strand of divine consciousness told me that the legacy of this place was left by the ancient deity Fushi, possessing incredible and mysterious power. And I possessed the Roaring Goose Sword, allowing me to inherit the legacy of the great deity Fushi. But there is one condition that must be fulfilled. The great sage of Fu Fong said, the divine consciousness of that ancient elder informed me that in the coming years, there will be a tremendous calamity occurring in the extreme north, and I am to retrieve the head of a monstrous creature with three heads, three eyes, and three mouths. After obtaining the head of this creature, only then can I inherit the ancient legacy so, I headed northward, searching for that mysterious creature with three heads, three eyes, and three mouths. Speaking of this, the great sage of Fu Fong couldn't help but ask, Does Senior Wolf God know this deity Fu Shi? It seems that Fu Fong has been holding this question in for the entire journey. Although he greatly desires the legacy of that ancient deity, he is also entangled in the dilemma of what level this deity's legacy actually is and whether it is worth his tireless efforts and hardships. Lu Heng shook his head and said, I don't recognize him personally, but I have heard of him. This deity, Fu Shi, is none other than the revered the emperor of ancient times. From what I understand, he should be regarded as the foremost figure of the ancient era, possessing formidable cultivation. The so-called cultivators in innate abilities are like mere ants in his eyes. If you are able to obtain his legacy, it would be an extremely rare and monumental opportunity that is hard to come by in this world. Lu Heng's words are not empty threats, but rather a display of tremendous self-assurance. When the divine being achieved enlightenment, the temporary glimpse he had of that transcendent realm, which surpassed everything, revealed before him the essence of all things in the universe. He could peruse and investigate the nodes of time and space such a transcendent state surpasses the so-called cultivators in innate abilities by far more than just a mere fraction. That deity, Fu Shi, is undoubtedly the pinnacle powerhouse of this realm. However, this enigmatic creature with three heads, three pairs of eyes, and three mouths to be honest, even I have never heard of it. Saying that, Lu Heng turned towards Xiao Ai beside him and asked, Xiao Ai, have you ever heard of such a creature? In the expectant gaze of the great sage of Fu Fong, the young girl furrowed her brow and pondered for a moment, then shook her head and said, I have never heard of it before. The great sage of Fu Fong couldn't help but sigh in disappointment. Even Xiao Ai, who was like an encyclopedic knowledge of all things, hadn't heard of the creature he was seeking. It seemed that the creature he was looking for was exceptionally elusive. Lu Heng observed the great sage of Fu Feng's crestfallen expression and smiled reassuringly, great opportunities are always accompanied by great challenges. After all, the inheritance of the ancient emperor is extraordinary. If it could be obtained easily, it would defy logical reasoning. Moreover, since the ancient predecessors directed you to the north and warned you about the imminent calamity at the northern celestial extremity, there's a chance that the creature might appear amidst the chaos, isn't it? The guidance from Lu Heng left the great sage of Fu Fong sighing with resignation. He sighed, when I went to the north several times, within the kingdom of all demons, the Blue Hill Country's leader and the lord of the Nine Phoenix Palace each governed one faction of good and evil. 
Both sides were clearly distinguished, and there was hardly any turmoil. To wait for such a tremendous calamity to arise, one can only wonder how many years we will have to wait who knows how close in recent years truly is. The great sage of Fu Fong felt quite helpless. He felt that his mortal and mundane nature was simply not on the same wavelength as the time perspective of the venerable ancient wolf god, whose lifespan is long-standing. Chapter, 379 The great sage of Fu Feng's distress, observed by Lu Hang, elicited a slight smile. Knowing that the great sage of Fu Feng was simply venting his frustrations to him, rather than actually losing patience. Lu Hang held a favorable impression of the wielder of the Roaring Goose Sword. Not only because of the Roaring Goose Sword, which has a profound connection with the Xianyuan lineage, but also because of the straightforward and easygoing nature of the great sage of Fu Feng, interacting with him is both relaxed and enjoyable. After a few grievances expressed by the great sage of Fu Feng, he, as Lu Hang had anticipated, quickly recovered and casually engaged in conversation about other topics, as if nothing had happened. By the way, why has Senior Wolf God also come to the northern region? The great sage of Fu Feng curiously asked, I heard before that the Fire Pass country was plagued by evil demons, and the Wolf God was busy descending from the mountains to exterminate them. Causing the Green Hell Cave to be soaked in the blood of demons and corpses scattered across a thousand miles shouldn't you, Senior, be busy eradicating demons in the Fire Pass country? Lu Hen couldn't help but sigh upon hearing the words of the great sage of Fu Feng. Has the rumor really become so exaggerated although the demons in the Green Hell Cave were indeed exterminated, and there were indeed corpses stretching for hundreds of miles, it didn't reach the extent of blood flowing like a river. And I only participated in the operation to kill the main culprits. The matter of corpses stretching for hundreds of miles and the land drenched in blood is not directly related to me, but rather it is the merit of the wizards from the Fire God Temple. As for this trip to the north, it is to rescue a mischievous monkey under my sect. It was abducted by demons during the chaos, and now, there is no news of its whereabouts. Lu Heng roughly recounted the incident of Sun Yen being abducted by demons, allowing the great sage of Fu Feng to understand the situation. The great sage of Fu Feng was astonished and exclaimed, Are there still demons daring to abduct people in Hanyu Mountain? The audacity of these few demons is truly unparalleled and hard to find in the world. The great sage of Fu Feng marveled at the audacity of these demons, daring even to provoke the wolf god. It is truly an act of utter recklessness. Lu Heng, on the other hand, smiled helplessly and said, even if they have abducted people, wouldn't I still be unable to catch up with them? I have been pursuing them for three months now, yet I still haven't found any trace of those demons. These demons indeed possess considerable skills in concealing themselves and remaining hidden. It may be difficult to catch up with them within a short period of time. The great sage of Fu Feng nodded repeatedly and said, in the future, I will also keep an eye out for the wolf god however, could it be related to the upheaval in Zhuxian town that those demons linger nearby and refuse to leave? The words of the great sage of Fu Feng left Lu Heng somewhat astonished. Hmm. The upheaval in Zhuxian town. What kind of upheaval? Lu Heng asked. The great sage of Fu Feng pointed towards the direction of the Zhuxian town not far away and said, Speaking of the wolf god, this ancient city known as Zhuxian town is no ordinary place. It has existed since ancient times. Legend has it that during the last arrival of the earthly catastrophe, countless casualties occurred here. The blood of gods stained the sky red, and the wailing of vengeful spirits echoed across the land. It was a truly complete battlefield of carnage. After the earthly catastrophe, peculiar phenomena occur in this place every hundred years. When the moment of upheaval arrives, the sky will be filled with a crimson blood glow, and the earth will resonate with constant wailing and cries of battle, as if a multitude of soldiers and horses are charging forward. Now, if a cultivator were to open their magic eyes, they would be able to see faint and blurry apparitions both inside and outside of the Zhuxian town. Those apparitions are clad in peculiar battle armor, wielding ferocious weapons, and battling each other in the sky above the Zhuxian town. The gruesome spectacle is enough to send shivers down one's spine. One thousand years ago, on the day when the human emperor ascended the throne, this place experienced a sudden and extraordinary upheaval. 
Blood began to overflow from the ground, transforming into surging crimson waves that engulfed the entire ancient city of Zhuxian town. The majority of life within the city perished, suffering countless casualties. Fortunately, the human emperor possessed profound cultivation and issued a decree, thereby suppressing the malevolent spirits in this place. However, since then, various mysterious rumors have spread throughout the world. Some say that during the Zhuxian town's upheaval on the day of the human emperor's ascension, they witnessed the ancient remains of divine beings, which only existed in the primordial era, emerging from the underground and wreaking havoc upon the city. Furthermore, there are those who claim that when the blood water flooded the ancient city, for ancient war swords hovered menacingly in the four corners of the void, forming a ferocious sword formation that slaughtered the residents within the city. There are also claims that beneath the Zhuxian town lies an ancient mass grave, where countless ancient demons were buried and suppressed. Thus, on the day of upheaval, it is believed to be the release of the malevolent energy, resulting in various anomalous occurrences. In any case, since then, during the periodic upheaval of the Zhuxian town that occurs every century, the Yoshion country dispatches innate cultivators to this place as protectors, to prevent the recurrence of the remnants from a thousand years ago. And on this day, as the Zhuxian town's day of upheaval draws near, numerous fleeing demons from the south have coincidentally arrived, causing a chaotic and troublesome situation unlike any before. Therefore, the Lai clan, specifically Lai Yang, has been dispatched from the capital city as a protector to prevent the rampaging demons in the southern border from taking advantage of the day of upheaval to launch an attack. The great sage of Fu Feng expressed, During my recent wanderings in the mortal realm, I have heard rumors that certain demons have set their sights on the secrets hidden beneath the Zhuxian town. They seek to take advantage of the chaos and uncover the true nature of what lies buried beneath this ancient city. Perhaps the demons who abducted the wolf god's disciple are aware of this matter and intend to interfere, he speculated. The great sage of Fu Feng put forth his own speculation. After listening, Lu Heng furrowed his brow slightly. The matter mentioned by the great sage of Fu Feng was quite astonishing, wasn't it? What ancient mass graves and four ancient war swords that dominate the void in all directions in the dilapidated Jusian town, there are still such immense secrets. Among them, the most intriguing to Lu Heng was the name of the Jusian town and the rumored four swords that dominate the void in all directions, forming a vicious sword formation that takes lives. The Jusian town four sword sword formation could it be merely a coincidence? The impact of this matter was so immense that Lu Heng was momentarily unsure of how to feel. Could it be that there truly exists a Zhuxian sword formation in this world? As he looked into the expectant eyes of the great sage of Fu Feng, Lu Heng sighed and said, Don't look at me with those eyes. I also have little knowledge of the Zhuxian town and have no idea what secrets lie underground. I know less than you do, he replied. Lu Heng was filled with helplessness. The great sage of Fu Feng clearly intended to test Lu Heng by speaking so much. In his eyes, Lu Heng, also an ancient predecessor, must surely be aware of the secrets beneath the Zhuxian town. However, unfortunately, Lu Heng, this ancient predecessor, is a fake. If we don't count the two hundred years as the former mountain god, Lu Heng's cultivation in this world is not even ten years old. Shaking his head, Lu Heng said, however, your conjecture is quite likely. Those evil demons have been fleeing north all the way without stopping. But they suddenly halted in the vicinity, which must indicate a significant event taking place. Perhaps they really intend to meddle in the affairs of the Zhuxian town. Looking at the great sage of Fu Feng, Lu Heng asked, On what day did the Zhuxian town undergo its upheaval? The great sage of Fu Feng sighed when he saw that the wolf god was reluctant to divulge any information about the rumors. He was slightly disappointed, as he had hoped to uncover the truth about the Zhuxian town and unravel this ancient enigma that no one else knew. However, the wolf god refused to speak, and the great sage of Fu Feng could not press him further. Moreover, the ancient secrets that the wolf god kept hidden may be of great significance and for his own good. Therefore, the great sage of Fu Feng chose not to inquire any further. Instead, he shifted the topic of conversation along the lines set by the wolf god. Regarding the Zhuxian town's upheaval, the day of manifestation occurred on the eighth day of the twelfth month, coinciding with the festival of Laba. As of now, 
there are only three days remaining. The response from the great sage of Fu Feng prompted a nod from Lu Hang. Three days, you say in that case, let us stay and witness what transformation awaits the Zhuxian town after these three days, he remarked. Lu Hang smiled and said, would brother Fu Feng also like to join us? However, the great sage of Fu Feng shook his head and said, I'm afraid I cannot join you. I must continue my search for those peculiar creatures with three heads, three eyes, and three mouths. On that day, within the remnants of the Star Sea, the Elder's Divine Consciousness warned me when I ventured north, saying that if I were diligent and persevered in my search, I might be able to find that creature, he explained. However, if one were to slack off and take rest even if it were just for a single day of idleness, it would be absolutely impossible to find that creature, he warned. Therefore, in these recent years, I have been constantly on the road, never experiencing a day of relaxation. Even if I encounter the wolf god now, I can only afford to spend a little time with the wolf god before I must continue on my journey. I simply cannot linger, he explained. The great sage of Fu Feng was quite helpless. When talking about this matter, his face showed a look of exasperation, clearly indicating that he had never encountered such peculiar demands before. However, he dared not disobey the instructions of the ancient elder, for if he were to truly slack off for a day and miss out on the rare ancient heritage, it would truly be a great loss. Especially when Lu Heng praised the owner of the ancient heritage as being so powerful, the great sage of Fu Feng was even more reluctant to give up. Seeing this situation, Lu Heng couldn't help but feel a mix of amusement and frustration. No wonder that divine consciousness back then said that the inheritance was not suitable for Lu Heng. With Lu Heng's temperament and the path he has already glimpsed in the Tao scripture, even if the emperor's inheritance is alluring. It would be absolutely unacceptable for him to spend his days and nights constantly on the road, searching for an unprecedented creature without any rest or respite. After all, he had already endured enough hardships in his previous life, and in this life, he simply desired to live a carefree existence. Besides, Lu Heng had no strong desires for power and showed no interest in monopolizing or ruling over the world. If it were not for the entanglement with the Green Hell Cave and Sun Yen, he could have completely spent his days until old age in the seclusion of Hanyu Mountain. At most, occasionally venturing down the mountain for leisurely strolls, engaging in idle conversations with Chiu Mia and Candle Dragon, sipping tea together. Or visiting the lively Fire God Festival in Yanjing City, Lu Heng intended to lead a carefree and reclusive life, akin to that of a wandering hermit amidst the clouds and mountains. The pursuits of striving and hard work were things that Lu Heng had no intention of getting involved with. After engaging in a conversation filled with laughter about the observations within the Yoshiong country with the great sage of Fu Feng, he bid farewell and departed before daybreak. This weary traveler, the great sage of Fu Feng, who has been on the road for five or six years, now dares not even sleep, fearing that even restful slumber might be deemed as laziness and idleness. At the mountain summit, Lu Hang and Xiao Ai watched as the great sage of Fu Feng departed, before turning around and leaving themselves. The morning dawn on the horizon released gentle rays of sunlight, casting down upon Lu Hang and Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai asked, The wolf god, shall we return to the Zhuxian town? Lu Hang turned around and glanced once again in the direction of the Tsushue village, saying, Let's first go and have a look at the Tsushue village. Lu Hang still couldn't set his mind at ease concerning the Tsushue village, fearing that this village might be affected because of his association. After deploying the technique of concealing their presence, Lu Heng, accompanied by Xiao Ai and the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, returned once again to the Tsushue village. The Tsushue village, which was extraordinarily bustling last night, now appears much quieter. On the walls and door frames hang festive red cloths, still crooked and about to be torn down. In the corner of the courtyard, there are remnants of food and oil stains that have yet to be cleaned, being diligently attended to by servants. The cooks, who were busy in the kitchen all night, now sit lazily on the steps, soothing their fatigue by clasping their strong arms in front of the steps. Weary attendants hurry by, carrying tables and chairs with tired expressions after each banquet, what is always left behind is an everlasting mess. The lively atmosphere during the banquet has nothing to do with the servants. However, the subsequent quietness is something they must endure. 
The stark contrast between the tranquility witnessed this morning and the lively banquet of last night is evident. While walking amidst these busy and weary attendants, after taking a few more steps forward, Lu Hang and the others happened to encounter Gu Yin's father, the proprietor of the Tsushue village, who was strolling under the morning light. As Master Chu walked, he simultaneously admonished his few sons who followed behind. Lu Hang, who was walking alongside, listened attentively for a long time before finally heaving a sigh of relief. From the tone of the Tsushue village, it appears that the events of last night didn't affect the village. However, after this battle, neither Huafeng of the Yun sect nor Gu Yin will be able to return to the Yoshion country. Upon reflecting upon this, Lu Hang turned his gaze once again towards the still angry proprietor when Gu Yin was mentioned, as well as the brothers who were quick to shift blame and criticize Gu Yin, and couldn't help but shake his head. Gu Yin's choice of leaving without a trace last night, in retrospect, appears to be nothing short of perfect. Although this male musician possesses a solitary disposition, he demonstrates great sophistication in his interactions and understanding of others. By withdrawing himself last night, he unexpectedly spared himself countless troubles, exhibiting an uncomplicated and carefree demeanor. Upon witnessing that the Tsushue village remained unaffected, Lu Heng subsequently released the worries weighing on his heart and departed gracefully with Xiao Ai and the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings. Until the moment they departed, the father and son of the Chu family nearby remained oblivious to the arrival of Lu Heng. Master Chu, who was admonishing his son while facing the morning sun, remained immersed in the chaos of last night and failed to notice the slight tremor of the leaves in the shadows. While in the distance from the Tsushue village, outside the Zhuxian town, at daybreak, Lai Lao and his group bidding farewell, they finally set off to return to the Zhuxian town. The events of last night dampened the enthusiasm of everyone involved. Later on, although the banquet continued, everyone was devoid of the previous joy. Walking along the broad avenue now, everyone had a gloomy and listless expression. On the carriage, Lai Lao and Nan Gong Hao were conversing in low voices, discussing the events of last night, sighing incessantly. However, at a certain moment, the marching procession came to a halt. In front of the avenue, a woman stood in the way. Inside the carriage, Lai Lao and Nan Gong Hao were slightly surprised upon hearing the report. They alighted from the carriage and saw that the woman standing in the way on the avenue ahead was dressed in a magnificent scarlet bridal gown. The woman possessed an incredibly beautiful countenance, yet her overpowering aura caused one to furrow their brow. Now, she impolitely stood in front of them and spoke directly, you mentioned earlier that Huafeng of the Yun sect was accompanied by a young girl with silver hair and animal ears, as well as a male-female twin pair. The woman in the red attire coldly exclaimed, where did he go? How did you encounter him? As soon as she spoke, her tone was akin to interrogating a criminal. Lai Lao, despite his well-mannered composure, couldn't help but furrow his brow slightly at the audacious attitude. Where did this woman come from? Chapter 380 As a cultivator with nearly a thousand years of cultivation, Lai Lao had encountered his fair share of arrogant individuals. In his lengthy lifetime, he had seen numerous cultivators who were arrogant, conceited, and domineering. However, since taking control of the Lai clan and reaching the realm of innate cultivation, there were hardly any individuals who dared to be arrogant in his presence. Such a situation, where a carriage like the one before us is halted and interrogated midway, has never occurred before. Lai Yang gazed at the crimson-clad woman blocking the path ahead, furrowing his brow as he inquired, Madam, may I inquire as to your identity and the reason for obstructing our passage? Under the enchanting gaze of Lai Yang's magic eyes, the crimson-clad woman before him emanated a peculiar and sinister aura. That pallid complexion, a slightly lifeless and languid figure, appeared akin to the body of a dying person, devoid of any vitality. However, in the midst of it all, there was a faint but discernible sense that this body contained an unparalleled, terrifying power, far beyond that of an ordinary cultivator. At the very least, she is a cultivator of the innate realm. But even if we share the same innate realm, it is excessively impolite to abruptly obstruct our path so early in the morning. Lai Yang, who was already quite displeased last night, is feeling even worse now. If it were an ordinary day, he would have patiently engaged in a conversation with this unidentified cultivator of the innate realm, seeking to turn swords into friendship and gain one more companion. 
However, the current him lacks such patience, leaving only weariness in his heart. Do they all assume that Lai Yang lacks temper? As he coldly observed the woman obstructing his path ahead, Lai Yang, rarely seen in such a state, genuinely became infuriated. While Lien Sangqing observed the imposing and indignantly furious old man, she was somewhat taken aback, saying, You, this younger generation, dare to glare at me? Are you tired of living? Originally, Lien Sangqing, who had only come to inquire about the situation, has now become provoked as well. Seeing Lai Yang's fierce demeanor, she became even more ferocious. Under the morning light, Lien Sangqing directly delivered a palm strike, spanning a distance of several meters. Splutter. With a muffled groan, Lai Yang in the midst of the crowd spat out a mouthful of blood, staggering backward. His entire face was filled with an expression of incredulous shock. Why does this woman's palm technique have not the slightest hint of a warning? Until that fierce palm strike landed on his chest, Lai Yang had not even glimpsed the woman's attack. As Lai Lao was being attacked, the surrounding cultivators immediately became flustered. Nan Gong Hao's eyes were filled with a fiery fury as he roared, Do not harm Lai Lao. If the leader of the Lai clan were to encounter a major incident within his jurisdiction, he would undoubtedly be unable to disassociate himself from it. In a state of anxious rage, Nan Gong Hao directly surged his true essence, once again invoking the power of Kailan's blood soul. Upon the galloping thoroughfare, resounded the furious roar of Nan Gong Hao. Ancestral Kailan soul, annihilate my enemies. Roar. Amidst the ferocious beastly roar, a blood-red Kailan emerged from the void and charged directly towards Lien Sanqing ahead, issuing a roaring cry. In a state of burning anxiety, Nan Gong Hao immediately unleashed his most powerful trump card, leaving no room for hesitation. Upon the galloping thoroughfare, the echoes of beastly roars resonated for miles, as the ferocious crimson light obscured the heavens and the aura of the primal divine beasts shook the entire expanse of the forest. All the cultivators who witnessed this spectacle had pale faces and trembling figures. However, in the direction where Kailan's blood soul rushed, Lien Sangqing, adorned in a blood-stained robe, furrowed her brows slightly and said, A mere foolish dog dares to stop me? Cultivators of this era truly lack no courage. As the words fell, Lien Sangqing raised her hand and swiftly delivered a resounding slap to the Kailan's blood soul that was roaring towards her. Snap! With a crisp sound, followed immediately by the blood Kailan's piercing and miserable screams. In the stunned and disbelieving gazes of the onlookers, the Kailan's blood soul was swiftly slapped away by Lien Sangqing. Transforming into a stream of blood-red light that flew towards the distance and crashed heavily into the mountain wall, creating a terrifying scene akin to the collapse of the heavens and the earth. A colossal peak, in its entirety, was abruptly cut in half, causing dust and debris to spray through the air. Amidst the trembling of the earth, Lien Sanqing cast a cold gaze upon the remaining group of cultivators, and spoke, Does anyone else dare to make a reckless move? All the cultivators had pale faces, their expressions filled with wordless fear. After Nan Gong Hao's Kailan's blood soul was sent flying, he even spat out fresh blood, causing him to faint and lose consciousness completely. Lien Sanqing's palm strike nearly shattered the Kailan's blood soul into pieces. Through their intertwined minds, Nan Gong Hao narrowly escaped instant death. The injuries sustained through this mental connection were many folds more severe than when Kailan's blood soul was mysteriously dissipated last night. In the blink of an eye, the two innate cultivators fell down so effortlessly, unable to put up even the faintest resistance. Lien Sanqing glanced over with a cold gaze, and no one dared to provoke her anymore. Even Lai Lao, who struggled to climb to his feet, had a pale complexion and an expression of silent terror. The Yoshion country How did the Yoshion country produce such a group of jinxes? Last night's Huafeng of the Yun sect was still considered decent, despite the fact that the sword servant spoke hurtfully, she held back during the confrontation. However, this woman in red before me, every move she makes is ruthless, devoid of any sense of reason. Just because she gave the other party a fierce glare, she immediately proceeded to attack without hesitation. Lai Yang, clutching his chest, took several quick breaths before stabilizing his internal energy. He swayed as he stood up and spoke. 
Lai Yang, realizing that the person before him was not easily provoked, attempted to salvage the situation by asking, Senior, how should I address you? However, before he could finish his words, Lian Sanqing swiftly launched another palm strike. With a deafening roar, under the bright sunlight, the pallid-faced Lai Lao let out a miserable scream as he was instantly obliterated by an unparalleled force of palm. The soul shattered into fragments. The fallen cultivator of innate mastery, directly transformed into bursting fireworks, scattering numerous ethereal essences into the void, dispersing in all directions. On either side of the racing lane, despite it being the midst of deep winter and late December, under the pervasive surge of spiritual vitality. A ten-mile radius witnessed a miraculous rejuvenation, with withered trees blooming and mountain flowers blossoming. As if spring had descended. In the expanding tide of spiritual vitality, all the cultivators who witnessed this happening wore expressions of fear and disbelief, unable to fathom what they were seeing. The patriarch of the Lai clan, located in the capital city, was actually slain. Among the crowd, the young master of the Lai clan, Lai Yi, let out a mournful howl. Uncle. Amidst the fearful and apprehensive cultivators, Lai Yi, crying out with a mixture of anger and sorrow, became the most conspicuous figure in the crowd. He glared angrily at the woman in the red dress before him, as if wanting to etch her visage permanently into the depths of his soul, his eyes bloodshot. You have killed uncle, the Lai clan will not let you go. Lai Yi roared angrily, as a member of the Lai clan, I shall not share the same. With a resounding boom, Lian Sangqing casually waved his hand. In the midst of the crowd several meters away, the infuriated nobleman in his elegant attire followed in the footsteps of his uncle. Promptly reduced to nothingness by the force of the gesture, not a single strand of hair nor a trace of breath left behind. The entire person shattered within the cruel and fierce gust of palm force. In the surging tide of spiritual energy that burst forth once again, Lian Sangqing coldly observed the cultivators present. Speaking with a casual tone as if she was not killing high-ranking members of the esteemed Lai clan from the Yoshion country. Merely extinguished two bothersome dogs. Are there any unruly individuals who still wish to challenge? Looking at everyone, Lian Sangqing said coldly, If there are any, I will eliminate them all. Chapter 381 Upon the Grand Avenue, the multitude of cultivators fell into an icy silence. Their cultivation level and status were not considered high to begin with most of them were casual cultivators. This time, they were invited to Zhuxian town merely to establish a good relationship with the Lai clan, making it convenient for future interactions. In regards to the patriarch of the Lai clan, there is indeed no strong sentiment attached. Moreover, at this moment, even if there were deep emotions, one would not dare to act impetuously. Did you not notice that several members of the Lai clan, as well as their attendants, who were by Lai Lao's side, were all keeping their heads low and remaining silent? Even these Lai clan members are showing timidity. Who would dare to jump at a time like this? Upon the Grand Avenue, cultivators all had a pale complexion, bowing their heads in silence, afraid to draw the attention of this female demon and risk being slapped to death by her. Even Lai Lao, who is in the realm of innate, couldn't withstand the force of this woman's two palms they, even more so, won't be able to endure it. No one expected that just after their departure from the Tsushue village, they would encounter such a formidable deity on the road. Killing people at the drop of a hat it's truly killing people at the drop of a hat. More terrifying than those infamous cultivators of the evil path who have shaken the region. The cultivators silently lamented in their hearts, thinking that if they had known they would be so unlucky, they shouldn't have joined in on this commotion. Nowadays, let alone good fortune, one can't even guarantee the preservation of their own life. It is truly a pointless endeavor. The cultivators trembled in fear, while Lian Sangqing looked on with satisfaction at the awestruck and trembling appearance of the cultivators, nodding in approval. If only things had been this way, no one would have died. Pointing her hand towards a cultivator in the crowd, she said, That Taoist, it's you. You were just talking about Huafeng of the Yun sect tell me, how did you encounter that rascal? And what exactly happened? The one that Lian Sangqing was pointing at was none other than Buddhist layman Sanyi in the crowd. As Buddhist layman Sanyi saw Lian Sangqing pointing at him, a sudden shock ran through his heart, and cold sweat instantly started pouring out. Ai he stuttered, 
unable to even string together a coherent sentence. Lien Sanqing furrowed her eyebrows and said, You useless thing, unable to even express yourself clearly. Your existence is simply a waste of spiritual energy. As the words fell, she directly struck with an open palm in the air, and Buddhist layman Sanyi in the crowd let out a miserable cry. In an instant, he burst open, transforming into surging spiritual energy that spread out in all directions. After killing people, Lien Sangqing finally turned her gaze towards the remaining individuals. Pointing casually at one of them, she said, You it's your turn to speak. What is the matter with Huafeng of the Yun sect? The person Lien Sangqing singled out was so frightened that his face turned green, feeling his legs go weak and almost collapsing. However, taking Buddhist layman Sani's example as a cautionary tale, he didn't dare to truly collapse in weakness. Quickly mustering his strength and speaking with clarity, he said, Respected senior, Huafeng of the Yun sect appeared in the Tsushue village last night. In the face of a life-threatening crisis, the cultivator's mind had never been as clear as it was today. Swiftly, he succinctly described the events of the previous night, providing a concise but detailed account, enunciating each word with clarity. After listening, Lien Sangqing furrowed her brows slightly and said, So that's how it is. You managed to provoke that fellow and yet survive Ha truly, the heavens have no eyes. After speaking, Lien Sangqing raised her palm directly and addressed the cultivators before her. Lu Hang has a good temperament and is not inclined to argue with you all, but I am different. I cannot stand people like you who bully the weak and fear the strong, using numbers to oppress the few. Especially when it is directed at Lu Hang do you think a bunch of worthless creatures like you, who are no better than dog excrement, have the right to boast in front of Lu Hang? Let you all die today, it would save the wastage of spiritual energy by keeping you alive in this world. As Lien Sangqing's voice fell, the cultivators were all frightened to the core, immediately wailing and begging for mercy. They never expected this wicked female demon to be so unreasonable, demanding full confession and still intending to kill them. On the expressway, all the cultivators were terrified, their faces pale as they desperately knelt on the ground, incessantly kowtowing, seeking forgiveness. Furthermore, there were individuals who kept offering excuses, claiming that they had no remaining involvement and didn't utter any insulting words last night. However, Lien Sangqing remained indifferent, coldly shaking her head, and raised her right hand, imprinting the air in front of everyone. Within the mountains and forests, the fierce wind danced wildly, as a colossal palm print descended from the sky, enveloping an area of 100 zhang in diameter. All the cultivators within this region were reduced to ashes and instantly burst apart, as an abundance of spiritual energy erupted once again. Among them, several members of the Lai clan let out desperate roars before their death. Monster! The Lai clan will not relent. However, their voices continued to resonate among the mountains, even though their bodies and spirits had already perished. And even the true energy within them had transformed into the most primordial spiritual energy, dissipating into the heavens and earth. As Lien Sanqing, the one who took lives, withdrew her right hand, her expression remained indifferent, devoid of any sense of guilt. It seemed as if she had merely slain a few buzzing flies. As for the furious roars of the dying members of the Lai clan, she heard them in her ears and shook her head repeatedly. The Lai clan is truly unfortunate to have a few fools like you. If I were you, I would never utter a single word about my own clan. Saying so, Lien Sangqing turned around and walked towards the direction of the Tsushue village. As for the clamors of those few members of the Lai clan before they died, she completely ignored them. Her time is indeed precious she has no leisure to make a special trip just for the clamors of a few fools. If the people of the Lai clan don't come knocking on the door, it's fine but if they actually do, then we'll see. For her now, the most crucial matter is to find Lu Heng of Hanyu Mountain. This individual unexpectedly went north and happened to be nearby Humph. It seems that Jiu Mie, that old monk, didn't lie to her. Lien Sangqing, who initially intended to confront Jiu Mie, has now abandoned that notion. While heading southeast all the way, Lien Sangqing swiftly arrived outside the Tsushue village and beheld a vast, tranquil, and harmonious estate. Without wasting any time, Lien Sangqing immediately extended her hand towards a distant mountain and grasped it firmly. Amidst the deafening roar, that mountain, 
which was a thousand zhang away from her, was grasped by her from a distance, severed from the ground, and ascended into the sky. Countless birds flew out in panic from the rising peak, scattering in all directions. The scattered sand, stones, and soil fell like a cascading waterfall. In the early morning, the Tsushue village cultivator, along with the mortals who witnessed this horrifying scene, were all utterly stunned. Everyone rushed out of their houses in terror, gathering outside to witness the mountain suddenly soaring across the sky and hovering above the Tsushue village. The colossal mountain, resembling a towering boulder, loomed coldly above the village, blocking the sunlight and casting its shadow over the heads of all who stood beneath. Simultaneously, a chilling woman's voice echoed among the mountains, making it clear to all within and outside the Tsushue village. Notify Huafeng of the Yun sect that he must come to this place and meet me within three days, otherwise, the Tsushue village shall be wiped off from the face of this land. As the voice fell, the enormous mountain in the air remained suspended, motionless. However, invisible walls began to rise around the Tsushue village, entrapping the cultivators within. Surprisingly, it seemed that only ordinary mortals could freely enter and exit, while the cultivators found themselves unable to escape. Upon witnessing this scene, Master Chu was utterly dumbfounded. This is it possible that someone with great power is using us as hostages to force the appearance of Huafeng of the Yun sect? Master Chu's expression turned utterly despairing. But we have offended Huafeng of the Yun sect, how could he possibly care about the life and death of people like us? Chapter 382 A colossal mountain looms above the Tsushui village, casting its shadow and blocking the scorching sun from the sky. Within the shadow, both the inhabitants and visitors of the Tsushue village are filled with a chilling sense of trepidation. Due to the invisible barrier surrounding the village, which separates the inside from the outside, all cultivators within the village. Regardless of their level of cultivation, including even young children who have just embarked on the path of qi cultivation, are unable to leave the mountainous estate. Moreover, that intangible wall even obscures the celestial dome, sealing off the earth. At this moment, within the three-inch depth beneath the Tsushue village, there is likewise an invisible barrier that cultivators are unable to transcend. Chu Min, the proprietor of the village, stands at the entrance of the estate, anxiously observing the outside situation through the invisible barrier. In terms of his cultivation level, even if the towering mountain above were to collapse, not a single blade of grass or leaf within the Tsushue village would be harmed he would be able to move this mountain away. However, in the event that a great power were to intervene, would the impact of this mountain falling truly be limited to the ordinary force of a mountain descending? Even if someone were to claim so, Chu Min would not dare to believe it. He swiftly summoned all the servants within the estate of the Tsushue village, instructing these mortals who have served the Tsushue village for generations to hasten to the city for assistance. However, the news that was relayed back by the subordinates left Chu Min utterly dumbfounded. The group, consisting of Lai Lao and others, who were supposed to return to the Zhuxian town, were intercepted halfway by a mysterious woman in a red garment. The scene of that woman in red ruthlessly attacking on the thoroughfare was witnessed by numerous passers-by. In the blink of an eye, two individuals at the innate stage were eradicated. Such strength, even mentioning it sends chills down one's spine. Meanwhile, Chu Min, with a pale complexion, suspected who was suspending this mountain over the Tsushue village. Shortly after Lai Lao and his group were mercilessly slain by an unidentified woman in a red garment, the Tsushue village found itself ensnared by an enigmatic power. This mysterious woman in red, she is undoubtedly an acquaintance of that Huafeng of the Yun sect. It seems she intends to use the Tsushue village as leverage, to force the aforementioned Huafeng of the Yun sect to reveal himself. Witness the ruthless methods of this female cultivator, it appears that she and that Huafeng of the Yun sect are likely enemies rather than friends. In such a situation, would Huafeng of the Yun sect truly risk his reputation for the sake of the Tsushue village after all, the formidable power of this senior female cultivator is truly awe-inspiring. At the entrance of the mountain estate, Chu Min's countenance fluctuated between gloom and brightness. After a moment of contemplation, he made a decision. Let Old Song go to the city and inform Little Seventh, asking him to bring back Little Fifth. My fifth son and senior Huafeng of the Yun sect are friends and acquaintances. If he were to step forward, Senior Hua might be willing to lend a hand. 
In a situation where he had no other options, Chu Min could only think of this straw of salvation. He absolutely couldn't imagine that the fifth son who had caused him immense embarrassment last night and almost brought him to the point of disgrace, would now have to be pleaded for help. However, Gu Yin has already become the only life-saving straw he can think of. If he doesn't please this son who has been away from home since childhood, he cannot think of anyone else who could rescue the Tsushue village in such circumstances. As the servant old Song rode on a fast horse and left the Tsushue village, heading towards the Zhuxian town, the unusual situation in the Tsushue village also attracted more and more attention from cultivators as time passed. Recently, the Zhuxian town, in particular, has already gathered numerous cultivators. Now that two innate cultivators have been killed, and they are both influential figures with fame and power within the Yoshion country, the situation immediately exploded. Cultivators in the city flocked out of the city and gathered outside to watch the spectacle. Meanwhile, in the wilderness, Lu Hang stood atop a tall mountain, gazing at the turmoil unfolding in and around the Tsushue village in the distance, shaking his head helplessly. Why has Lian Sangqing also followed to the north? Lu Hang exclaimed with immense frustration. As for him now, he truly didn't want to antagonize Lian Sangqing, this ancient monster. Although the Heavenly Thunder Sword is invincible, it is primarily a formidable opponent against those in the innate realm, capable of extinguishing them. As for Lian Sangqing, the true extent of her strength is unknown. Even in her state of borrowing a corpse and reviving her soul, her power is far inferior to her prime, yet she effortlessly annihilates innate cultivators as if it were a trivial task. Who knows if the Heavenly Thunder Sword can still be invincible in the face of such an ancient monster. If by some mystic technique, the adversary manages to evade the strike of the Heavenly Thunder Sword, Lu Heng would be in a precarious situation. Although Lu Heng possesses multiple lives, he is still reluctant to take risks. Observing the distressed expression on Lu Heng's face, Xiao Ai comprehended the turmoil within the heart of the Wolf God and spoke up. The Wolf God, Xiao Ai has an idea that might be able to handle this woman. Oh! What idea? Lu Heng asked in astonishment. Xiao Ai, on the other hand, shifted her gaze towards the distance and said, during the severe conflict between the Fire Pass country and the Witch Evil in the past. There was a cultivator who went by the name of Ao Tianqing, roaming around challenging others, proclaiming his intention to defeat formidable opponents and gain immense fame. It is said that on the day when all members of the Green Hell Cave launched an attack on the Yanjing city, he clashed with Lian Sangqing and was sent flying by a single palm strike, soaring all the way to the Yoshiong country. After arriving in the Yoshiong country, this fellow never left and is now active in the Three Heaven City, which is less than 10,000 li away from the Zhuxian town. If we were to write a letter to Three Heaven City, informing this Ao Tianqing that his adversary, Lian Sangqing, who once sent him flying with a single palm strike, is present in this location, perhaps this brash individual would come and disrupt the situation. Xiao Ai's words made Lu Heng pause for a moment, but then he smiled. He said, Xiao Ai, you've learned some mischief however, this is a good idea. Let's find a way to inform Ao Tianqing and get him involved in this mess. Moreover, since Ao Tianqing has been informed, we cannot overlook the situation in the capital of the Yoshion country. It would be unacceptable if the patriarch of the esteemed Lai clan was annihilated here without any response. It would be best if the Yoshion country's authorities could dispatch some adept cultivators, even renowned ones, to directly resolve Lian Sangqing. That would be an immeasurable merit. After Lu Heng finished his words and was about to continue instructing, he suddenly heard a call from the netherworld, causing his eyebrows to slightly furrow. Is the lord of the Chakravartan palace calling for him? Ever since the lord of the Chakravartan palace issued the decree, Lu Heng no longer concerned himself with the matters of the netherworld. He entrusted them all to Yu Yu for handling. Upon hearing Yu Yu's call, it was indeed the first occurrence in the past half year. In the biting cold wind, Lu Heng spoke, I have matters to attend to. I must make a trip to the netherworld. For the time being, I entrust the affairs here to you, Xiao Ai. After finishing his words, Lu Heng promptly vanished from the mountaintop. When he opened his eyes once again, he found himself in the eerie and windy realm of the netherworld. However, what Lu Heng found himself in was no longer a desolate and vast plain, 
but a magnificent and majestic grand palace. This strict and magnificent grand palace stands tall and awe-inspiring, surpassing mortal imagination. Moreover, beyond the grand palace, there lies an uninterrupted cluster of small temple buildings. From a distance, vaguely wandering apparitions can be seen among these grand palaces. In a trance, it felt as if stepping into the legendary palace of a pang, encountering the specters of the pre-Chin era. And upon the vast wilderness further beyond this grand palace, a city was under construction. Although at present there is only a crude framework, with even the foundation yet to be laid, within just half a year's time, such a monumental project has been completed, revealing the tremendous efforts exerted by remarkable ghost cultivators. Lu Hang looked at the multitude of ghost cultivators who greeted him in front of the Chakravartan Palace, smiling and bowing politely as he said, Congratulations, everyone. With the completion of the Chakravartan Palace, we have taken the crucial first step towards rebuilding the realm of the netherworld. Chapter 383 Lu Hang casually uttered the words without paying excessive attention to his choice of wording. However, after he uttered these words, all the ghost cultivators present felt a stir within their hearts. Rebuilding the realm of the netherworld. Rebuilding. This word, it is filled with profound meaning. Yu Yu and her two sidekicks exchanged a glance, each understanding the thoughts reflected in one another's eyes. However, now is not the time to discuss this. Yu Yu, dressed in the imposing cloak of the Ghost King, hurried forward and anxiously said, The Wolf God, a major event has occurred in the netherworld, and we are all incapable of dealing with it. Therefore, we have no choice but to disturb the Wolf God in order to seek your guidance. On Yu Yu's face, there was a manifestation of restlessness and unease. Seeing even the mighty Ghost King losing composure, Lu Hen also became aware of the unsettling circumstances, his expression growing solemn. What has happened? Please explain in detail, Lu Hang spoke up, if I can be of assistance, I will certainly not refuse. After Lu Hang finished speaking, Yu Yu turned her gaze towards the nearby city under construction and said, What does the wolf god think of that city? Lu Hang turned his head and glanced once again at the framework of the distant city, nodding as he remarked, Grand and magnificent, well organized and structured. It truly showcases everyone's efforts, and I am deeply impressed. Unaware of Yu Yu's intentions regarding the city, Lu Heng responded based on his initial impression. However, after Lu Heng finished speaking, Yu Yu shook her head with a bitter expression and said. If Yu Yu were to inform the wolf god that the city in question is not being constructed by us, and has no connection to us whatsoever, what then? Yu Yu's words caused Lu Heng's brows to furrow once again. Oh. It's not built by all of you. Then, is this grand city simply materializing out of thin air? Lu Heng asked. Yu Yu nodded and said, Indeed, it does seem to have appeared out of thin air for days ago, an illusion of a city suddenly emerged on that deserted wilderness. At the very beginning, it was just an elusive and ethereal illusion, devoid of any sense of reality. But after one day and night had passed, the illusory image of that city gradually transformed into reality. As of now, it has taken shape, forming a rough framework. According to this pace, in approximately three more days, this phantom will completely solidify, and the entire city will materialize out of thin air. And the most eerie thing is that, as evening falls in the mortal realm, countless strange shadows emerge and wander within the illusory image of the city. Faintly, some ghost cultivators have witnessed that on each of the four city gates of the city, there are menacing battle swords hanging high, seemingly suppressing the pervasive evil demons within the entire city. But those battle swords appear and disappear intermittently, making it impossible to observe their condition closely. However, faintly visible, the city gates being pressed down by the sword seem to be on the verge of collapse, as if they could crumble at any moment and release the malevolent spirits within the city. Yu Yu said bitterly, in order to investigate the situation, some reckless ghost cultivators ventured into that illusory realm, but the moment they entered, they vanished, their names erased from the book of life and death. Their divine power and abilities completely vanished without a trace, leaving us uncertain of their fate. Yu Yu's words made Lu Heng furrow his brows even tighter. The book of life and death is the power that Lu Heng separated from the Requiem Seal when bestowed upon him by the Lord of the Chakravartan Palace. Each of the ten kings in the underworld possesses a book of life and death, 
which contains the divine titles and surnames of all ghost cultivators in their respective departments. In theory, as long as the names in the Book of Life and Death remain intact, even if a ghost cultivator's spiritual body is shattered by a powerful cultivator, they can still reassemble their soul and return. But having their names directly erased from the Book of Life and Death this is nothing short of a complete demise for the ghost cultivators. Moreover, four days ago wasn't that the exact moment when Lu Heng entered the Zhuxian town? In addition to what Yu Yu said, the four fierce and ominous battle swords hanging high above the city gates sparked unsettling thoughts in Lu Heng's mind, could this eerie city that suddenly appeared in the netherworld have something to do with what lies beneath the Zhuxian town? Lu Heng asked, approximately when did the illusion of the city appear? Yu Yu replied, it was around the hour of the monkey, roughly. Indeed Lu Heng rubbed his temples and let out a sigh of resignation. Approximately during the hour of the monkey four days ago, it was exactly the time when he brought Xiao Ai and the others into the city. It appears that at the moment Lu Heng entered the Zhuxian town, a certain connection between what lies beneath the Zhuxian town and this ethereal realm was established, resulting in such an extraordinary phenomenon. Lu Heng asked again, since there are ancient battle swords above the city, have you seen the name of this peculiar city? Is it called the Zhuxian town? Lu Heng's words relieved Yu Yu, who responded, Indeed, it is the Zhuxian town. Great, the wolf god truly knows about this city. The words spoken by Lu Heng relieved the tense emotions of the ghost cultivators present, making them believe that the wolf god surely has a solution. However, Lu Heng shook his head and said, Don't relax just yet. Although I have guessed that this place is called the Zhuxian town, I have no knowledge of the conditions within the city, nor do I understand why it has suddenly appeared here. And based on my understanding, the Zhuxian town appearing in the netherworld may not necessarily be a good thing. Speaking, Lu Heng proceeded to tell all the ghost cultivators present about his stay in the Yoshion country in the mortal realm and what he heard about the legend of the Zhuxian town. The majority of ghost cultivators in the Chakravartan palace are wizards from the Fire Pass country, and they have rarely visited the Yoshion country to the north. The remaining non-wizard ghost cultivators mainly come from the South Sea nations located further south than the Fire Pass country. The Yoshion country to the north, although they have heard many stories, it was the first time they heard the eerie legend of the Zhuxian town. After hearing this, all the ghost cultivators were left speechless, overwhelmed with astonishment. After all, what they had encountered this time was more than just a legend. The terrifying corpses of divine spirits wandering in the city, ancient battle swords forming sword formations to annihilate the divine spirits these horrifying things now seem to be right before their eyes. And there is a great possibility that three days later, it will turn into a catastrophic disaster and descend upon them. In a moment, all the ghost cultivators became somewhat startled. Even the lord of the Chakravartan palace, Yu Yu, can only maintain the most fundamental composure with great difficulty at present. While she was the highest in cultivation level among those present during her lifetime, she could barely reach the realm of innate, making her one of the weakest among innate cultivators. Even after death, she received the empowerment of the lord of the Chakravartan palace, causing her strength to skyrocket within the realm of the netherworld. However, if she were to directly confront those terrifying and bizarre ancient malevolent spirits, she still lacks confidence. After all, according to the legends, whenever the earthly catastrophe arrives, those perceived as formidable innate cultivators by ordinary people are nothing but struggling ants. Meanwhile, the malevolent spirits lurking beneath the Zhuxian town are able to withstand the earthly catastrophe, remaining undefeated. Even the imperial decrees of the human emperor cannot fully suppress them, and it is unknown what horrifying entities they conceal. The impending upheaval of the Zhuxian town, three days from now, will be nothing short of a catastrophe for this recently recovering netherworld realm. Before the Chakravartan palace, a multitude of specters appeared bleak and a chilling wind howled. Lu Heng gazed upon the despairing countenances of the ghost cultivators, feeling somewhat helpless, and said, there is no need for such despair before the impending crisis. Lu Heng will not idly stand by, but will undoubtedly provide full assistance. Although the things lurking beneath the Zhuxian town are indeed terrifying, Lu Heng, on the contrary, is the least afraid of such malevolent entities. Regardless of how terrifying the malevolent spirits may be, as long as they attract heavenly thunder, they can be swiftly annihilated. 
Whenever Liu Hang considers this aspect, his mood immediately becomes much more tranquil. We shall first go and assess the situation of this city, Liu Hang said in such a manner. Chapter 384 After departing from the Chakravartan Palace, Liu Hang ascended directly into the sky and flew towards the distant illusory silhouette of the city. Behind Liu Hang, the King of Ghosts Yu Yu from the Chakravartan Palace accompanied by several ghost cultivators, flew alongside. Only after they had flown near the city did Liu Hang descend and proceed directly towards the gates of the city. Far in the desolate wilderness of the underworld, the illusory cities appeared intangible and eerily vacant, mere figments of imagination. However, in certain corners, there were brick walls of the city solidified into substance, already beginning to manifest in the underworld. Liu Hang stood before the city gates, observing the situation at hand. The city before his eyes, however, differed slightly from the Zhuxian town he had seen before. Although both are ancient and dilapidated towns, the architectural style of this city is noticeably more ancient and bizarre. Moreover, the eerie and oppressive aura permeating the city, along with the sense of malevolence that exerts immense pressure on individuals, are not present in the worldly Zhuxian town. Even if it is just a false illusion, it still brings pressure upon Lu Heng. If this city were indeed completely solid, one can only imagine the degree of horror that awaits within. Liu Hang stood in front of the city gates for a long time, indeed witnessing the continual trembling and shaking of the city gates, as if there was something dreadful inside relentlessly colliding with the gates, yearning to break free. And above the city gates, one could faintly discern a fierce ancient war sword concealed within the eerie and lifeless atmosphere, appearing and disappearing like a phantom. Liu Hang looked for a long time and confirmed that these were not the Zhu Xian four swords he had speculated about. Although the ancient and fierce war sword exudes a terrifying aura that makes one's brow ache and scalp tingle, its appearance is nevertheless dignified and unassuming. If it weren't for the condensed and lingering ferocity in its sword aura, it would simply be an ordinary heavy sword, devoid of any exaggerated design. However, this situation is not beyond Liu Hang's expectations. The so-called Zhu Xian four swords are mere creations of novelists, and they only appeared in the Ming dynasty's Fengshen Yeni. And many things in this world, although remarkably similar to the legends of Huaxia, are actually based on ancient rumors that emerged during primordial times. Such as Fu Shi, Niuwa, Candle Dragon, Mermaid, and the like. Fictional deities such as the Zhuxian Four Swords, Hongjun Daoist, and the like, have no trace of relevance in this world. Even among the many names Lu Hang had seen in the Demon Stone Forest, the ones he didn't recognize were those of ancient predecessors. While the remaining names he recognized belonged to figures such as the Three Sovereigns, Five Emperors, and Qi Yu, who only existed in ancient legends. Not even the names of important deities, such as the Supreme Divine Emperor and the Heavenly Lord of Primordial Heaven, from the pre qin era, which are relatively close in time, have ever appeared in that stone forest. Let alone the fictional characters of more recent times, such as the Celestial Master Tong Tian and the Daoist Hong Jun. In Liu Hang's speculation, the ancient deities of this world may have had some form of connection with the earth in his own world. Hence, the names and even some legendary tales of these ancient gods have been passed down to modern times. However, the many legendary deities that have evolved since the pre qin period, such as the Heavenly Court, the Supreme Divine Emperor, Sun Wukong, the 28 constellations, and the wealth god Buddha, among others, don't exist at all in this world. And these four nameless war swords that suppress cities, as well as the name Zhu Xian associated with this place, are indeed nothing more than a coincidence. Ah Lu Heng couldn't help but sigh when he thought about it. A mix of emotions surged through his heart at that moment. To be honest, if he were to possess these four war swords known as the Four Swords of Zhu Xian, he would certainly be overjoyed. After all, it is something related to my hometown, a divine weapon whose name I have heard since childhood. If I were to see it in reality, what a fascinating experience it would be. However, with dashed expectations, he can only accept reality. Setting aside his scrutiny of the war sword, Lu Heng left the city gate and began to walk around the outskirts of the city. Finally, he ascended directly into the sky, standing tall in the void, overlooking the scenery of the city below. However, Lu Heng was disappointed. When he, perched high above, looked down, 
the entire city appeared vacant and void, as if a level of pitch black mist veiled everything, prohibiting the gaze of the outside world from prying. Lu Hung, towering above, found himself unable to see anything at all. And clearly, he was not the only one with the same plight. The few ghost cultivators who followed behind Lu Hung, including Yu Yu, were also unable to discern the objects within the city. After circling around the city, the group finally landed in front of the same city gate where Lu Hung had initially descended. Upon landing, Yu Yu anxiously inquired, does the wolf god have any strategies in mind? The current situation had made Lu Hang their sole lifeline, and in three days, this city would transition from illusion to reality, possibly unleashing terrifying entities from within. It was only natural for Yu Yu to feel afraid. This Yen Ming underworld is their sole place of refuge, after all. If this place is destroyed by evil creatures, these ghost cultivators will have nowhere to go. Lu Hang looked at the anxious group of ghost cultivators, sighed helplessly, and said, this city seems to be ethereal, as if it doesn't exist at all. Even the powers of the Requiem Seal cannot locate its existence, let alone erase this city using the powers of the Requiem Seal. But there is no need to worry, even if this city truly materializes completely and dreadful creatures emerge from within, they will not be able to harm the netherworld for the time being. During the process of flying around the city just now, I have temporarily separated the spatial surroundings of this city using the Requiem Seal. In three days, when the city solidifies, even if things inside manage to escape, they will be unable to break through the barrier I have set up within a short period of time. And once this city solidifies completely, revealing itself in the netherworld, I will be able to utilize the power of the Requiem Seal to forcibly detach it and throw it back into the mortal realm. Now we are powerless against it, simply because it has not truly descended it has merely projected a fleeting illusion. Lu Heng said, during these three days, I implore you all to keep a slight vigilance over this city. If any abnormalities occur, please notify me promptly. And I will return to the mortal realm, personally making a trip to the Zhuxian town, to see what lies beneath that ancient city. If there is indeed a malevolent force that threatens the netherworld, I would certainly not stand idly by. The promise given by Lu Hung relieved all the ghost cultivators, causing them to exhale a sigh of relief. If the wolf god is willing to take charge of this matter, then the netherworld should finally find solace. The ghost cultivators quickly expressed their gratitude to Lu Hung, who waved his hand and said, I shall return to the mortal realm until we meet again, everyone. Hurriedly bidding farewell to the multitude of ghost cultivators, Lu Hung vanished directly from the netherworld, venturing once more into the mortal realm. Lu Heng also began to attach significance to this ancient city, which appeared so oddly peculiar. The construction of the netherworld's domain affects all living beings, and since Lu Heng has taken charge of the Requiem Seal, he cannot simply stand by and watch at this moment. Not to mention the connection between this city and the netherworld, which has a profound connection with Lu Heng himself. If it weren't for him leisurely bringing the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings into the city for amusement, such a troublesome situation would not have arisen right? Chapter, 385 When Lu Heng returned to the mortal realm once again, the evening glow had already appeared in the sky. The blood-red sunset, hanging high on the western horizon, is slowly descending and about to fall between the mountains. The amount of time he has been delayed in the netherworld is almost a full day. Atop the hill near the Tsushue village, the whereabouts of Xiao Ai and the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings have long vanished. Clearly, Xiao Ai carried out the plan to deliver the message and deceive that notorious rogue, Ao Qinqing. While not far away, above the Tsushue village, a massive mountain still loomed high in the sky, an invisible barrier binding all cultivators within the estate. As for the wild mountains and fields near the estate, they were scattered with numerous cultivators who had come to spectate. Even the hill where Lu Heng resided had several cultivators who had come together to spectate. There were a total of three men and two women, all seated on the grassy knoll, while many cups filled with fine wine and plates of delicious food floated around them, ready to be consumed at any time. Laughter, even more so, occasionally resounded, as they engaged in a playful game of magical transformations, using spells to compete with one another. Unbeknownst to these five cultivators, they remained unaware of the presence of Lu Heng, as he had become accustomed to the art of concealing his presence. 
If he were to cease employing the technique of concealment and no longer hide himself, it is likely that all cultivators who catch sight of Lu Heng would be dazzled by the radiant brilliance of the Heavenly Thunder Dao Foundation. Since Lu Heng crossed the threshold into the realm of the Heaven's Door, the radiance of his Heavenly Thunder Tao Foundation has become even more dazzling than before. Even Jiu Mie, an extraordinary cultivator with magic eyes, experienced a sharp pain in his eyes when gazing directly at Lu Heng, as if they were being stung, let alone ordinary cultivators. If the Huafeng of the past were to lay eyes upon the present-day Lu Heng, he would not even have a chance for his Tao heart to shatter. One glance would likely induce a myocardial infarction, causing him to perish on the spot. However, these cultivators failed to perceive Lu Heng's sudden arrival, and Lu Heng himself had no intention of actively revealing his presence to greet them. After returning to the mortal world, Lu Heng proceeded directly towards the distant Zhuxian town. He must ascertain what lies beneath the Zhuxian town within three days, preferably resolving this source of trouble before the manifestation of the ancient city's phantom in its entirety. Otherwise, once the city descends fully into the realm of the netherworld, and the city gates swing open, one cannot fathom what horrifying entities might emerge from within. Lu Heng's utmost desire is naturally to annihilate the threat in its cradle. However, as soon as Lu Heng arrived at the Zhuxian town and was about to begin his investigation, his mind suddenly stirred, sensing the movements of that group of demons. That group of demons who captured Sun Yen, after remaining dormant in this area for several days, has unexpectedly resumed their activities and continued their journey towards the north. The pace of their progress is nearly unchanged from before. In about half an hour, they will vanish from Lu Heng's perception range. However, the present Lu Heng is no longer capable of catching up and steadfastly trailing behind like before. The matters concerning the Zhuxian town are those that he must address and cannot turn a blind eye to. Outside the ancient and weathered city walls, Lu Heng, dressed in pristine white garments, furrowed his brow ever so slightly and ultimately resorted to employing concealed methods. In the desolate wilderness, approximately 800 miles away from this place, a massive white wolf opened its eyes from the ground. The physical body that has always kept a distance from Lu Heng, yet never truly departed, serves as his ultimate trump card. Apart from Lu Heng himself, nobody in the entire world is aware of the existence of this physical body. Once Lu Heng encounters an ambush by evil demons or faces a formidable enemy, this physical body can promptly rush to his aid, even when he is critically injured and on the verge of death. However, nowadays, Lu Heng finds himself in the rare situation of having to utilize this physical body. With a flicker of thought in Lu Heng's mind outside the Zhuxian town, the massive white wolf, located a hundred miles away, seized its breath and stealthily submerged itself, vanishing into the depths of the earth, heading towards the north. To replace Lu Heng's primordial spirit in tracking down the demonic beings who kidnapped Sun Yen. Upon opening his eyes once again outside the Zhuxian town, Lu Heng gazes at the grand city before him, yet decides against directly employing arcane techniques to unravel the mysteries of this place. Although the Book Divine skill records several wondrous arcane techniques, they could prove useful in this very moment. However, those methods that forcefully break seals and pry into its true essence are far too aggressive and crude. The situation in this place is extraordinary. It was once an ancient battleground where gods and demons clashed, and it is now guarded by four ferocious and bloodthirsty battle swords. Projecting their presence into the netherworld all these signs indicate that the entities beneath the Zhuxian town are far from ordinary. If Lu Heng were to resort to violent dismantling, it would likely result in a major catastrophe. With his physical body currently absent, Lu Heng feels that maintaining a low-key and cautious approach would be more prudent. Although his primordial spirit can be regenerated even after annihilation, the sensation of dying once is never pleasant. Stepping directly into the city, Lu Heng intended to peruse the relevant ancient texts within the Lord's residence, in hopes of discovering some valuable information. Since Nan Gong Hao is the protector of this city, a formidable cultivator of innate talent and held in high esteem, he certainly wouldn't be uninformed about the true essence of the Zhuxian town. However, when Lu Heng arrived outside the Lord's residence, he witnessed the entire place draped in mourning cloth and white sashes. Mourning cries filled the air, and a heavy atmosphere hung over the entire household. 
It was then that he recalled the news of Nan Gong Hao's untimely demise at the hands of Lian Sanqing earlier that morning. Standing outside the Lord's residence, Lu Hung was rendered speechless as he observed the mournful scene with the black mourning clothes and mourning bands. For a moment, he was at a loss for words, unsure of what to say. Though not having delved into the details of the situation, Lu Hung could easily surmise, even with his knee, how Nan Gong Hao had provoked the ire of Lian Sanqing. Perhaps it was during the return journey of these cultivators that they were denouncing Lu Hang, only to be fortuitously overheard by Lian Sanqing who happened to be passing by. Subsequently, she approached to strike up a conversation. However, when encountering the haughty and xenophobic actions of the cultivators from the Yoshion country, coupled with the ruthless and unreasonable nature of Lian Sanqing, who kills without hesitation like a savage monster, it is simply a matter of inevitability what will transpire. Lu Hang's current state of mind cannot be described as cheerful despite the fact that these cultivators caused him trouble last night. However, it is also not excessively sorrowful, after all, these cultivators are unrelated to him and hold no emotional connection. Shaking his head, Lu Hang promptly withdrew into the secluded depths and made his way into the residence of the city lord, deftly avoiding the crowds dressed in mourning attire, displaying both sorrow and joy. Unwilling to intrude upon the private affairs of these individuals, Lu Heng proceeded directly to the study of the city lord, Nan Gong Hao. Although there were formidable barriers and restrictions set up throughout the city lord's residence to prevent the infiltration of cultivators. In Lu Heng's broadened perspective and experience, these barriers and restrictions appeared to be mere trifles in his eyes. Without alerting a single soul, Lu Heng stepped into Nan Gong Hao's study. This desolate study is the sole sanctuary within the city lord's residence, untouched by the external turmoil. Lu Hang wasted no time. He immediately invoked the incantation, causing all the books related to the Zhuxian town disturbance to fly out from the shelves and into his hands. After the conclusion of the incantation, a total of three books had landed in Lu Hang's hands. Among them, there was one that even flew out from a secret chamber, its pages made of a peculiar leather material strikingly reminiscent of that of the Demon Sutra. On the tattered cover, there are three ancient and rustic characters. Demon Sealing Record Chapter 386 The Demon Sealing Record Looking at the tattered ancient tome in his hand, Lu Hang was slightly astonished. This book that flew out from the hidden chamber is evidently not an object from this era the aura of the words inscribed on it is far too ancient. After perusing the other two books, Lu Hang discovered that the recorded contents didn't mention the true nature of the upheaval in Zhuxian town. The books merely contained some popular folk legends, their content not even as comprehensive as the detailed account provided by the great sage of Fu Fong. However, Lu Hang himself didn't harbor any expectations towards the two books, so he simply threw them aside, allowing the books to fly back to their respective positions. Then, Lu Hang directed his attention towards the final book in his hand, the one with a leather-like texture similar to that of the Demon Sutra, titled Demon Sealing Record. Before turning the pages, Lu Hang, for the sake of caution, employed occult techniques to ascertain that this peculiar tome didn't harbor any harmful sorcery. Only then did he proceed to open it. However, what met his gaze was a collection of entirely blank pages. From the first page to the very last, they were overwhelmingly devoid of any text, not even a single character could be seen. According to the results obtained through occult means, it is evident that this book is undoubtedly connected to the upheaval in the Zhuxian town. Holding the demon sealing record, Lu Heng approached the hidden door of the study and proceeded to push open the entrance to the secret chamber. Stepping inside, he found himself in a cramped space, with shelves against three walls, displaying some of Nan Gong Hao's private collections alongside the presence of the demon sealing record. Within the enchanting magical tool, gleaming with resplendent radiance, resided astonishingly sizable ginseng roots. Fragmented skeletal remains the treasures within the secret chamber were an assortment of peculiar and valuable objects of immense worth. However, these held no allure for Lu Heng. After searching through, Lu Hang was unable to find a way to decipher the contents of the demon sealing record. Recalling how the previous demon sutra had remained indecipherable in his possession for so long. Only revealing its contents when the rightful owner intervened could it be that this demon sealing record also requires the personal involvement of its author to unveil the words on its pages? 
but this demon sealing record has been in existence for countless years where can Lu Heng possibly find the author of the book in a short period of time? Attempting to trace back the origins using magical spells, however, the results obtained revealed that the ages had passed too long. And the original author's essence had long since vanished, rendering it impossible to trace back to its true origins. If Lu Heng could once again attain the transcendent state he achieved during enlightenment, perhaps he could rely on browsing through the timelines associated with this book to locate the former owner of the demon sealing record. However, on second thought, if Lu Heng could return to the transcendent state and review the timelines of the past, he could simply browse through the events that occurred in Jusian town during ancient times. Why bother seeking out the owner of the demon sealing record? In the confines of the secret chamber, Lu Heng, who found himself trapped in a predicament, couldn't help but shake his head, temporarily abandoning the demon sealing record. It seems that in order to investigate the truth behind the anomaly in Jusian town, one must resort to extraordinary measures. With such thoughts in mind, Lu Heng departed from the secret chamber and proceeded directly to the study room. The sky at this moment was already filled with countless twinkling stars. Despite the brief time Lu Heng spent in the study room and secret chamber, he found himself preoccupied until the arrival of nightfall. Only two days and one night remained until the arrival of the anomaly in Jusian town. Within the expansive Lord's Manor, there resounded continuous cries, a symphony of sorrow and joy, as preparations were being made for the funeral rites of Nan Gong Hao. The funeral rites of the Yoshion country, however, were somewhat more intricate than those of the Fire Pass country to the south. After all, the Yoshion country, unlike the Fire Pass country, doesn't adhere to cremation but rather cultivates traditional burial. They seek the tranquility of the deceased resting underground, and therefore, the arrangements for funeral ceremonies take longer compared to those in the south. Clad in a pristine white gown, Lu Heng gracefully traversed through the courtyard, swiftly arriving at the doorstep of the Lord's Lady's Chamber. Nan Gong Hao's wife is a cultivator with formidable strength. Although her realm may not match that of Nan Gong Hao, she has already begun to refine the three blossoms on her crown, making her an outstanding cultivator wherever she may be. Therefore, despite her advanced age, she possesses the art of preservation, still radiant with youthful beauty. Now, dressed in mourning attire, she appears even more beautiful and captivating. Behind her restrained and sorrowful countenance lies a mask of resilience, concealing the tears she holds back. In the midst of her husband's tragic demise, she relies on her personal fortitude to sustain the household, calmly and methodically handling all affairs, while managing the hidden motives of those around her. As Lu Heng arrived, a bustling crowd filled the courtyard. Numerous administrators from various lords' residences gathered here, continuously communicating the external information to the widow who had lost her husband, inquiring about appropriate strategies to handle the situation. After standing in the shadows for a while, Lu Heng realized that if he were to wait any longer, he might not have the opportunity to find this woman alone even after waiting for a whole day and night. After all, the people in this courtyard come and go, leaving and returning in an ever-flowing and immensely intricate crowd. There are relatives, adversaries, family members, and servants so many responsibilities, and now they all rest upon the shoulders of this woman. Although she possesses extraordinary beauty, clad in mourning attire there emanates a stubbornness, akin to the resolute and defiant nature of a blossoming white lotus, Lu Heng holds no interest in the widow. Stepping out of the shadows without hesitation, Lu Heng walked directly towards the woman inside the house. Wherever he went, a gentle breeze brushed past, causing the figures of the passers-by on both sides to fall one by one. As Lu Heng stepped through the entrance, in the vast courtyard and within the house, the only one who remained alert and vigilant was the woman, her state marked by uncertainty and apprehension. The scene before her eyes directly startled the wife of the city lord. Although there is only Nan Gong Hao in the innate realm within the city lord's residence, there are several cultivators who have reached the Three Flowers realm. Even the accomplished cultivators in the innate realm cannot silently infiltrate this place. However, at the moment when the white-clad man appeared before them, no one noticed his presence, not even the elderly housekeeper standing next to her. A senior cultivator whose cultivation level was second only to her husband Nan Gong Hao, as he silently collapsed to the ground. In the eyes of the person before them, the city lord's residence, which was gathered with so many cultivators, seemed unexpectedly defenseless. 
Under the shock and dismay in her heart, the woman's expression involuntarily revealed a tense and timid look. Do you have any matters to attend to, esteemed guest visiting my humble abode? The woman forced herself to speak in a calm tone, suppressing the fear within her heart. As for things like shouting for help or the like, she hadn't even entertained the thought. Not to mention that there are no innate cultivators left in the residence, even if there were truly innate cultivators, they would likely be of little use in front of this enigmatic elder. Therefore, the woman could only pray, praying that the white-clad man before her was not an enemy. In her anxious gaze, Lu Heng halted at the entrance and said, Lu Heng of Hanyu Mountain, have an urgent matter to disturb you, the lady of the manor. Due to the urgency of the matter, I had to act impromptu. I humbly request the lady's forgiveness. Lu Heng's actions being referred to naturally indicate the act of rendering all the people inside and outside the house unconscious without any prior warning. However, at this moment, the woman didn't dare to place blame. She quickly stood up and said, So it is the wolf god Lu I am Duan Muji. I have had the honor of meeting the esteemed presence of the wolf god. May I inquire about the purpose of the wolf god's visit to the Zhuxian town? If there is any way that I, as a junior, can be of assistance, I will not hesitate to offer my help. Lu Heng breathed a sigh of relief as Duan Muji displayed such propriety. He nodded and said, Madam, you may employ your magic eyes to observe me, in order to discern my true intentions. Speaking thus, Lu Heng directly dissipated his concealment technique, allowing the manifestation of the Heavenly Thunder Dao Foundation. As Duan Muji, dressed in morning attire, opened her magic eyes, she couldn't help but emit a muffled groan and took several steps back. With a look of astonishment on her face. Wolf the Wolf God over the past six months, she had already heard about the name of the wolf god Lu Heng, the most eminent figure in the Fire Pass country from those cultivators and demons who came from the south, as well as from her husband. She was aware that he possessed unparalleled power, capable of wielding heavenly thunder as divine punishment and wielding the demon destroyer list to reprimand wicked spirits. An embodiment that can be deemed as a punitive incarnation. There are even rumors that the wolf god Lu is said to be the first heavenly thunder that occurred during the dawn of the world, and after countless ages of arduous cultivation, was able to take on a mortal form. It is a truly ancient being, even older than the ancient deities themselves, and shares the same lifespan as the heavens and earth. Amidst various rumors, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain was portrayed as tremendously terrifying. To the point where one couldn't help but wonder if such a fearsome being truly existed in the world, or if it was merely a result of exaggerated hearsay and misinformation being spread. However, today, Duan Muji witnessed with her own eyes the dazzling and even overwhelming Heavenly Thunder Dao Foundation, which was almost beyond the limits of what she could bear. Yet, she understood clearly that the rumors were indeed true. This formidable being, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, is truly a rare and terrifying presence in the world. Merely the existence of the Heavenly Thunder Dao Foundation alone makes it one of a kind in the entire realm of heaven and earth. As for the fact that she almost couldn't bear it with just a single glance, that is even more astonishing to hear. Merely the foundation alone is enough to make cultivators of the Three Flowers realm unable to meet its gaze. Even those who are innate cultivators would be like ants in the eyes of the wolf god. Startled in her heart, Duan Muji took a long while to recover from the overwhelming shock that had engulfed her. She quickly performed a respectful bow to Lu Heng, saying, I apologize for my momentary lack of manners. I humbly ask for the wolf god's forgiveness. At this moment, Lu Heng had already concealed the Heavenly Thunder Dao Foundation using the art of aura concealment. Looking at the visibly frightened woman before him, he felt a slight sense of guilt. However, the tasks that lay ahead required the strong support of the Lady of the City Lord. Without revealing his identity, it may be difficult to gain the trust of the other party. Upon seeing the woman finally regain her composure, Lu Heng took out the tome known as Demon Sealing Record and addressed her, saying, Madam, are you familiar with this book? This Duan Muji was stunned for a moment, feeling a bit nervous and said, I it seems like I've seen something similar before. Lu Heng smiled and said, no need to be nervous. Indeed, this book was taken from the secret chamber in your husband's study. Lu Heng came here to inquire if Madam knows the method to decipher this book. 
This matter is of utmost importance and is related to the imminent upheaval in the Zhuxian town. I humbly request Madam's guidance. Duan Muji was slightly surprised by Lu Heng's words. Is this book related to the upheaval in the Zhuxian town? It was evident that Duan Muji was also unaware of the contents within this book. Observing Lu Heng's astonished expression, Duan Muji quickly explained, The Wolf God, this book appeared out of thin air on the streets of the Zhuxian town at the conclusion of the upheaval that took place 200 years ago. After obtaining this book, my husband decided to keep it in his collection. However, he was unable to decipher the contents within and regarded it as a book without words. I never expected that this book would be related to the upheaval in the Zhuxian town. The origin of the demon sealing record spoken by Duan Muji left Lu Heng somewhat disappointed. Indeed, Nan Gong Hao was also unaware of the contents of this book. Just like Gong Shu Jia who had previously stumbled upon the Demon Sutra, he too was unable to decipher the text within. Shaking his head, Lu Heng uttered, Since this book cannot be deciphered, let us temporarily set it aside. Today, as Lu Heng arrives, there is another matter I would like to request from Madam, Lu Heng said. In two days' time, it will be the day of the upheaval in the Zhuxian town, and at that time, there will be disturbances occurring within the town. Of course, this is something everyone is aware of, and you all have long been accustomed to it. But based on the information I have gathered, it appears that this instance of disturbance is different from previous ones. Not only will there be illusionary scenes, but it is highly probable that a situation similar to what occurred 1000 years ago will manifest itself a presence of malevolent forces infiltrating the town, leading to loss of life. And according to the rumors, wicked demons are said to be gathering in the shadows, intending to take advantage of this upcoming upheaval in the Zhuxian town, and bring chaos upon this place. It can be foreseen that when the upheaval arrives in two days' time, this city will undoubtedly suffer numerous casualties. Therefore, I would like to implore Madam to evacuate the residents from the city as quickly as possible, leaving it empty, to prevent a tragedy similar to the one that occurred a thousand years ago from happening again. The words of Lu Heng caused a slight tremor of surprise in the expression of Duan Muji. Although she had suspected that the wolf god's visit to her was indicative of a significant event, she could not have anticipated the magnitude of the situation at hand. The calamity that occurred a thousand years ago resulted in countless casualties, and it was only through the decree issued by the human emperor that the evil beings in this land were barely subdued. How is it possible for such a situation as one from a thousand years ago to reoccur now? The expression of Duan Muji also turned solemn, and she immediately said, I will promptly report to the capital and evacuate the residents of the city as swiftly as possible. Furthermore, there are several powerful clans within the city who hold some grievances towards my husband. If it is an order from the city lord's manor, they may covertly disobey. Therefore, I hope the wolf god can intervene and advise those few clans. Lu Heng nodded and said, Madam, if you provide me with the names of the clan leaders, I will personally advise them to depart. Ah, there is another matter that I hope you would be aware of, Lu Heng smiled helplessly and continued, I hope you can keep it confidential, madam, and refrain from disclosing to any third party, about my arrival to this place. If news of me being in Zhuxian town spreads, before the day of calamity arrives, this place will already be in chaos. Duan Muji was slightly astonished by Lu Heng's words. Observing the reaction of the wolf god, it appears that he is harboring some kind of apprehension. Is it possible that even the formidable presence of the wolf god could be subject to things that evoke apprehension? With confusion in her heart, Duan Muji's face remained respectfully composed as she spoke, I shall follow the commands of the wolf god without fail, and I vow not to disclose the encounter with the wolf god to any third party. If I violate this oath, I shall face the wrath of heaven and earth, shattering my soul to pieces. Duan Muji directly uttered a malevolent oath to demonstrate her determination. In the presence of such an ancient being, she dared not harbor even the slightest hint of cunning. Following that, Lu Heng inquired with Duan Muji about the names and surnames of several clan leaders who needed to be greeted, and then he departed from the Lord's residence. After Lu Heng, dressed in white robes, gracefully departed, those who had fallen unconscious both inside and outside the room began to gradually awaken. After regaining consciousness, they stood still for a moment, stunned, 
before recalling their unfinished tasks, and hastily went about attending to their own affairs. Including the elderly steward who stood behind Wan Muji and had already reached the threshold of the pre-celestial realm, none of them, upon awakening, detected anything amiss. With such a situation at hand, it deeply unsettled Duan Muji's heart. Indeed, the methods of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain are truly terrifying. Chapter, 387 On the seventh day of the twelfth lunar month, a heavy snowfall in the depths of winter. Only one day and one night remained until the fateful day of the Zhuxian town's anomaly. However, before the anomaly arrived, what descended first were snowflakes as light as goose feathers and a chilling icy wind. This sudden blizzard came down last night, sweeping across the vast territory of the Yoshion country, appearing remarkably abrupt and unexpected. Although just yesterday was filled with sunny brilliance, today the mountains are covered in heavy snow and frosted trees, while the sky appears cloudy and dim, devoid of radiant sunlight. This sudden and unexpected heavy snowfall greatly hindered the speed of relocation for the residents of Zhuxian town. Although being an ancient city that has experienced major disturbances in the past and faces occasional anomalies every hundred years, the city has long implemented contingency plans to prevent unexpected situations. However, it is too challenging to evacuate hundreds of thousands of residents from the entire city within a day and night, risking such harsh weather conditions. However, at the critical moment, the Lord's Manor as well as several ancient clans in the city simultaneously exerted their efforts and dispatched their respective cultivators to aid in the relocation of the residents. On a grassy plain fifty miles away from the Zhuxian town, the cultivators of the Lord's Manor set up a vast formation. This formation has only one remarkable purpose, to provide a warm and spring-like environment within it, shielding anyone present from the biting cold. Meanwhile, the cultivators of several ancient clans employed various spells. Escorting the residents out of the old ancient city in batches and leading them to this vast grassy plain, which remained warm and spring-like despite the swirling snowfall. The scene of hundreds of thousands of people relocating simultaneously was simply awe-inspiring and intimidating. When standing atop the celestial dome, overlooking the earth, the panorama below was filled densely with moving figures, as if the influx of people extended endlessly to the very edge of the heavens. Moreover, with such a massive scale of human migration, it naturally gave rise to numerous disturbances and disputes. However, this time, the Lord's Manor and several ancient clans within the city displayed an uncommon unity. Not only did they not hinder each other, but they even cooperated with remarkable synchrony. Amidst the authoritative presence of numerous cultivators, though occasional commotions and chaos arose within the crowd, overall, the order remained well maintained. After all, the ordinary people in this world have become accustomed to surviving under the protection of the venerable cultivators. When the venerable cultivators instruct everyone on what to do, no one dares to contradict or secretly oppose them. Because any ordinary person who dares to do so would have long been reduced to nothing more than the excrement of demons. Not to mention temporarily moving out from the city, even if the Lord were to truly force everyone to relocate to a foreign land, forsaking their homeland, the ordinary people would not resist in the slightest. They would be unable to resist. Within the wilderness, ferocious beasts and demons lurk, and as mere mortals, there is no room for struggle against those man-eating creatures. There exists only the legendary southern kingdom, where the ordinary individuals who refuse to accept the shelter of cultivators and yet manage to thrive can be found. The Fire Pass country, from which Lu Hang hails, is known as the land of zero demons. Although there are exotic beasts lurking in the mountains and wilderness, there are scarcely any demons that pose a threat to humans. Within the boundary of the boundary stones, demons are completely absent, and the shadows of fierce beasts are non-existent. In comparison to the Fire Pass country, most places in this world harbor demons. Although major demons are rare, the land is teeming with lesser demons who have yet to take human form but possess some level of cultivation. These minor demons employ bewitching illusions and sorcery to deceive the minds of ordinary mortals, and their indiscriminate slaughter knows no end. These minor demons, who may have unintentionally absorbed the essence of the mountains or, through good fortune, have lived long enough to nurture spiritual energy and start cultivating, are as numerous as endlessly growing chives. In the eyes of cultivators, these small creatures are as fragile as ants and can be easily driven away even by ordinary mortal men with a stronger vitality. 
However, the various sinister methods of these little monsters are not something that ordinary mortals can withstand. Once careless, it could cost them their lives. Inside the Fire Pass country, where demons are completely eradicated and wizards are active everywhere, the monsters within the borders are constantly in danger of being hunted down by wizards. As a result, most minor demons, despite their temptation to take the easy path of dark cultivation, dare not venture down the path of evil, valuing their lives above all else. However, outside the Fire Pass country, things are different. Outside the Fire Pass country, such as the Yoshion country, it is commonplace for demon cultivators in the wilderness to consume humans. Demonic forces abound, and the tyranny of malevolent creatures is taken as a matter of course. The mountainous little monsters with a bit of cultivation encounter demon cultivators mostly inclined towards the dark path. Everyone consumes humans, so if you're the only one who doesn't, how will you fit in? Therefore, as the prevailing cultivate of monsters consuming humans took shape, the situation became increasingly chaotic. It is unimaginable to have wild tribes like those in the Fire Pass country who refuse to be under the jurisdiction of the Fire God Temple. Refuse to surrender food taxation, and instead build villages and groups in the wilderness to live self-sufficient lives, in the Yoshion country. Here, if a village lacks the suppression of the human emperor steel, within three days malevolent spirits will run rampant, and if the villagers don't flee, within ten days the entire village will undoubtedly be annihilated. Therefore, the mortals of Yoshion country naturally behave obediently. They dare not defy the orders of the cultivator masters from the city lord's manor in the slightest. In the face of the authoritative presence of the cultivators and the maintenance of order by numerous minor officials, the large-scale migration of hundreds of thousands of people remarkably proceeded without any disruptions. As night fell, the vast Jusian town transformed completely into an empty city. Apart from a few rare cultivators, hardly any human figures could be seen. Lu Hang stood on the city wall, gazing at this desolate and ancient town, astonished by the obedience of these mortals, and marveling at the personal involvement of the cultivators. In this world, there seems to have formed a rather positive relationship between cultivators and mortals. Both sides assimilate with one another, yet remain clearly distinct. Righteous cultivators, influenced by their chosen cultivation methods, inevitably undergo a refinement of character. Seldom exhibiting the behavior of traditional bullies who exploit and oppress ordinary people, and cultivators themselves rarely rely on the support of mortals. And the mortals, too, are willing to accept the leadership of these cultivators, gladly becoming obedient subjects under their rule, in order to distance themselves from the threat of demons and monsters. The Zhuxian town, which lies before us, is but a small, remote place with a population numbering in the tens of thousands. In this remarkably productive world, it is considered one of those secluded and desolate corners. However, Lu Hang had never witnessed such a strict and law-abiding order before. He couldn't help but marvel that when the ruler truly is a superior cultivator, the desire for rebellion among ordinary people indeed diminishes significantly. Thankfully, the cultivation in this world places great emphasis on moral character, and cultivators of the righteous path rarely, if ever, become malevolent individuals. In fact, they often harbor benevolence and compassion for all beings. Otherwise, the consequences would be simply unimaginable. On top of the city gate tower, Lu Han couldn't help but express his utter astonishment. As Duan Muji, dressed in mourning attire, approached not too far away, her expression slightly tense, she walked towards Lu Han. Senior Wolf God, the entire population of Zhu Xian town has already relocated outside the city, as per your instructions. Currently, there are only 37 cultivators remaining in the city, and they are free to depart at any time. After reporting the situation, Duan Muji looked at the profile of the wolf god and carefully phrased, furthermore. Upon learning of the anomaly in this place, His Majesty attached great importance to it and dispatched King Zhennan to the Zhuxian town. Currently, King Zhennan's royal carriage awaits outside the city, stationed 30 li away, desiring an audience with you. I wonder, esteemed one, if. Duan Muji's expression displayed a slight hint of unease. Lu Heng, on the other hand, smiled and inquired, King Zhenan. How is his relationship with King Zhenbei? Do you still remember an old acquaintance from the Yoshion country, none other than King Zhenbei himself? Lu Heng casually mentioned. 
Upon hearing these words, Duan Muji became even more apprehensive. After she conveyed the message to the capital last night, she immediately received feedback from there and learned about the current disaffection between the wolf god, who once attended the treasure conference of the Mermaid Kingdom in the South Sea six years ago, and King Junbei. Although the wolf god might not be concerned about the trivial matters of six years ago, the capital city still emphasized its warning to Duan Muji. Therefore, Duan Muji promptly responded, regarding the matter of the wolf god, King Jinnan resides in the southern realm, a distance of six million miles separates it from the northern realm. With towering mountains and vast distances, the two noble lords might find it exceedingly difficult to meet face to face even once in a span of several hundred years. Hence, the two royal lords have remained unfamiliar with each other. No matter how the wolf god perceives the relationship between King Jinbei, Su Lai, and the cultivators of the Yoshion country. It is imperative to separate Su Lai from both the Yoshion country and the other cultivators of the Yoshion country. And upon hearing Duan Muji's response, Lu Hung was momentarily taken aback. It was not astonishment at Duan Muji and Su Lai's clear distinction, but rather this distance. Six million miles. Lu Hung was genuinely astonished this time the territorial expanse of the Yoshion country is indeed so vast. The Fire Pass country has a narrow and elongated border, so he didn't really have a strong sense of it. Although the South Sea has a vast territory, at that time he was mostly relying on his speed to search for Huafeng, hence he didn't pay much attention to the distance and didn't have a comprehensive understanding of it. And the distance between the southern and northern borders of the Yoshion country is a staggering 6 million miles what kind of concept is this? It's worth noting that the farthest distance between the Earth and the Moon is only about 800,000 miles or so. The straight-line distance between the southern and northern borders of the Yoshion country is as far as 6 million miles. According to Liu Hang's understanding, the maritime area of the South Sea, located further south of the Fire Pass country, is many times larger than the entire Yoshion country. Furthermore, to the north of the Yoshion country, there is the Kingdom of All Demons, which has an even more expansive territory. And to the north of the kingdom of all demons lies the vast northern sea. The land area of this world is so massive, it is somewhat awe-inspiring. Previously, without deliberately seeking to understand, Lu Hang didn't have much of a sense. Now, having briefly encountered the specific numbers, it has truly startled him. One can only say that it truly is a world where divine beings exist, exempt from following the laws of physics. Otherwise, according to the laws of physics, a planet of this magnitude would absolutely be impossible to exist. However, when one considers that this world is not a spherical planet, but rather a world with a celestial roundness and earthly flatness, doesn't it become easier to accept? Liu Heng's mind wandered in a tangled manner, but his facial expression remained calm and composed. Observing the cautious and extremely nervous demeanor of the timid widow, Liu Heng smiled faintly and said, it's better not to meet. I need to go underground to assess the situation next. As the imminent upheaval is approaching tomorrow night, I have no time to make new acquaintances. Madam, it would be wise to first summon the cultivators within the city and prevent them from being affected by the impending repercussions. After speaking, Lu Heng promptly departed from the gate tower, transforming into a streak of lightning as he vanished into the underground. He had absolutely no intention of meeting with King Jinnan. Regarding this matter, Duan Muji could not come up with any alternative and could only comply with Liu Hang's request to inform the remaining cultivators within the city to evacuate. And to convey the wolf god's response to King Jinnan outside the city. As the wolf god, he can disregard this lord who holds semi-authority over the southern realm, but she cannot overlook the opponent's influence and power. After Liu Hang vanished into the underground, he immediately detected a faint scent of blood. Although the Zhuxian town appears dilapidated and ancient, even at this moment, there is no apparent sign of any abnormalities. However, beneath the surface, a completely different scene unfolds. The dark red soil seems to be tainted with countless fresh blood. As Lu Hing delved deeper into the ground, the scent of blood he perceived grew increasingly potent. When he descended to a depth of about a thousand Zhang underground, the surrounding scent of blood had practically solidified. Amidst the dark red soil, peculiar blood-red vapors permeated the air. And Lu Hang came across a colossal stone steel. 
The stone steel soared to a height of hundreds of zhan, unparalleled in its magnificence, and was buried deep underground, a thousand zhang below the surface, leaving one to wonder how it had come to be there. The surface of the steel was covered with densely inscribed large characters, all of which were powerful incantations to suppress and banish evil forces. And beneath this immense stone steel, however, lay a scene of absolute crimson. The pungent red blood essence had completely solidified, forming a wall that obstructed Lu Heng from descending further. Evidently, this colossal stone steel is the edict issued by the ancient kings a thousand years ago, suppressing the malevolent spirits of this land. However, on the day of the anomaly, even this stone steel was unable to fully suppress the things beneath the ground, and the dense, pungent red blood essence seeped out. However, the good news is that although this dense blood essence is pungent, it lacks any harmful potency and poses no danger to the creatures on the surface. However, this may also be related to the fact that the day of the anomaly has not yet fully arrived. Perhaps by tomorrow night, when the anomaly begins, the scenes underground will once again be different. While pondering, Lu Heng hurriedly traversed underground, swiftly locating the most concentrated spot of blood essence. In the dark and eerie netherworld, Lu Heng's white attire had been tainted with the ubiquitous blood essence, taking on a peculiar crimson hue, yet his countenance remained serene as ever. Standing at the most concentrated spot of blood essence, Lu Heng directly invoked spiritual energy, unleashing his formation. Evidently, beneath Zhu Xian town, there exists another ancient citadel. That is the true Zhu Xian ancient city, which is now projected into the netherworld as a peculiar citadel. However, under the imperial decree of the human emperor, all malevolent forces have been sealed, rendering even Lu Heng unable to discern the whereabouts of that city. Fortunately, as the night draws near the day of upheaval, the seal has loosened somewhat, allowing Lu Heng to perhaps catch a glimpse of the scenes within that city by relying on the secret techniques recorded in the book Divine Skill. If one could glimpse the scenes inside the city in advance, perhaps it would be possible to unveil the enormous secret of this ancient sinister citadel. In that case, Lu Heng would also be prepared to prevent this ancient sinister citadel from damaging the newly constructed Chakravartan Palace. Exhaling deeply, Lu Heng's body surged with cascades of lightning as he took in a breath. When he opened his eyes once again, they instantly emitted a dazzling burst of white light. The two beams of white light, appearing as if piercing through the veil of darkness, swiftly flew into the dense barrier of blood essence below. In an instant, Lu Hang's eyes beheld an immensely shattered altar. In the center of the ancient dilapidated city, upon the colossal altar, stood a throne crafted from yellow earth. As Lu Hang beheld this scene, the ominous figure on the throne seemed to sense something abruptly opening its eyes and fixing its gaze upon Lu Heng. Lu Heng, resonating with blood essence, trembled, his gaze returning to reality directly. A certain indescribable sensation arose within his heart. Lu Heng's expression, slightly astounded. Due to the ominous figure on the throne, Lu Heng experienced an incredibly peculiar and yet familiar sensation. It seems familiar, as if seen somewhere before. Chapter 388 the ancient and dilapidated broken walls, the altar square smeared with dark red bloodstains, the colossal throne crafted from peculiar yellow clay, and the savage figure on the throne, seemingly asleep yet deranged. What Lu Heng glimpsed was but a fleeting momentary scene. However, the image seen in that brief moment was deeply imprinted in his mind, utterly impossible to disregard. Especially when the figure on the throne opened its eyes, Lu Heng, with his cultivation level, found himself slightly breathless. Indeed, within the Zhu Xian ancient city, there truly exists an unparalleled sense of terror. Even though Lu Heng's gaze briefly intersected with that savage figure, he was acutely aware of the inherent peril within it. The intuitions of the cultivator were desperately warning him, he must not approach that figure, he must not provoke that entity under any circumstances. The immense pressure left Lu Heng with lingering trepidation. However, beyond the pressure, what perplexed Lu Heng the most was the aura emanating from that figure, which inexplicably evoked an overwhelming sense of familiarity within him. It feels as though I have encountered it somewhere before. Or perhaps it is as if I have encountered a similar entity somewhere before. However, Lu Heng continuously reminisced, yet he remained unable to recall. This is highly irregular. 
you should know that cultivators not only have an exceptional photographic memory, but they can even recall things from their childhood, even those experienced during their innocent years. However, nowadays he inexplicably remains unable to recall it. In the pitch black and somber underground, Lu Heng fell into silence for a while, slowly shook his head, and relinquished his attempt to reminisce about the figure on that throne. He also temporarily has no intention of continuing to use magic to peer into the scenes within the city. The figure on that throne of yellow earth is wicked and eccentric, who knows if they might break free from the seal and charge out. Currently, without the heavenly thunder sword by his side, it is not appropriate for him to engage in such perilous endeavors. Moreover, in that brief glance just now, Lu Heng managed to discern numerous things. Within the vast and dilapidated city, there are countless crumbled walls, ruins, and collapsed buildings. The sky outside the city walls, however, was ominously still and devoid of any visible presence. This dilapidated ancient city is evidently situated within an independent realm. Currently in a semi-projection state, it is absolutely beyond the reach of any influence unless Lu Heng directly tears apart the seal and rushes in. Obviously, Lu Heng still has to wait, until after a dozen or so hours have passed tomorrow. When the night of the eighth day of the twelfth lunar month arrives and the true upheaval in Zhuxian town begins, only then can he exert influence over this peculiar ancient demonic city. Moving underground in the dense aura of blood, Lu Heng swiftly resurfaced once again on the ground. Beneath the chilly moonlight, the Zhuxian town appeared eerily deserted. Within this immense city, not a single trace of human presence could be seen, not even the cultivators who had previously lingered had all departed. In the Zhuxian town, only Lu Heng strolled alone at present. Not far away, Xiao Ai's figure emerged in the night sky, bringing along the siblings Wu Yu and Wu Yu, arriving before Lu Heng. At this moment, only Xiao Ai, who had received instructions from Lu Heng, dared to approach this city without being intercepted by Duan Muji. Upon seeing Xiao Ai return, Lu Heng smiled and remarked, You were a bit slow, but has Ao Tianqing arrived? Xiao Ai nodded calmly and said, He has already gone to the Tsushue village to find Lian Sangqing. Tonight promises to be an entertaining spectacle. The little girl remained as cold and indifferent as before, her facial expression showing no hint of change, as if she were not the one deceiving others. Lu Heng couldn't help but smile and said, then let's go to the Tsushue village to witness the spectacle. This formidable ruffian might actually give Lian Sanqing a beat. Xiao Ai nodded and then glanced at the empty city before expressing her concerns, however, the wolf god, the anomaly in this ancient city. Lu Heng sighed and said, currently, we are unable to intervene. We can only wait until the anomaly strikes tomorrow night and attempt to intervene from the outside. Lu Heng had intended to explore the depths of the Zhuxian ancient city in advance, and if possible, eliminate the threat of this ancient city through thunderous means. However, the current situation that he glimpsed made him realize that the underground entities were not something he could easily eliminate. That savage figure on the yellow earth throne, I'm afraid even the heavenly thunder sword might not be effective. In such circumstances, without assurance, Lu Heng was truly reluctant to provoke it. He planned to employ the simplest method, waiting until the Zhuxian ancient city fully manifested in the netherworld and directly using the power of the Requiem Seal to expel this city from the netherworld. In any case, this ancient city has been here for countless years, hardly experiencing any major incidents. Even the human emperor only issued a decree to suppress it. Lu Heng, a passing traveler, certainly has no need to risk his life here. When his strength becomes even stronger, and he can ensure a safe retreat, then he will consider eliminating the malevolent presence in this place. While it is important to slay demons and evil demons, it is unnecessary to make futile sacrifices. Carrying Xiao Ai and the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, Lu Heng departed from the empty Zhuxian town and headed directly towards the Tsushue village. Outside the ancient city, numerous cultivators, led by Duan Muji, are on guard outside the Zhuxian town, prepared for the impending crisis. A man dressed in magnificent royal robes is currently conversing with Duan Muji, seemingly the aforementioned King Zhenan. However, Lu Heng, accompanied by Xiao Ai and the Wu Yon Wu Yu siblings, departed discreetly, completely disregarding the presence of the group and showing no intention to approach them for greetings. 
Naturally, including King Shennan, everyone failed to perceive Lu Hang's departure. Similarly, they also failed to notice the peculiar figure that emerged from the city after the departure of Lu Hang and his companions. And outside the Tsushue village at this moment, the bustling atmosphere had reached its peak. Almost all the cultivators within a radius of thousands of miles around the Zhuxian town have gathered here because there are rumors that the arrogant and audacious Ao Tianqing, who has been causing a disturbance in the southern realm these days, is coming to challenge the cultivator who has trapped the Tsushue village. Moreover, information regarding the identity of the enigmatic cultivator who trapped the Tsushue village has gradually started to circulate. I heard that she is a woman named Lien Sangjing, hailing from the Fire Pass country in the south. Her cultivation prowess is unparalleled, causing even the lord of all demons in the Green Hell Cave to tremble at the mere mention of her name. The perpetrator who ruthlessly slaughtered city lord Nangong and his entourage before is none other than this Lien Sangjing. It is also rumored that the authorities from the capital city have dispatched personnel to apprehend the criminal it remains unknown who will be sent. Have this Ao Tianqing, it is said that he was once slapped away by Lien Sangqing. I wonder if he can regain his dignity this time when he comes to provoke her. I'm afraid within a single palm strike, this woman has annihilated both Lai Lao and city lord Nan Gong, remember, both of them are innate cultivators. As for that Ao Tianqing, though he may be excessively arrogant, it is quite evident that he is not on the same level as Lien Sangqing. Tonight, it seems he will once again bring shame upon himself. Perhaps even his life cannot be preserved. Among the mountains and wilderness, similar discussions arose one after another. The cultivators stood atop the mountain, in the sky, or on the trees, gazing near or far to observe the situation around the Tsushue village, eager to witness the commotion. Because the audacious rogue named Ao Tianqing is swaggering towards the Tsushue village, boldly declaring his intention to teach Lien Sanqing a lesson and avenge the ambush that took place that day. Lu Heng, who had silently blended into the crowd, listened to the discussions among the mountains and wilderness, his face filled with astonishment. He turned to Xiao Ai beside him. Xiao Ai undoubtedly played a role in directing the release of these news and public opinions. No wonder that Ao Tianqing rushed over eagerly. For this rogue who seeks fame by challenging the strong, such public opinion of having lost once and being certain to lose this time is absolutely intolerable. No wonder Xiao Ai, this young girl, was so slow. It turns out she wasn't simply delivering a letter to Ao Tianqing to provoke him into action, but rather directly manipulating public opinion to force Ao Tianqing to take the initiative. Goodness gracious! In just two days' time, the public opinion has been shaped in such a way that everyone knows about the incident where Lien Sangqing slapped Ao Tianqing and sent him flying. Lu Heng exclaimed, Xiao Ai, you are becoming more formidable. Lu Heng's astonishment caused a slight blush to color Xiao Ai's face. She was about to speak when, at that moment, a resounding voice echoed through the mountains. Peerless in the world. Walking alone in the heavens. All beings bow down. Unrivaled in the myriad realms. Lien Sanqing, your grandfather Ao Tianqing has come to see you. The sudden laughter echoed among the mountains. The faint aura of dominance within the sound caused the faces of all the cultivators engaged in lively discussions to change, and they all fell silent. Amidst the radiant glow, a figure descended from the heavens, gradually landing in the vacant space before the Tsushue village, under the gaze of tens of thousands of eyes. With a lofty demeanor, Ao Tianqing declared, Tonight, I, Ao Tianqing, shall publicly slap your face and shatter your divine skill. Making the world aware that on that fateful day, it was not my defeat, but rather your dishonorable conduct of assaulting me by surprise. If we truly engage in a life and death battle, I, Ao Tianqing, will undoubtedly personally defeat you. The arrival of Ao Tianqing left the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings in awe and astonishment. They looked at Lu Heng beside them with some disbelief and spoke, Father, is this person truly formidable? Yes, Father. How is this person just like a third-rate minor character? He lacks any sense of gravitas that a true powerhouse should possess. The Wuyo and Wuyu siblings expressed their confusion. Having stayed by Lu Heng's side for so long, the siblings also considered themselves to have witnessed formidable cultivators. Moreover, 
they discovered that these powerful cultivators all shared a common characteristic. That would be the embodiment of maturity, composure, and remarkable dignity. However, the current Ao Tianqing is arrogant and conceited, boasting and exaggerating his abilities, which makes it hard to perceive him as a formidable individual. Of course, the siblings have such a feeling because, under the protection of Lu Hang, they were not subjected to the unbridled exertion of oppressive power emanating from Ao Tianqing. If it weren't for Lu Hang's protection, with the siblings' meager abilities, they would most likely have been terrified by Ao Tianqing's overwhelming presence, leaving them pale-faced and with their minds blank. And this, indeed, is the reason why cultivators all around fell into silence. Because in the moment Ao Tianqing made his appearance, he shamelessly unleashed his own aura, forcefully overshadowing the surrounding mountains. Such action, both arrogant and disrespectful, can be considered a provocation to everyone present. However, such a terrifying aura indeed overwhelmed the many cultivators present. Many cultivators who had only heard of Ao Tianqing's name now had pale faces and trembling hands and feet, finally realizing the astonishing strength of this madman. Amongst the mountains, there was a brief moment of silence and stillness. After Ao Tianqing's voice fell, surprisingly, not a single sound echoed thereafter. Even the sound of breathing came to a halt. In the midst of such eerie silence, after three breaths, Ao Tianqing, who stood proudly in the void, couldn't keep his composure any longer. He scanned the surroundings once again and proclaimed loudly, Lian Sanqing, are you scared? Are you afraid of being defeated by me in front of everyone, so you dare not show yourself? Humph. Since you are afraid, I will not bother to argue with a woman like you. Tonight, I will break through your formation and release the people of the Tsushue village, so that the world may know that even ancient monsters like you, Lian Sanqing, pale in comparison before me, Ao Tianqing. The name of Ao Tianqing shall resound throughout the universe. After speaking, Ao Tianqing turned around and looked straight at the colossal mountain, suspended above the Tsushue village. Raising his right fist, a surge of vibrant green aura erupted fiercely around him. Merely the act of throwing a punch set off a torrential surge of spiritual energy, causing a violent gust of wind to sweep through the area, shaking the very form of the cultivator standing amidst the mountains. This Ao Tianqing, the might of his punches is remarkably formidable. Upon witnessing this scene, the cultivators all harbored a singular thought in their hearts, in the face of such a fearsome punch, the so-called Lian Sanqing is hardly worth mentioning. Among the crowd, Lu Heng, on the other hand, shook his head, finding Ao Tianqing to be an ultimate show-off, deliberately creating such a grand commotion even for the sake of setting up a formation. However, since he enjoys making a name for himself so much, I might as well use his own name next time I set out on a journey. After all, even if he finds out, he won't mind. In the vast emptiness, a surge of spiritual energy roared, as ferocious fist strength surged and overwhelmed the mountains. The roar of Ao Tianqing echoed for hundreds of miles, resounding far and wide. Proud Sky Battle World Technique Second Form Proud Sky Dragon's Chant Roar Within the resounding roar of a magnificent dragon's chant and beastly roar, a radiant golden dragon emerged from the surging tide of spiritual energy. With a furious roar, it collided with the colossal suspended mountain in the sky. As this punch was about to shatter the suspended mountain in front of everyone's eyes, within the midst of the mountains, a voice of indifference from a woman finally resounded. What is this buzzing nuisance that appeared out of nowhere? As the voice fell, the colossal suspended mountain in the void unexpectedly turned transparent. The radiant golden dragon pierced through the mountain directly and vanished into the distance. The mighty fist, after Ao Tianqing had spent quite some time building up strength, ended up missing its mark completely. Meanwhile, the figure of the woman in red finally materialized before everyone's eyes. Within the moon that hung in the night sky, the silhouette of Lian Sanqing unexpectedly emerged. Within the shimmering moonlight, a woman dressed in crimson appeared, her blood-stained robe contrasting vividly against the moon's pure radiance, creating an inexplicably ominous and eerie presence. The cultivators who witnessed this scene couldn't help but shudder in their hearts, as if they had encountered some ancient malevolent creature, inexplicably sending chills down their spines. However, soon enough, someone noticed an anomaly. No. It's not the moon. The true moon is elsewhere. 
Amidst the crowd, there were also highly accomplished cultivators who quickly grasped the situation, being the first to discern Lien Sanqing's techniques. As everyone cast their gazes, it became evident that on the other side of the night sky hung a genuine moon. However, the moon above the Tsushue village, was deceitful and false. However, all the cultivators, including Ao Tianqing, were oblivious to the fact that within this counterfeit moon, Lien Sanqing lay concealed. Even Lu Heng failed to notice. Within the crowd, Lu Heng's heart skipped a beat, as an ominous feeling arose. Unbeknownst to Lu Heng, Lien Sanqing had been covertly observing the surroundings from the sky, evidently anticipating his appearance. Although he discreetly infiltrated using the concealment technique for the sake of caution and security. However, Lien Sanqing possesses remarkable strength. I wonder if Lu Heng has already been discovered upon his stealthy entrance. Chapter, 389. What is meant by being defenseless against defense? This is what it means to be defenseless against defense. Although Lu Hang suspected that Lien Sanqing used the Tsushue village as bait to lure him out, he never expected that this woman had been disguising herself as the moon, observing everyone from the sky. This method of concealing and deceiving, like stealing the day and changing it for night, is truly extraordinary. It has deceived the senses of all cultivators, and even Lu Heng himself failed to react in time. Amidst the crowd, Xiao Ai couldn't help but feel nervous, her expression becoming tense. At the moment when Lian Sangqing revealed herself, she also realized the danger and quickly glanced at Lu Heng by her side. The wolf god Xiao Ai uttered nervously. Lu Heng, however, shook his head and said, Do not panic, let's take another look. Lien Sanqing possesses remarkable strength, but Lu Hang's technique of concealing his aura is also extraordinary. It is an intricately devised esoteric method that he, Jiu Mia, and Candle Dragon have collaborated on for quite some time to derive its profound secrets. While Lien Sanqing may possess formidable strength, it doesn't necessarily mean that she can truly discern Lu Hang's whereabouts. Otherwise, with her temperament, she would have already taken action against Lu Hang. The fact that she hasn't directly intervened is, in itself, good news. Therefore, Lu Heng remained unmoved and continued to conceal himself among the crowd, observing the spectacle. While the woman in the red dress in the moon cast a cold glance at the mountains below, she completely ignored the clamoring Ao Tianqing and spoke to the mountains below. Lu Heng, now that you've arrived, why not reveal yourself? Hiding and evading, is this the audacity of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain? The words spoken by Lien Sanqing caused a moment of silence among the mountains, and then everyone's face displayed astonishment. Even the Ao Tianqing in the void couldn't help but widen his eyes and look in all directions. Has the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain also arrived? Ao Tianqing exclaimed in astonishment. Lien Sanqing in the moon, however, continued to ignore him and instead cast an indifferent gaze upon the mountains below, awaiting the arrival of the man in white. However, to her disappointment, although there was much discussion and astonishment among the mountains, that figure didn't take the initiative to come forward. It's as if Lu Heng was not present here at all. Seeing such a situation, Lien Sanqing furrowed her brows and once again said, Don't hide. I know you're here. Now that you've come, why hide? You may evade me momentarily, but can you escape me forever? In Lien Sanqing's tone, there was a deep-seated anger tinged with provocation. Amongst the cultivators amidst the mountains, they exchanged uncertain glances, unsure of what to say for a moment. Judging from this tone could it be that this enigmatic cultivator Lien Sanqing has some untold story with the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain? Listening to the content of these words, it seems that the wolf god has been constantly evading, while this woman relentlessly pursues him? Wow! How exhilarating! I never expected that coming to spectate would lead to witnessing such excitement how thrilling. The deep-seated grudges and entanglements between the two ancient monsters although the cultivators fear the ferocity of Lien Sanqing and dare not openly discuss. As they exchanged glances, they had already imagined a melodramatic spectacle unfolding before them. At this moment, the only one who dared to speak was probably Ao Tianqing, who stood proudly in the void. Seeing Lien Sanqing once again disregard him, with no sign of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain among the mountains, Ao Tianqing spoke up directly. You woman, 
Do you intend to deceive me by invoking the name of the wolf god? Humph. Even if you have some connection with the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, it has nothing to do with me. The reputation of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain doesn't intimidate me either. If you are truly afraid of me, there is no need for such tactics. Just apologize for the ambush you launched against me that day, and I will spare you, no longer holding any grudges against you. Ao Tianqing said with a proud expression, just with a simple apology, I, Ao Tianqing, can let go of the past and bear no grudges. The voice of Ao Tianqing echoed incessantly among the mountains. And this time, Lian Sangqing finally cast her gaze upon this incessantly chattering man. On the moon in the night sky, the woman in red attire had a sinister and horrifying expression, her eyes filled with a fierce and malevolent gaze, like that of a wicked spirit. The frigid voice, eerily ringing in everyone's ears, seemed to simultaneously emerge from behind each person, hauntingly peculiar. You foolish imbecile, truly seeking death. Lien Sangqing spoke in a chilly tone, saying, Since you desire death, I shall grant your wish. As the words fell, the moon directly above the Tsushue village burst open, transforming into a scattered silver radiance that dissipated into the night. From within the resplendent silver radiance, a crimson figure stepped forward, raising its hand and striking a palm towards Ao Tianqing below. The icy intent to kill instantly overflowed the mountains, causing all cultivators among the mountains to feel a chilling sensation, as if a sharp thorn pierced their backs, sending shivers down their spines. However, in the face of this palm, Ao Tianqing had long been prepared. At the moment when the moonlight scattered, he mobilized his true energy throughout his body and burst into boisterous laughter, saying, thinking of launching a surprise attack. This time, I will not let you succeed. Proud Sky Battle World Technique, Seventh Form Indestructible Pride of the Skies Immortal through eons A deafening roar resounded within the mountains. Lien Sangqing's invisible and unpredictable palm struck Ao Tianqing's chest, but at the moment the force of the palm descended. A brilliant golden radiance suddenly surged from the man's chest, transforming into a half-foot-thick golden barrier of light. As Lien Sangqing's palm descended, the golden barrier of light resonated with a sharp crackling sound, as if corroded by something horrifying, continuously emitting a foul-smelling green smoke. After a dozen or so breaths, the peculiar palm force that brought with it gusts of cold wind was finally completely dissipated. While Ao Tianqing remained unscathed in the void, effortlessly dispelling the golden barrier of light, he proudly chuckled and said. Ha 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 the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain retreats without battle, and Lien Sangqing is merely living off an empty reputation. There are only a few beings in this world who are worthy of clashing with me. Merely an ancient era's old monster, nothing more. Ao Tianqing burst into boisterous laughter and declared, This world shall ultimately belong to me, Ao Tianqing. Even if the ancient demons of old emerge, I, Ao Tianqing, shall remain invincible in this era. Among the crowd, Xiao Ai's brows slightly furrowed, revealing a displeased expression. The wolf god, this ruffian has insulted your reputation. The heavenly thunder sword, positioned behind Xiao Ai, trembled silently. Lu Heng, however, smiled and shook his head, saying, There's no rush, let's take another look. Saying so, Lu Heng cast his gaze towards Lien Sangqing in the ethereal void. Amidst the watchful gazes of onlookers, the woman in crimson attire let out a cold laugh and proclaimed, Invincible in this era. Just you. Truly, this generation is filled with foolish individuals. Even stray cats and dogs dare to prance before me. Today, I shall scatter your soul and annihilate your spirit. Under the night sky, the woman in crimson attire gathered her true chi. Within the void, gusts of eerie wind and a chilling aura could be perceived. Lien Sanqing, who usually didn't make use of any flashy effects, now uncommonly displayed an awe-inspiring momentum. It was evident that she had been provoked by Ao Tianqing's arrogant words, igniting her true fire and indicating her intent to engage in a serious confrontation. Within the void, Ao Tianqing let out a free-spirited laughter, showing no fear. Once again, he gathered his true qi throughout his body and exclaimed, Excellent! Today, I shall engage in a head-on clash with you using my most formidable fist. I will make you truly understand the meaning of, the new generation surpassing the old, 
leaving you no choice but to accept defeat wholeheartedly. Proud Sky Battle World Technique, Ninth Form Invincible in the proud sky Unrivaled throughout eternity Amidst Ao Tianqing's furious roar, nine dazzling golden dragons materialized behind him, all letting out a resounding roar as they soared towards Lian Sangqing, clad in a crimson attire. Meanwhile, the woman in the red attire had an icy gaze, exuding a chilling aura. As she raised her hand, her pale right hand instantaneously transformed into a bloody crimson, emanating a ferocious aura. With a palm strike, the heavens and earth trembled, enveloped in a raging surge of malevolent energy, as if countless beings were wailing in agonizing pain. Faintly, ghostly figures of deities appeared, mirroring scenes of tragic demise. The terrifying spectacle of the earthly catastrophe, which only existed in legends, revealed a hint of its presence at this moment, leaving numerous cultivators trembling in fear, their expressions filled with terror. Lu Heng's expression immediately turned serious. Oh no something is about to go wrong. The clash of their techniques generated a destructive power that could undoubtedly level the surrounding mountains. Although the cultivators who were spectating from afar in the mountains had taken shelter, those with weaker cultivation levels might still be affected. Amidst the crowd, Lu Heng was about to make a move, intending to protect the spectating cultivators when, suddenly, a dark figure rose from within the mountains. That dark figure appeared strangely and abruptly. Prior to its emergence, none of the people present were able to detect its presence. After it revealed itself, even though it appeared in Lu Heng's field of vision, he still couldn't perceive the existence of this dark figure, as if what had risen there was nothing more than a deceptive illusion. And as that dark figure rose, it swiftly dashed towards the midst of Lian Sanqing and Ao Tianqing's confrontation, moving at an astonishing speed. Apart from Lu Heng, at this moment, there were no more than a handful of individuals who could discern the form of this dark figure amidst the mountains. In the sky, both Ao Tianqing and Lian Sanqing furrowed their brows as they were momentarily startled by the sudden appearance of this illusory figure. However, they all showed no mercy, unleashing their ultimate moves, as nine surging golden dragons roared fiercely and collided with the blood-red tide of malevolent aura that blanketed the heavens. And between these nine golden dragons and the raging tide of malevolent aura, there stood the peculiar and enigmatic dark figure that had suddenly emerged. In an instant, their ultimate techniques clashed, the force of their palms and the gusts of their fists colliding, yet there was no earth-shattering explosion, nor did a devastating aftermath of destruction ensue. That strange dark figure actually swallowed all of their palm force and fist winds. It vanished without a trace. Several top cultivators, who witnessed this scene, all widened their eyes in astonishment. Lu Heng was even more startled, suddenly sensing a familiar aura emanating from that dark figure. It seems, somewhat similar to the pungent bloody aura beneath the Zhuxian town. The sensation that had just risen in Lu Heng's heart, the dark figure suddenly erupted with a thunderous explosion. The palm forces and fist powers that struck it simultaneously seemed to dissipate at that moment. But at the very moment the dark figure erupted, a deafening roar resounded from the location of the Zhuxian town, several tens of miles away. Amidst the ferocious roar, the city towers of all four gates of the Zhuxian town exploded with a resounding blast. Beneath the earth's surface, the colossal stone monument, towering hundreds of feet high, was riddled with cracks, as if it had been struck by a violent external force. The crimson light of the sky pierced through the levels of clouds, emerging from the heavens above. The clouds over the Zhuxian town dispersed completely, but the nighttime sky had changed its hue. The inky blackness of the night sky transformed into a sanguine shade, eerie and terrifying. From a distance, the cultivators of the Tsushue village observed the scene over at the Zhuxian town and were all left dumbfounded. Lian Sangqing, in an instant, rushed forward, her facial expression changing slightly, as if she had thought of something. Ao Tianqing hesitated for a moment, but when he saw Yan Sangqing disappear, he finally realized and quickly chased after her, exclaiming, Hey! We haven't finished fighting yet. Why are you running? With a mighty roar, Ao Tianqing transformed into a streak of light and flew towards the sudden upheaval in the Zhuxian town. His shout awakened numerous cultivators among the mountains. As people exchanged glances with each other, they simultaneously flew up and headed towards the Zhuxian town. 
the cultivators who arrived at this location were all drawn by the profound changes occurring in the Zhuxian town. However, now it seems that unexpected changes have occurred, and naturally, they cannot afford to miss it. Lu Heng, accompanied by Xiao Ai and the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, blended in with the crowd as they transformed into streaks of light, heading towards the Zhuxian town. Within this streak of light, Xiao Ai suddenly sniffed slightly, then whispered softly. The wolf god, there are evil demons mixed in among them. Xiao Ai's gaze scanned the surroundings calmly and without a word. Lu Heng nodded and said, it's normal to have evil demons. There are rumors that an innate demon is planning to disturb the Zhuxian town, so they probably won't miss the bustle in the Tsushue village. However, those you have detected are just minions. The true archfiend is still disguising itself among the crowd. We will temporarily disregard it and observe the movements of these evil demons. While speaking, Lu Hang inquired about the underworld from Chakravartan Yu Yu through the connection of the Requiem Seal. With the aid of the Requiem Seal, he could engage in brief conversations with Yu Yu, even across different realms. Yu Yu, dear friend, has any anomaly occurred in that ancient city? Soon, a response from Yu Yu came through. Filled with utmost anxiety. Something major has happened, Senior Wolf God. Just moments ago, two inexplicable forces collided from the outer heavens and instantly struck the eastern gate of the ancient city. Now, the battle sword hanging above the gate has fallen, and the city gate is on the brink of breaking. Countless fierce roars can be heard throughout the city. The report from Yu Yu left Lu Heng sighing inwardly. Indeed, the sudden appearance of that dark figure just now is indeed related to the ancient underground citadel of the Zhuxian town. That dark figure, using some unknown secret technique, diverted and shattered the formidable powers of Lian Sangqing and Ao Tianqing's ultimate moves. Breaking the seal of the sword formation guarding the eastern gate of the ancient city and revealing its true vulnerability. It seems that this time, not only is the arrival of the catastrophe being accelerated, but the level of its ferocity also surpasses all previous occurrences. Considering the constantly solidifying ancient citadel in the netherworld, Lu Heng dared not be careless and immediately sent a message to Yu Yu. Immediately gather all ghost cultivators of the Chakravartan Palace. Form the array of extermination that I previously taught you, and seal off the eastern gate of the ancient city. Once anything emerges from the eastern gate, suppress and eliminate it without exception. The things within the city are not merely malevolent entities, but rather more terrifying beings. We absolutely must not let anything escape from within. As Lu Heng spoke, the first image that came to his mind was the sinister figure on the throne of Yellow Earth. That thing is not a mere embodiment of demonic or evil cultivation, nor is it any ordinary worldly being. However, should that creature be allowed to escape, it would undoubtedly bring about a catastrophe of epic proportions, surpassing even the likes of an evil lord or any other demonic leader. Therefore, even though Lu Heng possesses the authority of the Requiem Seal to safeguard and promptly expel the manifesting city from the realm of the dead, he still dares not let his guard down. Instead, he allows the Chakravartan Palace to directly assume the strongest formation in response. To avoid any unforeseen circumstances. The realm of the dead is just beginning now, it absolutely must not perish so prematurely. Chapter, 390 In the night sky, streaks of swift and hurried escape lights traverse the vast expanse, one after another, as figures fly towards the direction of the Zhuxian town. From afar, they could already see that the sky above that ancient city had completely changed, transforming into a menacing and eerie blood-red hue. However, it is only when one truly approaches the Zhuxian town that they can clearly sense that pervasive feeling of terror filling the air. It is as if an intangible pressure weighs upon the hearts of the masses, while also bearing a deadly threat that directly targets them. As they arrived outside the Zhuxian town, all cultivators wore expressions of unease. The blood-red sky above, resembling more and more an ugly crimson eyeball, stared indifferently at the people below. In the midst of this blood-red sky, one's mood would inexplicably become gloomy and tense. Meanwhile, outside the Zhuxian town, at the heavily guarded lord's mansion and among the cultivators of the various prominent clans within the town. A formation had already been established to prohibit these curious onlooker cultivators from trespassing into the city. 
However, these cultivators don't even need to be stopped, as at this moment, no one dares to trespass the Zhuxian ancient city right before their eyes. The ancient city that appeared before everyone's eyes had long ceased to resemble its daytime appearance. Under the crimson glow, the city walls of the entire city loomed dauntingly tall. Moreover, the walls were exceedingly pitch black, and upon closer inspection, one could discern that they were intricately adorned with a multitude of dark, intricate patterns. Each of these patterns seemed to be imbued with earth-shattering secrets. And these countless peculiar patterns engraved the entire exterior walls of the city, faintly forming a massive formation, imprisoning the entire ancient city within its confines. Atop the city gate tower, there even hung a menacing ancient battle sword, faintly exuding a sense of oppression as if it were suppressing something. However, nowadays, this ancient battle sword is crooked and seems as if it could fall down at any moment, emitting a strange blood-red aura that continuously seeps out from the wide-open city gates. And that massive and imposing city gate is no longer in its original form of the City of Immortals ancient town gate, but has transformed into a peculiar yellow earth gate, entirely sculpted from yellow clay. The paved stone streets within the city have also transformed into peculiar yellow earth thoroughfares. However, these compacted yellow earth thoroughfares are immensely solid, devoid of any potholes or dust. Amidst the chilling winds, one can seemingly catch glimpses of peculiar figures wandering along the streets within the city. The foremost cultivators at the front let out cries of astonishment. Lian Tsangqing rushed in. Not right. Ao Tianqing has also rushed in. Both top-notch cultivators have rushed and could it be that there is some extraordinary treasure within this city? I've heard that the Zhuxian ancient city actually harbors ancient divine weapons. That's why there have been recent covetous actions from evil demons. The cultivators were engaged in lively discussions, filled with uncertainty and intrigue. The scene of Lian Sangqing and Ao Tianqing rushing into the city one after another truly startled all the cultivators. If it weren't for the eerie situation within the city at this moment, which didn't seem like a righteous place, it is likely that the many cultivators outside would have already swarmed in long ago. And at this moment, within the crowd, several intense demonic auras suddenly erupted. Those several demons who had been hiding within the crowd finally could no longer restrain themselves. In an instant, they unleashed their full power and directly broke through the blockade of the city lord's mansion, rushing into the open gates of the Zhuxian ancient city. The situation of these demons storming the gates came so abruptly that the numerous cultivators from the city lord's mansion were unable to react at all. The only ones who managed to react were King Zhenan, who had arrived at this place, and one of his attendants by his side. However, the demon cultivators who stormed the gates were all influential leaders of the demonic path, with formidable strength, and they attacked suddenly, without giving any time to react. King Zhenan and his attendant could only watch helplessly as those few demon shadows vanished into the city. Following that, the cultivators who were watching from outside the city completely surged with excitement. The demon cultivators have also rushed in. Indeed, there are top-notch benefits within this city. These demons have been hiding among us all along. Could it be that they were waiting for this moment? Do they know what treasures lie within the city? Where is the person in charge of the city lord's residence? Come out and provide an explanation to everyone. Can we or can we not enter this city? Indeed. According to the rules of the martial world, when ancient relics emerge, those who possess virtue should inhabit them. No force should be allowed to forcefully monopolize and block them. Even if this matter now reach the presence of the ruler, the Yoshion country is in the wrong. The sight of several demon cultivators rushing through the city gate has made the cultivators unable to sit still any longer, prompting them to shout and clamor excitedly. According to the rules of the cultivation world, ancient relics that appear in this world should indeed not be blocked. If one desires the benefits inside, they must rely on their own fortune to enter and obtain them. However, as soon as several cultivators in the crowd spoke up, they immediately gained unanimous support from the fellow cultivators. Although there were actually only a few daring cultivators who dared to step into this peculiar city, it didn't prevent everyone from enjoying the spectacle. Meanwhile, over at the city lord's residence, Nan Gong Ji engaged in a low conversation with King Zhenan before issuing orders to clear the path for the cultivators from the city lord's residence. 
in accordance with the rules of the martial world, allowing them to enter the city. The announcement from the city lord's residence spread outside the city. The Zhuxian ancient city has been opened, and the day of upheaval is upon us. If there are those unafraid of death, they are welcome to enter the city. The city lord's residence will absolutely not impede anyone. With these words spoken, all the cultivators who had just shouted out fell into a brief silence. Obviously, they were willing to shout out, but when it came to actually opening the barriers and letting them in, there were only a few cultivators present who possessed such courage. After all, the Zhuxian ancient city at this moment appears sinister and terrifying, clearly not a benign place. Who knows what the chances of survival are once one enters. Moreover, the few individuals who had previously entered the city were all formidable cultivators at the innate stage. Trying to compete with them for extraordinary treasures would simply be like offering oneself as a sacrifice for ordinary cultivators who venture inside. However, even so, amidst the crowd, there were still dozens of figures that swiftly transformed into streaks of light and charged directly into the city. Among those dozens of streaks of light, astonishingly, there were the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, who were by Lu Heng's side. As the announcement rang out at the city lord's mansion, these two siblings with relatively low cultivation suddenly transformed into streaks of light, swiftly passing over the heads of the crowd, plunging into the city gates. At that moment, Lu Heng briefly glimpsed the bewildered expressions on the faces of the siblings. As well as the woman standing on the city street, who beckoned and smiled at the siblings, calling them to come inside. Sister Yuan Jun. Lu Heng muttered a sentence, and instinctively placed his hand on his chest. In that fleeting moment just now, the person he saw was unmistakably Xin Yuan Jun, who should have died long ago. Witnessing this scene, Xiao Ai standing beside them grew anxious, her countenance fraught with worry, the wolf god. Xiao Ai attempted to restore the clarity of Lu Heng's consciousness. However, Lu Heng's expression remained unmoved, and his gaze remained clear and calm. He quietly watched as the figure of the woman, accompanied by the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, vanished into the streets of the city. Then, he spoke, let us go inside as well. Saying so, Lu Heng took the lead and walked towards the wide-open city gates, displaying not a trace of irrational behavior. However, this abrupt gesture unsettled Xiao Ai. The Wolf God exclaimed Xiao Ai anxiously, rapidly transforming into a shimmering light and chasing after, closely following Lu Heng's figure as they flew into the fierce ancient city beneath the crimson sky. Chapter 391 Did you hear what the little girl just shouted earlier? The wolf god she was shouting, the wolf god. His could it be that the words previously spoken by Lian Sangqing were true? Is the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain among us? Even the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain has entered how lively it must be inside this city. I wonder what kind of extraordinary treasure could evoke such excitement among these top-tier cultivators. Outside the Zhuxian town, cultivators are filled with tremendous excitement, all due to the fervent summoning of Xiao Ai. Upon hearing that call, both Nan Gongji and King Zhenan furrowed their brows slightly. Upon witnessing the disappearance of that thunderous light within the city, King Zhenan looked with disbelief and uttered. Even the wolf god has entered could it be that there truly exists some extraordinary treasure within the Zhuxian ancient city? Duan Mu Ji stood by, abiding in silence, not daring to utter more words. After a moment's pause, King Zhenan made a decisive decision and said, Bayou, accompany me to enter the city and assess the situation. If there truly is an extraordinary treasure emerging, we must assist the wolf god in repelling those wicked creatures. We cannot allow the treasure to fall into the hands of those vile beings. After finishing his words, King Jinnan turned his gaze towards Duan Muji and said, Madam, it will be your responsibility to handle the situation outside the city. Fortunately, the residents within the city have already been relocated, so even if there are some unexpected events, it will not lead to great suffering for the people. But if there should be any irreparable, unfavorable changes occurring after we enter the city, please inform the capital immediately, madam. After speaking, King Jinnan, accompanied by his attendant Bayu, transformed into shimmering light and flew into the city. Outside the Zhuxian town, the deafening clamor filled the air as cultivators grew increasingly excited witnessing one after another mysterious lights flying into the ancient city before them. 
They knew that only those with great supernatural powers would dare to enter at this moment. On the other hand, Lu Heng, who flew into the city gates with Xiao Ai, furrowed his brows as he stepped into the city. In that instant, the dilapidated streets before his eyes transformed into a completely different scene, no longer resembling what he had seen outside the city. A blood-stained yellow earthen wall stood before him, and the ground was covered in congealed black blood, scattered everywhere. It appeared as if he had arrived at the scene of a massacre, where bodies had been removed. And Lu Heng, at present, found himself standing in front of this mansion that had tragically fallen victim to a massacre. As for what lay behind Lu Heng, it was not the gate of the Zhuxian ancient city, but a dark and narrow yellow clay road. In the instant he stepped through the city gate, he found himself inexplicably transported and positioned in a certain corner within the city. Glancing beside him, Lu Heng noticed that Xiao Ai was still by his side, but all those cultivators who had entered the Zhuxian ancient city earlier were completely out of sight. Moreover, the sky was no longer eerily blood-red, but rather dim and gloomy, completely different from the scenery witnessed outside the ancient city. In the distant night sky beyond the city walls, neither any stars nor drifting clouds and moon could be seen. The gloomy and dim night sky, desolate and devoid of anything, bears a striking resemblance to the netherworld. Wait, the netherworld. Lu Heng furrowed his brow and gazed in the direction of the city gate, only to realize that it was quite a distance away from his current position. Furthermore, upon attempting to sense the environment, he discovered with astonishment that he was unable to summon any flight technique within this city. Even attempting to sprint, he couldn't exceed a speed of one zhang per breath, no matter whether he jogged casually or sprinted with all his might, his maximum speed could only reach seven meters per breath. As for the power of the Requiem Seal, although Lu Heng is able to wield it, he has lost his connection with Chakravartan Yu Yu, rendering him unable to communicate with her through the Requiem Seal anymore. Lu Heng who noticed this situation, furrowed his brow slightly. Let us first go and have a look at the city gate, said Lu Heng. Even if the speed is slow, but sprinting at a maximum speed of 7 meters per breath would still be sufficient to reach the city gate within a short period of time. While Xiao Ai closely followed behind Lu Heng, she anxiously surveyed the houses on both sides of the street, and in a slightly hushed tone, she asked, The wolf god, do you think all the houses in this city are empty? Why does Xiao Ai feel like there are eyes peering at us behind every door? The sensation of being watched by countless pairs of eyes made Xiao Ai's hair stand on end. Lu Heng cast a cold, indifferent glance at the dilapidated houses on both sides of the street and said, whether they are vacant or not, as long as nothing comes out, we shall consider them empty. With that, Lu Heng led Xiao Ai and dashed out of the street they were currently on, heading straight towards the intersection up ahead. The crossroad stretched across the center of four different streets. On both sides of the solid, compacted clay road, four streets presented distinctly different scenes. Lu Heng and Xiao Ai saw a rather peculiar sight on the street ahead of them. There, they spotted the figures of an adult and two children, seemingly resembling a mother walking alongside her two offspring, one on each side. The two children, on the other hand, were clearly Wuyo and Wuyu. Xiao Ai's eyes widened in an instant. Just as she took the next step, the street view ahead disappeared, and so did the figures of the adult and two children. Appearing before her and Lu Heng was a dilapidated inn. The shabby signboard of the inn, now only half remaining, hung crookedly above the entrance, swaying slowly in the chilly breeze. Like the lifeless body of a hanged ghost hanging from a tree. This street, obviously, was not the same one they had seen before, but rather a different place. Xiao Ai, who witnessed this scene, understood. If we walk out of the street, will we be transported to another place within the city? Xiao Ai's expression grew slightly solemn. The wolf god, if that's the case, it will be difficult for us to reach the city gates. Lu Heng furrowed his brow, and gestured directly with his hand. Heavenly Thunder Sword With a casual whisper, Xiao Ai's bronze sword on her back instantly transformed into a streak of green light, soaring into the night sky. In this city where even Lu Heng cannot escape using light speed flight, the Heavenly Thunder Sword, primarily forged from Heavenly Thunder Sand, seemed unaffected, still soaring into the sky. Amidst the chilly gusts of cold wind, 
the blade of the heavenly thunder sword trembled ever so slightly, filled with excitement for the imminent unsheathing. However, upon furrowing his brow and contemplating for a moment, Lu Heng dispelled the thought of drawing his sword. With a gentle wave of his hand, the heavenly thunder sword in the night sky transformed into a streak of green light and once again descended onto Xiao Ai's back. Having abandoned the thought of drawing his sword, Lu Heng turned and walked away, making his way towards the exit on one side of the street. In the cold wind, Lu Heng's indifferent whisper lingers. Take another look, after all, it is an ancient relic, at the very least. On the desolate street, where the cold wind howls, fallen leaves whiz by, while dilapidated walls and ruins line both sides of the road, with tightly closed doors and windows. But this time, Xiao Ai didn't feel the eyes watching her and the wolf god behind the doors on either side. It is unclear whether it is due to the absence of things behind the houses on this street, or if those things were frightened by the wolf god's recent attempt to unsheath Heavenly Thunder Sword. The wolf god, though he didn't truly unsheath Heavenly Thunder Sword just now, the slight emanation of sword aura trembling from the blade already revealed a great deal. Staring at the ruins on both sides, Xiao Ai whispered, The wolf god, what do you think would be the reaction of whatever is behind these doors if we were to run over and smash them? Chapter, 392 Xiao Ai's words made Lu Heng slightly startled. He subsequently came to a halt and gazed at the dilapidated walls and broken remnants with tightly shut doors and windows on either side. The buildings within this city are all incredibly dilapidated, with not a single intact house in sight. Furthermore, every house shares a common feature, tightly closed doors and windows that conceal the interior. Amidst the eerie gusts of cold wind, it evokes a sense of inexplicable horror. And Xiao Ai's curious words also ignited Lu Heng's curiosity. Indeed, all the houses on both sides of this street have tightly closed doors and windows. What kind of scene would one witness if they were to forcibly break in? Furthermore, the situation within this city is peculiar. Once you depart from the street you are currently on and step into another street, you will inexplicably shift position to a different location within the city. Then, if Lu Heng were to not take the main road but rather opt to smash through walls and doors, bulldozing his way forward, what would the outcome be? With these thoughts in mind, Lu Heng's footsteps came to a halt. He looked towards the nearest courtyard and said, Then let's go inside and have a look. Saying so, Lu Heng proceeded towards that house. The tightly shut courtyard gate was covered in dark red moss, as if nourished by blood, inexplicably unsettling. As one approached, one could observe the silent squirming of this dark red moss, resembling the pulsating innards of a living creature. Lu Heng refrained from touching it with his hand instead, he elegantly flicked his sleeve, causing a gentle breeze to sweep over and delicately brush against the tightly shut gate adorned with the dark red moss. Then, not a single thread moved. With this casual flick of his, Lu Heng could effortlessly move even the heaviest boulders, yet why couldn't he budge this peculiar gate? Even the eerie moss clinging to the gate showed no signs of change, still slowly writhing in the gusts of chilling wind. Xiao Ai whispered, let Xiao Ai handle it. Saying so, Xiao Ai directly ignited her inner true energy, striking a palm towards the formidable gate before her. Amidst a thunderous roar, the dark red moss attached to the gate exploded and scattered, with numerous dark red blood splatters simultaneously spurting out. Colliding against an invisible barrier as they approached Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, before eventually cascading down to the ground. After the moss on the door burst open, it revealed the tightly sealed entrance inside, which appeared to be an ordinary household door with no peculiarities. However, despite Xiao Ai's palm possessing astonishing destructive power, capable of demolishing even a mountain, it still failed to shake this gate. Upon witnessing this situation, Lu Heng spoke up, saying, Xiao Ai, why don't you try striking it once more? After saying that, Lu Heng took a couple of steps forward and positioned himself directly in front of the gate, awaiting Xiao Ai's next move. And Xiao Ai didn't keep Lu Heng waiting for long. Just as he positioned himself in front of the gate, Xiao Ai's palm strength struck the gate. Another thunderous boom reverberated, and this time Xiao Ai exerted even stronger force, showcasing nearly her full strength. With the power of Xiao Ai's palm, not to mention a mountain, even a large city like the town of Zhuxian, 
which accommodates hundreds of thousands of people, could be completely obliterated. However, despite the immense power behind this strike, the gate remained completely unaffected. The gate, devoid of any moss clinging to it, stood bare and unaffected, regardless of the formidable force with which Xiao Ai struck it. Even the walls connected to the gate remained entirely untouched. Xiao Ai's palm seemed to land in empty space, inflicting no harm upon this shattered ancient city. Upon witnessing this situation, Xiao Ai's expression displayed a slight astonishment, struggling to comprehend as she uttered, the wolf god, this. With her strike, she couldn't even so much as shake this gate. Could it be that all the structures in this city are forged by ancient divine weapons? Lu Hang, however, shook his head and said, it's an air barrier, unrelated to you. The current situation before his eyes, Lu Hang was all too familiar with. This is nearly identical to the Cloud Sea Sky Palace located behind the Heaven Door. The Heavenly Palace, shrouded in elusive mist, remains ethereal and lacks a tangible presence, no matter how much Lu Hang tries to advance, he cannot reach the interior of the Heavenly Palace and will be isolated beyond an intangible barrier. Because the Heavenly Palace he saw was just an illusion, merely a false projection. It was something that simply didn't exist. How could one possibly step inside? And the city before his eyes was no exception. Although Lu Hang and Xiao Ai have already entered the city, this ancient city has not truly manifested in reality. What they have seen, for the most part, are illusions and false projections. This city still exists somewhere between the realm of reality and illusion. How can one enter an illusory house that doesn't exist in reality? Lu Hang said, let's wait a little longer. Once this city truly manifests in the real world, we will be able to easily break through the doors. With those words, Lu Hang turned around and walked towards the other end of the street. Since he couldn't enter the houses on both sides of the street for the time being, he had no intention of getting entangled. After uncovering the truth of this city, he understood why he couldn't connect with Yu Yu through the Requiem Seal. Lu Hang and the others find themselves in a transient state, as this city exists somewhere between the realms of illusion and reality, beyond the realms of the five elements. Consequently, they have temporarily lost connection with the world of reality. They naturally cannot establish contact with people from the world of reality. Upon the complete descent of this city, Lu Hang will be able to reconnect with Yu Yu. Of course, by that time, this eerie and malevolent ancient city will also unveil its desolate and lifeless facade, unleashing all the concealed killing intent harbored within. One can foresee that the Zhuxian ancient city, at that time, will no longer remain as quiet as it is now. Behind those doorways, it is unlikely that there will truly be emptiness without any creatures emerging. The corpse of divine beings from ancient legends, wandering ghosts, murderous demons those dreadful entities will truly manifest themselves before Lu Hang. However, Lu Hang remains indifferent to these matters. His sole purpose for stepping into this ancient city is to find the woman who bears the visage of Sister Yuan Jun, and then engage in a meaningful conversation with her. Upon the windy long street, Lu Hang proceeded towards the street corner, accompanied by Xiao Ai. While on another street within the city, a woman walking hand in hand with two children, a boy and a girl, turned her head with a perplexed look and gazed back. At the crossroads behind her, there should have been a man in flowing white robes catching up to her, but for some unknown reason, the wolf god inexplicably vanished. In the woman's heart, there was a slight sense of awe. The sudden disappearance of the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain could it be that he had concealed himself in the shadows, preparing to lay hands on her. However, as she slowly walked forward for a while, almost stepping out of the preset ambush area, she still couldn't catch a glimpse of the wolf god emerging from the shadows. With Wu Yo and Wu Yu's siblings holding on to the woman's hands, her palms were drenched in perspiration. She finds herself on the edge of an ambush circle. If she were to continue walking forward and leave the ambush area, there would be no guarantee of her own survival. However, if one were to remain stationary here, wouldn't it indicate that there truly is an ambush, and thus the wolf god would be even less likely to emerge? Chapter, 393 Upon the windy streets, the woman's expression exhibited a slight hint of apprehension. In this moment, however, within the shadows of the street, silently emerged a peculiar and sinister figure. 
It was none other than the eerie demon shadow that had previously appeared in the Fire Pass country. After appearing, the demon shadow spoke directly, saying, The wolf god is no longer in the vicinity, mother ghost, there is no need to be anxious, just relax. Regarding the woman leading the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, the demon shadow spoke as follows, within the detection range of the demon eater lock. The wolf god has already arrived in the street several miles away, seemingly teleporting without a trace. I wonder what happened just now. The demon shadow spoke, its tone filled with confusion, judging by the wolf god's actions, it was clearly lured and about to charge directly towards us, yet the moment it stepped off the street. The entire being vanished into thin air, relocating to another position within the city could it be that there is a cultivator aiding from the shadows? Do they not wish to witness the wolf god falling into our ambush? The words of the demon shadow relieved mother ghost, temporarily alleviating her fears. However, she then expressed concern, saying, the wolf god of Hanyu mountain is already the most formidable existence in the world. Who could possibly surpass him? Who could instantaneously teleport him against his will? If it is true, then the power involved must be terrifying, isn't it? The speculation of Mother Ghost was bone-chillingly terrifying. The demon shadow, however, shook its head and said, It's not that extraordinary. The situation in this city is peculiar, existing somewhere between reality and illusion. Various techniques from reality are restricted here. And many things that are impossible in reality are not considered particularly surprising when they happen here. In this illusionary city, teleporting the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain away is not much of an accomplishment. To achieve the same feat in a real city, now that would be a true manifestation of incredible powers. And if we were to encounter such a cultivator, there would be no need for us to dwell on it, we would simply kneel down and beg for death, for resisting would be utterly futile. The demon shadow looked around and said, since the wolf god has been teleported away, let us catch up and have a look. The demon eater lock continuously tracks its location. If the wolf god cannot find us, we will simply deliver ourselves to him. Judging by its previous reaction, this female image you, mother ghost, created in its mind surely holds a significant presence. Even if it knows that all of this is false, it would still come rushing to investigate. We just need to employ the same old tricks, and it will fall for it just the same. Speaking of this, the demon shadow once again looked at the woman's figure in the middle of the street, assessing her from head to toe and saying, Indeed, she is a beautiful woman with an exceptional temperament and appearance. However, at first glance, she appears to be just an ordinary mortal with nothing particularly special could it be that the wolf god has fallen in love with a mere mortal? The demon shadow couldn't comprehend, no matter how much it pondered why the wolf god of Hanyu mountain would fall in love with a mortal woman. A mere mortal woman, with a lifespan of merely a hundred years, a fleeting time as brief as a sunset glow, how could she hold such a significant place in the heart of the wolf god of Hanyu mountain? Mother Ghost, on the other hand, fidgeted with her clothes uneasily and said somewhat ominously, I don't believe this woman is a mere mortal. Demon Shadow looked curiously at Mother Ghost and asked, Oh. What do you mean? Mother Ghost, with a tense expression, said, transforming the appearance and form of this woman, the previous few times were brief and nothing unusual was detected. However, this time, the duration of the transformation is too long, and I am increasingly feeling fearful. In a trance, it seemed as if there were a pair of eyes silently gazing at me, with every move and action of mine exposed under her watchful gaze. This sensation is truly chilling. When I carefully sense it, however, all of this seems like an illusion, as if there is no presence actually watching me. Mother Ghost rubbed her arms and murmured, this sensation is strikingly reminiscent of the legendary interaction between the celestial beings. It feels as if disrespecting ancient deities and flaunting oneself in their presence has caught the attention of the divine entity my intuition tells me that this woman named Shin Yuanjun is not only a mere mortal but quite possibly an ancient being. Comparable if not surpassing the stature of the wolf god, transcending the realms of ordinariness. The words of Mother Ghost caused a dramatic change in the countenance of the demon shadow. When did you start having such a sensation? Mother Ghost's face turned pale as she said, Ever since entering this city, it has occurred several times even when I called out that woman's name just now, this sensation resurfaced within me. On the long street, 
two sinister demons locked eyes, both witnessing the horror reflected in each other's gaze. Calling out a name and capturing the attention of the divinity, indeed, this is the method employed by ancient deities. It is a supernatural ability possessed only by beings whose stature transcends the ordinary realm. Could it be that this woman called Shin Yuanjun is not deceased? Is she still alive in the mortal realm? According to conventional wisdom, their sinister sorcery of turning illusions into reality, and assuming the appearance of another, is not capable of replicating the existence of the living it can only portray the semblance of the deceased. Since the image of Shin Yuanjun can be conjured by them, it should be that she is someone who has already passed away. So why does it now appear as though she is still alive? Upon the forehead of the demon shadow, droplets of cold sweat trickled down. He gazed at the pallid countenance of Mother Ghost, as well as the siblings she held by her side. After a moment of profound silence, he finally spoke in a measured tone. This city is extraordinarily peculiar, suspended between reality and illusion, where the occurrence of bizarre events is deemed commonplace. Perhaps it is not the woman who remains alive, but rather the reason lies within the essence of this city. The demon shadow made a decisive decision, gritting its teeth as it said, we shall press on and seek the wolf god. We must resolve this with utmost haste. Once the bow is drawn, the arrow cannot be retrieved. Given the current circumstances, regardless of whether the woman is alive or dead, we cannot afford to be merciful. Therefore, why not take a gamble? Mother Ghost also realized this and gritted her teeth as she spoke, saying, regardless of whether this woman is dead or alive, we should give it our all. Regardless of the consequences, if we retreat now, the wolf god will surely not spare us. Exactly. Let's give it our all. The demon shadow gritted its teeth and said, to accomplish our plan before anyone else can react, and escape from this peculiar city. The two malevolent spirits quickly reached a unanimous decision, determined to take a risk and seize that final glimmer of hope. In the instant they turned around, they suddenly realized that the surrounding streets had completely transformed. The streets that once exuded gusts of cold wind around them were no more. Instead, there stood a vast, desolate and blood-stained eerie altar. And in the center of this altar, there stood a dilapidated earthen platform. On top of the platform, a throne, likewise crafted from earthen material, resides. The figure on the throne, casting a cold and detached gaze upon them below, spoke. So it's the demon eater lock you have all been overthinking it if you believe you can plot against the master of the green state cauldron with such a thing. The sudden appearance of King Shadow startled both the demon Shadow and Mother Ghost. In seeing the figure on the throne, they all felt an instinctual urge to escape, to run away as far as possible. This is simply an entity that they cannot provoke. Both wicked creatures instantly fled towards the square without even daring to utter a single word of banter. However, in the instant when the two wicked demons turned and fled, countless blood-red and terrifying hands suddenly emerged from beneath the altar beneath their feet, wildly tearing at them. Towering as the leaders of the demonic path, these two esteemed innate demon cultivators, were now utterly powerless and vanished within the writhing grasp of countless blood-red arms. Even the cries of agony seemed so utterly hopeless. Once everything had settled, what remained on the square were only the motionless and vacant-faced Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, along with a peculiar length of obsidian chains radiating a sinister aura. Upon seeing this fragmented piece of the Demon Eater Lock, the figure on the throne shook their head and said, the Demon Eater Lock is also in a state of disrepair but it will suffice for now. By means of the technique you have accomplished, I can further augment my abilities. It is possible that we may even succeed in eliminating this ominous intruder, the master of the Green State Cauldron. Chapter, 394 On the ancient and sinister altar, the figure on the throne appeared and disappeared in a ghostly manner. After the owner of the tattered Demon Eater Lock vanished, the chain soared into the air and landed directly in the hands of the figure on the throne. And its gaze fell upon the brother and sister standing on the plaza. Now, the brother and sister, with dull expressions and empty gazes, stood on the altar like broken marionettes, motionless. Even after witnessing the terrifying scene just now, the brother and sister remained completely unresponsive. The figure on the throne glanced up and down, then suddenly uttered a surprised exclamation. Hmm. 
These false children, their mother seems to still exist in this world. How peculiar, how peculiar. The master of the green state cauldron, is it possible that he is in a state between life and death? Perhaps it was not appropriate to simply kill those two little demons so decisively. The tone of the figure on the throne carries a hint of regret. However, at this very moment, a woman's indifferent voice suddenly resounded from outside the square. I am the immortal of martial arts, the lord of kings. Lien Tsangqing. The earthly catastrophe has yet to arrive, what audacity do these misshapen fruits and rotten nuts have to cause trouble here? Do they truly think that the celestial desolation realm lacks capable individuals? Take your wretched cauldron and get out of here. The ferocious and brutal voice was filled with a murderous aura and dominance. Simultaneously, a figure emerged from the streets on the edge of the altar and headed straight towards it. Within this city, suspended between reality and illusion, that woman completely disregarded the eerie altar before her and ignored any potential dangers, boldly charging forward. She pays no heed to reason. Witnessing this scene, the shadow of the throne revealed a hint of astonishment. The sudden appearance of this woman went unnoticed until she revealed herself. And as soon as the other party spoke, they exclaimed the two crucial pieces of information, the celestial desolation realm and cauldron, in this aftermath of the earthly catastrophe. A desolate world where the saints have perished and the ancient gods have fallen, could it be that there is an entity that has survived the previous earthly catastrophe and now descends upon us? The immortal of martial arts, the lord of kings such audacious titles, why have I never heard of them before? Could it be a presence even more ancient than itself? The figure on the throne stirred slightly in thought, and the altar within the city silently shifted an inch. Upon seeing Lien Sanqing rushing towards the altar, she took a single step and vanished completely upon reaching the altar. When Lien Sanqing's footsteps landed, she found before her a decrepit ruins of a house. Within the ruins, there were remnants of crumbling walls, charred vegetation, depicting a scene of desolation and decay. And as for that peculiar altar, and even the peculiar shadow of the king upon it, all vanished from her sight, never to be seen again. The peculiar situation caused Lien Qingchu's brows to furrow, intensifying the anger on her face. Hiding yourself. She smacked her palm against the railing next to her, yet despite the force of her strike, the railing remained completely motionless. Apart from the dark red moss that was shaken off from the railing, the seemingly shaky structure remained unscathed. However, Lien Sanqing was not surprised by such a situation it was evident that she had long understood the peculiarity of this city. She turned around to take a look at her surroundings, then proceeded once again towards the central altar in the city. It was evident that she had no intention of giving up at this point. Meanwhile, on a street several miles away from this location, Lu Heng encountered an acquaintance. On the street ahead, a burly man was vigorously smashing the door in front of him. Amidst the surging spiritual energy, the power of each palm strike was sufficient to effortlessly wipe out a great city and demolish several mountains. However, the continuously battered door remained unyielding. Only the resounding roar of the man echoed in the distance. I refuse to believe that I, Ao Tianqing, cannot break down this door today Proud Sky Battle World Technique, Second Move. Proud Sky Dragon's Roar. Roar. Proud Sky Dragon's Roar. Dragon's Roar. The resounding dragon's chant continued, accompanied by the vigorous shouts of powerful men, and the thunderous roar of erupting aura spread far and wide. However hard the man tried, the Grand Gate refused to show him any respect, impervious to his relentless strikes, remaining motionless. Xiao Ai's facial expression showed a hint of astonishment. Does this guy really have no issues in his mind? Xiao Ai murmured. Lu Heng's mouth twitched slightly, leaving him dumbfounded can even fools possess innate cultivation. Lu Heng previously considered Ao Tianqing to be a bit simple-minded and lacking intelligence. Now it appears that this Ao Tianqing not only lacks intelligence, but is utterly brainless. And Lu Heng's and Xiao Ai's appearances, Ao Tianqing quickly noticed as well. He immediately stopped his actions, stood up, spared the unyielding gate from any further assault and turned his gaze towards the other end of the street. After a brief appraisal, he spoke. So it is the senior wolf god of Hanyu Mountain I have heard of your esteemed reputation for a long time. 
I am Ao Tianqing, the renowned and independent figure traversing the heavens and earth. Never did I expect to encounter a venerable predecessor like you in this peculiar city. Truly, fate cannot be hindered. Ao Tianqing said, Since I have encountered a senior like you, it would be better to seize the opportunity rather than wait for an auspicious day. Please, let the esteemed senior accept my challenge as Ao Tianqing, in order to demonstrate the pinnacle of my path. Ao Tianqing spoke, his aura flowing around him, his expression eager and ready, only waiting for Lu Heng's nod to immediately rush over and engage in a fierce battle. Such a brute, leaving Lu Heng helpless. Ao, my brother, don't you take a look at the peculiar and mysterious environment we find ourselves in? Yet, here you are, insisting on battling with me in this place if we both end up injured, wouldn't it be in vain and serve as nothing more than a boon for others? In response to this, Ao Tianqing smiled proudly and said, The wolf god, rest assured. We will not both be injured. I will definitely hold back and ensure that you don't truly get hurt. Regardless, you are a revered senior in the martial world. Let's leave it at that, and no matter the outcome, I, Ao Tianqing, will not discuss today's contest with anyone, for I shall never tarnish your reputation. Upon hearing Ao Tianqing's self-assured words, Xiao Ai furrowed her brows. Lu Heng, on the other hand, remained calm and was not angered by Ao Tianqing's arrogant and boastful attitude. He simply admired this fellow's courage. No wonder he dared to challenge Lian Sangqing. Leaving aside everything else, based solely on this inexplicable self-assurance, he truly deserved the title of being unparalleled. After a moment of contemplation, Lu Heng chuckled and said, Challenging me is not completely out of the question, but your battle with Miss Lian Sangqing is not yet over. Now you have come to seek a fight with me is that really appropriate? If you want to fight, you'll have to wait until you've finished your match with Miss Lian first. Lu Heng casually shifted the focus and said, After all, Miss Lian is an ancient predecessor. You just issued a challenge to her, haven't finished it yet, and now you've turned around and abandoned her to challenge me. Isn't that disrespecting Miss Lian? Therefore, I believe in following a proper order. Since Miss Lian is also in town, you should find her first, have a match with her, and then come to me afterwards. Lu Heng smiled warmly and said, Besides, I am here in the city and cannot escape in the short term what are your thoughts? Chapter 395 Lu Heng's words made Ao Tianqing ponder for a few moments, prompting him to start contemplating cautiously. After a moment of contemplation, Ao Tianqing nodded and said, The words of the wolf god are absolutely right. Therefore, I shall first engage in a battle with the esteemed Lian Sanqing and then come to you once it is concluded. After saying this, Lu Heng, this brash fellow, proceeded to walk towards the distance, leaving Lu Heng behind without any intention of minding him. The objective, astonishingly, was to directly seek out Lian Sangqing. Upon witnessing Ao Tianqing's departure, Lu Heng didn't utter a word of entreaty but instead stood firmly in his original position, watching Ao Tianqing's figure receding into the distance. In the end, Ao Tianqing passed through the intersection and vanished at the far end of the street. And upon witnessing this scene, Lu Heng also comprehended. It appears that among the individuals moving around in this city, only he and Xiao Ai are the normal ones. Ao Tianqing doesn't simply teleport to another location after leaving a street. Why are he and Xiao Ai more unique in comparison? Is it the sinister and eccentric shadow of the throne in the city causing mischief in the dark? Or is it some other reason? There was an intuition in Lu Heng's heart, telling him that this matter should be related to the familiar sensation emanated by the shadow of the throne. On the yellow earth throne at the center of this city, the mysterious presence of unknown origin undoubtedly shares certain similarities with Lu Heng. Upon closer reflection, it becomes evident at the peculiar black shadow that abruptly emerged. Transferring the palm strength of Lian Sangqing and Ao Tianqing to this location and shattering the seal, bears a faint resemblance to the aura of the figure on the throne. Furthermore, having just investigated the situation underground, Lu Heng proceeded directly to the Tsushui village to witness the commotion. Perhaps it was Lu Heng's act of probing the situation within the seal that stirred up something in this city. After Lu Heng departed, something in the city followed closely behind, coincidentally witnessing the clash between Lian Sangqing and Ao Tianqing, and intervened by redirecting their palm strength. 
taking advantage of the chaos, was it able to break the seal. Having roughly speculated the situation, Lu Heng shook his head and continued walking towards the front. If the truth of the matter is indeed as he speculated, it is highly probable that something within this city fears Lu Heng, hence resorting to petty means to restrict his movements and confine him to the outskirts, out of reach of the core area. And such restrictions on his movements from the opposing side will likely cease at the moment when the city's true nature is fully revealed. After all, when the city truly manifests itself and all its murderous intent is fully unveiled, that entity may no longer fear Lu Heng. Although Lu Heng himself is not aware at present, what exactly that entity fears in him, Lu Heng, remains unclear. In any case, it definitely is not the heavenly thunder sword. Lost in thought, Lu Heng left this street with Xiao Ai. Taking a step forward, he vanished around the corner, completely disappearing from sight. When they reappeared, they had already arrived in another area within the city. Here, in a small square, stands a damaged sculpture. However, what catches Lu Heng's attention is not this statue, which bears a striking resemblance to the throne shadow. But rather the few sinister figures that surround the statue. In the small square, Five demonic creatures stood at different angles, forming a formation that encircled the sculpture in the center. Among them, a terrifying monster with red hair, a pale face, and fangs extending from its mouth stood at the center of the formation, reaching out to touch the base of the sculpture, as if pulling something. The sudden appearance of Lu Heng caused a slight silence in the small square. The five demonic creatures all turned their gazes towards the sudden appearance of the white-clad man, as well as the young girl with silver hair and beast-like ears, carrying an ancient bronze sword on her back. The demons fell into a momentary silence. A woman with three heads spoke uncertainly, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain. In the eyes of the female demon, there was a profound sense of astonishment. And when Lu Heng saw this group of demons, he also paused for a moment. Then, he heard the nervous voice of the female demon and smiled as he politely gestured, Indeed, it is I while esteemed masters of the demonic path gather here. May I have the privilege of being a bystander to discuss any plans to subvert the righteous path? Could Lu Heng have the opportunity to listen in? Lu Heng's smile was incredibly gentle. However, as soon as these words were uttered, the faces of all five demons changed drastically. The red-haired and green-faced ferocious monster roared angrily, jumping up and exclaimed, This is an outrageous provocation brothers, retreat. After saying that, the red-haired and green-faced monster immediately fled towards the distance. And the other four monsters didn't hesitate, in fact, they ran even faster than it. In the blink of an eye, only Lu Hang and Xiao Ai remained in the empty small square. The five demons split into five directions and quickly disappeared from Lu Heng's sight. This left Lu Heng quite helpless, I didn't intend to kill you why run so fast like this. Given the inexplicable situation within the city, Lu Heng is completely incapable of handling this group of demons without unleashing the power of the heavenly thunder sword. At the very least, these are five innate evil demons, making them a leading force in the demonic realm wherever they may be. Even the combined strength of the five demons surpasses the power of the three demon generals and five elders summoned by the lord of all demons in the green hell cave. Lu Heng merely wanted to feign indifference and probe the intentions of these demons before leaving without any intention of initiating violence. After all, engaging in a confrontation would be futile, as he is incapable of overcoming them. Unexpectedly, this group of demons lacked the majestic demeanor of prominent figures in the demonic realm, fleeing decisively and without any hesitation. The plan for Lu Heng to gather information instantly miscarried. He even wanted to inquire about the matter concerning Sun Yen. Standing helplessly in the empty small square, Lu Heng fell silent for a moment, letting out a sigh. It seems that the time has come for the resurrection of the heavenly demon lord. As the voice fell, Lu Heng's entire Heavenly Thunder Dao foundation dissipated, while the Requiem seal emitted an immensely potent death chi. The once ethereal and celestial Lu Heng, clad in flowing white robes, instantaneously transformed into an eerie and ghostly presence. Even that once gentle smile, now appeared inexplicably sinister and terrifying, sending shivers down one's spine. After once again altering his appearance with a clever illusion, Lu Heng finally directed his gaze towards the sculpture before him. 
Although those five demonic creatures escaped, this sculpture remains in its original place. Lu Heng approached the sculpture, but when he came within five zhang of it, he sensed an intangible barrier that prevented any living being from approaching this artwork. Only then did Lu Heng understand why those demons had formed a formation, and why the movements of the fiendish creature with a grimacing face and bared fangs at the center of the formation appeared so strenuous. Without rashly breaching this invisible barrier, Lu Heng first circled around the periphery of the sculpture, carefully observing it in detail. In Lu Heng's eyes, this sculpture appeared in a state of utter ruin, bearing the traces of weathering and fading, rendering its original form indiscernible. However, judging from the situation in this small square, it must have once been a sacred and peaceful place, bustling with activity. And this sculpture, undoubtedly, must have been carved with divine charm, worshipped and revered by countless people. However, now all these things have been erased by the passage of time. What Lu Hang could see were only broken and blurred statues, with only rough outlines remaining, as well as crumbling walls and a desolate square splattered with pitch-black stains of blood, silently recounting the glory of the past. Chapter 396 The Wolf God, This Sculpture Beside Lu Hang, Xiao Ai softly said, it seems somewhat peculiar. Lu Hang nodded and said, Indeed, it does appear somewhat peculiar, but it is not a living being, so there is no need to be concerned. After saying that, Lu Hang directly stepped into the invisible barrier. A tremendous pressure immediately surged from all directions. However, a level of eerie deathly aura coalesced around Lu Hang, effectively shielding him from the incoming invisible pressure. Lu Hang, with slightly sluggish movements, gradually approached the sculpture. Beneath the pedestal of the sculpture, he found the object that had been grasped by the crimson-haired and green-faced demon. It turned out to be a piece of tattered silk cloth. On the dark cyan silk cloth, there emanated a chilling and piercing sword intent. Even without personally touching it, Lu Hang could feel the ominous and malevolent sword intent as if it were a thorn piercing his back. Inside this sculpture's pedestal, is such a peculiar hidden object? With a slight frown, Lu Hang refrained from reaching out to touch the piece of silk cloth. Instead, he carefully observed it for a moment before gracefully withdrawing and returning to Xiao Ai's side. This scene left Xiao Ai somewhat perplexed, Wolf God. Lu Heng's expression turned serious as he stated, I have become aware of the nefarious plot orchestrated by those malevolent beings. There must be more than just this one small square like this within the city. And within the pedestal of each statue in every location, lies a fragment of the sword formation. That group of malevolent beings intends to seize all the sword formations within the city, and use the assembled formations to acquire the ancient war swords hanging on the four city gates. They aim to break the seals and unleash the primordial menace lurking within. With Xiao Ai in tow, Lu Hang proceeded directly towards the distance, we must thwart them. If we allow these malevolent creatures within the city to break free from their confinement, it will undoubtedly lead to a calamitous event. The malevolent figure seated upon the throne of Yellow Earth is the most formidable fiend Lu Hang has ever encountered in his entire life. In comparison, the likes of the Green Hell Cave and the Lord of All Demons are merely child's play. Such a dreadful thing must never be released to the outside. Furthermore, that thing bears some resemblance to Lu Hang, and if it were to be unleashed, Lu Hang would be the first to face its wrath. Not to mention the well-being of the world, but even for the sake of Lu Hang himself, it is imperative to thwart those malevolent beings. The figures of Lu Hang and Xiao Ai hurriedly dashed through the city. Within the ancient and dilapidated city walls, the flow of escape was obstructed and the running pace was hindered. However, Lu Hang no longer leisurely strolled, but rather dashed swiftly with Xiao Ai, quickly traversing one street after another. The figures of him and Xiao Ai flickered hastily within the city. With every street traversed, they would abruptly shift to another area of the city. But after each flickering shift, Lu Hang, undeterred, continued to stride forward, flickering once again after crossing the end of the street. Within a quarter of an hour, Lu Hang covered almost half of the dilapidated city, his figure appearing throughout thousands of distinct streets within the city. Ultimately, when Lu Hang departed from the end of the street for the 3420th time and arrived in a new area, he caught sight of the figures of those demonic creatures. In the same manner, it was a desolate and dilapidated small square, 
featuring a weathered statue whose original form was no longer discernible, accompanied by that group of demonic creatures gathered in formation around the statue. Upon witnessing this scene, Lu Heng remained silent without uttering a single superfluous word, promptly summoning forth the requiem seal. Buzz. With a muffled sound, the majestic yellow seal that had flown out into the void suddenly trembled, unleashing a chilling force that swept through. Upon Lu Hang's proximity, the two demonic beings let out a muffled groan and collapsed to the ground, their bodies turning limp and lifeless. As for the remaining three demonic creatures, upon witnessing this scene, they were all terrified to the point where their hair stood on end. Not even a trace of intention to rescue their comrades remained within them they promptly fled into the distance. Where did this demon come from? How can his method be so terrifying? In an instant, two mighty innate demons were swiftly defeated. This move frightened the remaining three demonic creatures to the extent that they didn't even dare utter a single fierce word, but instead fled directly. Afraid that if they ran away, they would be caught up by this sudden creature that emerged to kill people. And Lu Hang, upon seeing the remaining three demonic creatures escape, didn't pursue them. As the two demonic creatures fell down, their physical bodies limp and lifeless, a chilling and formidable aura emanated from their souls that flew out from within their bodies. Even if the souls of innate demon cultivators were forcefully shaken out by the Requiem Seal, they were by no means feeble beings devoid of any means of retaliation. They still possessed a terrifying murderous aura and an extraordinary presence. However, the souls of these two demonic creatures, being fearful of Lu Heng's abilities, didn't immediately attack upon revealing themselves. Instead, almost instinctively, they gathered together before addressing Lu Heng simultaneously. Esteemed cultivator, from which sect do you hail? Why have you attacked us? Are you also here for the ancient formation diagram? The two demonic creatures exclaimed with uncertain astonishment. Lu Heng, in turn, gazed at them and said, do you have any knowledge of the sealed object within the city? How dare you recklessly manipulate this formation diagram are you not afraid that the things inside the city might escape and wreak havoc upon the world? The interrogation by Lu Heng left the two demonic creatures dumbfounded. Why why should we concern ourselves with whether it will cause harm to the world? Yes, exactly. Isn't obtaining the ancient formation diagram sufficient? What does it have to do with us? The two demonic creatures were completely unable to comprehend why the cultivator of the dark path before them would utter such righteous and resolute words could this unexpectedly bizarre cultivator be a madman. The demonic creatures looked at the lifeless Lu Hang with overwhelming terror. What is even more terrifying than encountering an unfamiliar cultivator of the dark path, is encountering a deranged cultivator of the dark path. Although the cultivation of the dark path is often associated with madness, the dark path cultivator before us is even more insanely deranged than the usual madman of the dark path. If it weren't for the inexplicable inability of the soul to return to the body, the two demonic creatures would have long fled in fear, and would not dare to stay for even a moment longer with the lunatic before them. After being questioned by the two demonic creatures, Lu Heng fell into a brief moment of contemplative silence. Only then realizing that his current image was that of a practitioner of the dark path, and not the revered wolf god of Hanyu Mountain in the eyes of the people. He also discerned that this group of demonic creatures didn't care about the existence of the seal within the city they were solely interested in the four battle swords adorning the city gates. In that case, Lu Heng decided not to waste words with the two demonic creatures. Although currently unable to establish a connection with the netherworld and send these two demonic creatures into oblivion, Lu Heng can still vanquish them here with the suppressive power of the Requiem Seal over their souls. At most, it will only consume some time. In the void, the profound and yellow-hued Requiem Seal resounded once again. With a thought in his mind, Lu Heng unleashed a cold and desolate jet-black radiance from the Requiem Seal, directly sweeping towards the demonic spirit ahead. The two demonic beings were greatly alarmed and hastily unleashed their demonic power, attempting to resist. However, at the moment when the chilling ray of death swept through, it shattered the demon's resistance, sending the two primordial malevolent spirits flying and crashing heavily against the nearby wall. Upon the demonic spiritual bodies, some slight cracks appeared. The anguish of their souls being wounded caused the two demons to let out piercing and agonized cries. Madman! 
The two furious demons let out wailing cries, but as the cries echoed, the requiem seal buzzed once again, and the chilling ray of death swept through once more. The two souls originally attached to the wall were once again sent flying and crashed heavily against the opposite side of the street's wall. Immediately, another round of piercing mournful cries resounded. The cracks on the bodies of the two demonic spirits have multiplied. The mighty souls of the two innate demonic beings were completely helpless under the power of the Requiem Seal. Chapter 397 Upon the long street, incessant cries of demons echoed. Lu Hain, who, in the end, had not yet reached the innate realm, found it challenging to inflict harm upon these two innate demons by means of conventional magical techniques. He could only rely on the Requiem Seal to gradually erode and annihilate the souls of these malevolent creatures. However, the piercing and mournful cries of these two demons attracted unexpected individuals. Who is wailing there? In the instant when the voice of a woman resounded, the long street suddenly fell into silence. Lu Heng, who was emanating an aura of lifelessness, instinctively halted his movements. And under the requiem seal, the two demonic souls that had been relentlessly battered and smashed by the sweeping waves of deathly light. Their bodies covered in cracks, on the verge of shattering at any moment, finally found a moment of respite. They huddled in the corner, filled with an immense fear as they gazed upon the madman of darkness before them, and the crimson-clad woman who appeared suddenly not far away, unaware of what had occurred. At the end of the long street, Lien Sangqing, adorned in a crimson garb, appeared less composed than the two demonic beings. Upon catching sight of the lifeless Lu Hang, her eyebrows furrowed instantly, her countenance filled with astonishment and anger. The Heavenly Demon Lord On the long street, the chilly gusts of wind howled incessantly. With fury in her eyes, Lien Sangqing, locked her gaze upon Lu Hang, gritted her teeth and uttered the words, You haven't died? Upon the long street, echoed the laughter of a woman gone mad. Ha 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 heaven aids me too. Heaven aids me too. If you haven't died by the hands of Lu Hang, it shall be my duty to slay you, you scoundrel. Ha ha ha. Amidst the hysterical laughter of the woman in red, the two demonic beings in the corner grew increasingly terrified in their expressions. It's done. Another lunatic. Upon witnessing Lien Sangqing's intense reaction, Lu Hang's heart skipped a beat, and he hastily responded, You've mistaken me, I am not the heavenly demon lord. Lien Sangqing, however, sneered repeatedly and said, You exude an aura of death, coupled with your persistent deception you say you are not the heavenly demon lord. Do you take me for a fool? If you claim not to be the heavenly demon lord, Lien Sangqing said, then I shall give you a chance. Unveil your deception and let me see your true form. If you are not the heavenly demon lord, I will immediately let you go. Lien Sangqing's gaze fixedly locked onto Lu Hang, who stood on the long street. The deeply engraved gaze filled with hatred sent shivers down Lu Hang's spine. Clearly, it was evident that not only were the heavenly demon lord and Lien Sangqing familiar with each other, but they were also true mortal enemies, the kind who wished to devour one another's flesh and drink each other's blood. Lu Hang felt a cry of bitterness in his heart, experiencing an unbearable headache. If he were not Lu Hang, removing the illusion would have sufficed. But unfortunately, he was indeed Lu Hang. The identity hidden beneath the illusion, as well as the true identity beneath the illusion, happened to be the very person that Lien Sangqing intends to kill. Regardless of which identity Lu Hang assumes, there is no possibility of reconciliation today how unfortunate it is to have encountered Lien Sangqing, this formidable woman, precisely at this moment of ill fate. Deep inside, Lu Hang secretly lamented as he ultimately, under the scrutiny of Lien Sangqing and the two wicked demons, dispersed his cold aura, revealing his true countenance. When Lu Hang, dressed in elegant white attire, appeared on the streets, both wicked demons were left dumbfounded, utterly startled by his presence. The Wolf God of Hanyu Mountain In this moment, they finally understood why this cultivator of the dark path could utter such righteous and resolute words. So it turns out this fellow is indeed a person of the righteous path. The appearance of wickedness is merely an illusion disguised by him. At the end of the vast street, when Lien Sangqing caught a glimpse of Lu Hang's true visage, she couldn't help but momentarily freeze in astonishment. Subsequently, a brilliant smile emerged. 
Oh, isn't this the wolf god Lu from Hanyu Mountain? What gust of wind brought you here? Don't tell me, the heavenly demon lord that I encountered before in the green hell cave was also your disguise. In an instant, Lien Sangqing deduced the karma, while Lu Heng forced a series of bitter smiles, yet also attempted to take advantage of the opportunity to clarify the misunderstanding. It is indeed I who disguised myself, said Lu Heng, everything was a misunderstanding, the heavenly demon lord was a scheme devised from the very beginning to deceive the lord of all demons. Therefore, it is also untrue that I took Miss Lien away first, or killed the heavenly demon lord well, now that the misunderstanding has been cleared up, Miss Lien should be able to let me off, shouldn't she? Lu Heng had a sincere expression on his face. However, Lien Sangqing burst into repeated cold laughter and said, let you off. What a joke. I publicly declared my intention to kill you in front of everyone, and now you're telling me that it was all a ruse to deceive me, and I should just let it slide. Wouldn't that make me a laughingstock? Lien Sangqing, with a piercing gaze, said, since I have declared my intention to kill you, I will certainly do so. I will not renege on my words. As for the so-called misunderstanding how you possess the cultivation method of the heavenly demon lords, demon sutra. Dot. Do you dare to tell me that you have no connection with it? Do you think I am a fool? Tell me. Where did you obtain the demon sutra? Has the heavenly demon lord already been annihilated by your hand? The questioning from Lien Sangqing left Lu Heng feeling helpless. He said, the heavenly demon lord has not been annihilated by me, but rather sealed within a divine demon burial ground, alongside numerous ancient demons. It was purely by accident that I obtained the demon sutra, when I mistakenly entered that burial ground. I truly have no connection with the heavenly demon lord. Lu Heng spoke the truth, but little did he expect that Lien Sangqing, upon hearing his words, would suddenly burst into a contemptuous laughter. She said, the divine demon tomb is the emperor's burial ground for countless beings, and it is an absolute dead place. It wouldn't be surprising if the heavenly demon lord were buried within it. However, for you to enter that tomb and still come out alive. Do you take me for a fool to be deceived? Lien Sangqing's voice was filled with anger, tell me. How did you acquire the demon sutra? Where exactly is that scoundrel, the heavenly demon lord? If you don't provide a clear explanation today, I assure you, you will beg for death but it will be denied to you. Amidst the chilly gusts of wind, Lien Sangqing approached Lu Heng directly. It was evidently an eruption of her anger that had reached its limit, no longer able to be restrained. Upon witnessing this situation, Lu Heng felt a deep sense of helplessness, realizing that words alone could no longer bring calmness to this woman who resembled a madwoman. He took a step back, saying, Xiao Ai, the heavenly thunder sword. With a casual remark, Lien Sangqing, who was originally furious, instantly retreated several meters, maintaining a safe distance while assuming a defensive stance. Very well. Today, I shall have the pleasure of experiencing your Lu Heng. The woman's hysterical roar of fury reverberated throughout half of the city. As Lien Sangqing stepped back, creating distance and assuming a defensive posture, Lu Heng, who had assumed a sword stance, swiftly and without looking back, fled with Xiao Ai. In a blink of an eye, the two of them vanished at the end of the street, their whereabouts unknown. This scene drove Lien Sangqing into a furious frenzy. However, within this peculiar city, she found herself unable to easily pursue the scent like she could in the real world. This time, losing the trail meant truly losing it. Lien Sangqing, who had lost her target of hatred, clenched her fist slightly and remained silent for a while. Then, she slowly turned her head towards the two demonic spirits huddled in the corner. She said in a cold voice, Do you find it amusing? In the corner, the two demonic spirits huddled and trembled, instantly freezing in place. They weren't laughing at all. However, the woman in the crimson attire had already begun to approach them slowly. At that moment, the two demonic spirits were enveloped by an immense and desperate shadow. Chapter 398 Lu Hain was not aware of the despairing emotions of the two demonic spirits. At this moment, he had already distanced himself from the neighborhood where Lien Sanqing resided, and found himself on another street within the city. On the right side of this long street, there is a dried-up riverbed. Along the banks of the riverbed, willow trees are planted. 
Once upon a time, this place must have been adorned with luxuriant willow trees, shimmering emerald waves, and breathtaking beauty. However, in the current state of withered decay and ruins, the riverbed has long dried up, revealing an unsightly sight in the air. The two rows of willow trees, once graceful, have twisted and withered, resembling the contorted and lifeless carcasses awkwardly positioned along the sides of the riverbed. After the arrival of Lu Hang and Xiao Ai, they glanced around to confirm that Lien Sangqin didn't pursue them. Xiao Ai exclaimed, The wolf god, do we need to continue chasing those wicked demons? Lu Hang said, Naturally, we must pursue them, for we cannot allow those wicked demons to disrupt the formation within the city. If they were to take away the sword formation, it would surely result in utter chaos. Without lingering in place, Lu Heng hastened towards the distant street corner with Xiao Ai, attempting to annihilate the demons before they could steal all the formation diagrams. Meanwhile, at a dilapidated courtyard somewhere within the city, the three escaped demons regrouped once again. After exchanging glances, astonishment appeared on their faces. Have the demon of all trees and the king of ember perished? These five demons previously made a blood oath, pledging unity and loyalty during this expedition to Xuxian town. By relying on this blood oath, they can roughly sense the positions of the others as well. This is the reason why they can swiftly regroup despite fleeing in all directions throughout the city. However, as of now, within their perception, the demon of all trees and the king of ember, who also made the blood oath, have already perished. Could it be that the sinister cultivator who just appeared earlier was also targeting the sword formation? Questioned the ferocious green-eyed demon with a crimson mane, a green complexion, and menacing fangs, filled with uncertainty. The three-headed female demon cultivator, Helian Kue, furrowed her brow and said, The news of the sword formation is known only to the five of us, and the outside world is unaware. How could that person possibly know? Helian Kue and the green-eyed demon both looked towards the rebel wanderer standing beside them. This operation was orchestrated by the wanderer, the instigator of this rebellion. The four demonic cultivators were all convinced by its persuasion to join, and it was also the strongest among the five, leading them all. Given the unexpected turn of events, Helian Kue and the green-eyed demon naturally defer to the rebel wanderer as their leader. In the chilling cold wind, the rebel wanderer said, that sinister cultivator is enveloped in an eerie aura, truly an unprecedented level of darkness. This humble wanderer has never encountered someone so consumed by death yet still alive. Perhaps it is an ancient creature that survived from the primordial era, as it was injured during the earthly catastrophe and could only linger on, hence its overwhelming aura of death. The rebel wanderer looked once again at the ancient city before them, and said, with a single strike, the demon of all trees and the king of ember fell inexplicably, yet took so long to perish. Clearly, while it possesses uncanny preemptive techniques, its abilities of annihilation are not formidable, not to the extent where we are unable to resist. In our next encounter, there will be no need for us to flee. We shall engage in a direct confrontation with it and it may not emerge victorious. The words of the rebel wanderer made both Helian Kue and the green-eyed demon reflect upon their actions. Indeed, while the techniques of that sinister cultivator may be incredibly intimidating, the fact that it took so long to kill the demon of all trees and the king of ember truly reveals the difference in their true abilities. Once they made their decision, they no longer felt anxious, and proceeded to leave this dilapidated courtyard, heading towards other areas within the city. This ancient and vast ancient city is peculiar in its nature. Even the divine consciousness of innate cultivators is compressed within a radius of ten meters, rendering them unable to perceive anything beyond. Therefore, they still needed to search for the twelve squares where the sword formation was concealed. However, as the three demonic creatures departed from the dilapidated courtyard and returned to the street, there suddenly appeared a peculiar black figure in the nearby shadows of the street. The figure was clad in a black robe, slender in stature, yet the features of their face remained concealed within the shadows cast by the robe, making it impossible to discern their appearance. Moreover, faintly but discernibly, this dark figure emitted an immensely strong aura of death, reminiscent of someone on the verge of dying. Upon sighting this dark figure, the three demonic creatures immediately formed a formation and focused intently, awaiting what was to come. Who are you? 
the three heads of Heli and Kuei simultaneously exclaimed in unison. These three heads, respectively, possess a youthful and adorable girl's countenance, a seductively enchanting woman's visage, and a benevolent and amiable elderly face. The three heads spoke simultaneously, and their voices resounded in unison, evoking an inexplicable sense of horror in those who heard it. However, the peculiarities of Heli and Kuei were ineffective at frightening the dark figure blocking their path ahead. The dark figure coldly gazed at the three demonic creatures, remaining silent for a while, before turning around and walking away. Their pace was slow, and after taking a few steps forward, they unexpectedly glanced back in this direction before resuming their journey. This situation, astonishingly, seemed to suggest that the three demonic creatures were meant to follow it. Such a peculiar situation was even more unusual than the sudden appearance and attack from the sinister cultivator they encountered earlier. Helian Kuei and the green-eyed demon were bewildered, while the rebel wanderer furrowed their brow and said, Let's go. Follow it. Speaking thus, the rebel wanderer promptly followed suit. Upon witnessing this, Helian Kuei and the green-eyed demon had no choice but to follow along, yet they were filled with deep trepidation. In hushed tones, they spoke, Wanderer, this dark figure's arrival is truly ominous. The aura of death emanating from it surpasses even that of the sinister cultivator we encountered earlier could it be that they are somehow connected? The rebel wanderer shook their head and said, They are not affiliated. We encountered this dark figure before, precisely the mysterious entity that interfered with Lien Sangqing and Ao Tianqing's bloodshed outside of the Tsushue village earlier. It is evident that it has a deep connection to this place, perhaps even being one of the ancient malevolent creatures sealed within the city. Our plan to obtain the ancient sword formation is greatly beneficial to them as well. Therefore, it is not surprising that they have revealed themselves to guide us. The true ones to be guarded against are the sinister cultivator who suddenly attacked us, the wolf god of Hanyu Mountain, and the eccentric Lien Sangqing and Ao Tianqing. Following at a distance behind the enigmatic dark figure, the three wicked demons soon caught sight of a dilapidated small square emerging on the horizon. And at the moment when this small square appeared, the mysterious dark figure, who had been walking ahead of them all along, let out a muffled groan as if struck by some kind of heavy blow, and dissipated directly into the air. Upon witnessing this scene, the rebel wanderer reaffirmed their earlier speculation. Indeed. This dark figure is an ancient entity sealed within the city. Without bothering about the fate of the dissipating dark figure, the three wicked demons proceeded directly towards the nearby small square, swiftly encircling the statue at its center from three different directions. The rebel wanderer exuded a strong aura of rebellion and proclaimed, I implore both of you to lend me your assistance and help me enter. The formation that was originally meant to be composed of five individuals, now reduced to only three, poses a tremendous challenge for the three wicked demons. However, in the presence of the ancient sword formation, there is no possibility of retreat. Chapter, 399 Amidst the ruins of the ancient city, the figures of Lu Hang and Xiao Ai flickered ceaselessly. They hurriedly dashed through the city, departing from one street after another, arriving at various neighborhoods, some unfamiliar, some familiar. However, this time Lu Hang and his companions dashed through the city for half an hour, shuttling nearly ten thousand times. Not to mention encountering the group of wicked demons again, they hadn't even caught a glimpse of the figures of Lien Sangqing and Ao Tianqing. After the 9,767th relocation, Lu Heng suddenly came to a stop, no longer proceeding forward. Noticing the wolf god coming to a halt, Xiao Ai by his side expressed slight surprise, saying, Wolf God. Lu Heng, however, furrowed his brow and raised his hand, gesturing for her to stay silent. The street where they currently stood was a long street that had already descended three times before. At the same time, it was also the street where Xiao Ai had previously attempted to break down a door but failed to open the door to the roadside house. Lu Hang stood before the doorway that had been violently pounded by Xiao Ai earlier, observing the door that was now covered in dark red protrusions, unsettlingly resembling the innards of an animal, and he spoke slowly. The speed of the seal breaking is continuously accelerating. On the front of the door, there were originally numerous dark red mosses, but they were all shattered by Xiao Ai earlier. However, the bare door is now covered in dark red flesh buds. 
Since the buds are short, from a distance, it still doesn't appear strange. But upon closer inspection, one can vaguely sense the entire door and even the entire wall subtly pulsating in silence. Resembling convulsing animal viscera. Lu Hang and the others were no longer standing within a dilapidated ancient city, but rather, it felt as if they were standing within the abdomen of a repulsive creature. The dirt road beneath their feet was no longer cold and rigid, but instead, it began to feel slightly warm and supple. It seems that even the dirt road, which connects one block after another, is silently undergoing a transformation towards resembling internal organs. Lu Heng said, it's those evil creatures within this half an hour, those evil creatures must have obtained a considerable number of the sword formations, thus causing the seal to break faster and faster. Lu Heng's brow furrowed tightly. Because this speed is abnormally fast. Previously, those evil creatures were also wandering within the city, but their attempts were thwarted by Lu Heng twice. The evil creatures never obtained the sword formation. However, now that half an hour has passed, Lu Heng not only failed to encounter those evil creatures even once, but their pace of breaking the seal also accelerated relentlessly. In the depths of darkness, it seemed as if something was secretly aiding those evil creatures. Meanwhile, Xiao Ai also revealed a worried expression, realizing what the wolf god was concerned about. Just as Xiao Ai was about to speak, the entire city suddenly shook violently, as if it was struck by a massive earthquake. The buildings and structures within the city, along with the sandy roads, were all shaking furiously, causing even Lu Heng and Xiao Ai, who were within it, to sway incessantly. However, it seemed as though their feet had taken root in the ground, unaffected by the upheaval of the earth. The cold and chilling wind howled fiercely through the city, growing increasingly piercing and powerful. Not to mention ordinary mortals, even the average cultivator who has embarked upon the path of cultivation finds it difficult to stand firm in the increasingly piercing and tumultuous cold wind. However, strangely enough, despite the terrifying gale that was capable of destroying houses and leveling structures, it didn't have any impact on the ruins and remnants within the city. Even a broken wooden plank within the city remained unmoved, unable to be lifted by the force of the wind. The increasingly terrifying cold wind was undoubtedly directed towards the living beings within the city. However, although this cold wind is formidable, it cannot harm Lu Heng and Xiao Ai. In the cold and fierce gust of wind, Lu Heng murmured, the seal has been broken. Within this raging cold wind, Lu Heng could distinctly sense a certain illusory entity being violently dismantled. In the end, when the raging wind ceased and the earth no longer trembled, the city before Lu Hang and his companions had undergone a complete transformation in appearance. The once cold, solid, compacted Lus Road has now transformed into a writhing, bloody, and soft organ. The gates and courtyard walls lining the streets have turned into grotesque, repulsive, and oddly glistening internal organs. These organs are stacked closely together, constantly writhing, radiating a chilling and eerie aura. It seems that within each organ, there lies a malevolent demon. And the sky above, too, underwent a transformation, turning into a pitch-black gloom. Within the city, Lu Heng felt a subtle stirring of thoughts, sensing the familiar aura of the netherworld as this repulsive and grotesque strange city truly descended into the realm of the netherworld. A faint film of blood-red hue unfurled above the city, forming a barrier that isolated it from the outside netherworld. Yet, the one who wields the Requiem Seal, Lu Heng, still recognized the outer realm of the netherworld. However, at this moment, Lu Heng had no time to attend to the external netherworld. His gaze halted upon the center of the city. There, an eccentric altar ascended and suspended itself in the air above the city. The elevated yellowish soil platform on the altar was eerily illuminated by the bloody glow emanating from the filmy blood-hued membrane in the air. Even the figure seated upon the throne appeared increasingly terrifying. However, what captivated Lu Heng's gaze and rendered it immovable was not the ascending altar nor the figure seated on the throne. But rather the colossal bronze cauldron suspended above the altar. With various patterns depicting mountains, rivers, birds, beasts, and limitless sentient beings, as well as deities standing atop the clouds, deeply imprinted upon the body of that bronze cauldron. While the most striking feature was the two prominent characters, branded onto the base of the bronze cauldron. You state. 
Lu Heng murmured these two characters, his expression filled with immense astonishment. While he knew that the figure on the throne shared certain similarities with him, he never expected the similarity to be this both of them possessed a nine provinces cauldron. Xiao Ai, too, was astounded by the sudden appearance of the colossal cauldron, yet she beheld much more within it. The wolf god! exclaimed Xiao Ai, as she said, Wuyo and Wuyu, they are there. Xiao Ai's words finally drew Lu Heng's gaze away from the grand cauldron, and it fell upon the altar. Indeed, at the base of the elevated yellow earth platform in the center of the altar, stood two children, a boy and a girl, with vacant expressions. Surprisingly, it was the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings who had previously left. However, Xin Yuan Jun, who had previously been holding the hands of the siblings, was nowhere to be found. Upon witnessing this scene, Lu Heng swiftly sprung to his feet and flew towards the altar. Radiant bolts of lightning flashed within the city, illuminating the surroundings as Lu Heng, at last, gained the ability to soar through the sky using his flight technique after the city materialized in reality. Carrying Xiao Ai across the vast expanse, Lu Heng descended directly into the void outside the altar, addressing the enigmatic figure seated upon the throne. Are these siblings the ones you released? Lu Heng couldn't comprehend. Why are these malevolent creatures within the city not properly detained, and how could they have started meddling in the outside world and targeting him years ago? Upon the throne, the figure shook its head and said, It was not my doing, but the work of the two little demons. However, I have already exterminated them, and now I am taking charge of these two children. However, you knowingly confronted these misleading youngsters, despite the danger the master of the green state cauldron, your foolishness astounds me. Chapter, 400 In the ancient city known as Zhuxian Town, at the heart of it all, the figure on the throne spoke with an indifferent tone. Although this evil technique may not be sufficient to kill you, I have already used the Ye's state cauldron to specially refine it. Now, the karmic vows and powers embedded within these two little children are sufficient to annihilate you completely. As the voice of the master of the U State Cauldron resounded, the twin siblings, who were standing on the edge of the Lust platform, simultaneously turned their gazes towards Lu Heng. Within their hollow and lifeless eyes, Lu Heng's figure was reflected. The colossal Ye State Cauldron trembled intensely, and a rich essence of living beings overflowed from the cauldron's mouth, directly entwining the translucent and solid forms of the siblings. From the vacant expressions on the faces of the siblings, simultaneously emerged piercing screams of agony. Father! Lu Heng, father! The Wuyo and Wuyu siblings lamented, we are mere illusions. We should not exist in this world. Within the siblings' painful wails, the vibrant life force intertwining through their bodies transformed into an eerie and chilling glow, manifesting as a dim beam of light soaring towards Lu Heng. As the enigmatic beam approached, Lu Heng's figure unexpectedly trembled. Though he remained motionless, the surface of his body seemed to ripple incessantly like water disturbed by a gust of wind, undulating with waves. It seemed as if it was about to dissipate. In a critical moment, a streak of blue light suddenly flew into the city. Lian Sangqing's icy cold voice resounded throughout the city. The master of the Ye State Cauldron. A dog-like creature, daring to be arrogant before me. The earthly catastrophe has not yet arrived, when has the celestial desolation realm, you waste-like cauldron, become so arrogant? Perish! In Lian Sangqing's icy and wrathful tone, she raised her hand directly and brought it down with a palm strike onto the enigmatic figure seated upon the throne. However, at this moment, ripples of disturbance rippled through the void, and a chilling sword energy abruptly shattered the space, as four ferocious ancient war swords emerged from the realm of nothingness. The four war swords surged and swept through, transforming into an unparalleled sword formation, directly intercepting Lian Sangqing's irresistible palm strike from afar. The figures of the rebel wanderer, Helian Kuei, and the green-eyed demon materialized from the void, each holding a corner of the sword formation, standing in three different directions. The three of them joined forces to unleash this ancient sword formation, astonishingly relying on the power of the four war swords to intercept Lian Sangqing. Upon witnessing this scene, Lian Sangqing's gaze grew increasingly frigid. 
Lien Sanqing's icy gaze swept over the three demons who had already surrounded her in the center of the sword formation, as she coldly uttered, You, as beings of the celestial desolation realm, dare to collude with this wretched creature. Do you comprehend the significance of the Ye's state cauldron? The icy interrogation from Lien Sanqing brought forth laughter from the green eyed demon. Ha ha ha, what does that cauldron signify? Does it have any relevance to us? As fellow members of the demonic sect, we should stand united when facing a group of self-righteous cultivators. Within the ancient sword formation, no matter how formidable your abilities may be, today shall be your downfall. The audacious provocation from the green-eyed demon made Lien Sanqing furious, but she couldn't help but burst into laughter in response. Within the sword formation, the woman in the red attire burst into laughter and exclaimed, Ignorant fool! Even though my cultivation has not fully recovered, Today I am more than capable of tearing apart this feeble sword formation of yours. In the midst of the rampant surging of countless sword energies, the figure of the woman in the red attire madly surged forward, occasionally dodging the sweeping attacks of the four battle swords that came her way. However, it can be seen that even though Lien Sangqing's figure was elusive, she still struggled to break through the ancient sword formation filled with surging sword energies. However, at the edge of the altar in the void, Lu Heng's situation underwent a new change. As the cold beam of light flew towards him, a small bronze cauldron suddenly soared out from Lu Heng's sleeve. The small cauldron, originally only a palm-sized object, but as it flew out from the sleeve, it expanded in the wind, instantly transforming into a magnificent large cauldron over ten meters tall. On the surface of the cauldron, there were also imprints of the heavens, earth, mountains, rivers, and all living beings. The two prominent characters Green State engraved on the bottom emitted an undeniable presence, which one dare not overlook. This Green State cauldron, it seems even more terrifying than the Ye State cauldron suspended above the throne. Moreover, from within the Green State cauldron, there also emanated an immensely rich vitality. Countless streams of vibrant life essence hung down, providing direct protection to Lu Hang and Xiao Ai within its embrace. When the peculiar beam of light, flying out from the chests of the Wuyo and Wuyu siblings, collided with the protective barrier of spiritual essence, it proved utterly impervious. In the clash between life and death, the entire city trembled madly. The violent shockwaves surged in all directions, and the tremendous storm was capable of demolishing every mortal structure in its path. The figure on the throne witnessed this scene, yet instead of being angered by their methods being obstructed, they became exceedingly excited, their eyes fixated upon the colossal bronze cauldron looming above Lu Heng's head. The green state cauldron it actually contains such an enormous amount of vital life essence. Ha 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 the master of the green state cauldron, you were reluctant to use this vast reserve of life essence, but now it seems that I am going to benefit from it. Ha ha ha. The figure on the throne became ecstatic and let out a wild howl. It opened its hands, and in an instant, the immense U-state cauldron in the void began to tremble violently. Soon after, within the U-state cauldron, countless streams of rich vital life essence also emanated. However, these streams of vital life essence didn't surge towards the master of the U-state cauldron seated on the throne instead, they directly descended upon the earth, dissolving within the city. In the repulsive city structures, covered in blood-red flesh-like growths reminiscent of animal organs, a series of excited roars erupted. An incredibly dense aura of dark malevolence surged within the city. Within the city, one enormous blood-red flesh ball after another emerged. Within these eerie crimson orbs, faint glimpses could be seen of terrifying creature figures colliding in a frenzy, desperate to break free. Upon the throne, the master of the U-State cauldron smirked coldly and said, Within this city, there are tens of thousands of ancient gods and demons, innate cultivators, and the remains of ancient exotic beasts, all sealed. Although their essence of life and entire souls have been devoured by me, as long as the life essence of sentient beings is bestowed upon their corpse remnants, they can still manifest some of their former power. This is the unparalleled might possessed only by the U-State cauldron. Since you dare to intrude upon my city with an abundance of life essence, there is no longer any hope for you. Amidst the resounding shout of the master of the Ye's state cauldron, tens of thousands of flesh balls rising within the city shattered simultaneously, unleashing a series of ferocious and bizarre figures. There were ancient gods and demons clad in battle swords, drenched in blood yet brandishing spears and swords. 
There were innate cultivators with withered visages, desiccated corpses, yet still emanating a powerful aura. There were also tremendous monstrous beasts with formidable abilities. The words of the master of the Ya State Cauldron were, astonishingly, not the slightest bit exaggerated. The ancient corpses that soared throughout the entire city were all peak beings who had reached the realm of innate cultivation. The master of the Yuz State Cauldron unexpectedly harbored such an abundance of powerful corpses even if just one-tenth of these corpses perished by its hand, it would still be an incomprehensibly horrifying occurrence. At this moment, let alone Lu Hang, even the three demonic creatures who had formed the sword formation to besiege Lian Sanqing have now realized that something is amiss. They recalled the words spoken earlier by Lian Sanqing. As beings of the celestial desolation realm, you dare to have such an association with this wretched creature. The once proud green-eyed demon, now wore an expression of utmost unease. What is this enigmatic entity, the master of the Yuz State Cauldron, whose origins remain shrouded in mystery?